Once the Ten Kingdoms were destroyed, the sword was hidden, and unexpectedly, a mobile phone lost three years ago revealed the unknown secret of this peerless war god. Three years ago, the greedy wolf army was tragically calculated, with tens of thousands of brothers shedding blood like a river, burying bones 800 miles in the cold. Chen Bufan knelt under the setting sun, and wherever his eyes could reach, there were endless graves. Now, with only a worn-out mobile phone in hand, this was painstakingly retrieved by Kang Long, but what use did it have for him? However, just as Chen Bufan was about to turn off the phone, it suddenly vibrated, and a text message popped up. Who in the world would contact this fugitive? Chen Bufan was surprised, and he opened the message, which read, Chen Bufan, we parted ways at the Temple of No Form. You said you would come find me, but I waited for four whole years, and got nothing. I hate you. This short sentence was like a thunderbolt, shaking Chen Bufan to his core. The Temple of No Form, the place where he once vowed to protect for a lifetime, had become his greatest pain. Five years ago, the Chen family in Guangling was annihilated, the century-old foundation turned to ashes. He alone, married into the Han family in Liang, survived in misery. Four years ago, his identity was exposed, poisoned by the Han family, falling into the Lijiang River with an unknown fate. It was at that time that a kind girl saved him, even risking her life to help him detoxify. To repay her kindness, Chen Bufan once vowed to return and marry her. But fate played tricks on him. He turned north, joined the military, and rose from an unknown soldier to a legendary war god. Tens of thousands of brothers died for him, leaving him the sole survivor, bearing countless hatred and resentment. Even the girl who once made vows to him was forgotten in the mortal world. As Chen Bufan was immersed in regret, the phone vibrated again. Message after message flooded in, hitting him like a wave of density. Dad? Mom always remembers this number, saying it's Dad's, but she doesn't let me contact you. Grandma said you don't want us anymore. Dad, do you really not want Cece and Mom anymore? Dad, I secretly contacted you again. Everyone scolds me as a wild child, only Mom says I'm not. But why did she cry? Dad, many bad people are hitting us. Cece is so scared. Dad, we've been driven out. Please come and pick us up, okay? Each message was like a sharp blade, piercing Chen Bufan's heart. Only then did he understand why Yuru hated him so much. It turned out that during the years he was away, Yuru had his child, raising her alone and enduring bullying and humiliation. And he, knowing nothing about it, hadn't even made a single phone call. Dad, mom is sick. Cece is sick too. The nurse in white said I'm going to another world. What does the other world look like, dad? Dad, I heard that before leaving, people should have a gravestone with their name on it. Can dad come and write on my gravestone? My name is Chen Siru, dad. The last message made Chen Bufan cry uncontrollably. Chen Siru, does Ru mean you, and Si Ru means missing me? A daughter he had never met before, using such a name to express her longing for him. Instantly, an unprecedented anger and sorrow filled Chen Bufan's chest. He stood up suddenly, exuding a breathtaking momentum, causing sand and stones to fly. Even the Azure Dragon, who had followed him for many years, was stunned by the scene before him. After destroying the Alliance of Ten Kingdoms, the Lord of the Palace, who had knelt for 360 days and nights, actually stood up at this moment. Who dares to bully the daughter of Chen Bufan under the Nine Heavens? A piercing roar tore through the sky, shaking the mountains and rivers. Chen Bufan gave the order to activate the long-sealed demon god temple and shadow gate. He had founded these two organizations, rallying heroes from all over the world, amassing millions of soldiers. Now, these two organizations resurfaced, and all disciples rushed to come, just to stand up for their lord. Chen Bufan drank up the aged daughter Red, bidding farewell to his fallen brothers. From now on, no one can enter the 800-mile Kai Liang. With his sword in hand, Chen Bufan, who had once defeated all enemies, was now determined to avenge those who had wronged his wife and daughter. Azure Dragon, follow me to Liang. The sound of the dragon's roar echoed endlessly. On that day, the dormant demon god temple suddenly sprang into action, and disciples from all over the world who were resting began to embark on a journey as if they had received a call. 
Countless imperial leaders were terrified and immediately contacted the Divine Dragon Empire, the phone lines almost bursting. When the demon god temple appeared, no grass could grow, who wouldn't be afraid? The high-level officials of the Divine Dragon Empire were also alarmed, as only one man could make the entire demon god temple mobilize. Once destroyed ten countries and then disappeared, indifferent to worldly affairs. What made the lord of the temple come out of seclusion again? Urgent orders. Chen Bufan is in charge. Full cooperation. In the past, one man for one country. Today, one country for one man. Chen Bufan is worth it. While the demon god temple can be discovered, the actions of the shadow gate remain unknown. The most mysterious organization under Chen Bufan, for the first time since its establishment, emerged. Without exception, all personnel from all directions headed towards Dongzhou. When all global forces discovered their target, they were all dumbfounded. It was not the Divine Dragon Empire, not the entire Dongzhou, not even the capital, but just Liang. What on earth happened in this tiny place to attract such a massive army? Liang is about to explode. The sky darkened, lightning flashed, and thunder roared as the rain poured down with fierce winds. Zhang Yuru knelt at the entrance of the Zhang family's mansion, trembling with tears mixing with raindrops, blurring her vision. She used to be the apple of the Zhang family's eye, showered with love and affection, but now she had fallen to such a low point, having to plead with her parents for help. Mom, Dad, please lend me 50,000. After all, she is your granddaughter too. Without this money, Cece's illness cannot be treated. Zhang Yuru choked up, her voice weak but determined. Zhang Mingyu sneered, looking down on Zhang Yuru with disdain. You were already kicked out of the Zhang family. What does your wild daughter have to do with us? Zhang Yuru's heart ached as she couldn't believe her parents, who once loved her, could say such cruel words. She gritted her teeth, suppressing her anger and continued to plead. Cece's illness cannot wait any longer, she needs surgery urgently. As long as you're willing to lend me, I will repay with interest in the future. For her daughter, Zhang Yuru had abandoned all dignity, knocking her head on the ground and even putting aside her pride. However, the Zhang family members just laughed, looking down on her as if she were a clown. Just a wild seed, if she dies, she dies. Find someone to marry. Besides, your daughter is sick. Go find her father, why come to us? Zhang Mingyu sneered. Oh, by the way, you probably don't even know his name, right? You can sleep with a stranger. Why not just go sell yourself? With your looks, earning 50,000 shouldn't be difficult. Ha ha. Zhang Yuru's heart bled. These were her biological parents, yet they were so heartless, even suggesting she sell herself. But for her daughter, she had no choice. Cece won't last long. Please, for the sake of blood ties, lend me 50,000. Zhang Yuru pleaded in despair, tears streaming down her face. Zhang Mingyu sneered and suddenly said, Fine, I'll lend you 50,000, but on one condition. Three days later, marry the young master of the Han family. Forget about 50,000, 5 million is nothing. Marry the young master of the Han family? That crippled, pockmarked man? This was like pushing her into hell. Zhang Yuru was shocked and speechless, unable to believe that her father would push his daughter into hell for profit. You said you were willing to do anything, right? Why are you silent now? Dad is giving you a chance, don't be ungrateful. A young woman in her early twenties, dressed provocatively, spoke harshly. Zhang Yuru looked at her with pity. This was her own sister Zhang Meihan, who refused to address her as sister and called her a despicable person. You found a wild man and got dumped in the end. It's already a joke in the whole town. It's lucky if anyone is willing to marry you. Stop being so picky. Just think about your wild daughter. She won't live long. Zhang Meihan taunted gleefully. Zhang Yuru clenched her teeth, filled with hatred for everyone in front of her. At this point, they were all using her. Fine, I'll marry for Cece. Zhang Yuru shouted in despair and anguish. She knew this was a one-way street, but for her daughter, she had no choice. The Zhang family members laughed wildly, as if they could see a future of wealth and glory. Ha ha, you stubborn girl, you finally came to your senses. As long as you marry into the Han family, how much money do you need? Our Zhang family can also rise to the top. Dare to imagine, a life of wealth and luxury is waiting for you. In contrast, Zhang Yuru, kneeling outside the door, 
her face already blurred with tears, like a floating duckweed, with no one to rely on. The news spread and caused a sensation in the whole city. Zhang Yuru, as the most beautiful woman in Liang, was admired by countless people. Even though she is now a widow with a child, there are still many who want to marry her. But she is very strong-willed, relying on herself to make a living, never agreeing to anyone. Now, it suddenly came out that she was going to marry the young master of the Han family, causing a huge stir. Some people disdainfully said, thought she had some backbone, turns out she's just a cheap woman, willing to marry even someone as ugly as the young master of the Han family for power and wealth. Young master Han Shuai, upon receiving the news from the Zhang family, was ecstatic. Whether she is a widow or not, she used to be the most beautiful woman in Liang. Just the thought of being able to have her under him made his blood boil. A grand wedding is about to take place in three days. No one knew that at this moment, a plane was flying at an incredible speed towards Liang in the sky. Alert, alert. An unidentified aircraft heading straight for Liang airport. Evacuate the crowd immediately and prepare for everything. Inside the airport office, everyone was staring at the screen showing the plane approaching, not daring to breathe. Look. A staff member suddenly widened his eyes, staring at a corner of the plane. It was a sword engraved on the plane. This is the symbol of the demon temple. What? The demon temple? The entire office erupted in excitement. The plane landed, and the entire airport was cleared. Two rows of flight attendants stood neatly, with a group of high-level officials sitting solemnly beside them. The cabin door opened, and a man in white walked out, tall and handsome looking like a god among men, dazzling. Everyone's gaze was involuntarily drawn to him. The aura emanating from the man made it difficult for them to meet his eyes for a moment. Countless flight attendants' hearts raced. They had never seen such a handsome man. Especially the aura he exuded, overwhelming the heavens and the earth, embodying all the elegance in the world. Only one word can describe it, divine. The flight attendants respectfully bowed, not knowing who the person was, but as a member of the demon temple, he was enough to make people bow down. The airport high-level officials quickly approached, extending their hands obsequiously to welcome him, but were interrupted by a single sentence from Chen Bufan. The demon temple's actions are not to be interfered with, let alone disclosed. Violators will be killed. One sentence sent a chill through the entire venue. Until Chen Bufan and the elderly person left, the people present were dripping with cold sweat. It's terrifying, too terrifying. This is the strength of the demon temple. Chen Bufan was in a hurry and didn't want to waste any time. Shortly after, a car set off from the airport and headed straight to the city center. Shortly after Chen Bufan left, another private plane landed at the airport, and a young woman walked out, fair-skinned and beautiful, with a cold and elegant demeanor. Behind her were several bodyguards, each with a fierce look. The woman took off her sunglasses and glanced at the many flight attendants and officials, furrowing her brows slightly. It seems that the news of our arrival in Liang has leaked. There is no need for a welcome ceremony. We are here in Liang for a very important matter, so let's keep it low-key. The woman in sunglasses said coldly. The airport executives looked at each other. No one knew who she was, but out of respect for Chen Bufan's warning, they dared not say much. Being able to take a private plane indicates a significant background, and if it is related to the demon temple, then it is beyond their jurisdiction. Miss, Professor Lee is offering free clinic at Jishin Sanatorium, a middle-aged man said respectfully. Wei, come with me, the woman in sunglasses said urgently, stepping in black high heels, striding quickly away. Half an hour later, Chen Bufan got out of the car. In front of him was a dilapidated sanatorium that had seen better days, with peeling walls, sewage flowing, even the iron gate was rusty. At the entrance, there was only an old man sunbathing. Kanglong, are you sure this is it? Chen Bufan asked, reporting to the Lord. Yes, this is it. Kanglong answered respectfully. To think that I have traveled the world, dominating all, yet when my daughter fell ill, I couldn't even take her to a regular hospital, so we had to stay here. Chen Bufan felt guilty, took a deep breath, and walked briskly towards the sanatorium. The old lady in the ward grabbed the steamed bun from the little girl's hand and threw it on the ground, stomping on it fiercely. The little girl burst into tears, her eyes blurred with tears. The old lady sneered, saying, your mom gave you money, but with that little amount, 
How can you afford a good caregiver? We charge monthly, and if you die sooner, I can take on other cases. You won't live long anyway. Why waste food by eating it? She then noticed a metal box on the table and asked, What's in that metal box you always hold? Since you're dying, just give it to me. The girl refused, holding onto the box tightly. The old lady tried to snatch it, even lifting the girl up roughly. The girl bit the old lady's hand in desperation. Angered, the old lady threw the girl on the ground, causing the metal box to open, releasing colorful paper cranes. Chen Bufan, with Kanglong, arrived at the ward just then. A crane with, Dad, written on it landed in front of him. He realized the girl was his own daughter, feeling a unique bond with her. Enraged by the mistreatment of his daughter, Chen Bufan unleashed a terrifying aura, making everyone sense death approaching. With Kanglong's help, he kicked the old lady out. The old lady threatened to sue, but Chen Bufan wasn't afraid. He believed those who bully children are the real waste. Kanglong dragged the old lady away, and Chen Bufan thanked him. The girl timidly thanked him, looking at him with innocent eyes. The raging anger just now disappeared in an instant, leaving only endless guilt and heartache. Chen Bufan, once known as invincible, felt heartbroken to see his daughter being bullied here. Cici, I should thank you. Chen Bufan choked up. If Cici hadn't sent him so many messages, how would he have known all this? Uncle, don't cry, you have to be as strong as Cece. The little girl innocently comforted. Chen Bufan felt even more uncomfortable. The stronger Cece appeared, the more suffering she must have endured. Oh, uncle, how do you know my name is Cece, do you know me? The little girl asked belatedly, looking silly. I, Chen Bufan was at a loss for words. He owed too much to Cece and her mother over the years. Suddenly, a plan emerged in his mind, so he said, I am a friend of your mother. Oh, Cece lowered her head, murmuring softly, thought it was dad who came back. After that, she squatted down and began to pick up the origami cranes on the ground. Cece, why are you folding so many origami cranes? Chen Bufan asked curiously, my mother told me that when you fold 10,000 origami cranes, you can make a wish come true. Cece raised her head her eyes full of longing. 10,000. Chen Bufan's heart ached. What is Cece's wish? My wish is to see my dad. Cece said crisply, her eyes narrowed into crescents, full of expectation. Chen Bufan's heart twinge. He held back his tears and said softly, Cece, you don't have to fold so many origami cranes, your dad has come back. Really? Cece exclaimed in joy, a brilliant smile on her little face. Yes, as long as you behave and listen, I will take you to see him in a few days. Chen Bufan promised solemnly. Okay, I will be obedient. Cece nodded earnestly. Chen Bufan then noticed half a steamed bun on the ground and asked, By the way, why didn't you eat? Cece lowered her head and said softly, Cece wants to save the steamed bun for mom to eat. Mom has spent a lot of money on my treatment, it's all Cece's fault. As she spoke, Tears fell down her face. Chen Bufan's nose tingled, almost crying on the spot. As the lord of the demon temple and the master of the shadow gate, he was not short of money, yet his daughter couldn't even bear to eat a steamed bun. How ironic. Chen Bufan immediately ordered a large portion of KFC and ate with Cece in the hospital room. However, just as Cece had taken a few bites, her body suddenly collapsed on the bed, falling into a coma. Cece? Chen Bufan was shocked and reached out to feel her pulse, his face turning pale. The cold air penetrated her marrow, causing changes in her blood that led to organ failure. She has been poisoned. Chen Bufan gritted his teeth, who would be so heartless to poison a child. Idiot, idiot. At that moment, a nurse hurried over, looked at Cece's condition, and coldly said, It's hopeless, are you the patient's family? Please sign here. You say it's hopeless, so it's hopeless? Chen Bufan asked coldly. I said so. An old man walked into the ward at some point, took a glance at Cece, sighed, this is Professor Lee, a medical authority, who has voluntarily come to our sanatorium to diagnose, and has already treated this child. The nurse introduced respectfully. Yes, I have shown it to her. If it had been taken to the major hospital earlier, perhaps she could have held on for a while longer. Unexpectedly, Professor Lee shook his head. Young man, Please accept my condolences. 
condolences my foot. With me here, not even the heavens can take her life away. Chen Bufan couldn't be bothered to argue with them any longer. With a wave of his hand, several silver needles appeared between his fingers and were directly inserted into Cici's acupoints. As the head of the sect, invincible in the world, and as the master of Xuanying Gate, how could Chen Bufan not be knowledgeable in medicine? How dare you speak to Professor Li like that? The nurse was so angry that she wanted to scold Chen Bufan. Professor Li was also furious, thinking to himself that this young man was too arrogant, not listening to advice, and trying to save people with silver needles, simply reckless. Chen Bufan ignored them. In his eyes, these people were no different from ants. Only Cici's life was the most important. Swish, swish, swish. Several silver needles in a row, as fast as lightning, accurately pierced Cici's acupoints. Gradually, Cici's pale face began to regain its color, and her breathing became more stable. The ancient medical skills, you are an ancient healer. Professor Lee exclaimed, with an expression of disbelief on his face, his previous arrogance completely gone. The nurse was also stunned. She never expected that Chen Bufan really revived someone who had been sentenced to death. If she hadn't seen it with her own eyes, she would never have believed it. With my Gigu Xuan needle technique, using the eight needles, I barely managed to cure Cici, indicating how vicious the poison used by the perpetrator was. Whoever it is, I will make sure you have no place to be buried. Chen Bufan said coldly, his tone filled with endless killing intent. Gigu Xuan needle? When Professor Li heard this term, his face instantly turned pale, and he began to tremble all over. Legend has it that this is an extraordinary medical skill that can bring the dead back to life, but it has been lost for many years. To witness it with his own eyes now was truly unbelievable. He couldn't help but wonder, who exactly is this young man? Plop, Professor Li knelt directly on the ground, with a respectful and fearful tone. I have underestimated the master, please forgive me. However, Chen Bufan completely ignored his presence, and turned to others, saying, CC needs rest, everyone, please leave. With a command, Professor Li and the nurse dared not stay, all dejectedly left the room. Inside the room, only Chen Bufan and the sleeping CC remained. He gently held his daughter's hand, looking at her angelic sleeping face, his eyes full of tenderness and reluctance. Cici, my good daughter, with me here, from now on, you will never be harmed again. I will make up for all the past debts to you, Chen Bufan softly said, bending down to leave a fatherly kiss on Cici's forehead. Leaving the ward, a group of people stood outside. Upon learning that someone who was declared dead was saved, all the staff in the sanatorium rushed over. When they saw Chen Bufan coming out, they all showed expressions of awe. Master, Professor Li wanted to approach, but saw Chen Bufan suddenly raise his foot. With a few loud cracking sounds, the floor tiles were crushed under his feet, and cracks spread like a spider web in all directions. Professor Li gasped in shock, retreating repeatedly, his face filled with horror just like everyone else. Take good care of Chen Cici. If there's any negligence, I will flatten this sanatorium. Chen Bufan left behind these resolute words, his figure disappearing in the frightened gazes of the crowd. Outside the sanatorium, Kanglong had been waiting for a long time. Lord, the caregiver who bullied your daughter has been taken care of. Hum, Chen Bufan nodded expressionlessly. A mere caregiver could not calm the complex emotions he felt upon seeing Cici. Lord, I just received news that three days later, Zhang Yuru will have a grand wedding with the young master of the Han family. Kanglong added, What? Chen Bufan's heart sank. He had been away from Liyong for four years, and before he could even see her, she was about to marry someone else. Did Yuru really fall in love with someone else? Or was there something more to this? Chen Bufan couldn't believe it. With Yuru's personality, she wouldn't do such a thing. And coincidentally, the Han family was the prestigious family he had once married into. No, there must be some reason behind this. Kanglong. Yes, my lord. I want you to investigate immediately what happened to Yuru in these years. Also, find out who poisoned Cici. Chen Bufan ordered, his eyes filled with intense killing intent. Poisoning a three-year-old girl is simply unforgivable. Yes, my lord. Kanglong replied, turning to leave. Chen Bufan turned to look at the sanatorium, taking a deep breath. 
Four years ago, he was in a sorry state, drifting in the river for three days and nights. If it weren't for Yuru saving him, he might have long been dead. Over the past four years, he had fought on the battlefield, achieving great success and becoming an unparalleled figure. Now, Whoever dares to bully his wife and daughter will be repaid a hundredfold. A strong aura of resentment emanated from Chen Bufan, instantly shrouding the surrounding area. At that moment, in a Mercedes-Benz heading towards the sanatorium, Uncle Hui's eyes sharpened like a sword. Be careful, there may be an assassin, he whispered. An assassin? The woman in sunglasses raised her eyebrows. Uncle Hui's gaze turned towards the direction of the sanatorium, where a dense killing intent swept over even making him, a seasoned warrior, palpitate. Could our visit to Liyong this time have been leaked to our archenemy? The woman in sunglasses's tone was icy. With the resources of those archenemies, can they afford to hire such a powerful assassin? Uncle Hui's expression turned serious. Strange, why did the killing intent disappear again? He muttered to himself, then his face changed. Oh no, Professor Lee is in danger. Speed up, let's go to the sanatorium. The woman in sunglasses shouted sternly. With a roar, the Mercedes shot out like an arrow. A few minutes later, in the office of the sanatorium, Professor Lee smiled bitterly, apologizing, Thank you for your concern. Miss Bai, I am fine. It's just my father's illness. I'm afraid I can't help much. As a leading clinical expert in the country, how could Professor Lee be powerless? The woman in sunglasses asked puzzled, Professor Lee, what do you mean? Are you unwilling to help? Miss Bai, please don't misunderstand. I am not unwilling, but I don't have the ability, Professor Lee sighed. However, perhaps there is someone who can. Who? The woman in sunglasses and Uncle Wei asked in unison. Professor Lee recounted what had happened before in detail. Even now, he still felt lingering fear. That little girl, who he had diagnosed and deemed doomed, was effortlessly saved by a young man, which was simply unbelievable. The Giguzi's mysterious needle, the miraculous medical skill lost for a thousand years, has reappeared in the world? Uncle Wei was shocked. Even he, who had always been calm, couldn't help but be moved. What is the Giguzi's mysterious needle? The woman in sunglasses asked in confusion. It is said to be the peerless medical skill created by the ancient divine physician Giguzi, with the effect of reviving the dead, but it has been lost for centuries, Uncle Wei explained. Professor Li, are you sure you are not mistaken? To be honest, I have studied medicine for most of my life, and only recently discovered the subtleties of ancient medical skills. Over the years, I have consulted countless ancient texts, and I can assure you that the young man displayed the legendary Giguzi's mysterious needle. Professor Li's tone was firm. If that's the case, he is our savior. Uncle Wei was excited. Professor Li, where is that divine physician now? We must seek his help. I have traveled far and wide over the years, just to visit a master of ancient medicine. If I knew his whereabouts, I wouldn't be sighing here. Professor Lee shook his head helplessly. He had missed the opportunity he had been waiting for for countless years, which was a great regret. Uncle Wei, no matter what, you must find that person, even if you have to search the whole Liang. My father's life and death depend on him. The woman in sunglasses's tone was resolute. I understand, Miss Bai, please rest assured, I will do my best, Uncle Wei nodded solemnly. Professor Li's pupils contracted, shocked to the core. The Bai family is a well-known prestigious family in the Divine Dragon Empire, with immense power and influence. However, they are now facing a life and death crisis. Before he could ask any questions, the woman in sunglasses had already left the office. The life and death matters of the Bai family brook no delay. Meanwhile, at the top of the tallest skyscraper in Liyang City, Chen Bufan, dressed in white, leaned against the railing and gazed into the distance, letting the gentle breeze blow. Although Liyang is just a prefecture-level city and cannot be compared to the capital city of Guangling, it is also an economic powerhouse, thriving with towering buildings and bustling streets. Yet, in such a lively city, his wife and daughter are suffering from bullying, living in dire straits. The mere thought of this makes Chen Bufan's heart ache as if being twisted by a knife. Swish. Just then, a figure drifted over. Reporting to the Lord, I have already conducted a preliminary investigation. The person was none other than Chen Bufan's trusted aide, Kenglong. With the power of the demon temple, 
Investigating such a trivial matter is a piece of cake. Speak, Chen Bufan asked eagerly. He really wanted to know what Yuru and Sisi had been through in these four years. If he didn't get to the bottom of it, how could he face Yuru again? According to my investigation, the poison in Yuru's body is related to the Han family, Kanglong said solemnly. The Han family? That damn Han family again. Chen Bufan's eyes instantly turned icy cold. Years ago, when he fled from Guangling, he had no choice but to marry into the Han family, where he lived like a dog. Today, four years later, his beloved woman is about to marry into the Han family, and even his daughter's poisoning is related to the Han family. This is no coincidence. Go on. Chen Bufan suppressed his anger. Miss Zhang Yuru has long been targeted by the Han family. Faced with wealth and power, she has never wavered. Han Shuai, the son of the Han family, has never given up. Even after Miss Zhang gave birth to a child, he tried to forcefully take her away almost causing a miscarriage. Under the Han family's coercion, no hospital dared to admit her. From pregnancy to giving birth to Miss Chen, Miss Zhang has borne it all alone. Hearing this, Chen Bufan could no longer contain his anger. He wished he could rush to the Han family now and skin that beast alive. To harm a defenseless pregnant woman is simply inhuman. If it weren't for Yuru's strong will, carrying on out of motherly love, he might not even see the corpses of his wife and daughter now. Han family, I will settle the score with you sooner or later. This deep-seated enmity, I, Chen Bufan, will make you pay a hundredfold. Chen Bufan asked in a stern voice, after all the suffering that Yuru has endured, where is the Zhang family in all of this? There was a hint of anger and confusion in his tone. The Azure Dragon sighed and slowly explained, the Zhang family has always hoped that their daughter could marry into the Han family, so that they could climb up the social ladder. When Miss Zhang was being abused, the Zhang family just stood by and watched. After Miss Zhang insisted on giving birth to a daughter, she was kicked out of the house by the Zhang family. Due to the interference of the Han and Zhang families, Miss Zhang couldn't even find a normal job and had to raise her daughter alone, living a very difficult life. The poisoning of your daughter by the Han family was also to force Miss Yuru to comply. As soon as the Azure Dragon finished speaking, he suddenly looked up at Chen Bufan, who exuded a terrifying aura, causing the surrounding winds to rage and the killing intent to soar. What a Han family, what a Zhang family, to treat even their own daughter like this. Chen Bufan gritted his teeth and said, Just because Yuru is beautiful, does she have to endure such abuse? He finally understood why Yuru had to marry the young master of the Han family. It must be for Sisi. Because Sisi has been poisoned and her life is at stake, in order to save her daughter, Yuru had to agree to this marriage. She never cared about her own life. I have fought and bled on the border for the country. I have been unparalleled in the world, but I never expected my beloved to suffer such humiliation, which is unforgivable. Chen Bufan's anger surged wishing to raise the entire city to the ground. Take me to the Han family. Chen Bufan issued the order, his tone firm and resolute. Yes, the Azure Dragon nodded. Immediately, the members of the Demon Temple who had just arrived in Liyang rushed towards the Han family like a tide. At this moment, the Han family mansion was brightly lit, filled with joy. Tomorrow would be the grand wedding of Han Shuai, and everyone was busy preparing for the ceremony. Han Yue the head of the Han family, had only one son, Han Shuai. Even if he married a widow, as long as his son was happy, the occasion had to be grand. Hurry up and don't delay my son's wedding tomorrow, Han Shuai arrogantly shouted, causing many servants to curse silently in their hearts. If it weren't for being born into the Han family, with that appearance, he would never find a wife in his lifetime. It was a pity for Zhang Yuru, the former beauty of Liang, to marry such scum. Thinking of this, many people felt jealous. After scolding the servants, Han Shuai was very satisfied. He took out his phone, opened a photo, and stared at it lasciviously. Zhang Yuru, what are you pretending to be so noble for? In the end, you will still become my woman. The person in the photo was Zhang Yuru, with her beautiful long black hair, snow white skin, exquisite figure, and stunning appearance. Thinking that he would have her tomorrow, Han Shuai's eyes became even more fiery and excited. Unknown to everyone, as the Han family was busy inside the mansion, countless black-clad figures suddenly appeared outside the residence, 
like death gods emerging from hell, exuding a terrifying aura. In the blink of an eye, the Han family was surrounded and no one could escape, not even a fly. After these people appeared, they looked expectantly in one direction. A white-clad young man emerged in the night, like a war god descending from the sky, with a majestic aura that sent shivers down one's spine. All eyes were instantly fixed on him, filled with fervent admiration. Behold the lord of the palace. The burly figures in black robes all knelt down in unison, their voices thundering, and their presence magnificent. In their eyes, the young man in white before them was not only the supreme demon lord ruling over the world, but also a lofty deity. To witness the noble countenance of Chen Bufan in person was a great honor for them. Watch closely, not a single person is allowed to leave. Chen Bufan said coldly, appearing in front of the Han family gate in an instant. The big red lantern hung high, the character for happiness pasted on the main gate, exuding a festive atmosphere everywhere. If he hadn't returned in time, by tomorrow, Yuruo would have been defiled by that beast. The thought of this ignited the anger in Chen Bufan's heart uncontrollably, and with a kick, he smashed the Han family gate to pieces. Bang! The iron gate shattered instantly sending splintered fragments flying in all directions. Everyone in the Han family courtyard was terrified by this sudden turn of events. What happened? Why did the gate break? Countless terrified eyes looked towards the direction of the gate. They saw a young man in white standing proudly, emitting a chilling aura. Even his gaze was unsettling. Behind him was a tall and burly man, standing upright with a dignified demeanor. Who are these people? Why is their aura so terrifying? The crowd was trembling with fear, never having seen such a powerful presence, just standing there as if they could suppress heaven and earth. Who are you? Han Shuai was taken aback, then arrogantly asked. In Liyong, the Han family was a dominant force, he had nothing to fear. Chen Bufan calmly said, I heard that the Han family is celebrating, so I came to offer my congratulations. Oh, so you're here to congratulate us? Han Shuai sneered, thinking he was here to cause trouble. Yes, I heard you are marrying Zhang Yuruo tomorrow, but you came too early. Not early at all. Chen Bufan finished speaking and leapt out like a mad dragon, kicking Han Shuai in the chest, sending him flying seven or eight yards away, crashing heavily to the ground, blood spurting from his mouth. Hiss tilde tilde everyone present gasped in shock, gaping in disbelief at the scene before them. Han Shuai, the dignified young master of the Han family, was actually beaten up on his own turf. This was simply unbelievable. Aren't you here to offer congratulations? Han Shuai roared angrily, his face filled with incredulity. Chen Bufan firmly declared, The destruction of your Han family is the grand gift I present. With that, he strode decisively towards Han Shuai. Crack, the stone slabs under his feet shattered like fragile biscuits with each step he took. The long suppressed anger erupted completely at this moment. Who could stop him now? fighting for the country for a thousand days, annihilating the Ten Kingdoms Alliance, forever suppressing the evils of the Four Directions, yet never did he expect his beloved wife and daughter to suffer such humiliation in Liang. Today, it is necessary to let the Han family's blood flow like a river to bend the deep-seated hatred. The Han family has dominated Liang for twenty years, being the top local powerhouse. How dare you act so recklessly here? Han Shuai stood up forcefully glaring fiercely at Chen Bufan. No matter who you are, daring to act presumptuously in the Han family, I will make sure you have no place to be buried. As soon as he finished speaking, more than a dozen well-trained bodyguards swiftly rushed towards Chen Bufan from all directions, bowing to bring him to justice on the spot. Boom! Chen Bufan clenched his fists tightly, his veins bulging, a violent force bursting out instantly. Bang! Under the force of Chen Bufan's fists, those bodyguards were knocked down like clay chickens and stone dogs, each one spitting blood, falling stiffly to the ground, with dozens of bones broken, some even as many as twenty or thirty. Damn it! Han Shuai was completely dumbfounded, looking at Chen Bufan with a face full of horror, hardly believing his own eyes. Is this still a human being? Knocking down more than a dozen well-trained bodyguards with just one punch. Are you the one who has been harassing Zhang Yuru all these years? Chen Bufan asked coldly, his voice as sharp as a sword. Han Shuai tried to remain calm, snorted, and said, Zhang Yuru is my woman, what's it to you? 
Do you, with your kind of trash, think you deserve Yuru? Before he could finish his words, Chen Bufan kicked him out with a force like Mount Tai pressing down, splattering blood all over the ground. Tell me, did your Han family poison Sisi? Chen Bufan pressed on step by step, his eyes bloodshot, as if he wanted to swallow Han Shuai alive. Han Shuai struggled to get up from the ground, tremblingly asked, Who are you exactly? What's your relationship with Zhang Yuru? You are not qualified to know my name. Chen Bufan said coldly, I'll give you one last chance, do you talk or not? You brat, I warn you, if you dare to. Oh, before Han Shuai could finish his words, Chen Bufan had already struck like lightning, chopping off one of Han Shuai's hands, blood gushing out, causing him to roll on the ground in pain and screaming. Master, something bad happened. Someone broke into our Han family and cut off the young master's hand. A subordinate ran to the backyard in panic, shouting for help. Han Yuwei, who was handling official business in the study, heard this and was stunned, staying still for a few minutes, doubting if he had misheard. Someone dared to cause trouble in the Han family and cut off Han Shuai's hand. How arrogant. Who dares to offend the Han family in Liang? Han Yuwei immediately summoned his men and rushed to the front yard. Upon arrival, he saw a bloody figure falling heavily in front of him. Upon closer inspection, it turned out to be his son, Han Shuai, covered in blood, looking pitiful. Junior Shuai, Han Yuwei was shocked to see his beloved son in such a state. Dad, save me, Han Shuai groaned weakly, seemingly on the brink of death. Enraged, Han Yuwei shouted sternly, You scoundrel, how dare you cause trouble in my Han family, kill him regardless of the consequences. As soon as he finished speaking, dozens of elite bodyguards following him rushed towards Chen Bufan frantically. Ao Long shook his head on the side, saying that not to mention dozens of ordinary bodyguards, even hundreds of special forces would not be a match for the Lord. Chen Bufan was like a raging evil dragon, unstoppable, and those people couldn't get close to him at all, being knocked down one by one. With a bang, dozens of bodyguards were all lying on the ground, moaning miserably. Han Yuwei swore that he had never seen such a terrifying and horrifying scene in his life. One person, barehanded, could actually knock down dozens of well-trained bodyguards, was this a human or a demon? Suppressing the horror in his heart, Han Yuwei asked in a deep voice, Who are you, and what deep enmity does your excellency have with my Han family? Chen Bufan suddenly sneered and asked in return, Han Yuwei, it's only been a few years, don't you recognize me anymore? Who are you? Han Yuwei stared strangely at the young man in front of him, staring at his cold face in the darkness, unable to speak for a moment. Chen Bufan, Han Yuwei suddenly exclaimed, as if struck by lightning, his scalp tingling, you're not dead. Five years ago, Chen Bufan had married into the Han family, becoming the son-in-law of Han Lai, the second in command of the Han family. And Han Lai, the younger brother of Han Yuwei, how could he not recognize Chen Bufan? It's just that they never expected that this guy they considered a waste hadn't died, and after four years, he suddenly appeared at the Han family. What? It's Chen Bufan? Han Shuai suddenly woke up, cursing loudly. You useless guy, kneel down and apologize to me, or I'll take your life. Chen Bufan didn't speak, his palm turned slightly, a cold light appearing. Puff, Han Shuai's other arm was instantly severed, blood spraying everywhere. Four years have passed. Things are different now. Does this Han Shuai have any qualifications to be arrogant in front of Chen Bufan? Chen Bufan, you're too arrogant. Han Yue's eyes were about to split in anger. If it weren't for my Han family giving you food to eat, you would have died long ago. But it was also your Han family that caused the destruction of my family. Based on this account alone, it's enough to destroy you all. Chen Bufan said coldly, arrogant. You, Chen Bufan. Still want to destroy my Han family? Han Yuwei roared. Tomorrow is the big day for my Han family, and you dare to come and cause trouble, even cutting off my son's hands. You survived four years ago. Today I will make sure you die without a burial place. With that, Han Yuwei quickly took out his phone and dialed a number. Bro, something's happened at our Han family. Come over with people right away. Hanging up the phone, Han Yuwei looked at Chen Bufan triumphantly, sneering, You brat. I've informed Han Lai, wait until your former father-in-law comes in person, see how you can be arrogant. 
The two brothers of the Han family, one light and one dark, have long held control of Liang. Han Yue, as the head of the family, is responsible for managing all the affairs on the surface, while Han Lai is the well-known underground emperor of Liang, known as the second master Han, with influence throughout the city, his hands stained with countless blood, a terrifying overlord. It is precisely because they have both black and white under their control that the Han family can firmly hold the position of the number one powerhouse in Liang, and no one dares to provoke them. Let's see who dies first. Chen Bufan said coldly, then signaled to Kenglong. Kenglong understood immediately and acted on the order. In the blink of an eye, members of the demon temple stationed around the Han family, like a tide, crazily poured into the courtyard of the Han family. In a short moment, hundreds of black-clothed people flooded into the Han family's courtyard, with a dark crowd behind them, endless. Dressed uniformly in black, with a cold and domineering demeanor, they seemed like a sore is emerging from hell. Oh my god! Seeing this scene, Han Yue directly took a cold breath, his body's hair standing on end. As someone who is used to storms, his heart was beating wildly at this moment. The countless black-clothed people, just standing there, are enough to scare an ordinary person to death. Has his younger brother's power developed to this extent? Han Yue thought in fear and trembling. After a moment's thought, he felt somewhat relieved. The reaction from his younger brother was indeed quick. As soon as the message was relayed, so many people were dispatched here. With so many people, dealing with someone like Chen Bufan should be a piece of cake, right? Chen Bufan, can you see this? With so many people, even if you have some skills, you won't be able to walk out of my Han family alive. Han Shuai boasted triumphantly, as if victory was already in his hands. You, you coward, are you starting to feel afraid now? Why don't you kneel down and beg for mercy? Chen Bufan looked at them like they were clowns, a hint of sarcastic smile playing at the corner of his mouth. You Han family really think highly of yourselves. Everyone, listen to my command, flatten this place, leave no one alive. The roaring command, like a dragon's cry, shook the entire Han family, and the countless members of the demon god temple instantly began the massacre. It was only at this moment that Han Yue and his son realized that something was terribly wrong. These people were not sent by Han Lai, but were Chen Bufan's men. This realization was like a bolt from the blue, causing their minds to short-circuit instantly. The demon god temple had always been decisive and domineering. In the blink of an eye, countless people had fallen in pools of blood, the piercing screams tearing through the night sky. Han Yue was so frightened that he kept retreating, trembling as he said, Chen Bufan, let's talk, please stop your men. However, Chen Bufan paid no attention to his pleas. Chen Bufan, no matter what, you were once a son-in-law of the Han family. There's no need to be so ruthless. Han Yue's voice was trembling, but he couldn't move Chen Bufan an inch. Four years ago, he was just a bullied son-in-law. Today, he had become an untouchable demon god. The slaughter continued, and the entire Han family mansion had turned into a sea of blood. Since the establishment of the demon god temple, there had been a strict rule. Every member of the demon god temple must shed blood for the country, eliminate evil for the people. The Han family had long used various despicable means to dominate Liang, committing countless atrocities. Unless this cancer was completely eradicated, Chen Bufan's anger could not be calmed. A few minutes later, only Han Yue and his son were barely standing in the Han family. But at this point, they had completely lost the courage to beg for mercy completely scared out of their wits, sitting on the ground, almost fainting. I said, put aside the past grievances for now, I'm here today for another matter, Chen Bufan said coldly. W what matter? Han Yue stammered. Zhang Yuru. Chen Bufan said the name firmly. Zhang Yuru? Han Yue was shocked. What does she have to do with that woman? Confess everything you did to Zhang Yuru. Chen Bufan demanded sternly, his eyes sharp as a knife. Han Yue dared not hide anything, and immediately confessed everything to save his own life. After hearing this, Chen Bufan's eyes turned red with anger, burning like flames. It turns out that what the Han family did to Yuru was far worse than what Kenglong had investigated, almost inhuman. And on the Zhang family's side, in order to marry their daughter into a wealthy family, they resorted to dirty tricks behind the scenes. 
The hardships Yuru has suffered over the years are directly related to them. It's outrageous. They actually treated their own daughter as a commodity for their own benefit. Chen Bufan was itching to go to the Zhang family and wipe out those scum and thieves. But when he thought of Yuru, he forced himself to calm down. Kang Long, here, leave this father and son, don't kill them. Tomorrow morning, I want them to kneel down and apologize to Yuru and Sisi in front of the Zhang family, Chen Bufan ordered coldly. Yes, sir, Kang Long immediately instructed his men to take Han Yue and his son away. Chen Bufan, who exactly is Zhang Yuru to you? Why are you treating us like this? Han Yue roared hysterically. Not for the grudges of four years ago, but for a widow from the Zhang family, you destroyed the Han family. What is the reason behind this? Chen Bufan gave a cold smile and said lightly, Because she is my woman, Chen Bufan. If anyone dares to harm her, I will make sure they have no place to be buried. This statement was like thunder on a clear day, shocking Han Yue and his son, leaving their minds blank. Zhang Yuru is actually Chen Bufan's woman. Then, the child she gave birth to, could it be? Thinking of this, Han Yue and his son felt their scalps tingle, their bodies chilled, and dared not think any further. After Han Yue and his son were taken away, the once magnificent Han family mansion had turned into ruins. In this quiet night, many people were still looking forward to the joy of tomorrow, unaware that the Han family, which had dominated Liyong for 20 years, had already collapsed. After the departure of the members of the Demon Temple, several cars arrived late at the Han family mansion. The scene before them shocked everyone. A young man tremblingly dialed a phone number, Er, second master, something bad happened. Say it quickly, don't beat around the bush. Han, Han family is gone. What do you mean by gone? The Han family's villa has been razed to the ground, and everyone has been killed. What? A desperate scream came from the phone almost bursting the young man's eardrums. At this moment, Han Lai, who was away on business, pushed away the woman in his arms, furious and almost unable to believe his ears. The Han family was annihilated, everyone was dead, this news was like a bolt from the blue. Big brother, Xiaoxie, they. No, this can't be true. Who dares to touch my Han family, they're just tired of living. Han Lai dialed another number like a madman. Feiyun. Something happened to the Han family. Book a flight for me immediately. We're going back to Liyong. What could possibly happen to the Han family? In another room at the hotel, a tall, aloof woman furrowed her brows. In her eyes, the Han family in Liyong was the supreme existence, and no one dared to provoke them. But the situation was urgent. There was no time to waste. Feiyun immediately started arranging the travel plans. At the Liyong Pier, darkness enveloped the surroundings. Chen Bufan stood alone by the river, letting the chilly river wind rustle his shirt. His gaze pierced through the night and landed on the lights of countless households on the opposite bank, his eyes as stern as iron. Report to the Lord. The situation with the Han family has been handled properly. A servant approached Chen Bufan quietly and respectfully informed him. Han Lai and his daughter are temporarily staying in Qingzhou, with only a dozen or so people sent over. Following your orders, we did not take action against those small fry. Consider them lucky. Chen Bufan responded indifferently, his tone icy, however, as members of the Han family, none can escape. Keep an eye on them. Yes. The servant acknowledged and cautiously advised, My lord, the river wind is strong. Perhaps it's best to go back and rest. Chen Bufan did not answer immediately. He remembered the hardships endured by Yu Ru and her daughter over the years a hint of heartache flickering in his eyes. Muttering to himself, the suffering they've endured is beyond what any river wind can compare to. Then he ordered, Kanglong, prepare the carriage. I'm going somewhere. As the night deepened, a black car sped through the deserted streets and finally stopped in front of the Jishin Sanatorium. Inside the sanatorium, Zhang Yuru had just put her daughter Cici to sleep. The clock's hands pointed to one in the morning, yet she felt no drowsiness. In a few hours, when the day broke, she would be married into the Han family. Despite years of perseverance, she couldn't escape the whims of fate. Lowering her head to gaze at her sleeping daughter, Zhang Yuru's heart ached with each beat. For Cici's sake, she had no choice. Although Cici mentioned a young uncle who had saved her, 
Zhang Yuru didn't know him at all and thought it was a kind lie concocted by Sisi and the sanatorium staff to comfort her. She was well aware that even if she could gather enough money for the medical expenses, it could only delay Sisi's departure, not cure her fundamentally. But even if she could fight for one more day, Zhang Yuru wouldn't give up. Sisi, I'm sorry. Zhang Yuru choked up, tears streaming down her face. The image of that faithless man haunted her mind, pain and sorrow intertwining, almost breaking her down. Chen Bufan, do you know our daughter's life is hanging by a thread? Yet you haven't shown up, I hate you. I hate you to death. Outside the sanatorium, Chen Bufan watched Sisi's ward through the glass, his gaze deep and sorrowful. He knew Yu Ru was inside. He longed to rush in, to express all his guilt and longing to her. But it wasn't the right time yet. Yu Ru, just wait a little longer. Chen Bufan silently prayed in his heart. Wait for me to arrange everything properly. I'll come see you immediately. You must wait for me. He turned around and instructed his assistant Kanglong, protect Yu Ru and her daughter, make sure nothing goes wrong. Also, prepare the most luxurious wedding gown, send it to the Zhang family early tomorrow morning. Yes, my lord, Kanglong acknowledged and left to carry out the orders. The ceremony will be held here. Liang was bustling, with everyone focused on the Han family's wedding banquet. With the Han family's influence, it was a city-wide sensation attracting a crowd of reporters gathered outside the Platinum Hotel. The first luxury hotel in Liang, entirely booked by the Han family for the wedding banquet. Many guests had arrived early, all prominent figures. What puzzled everyone was the absence of the Han family members. At the same time, a helicopter hovered over the Zhang family, drawing the attention of countless onlookers. A well-dressed man in sunglasses descended directly from a height of dozens of meters. He quickly checked his watch. It was 7.59. Phew. Just one minute late. If he had been any later, the mission would have failed, with unimaginable consequences. Taking a deep breath, he held a delicately packaged gift box in his hands, wearing white gloves. Miss Zhang Yuru's wedding dress has arrived. Oh my. The Han family actually sent a helicopter to deliver the wedding dress, so extravagant. How romantic, if I ever had the chance in my lifetime. I would be willing to die for it. Onlookers were amazed. Miss Zhang Yuhan's sister, Zhang Meihan, took the gift box and couldn't resist opening it, suddenly exclaiming. Inside the box was a snow-white wedding dress, shimmering with dazzling brilliance, embedded with countless large diamonds. Is this real? Zhang Meihan reached out to touch it. Stop! The man in the suit shouted. This was custom made overnight by the world's top designer for Miss Zhang Yuru, worth 30 million. Don't damage it. 30 million? Zhang Meihan was shocked. 30 million for a wedding dress? Is the Han family crazy? Marrying a widow? There were too many people around, so she held back her words, but her eyes were full of jealousy. She couldn't understand what was so good about a widow that was worth such a lavish gesture from the Han family. In the boudoir, Zhang Yuru took off her casual clothes, revealing a perfect figure like white jade, a peerless beauty. Slowly she put on the wedding dress, looking like a celestial being, showing no signs of ever having had a child. There was no joy in Zhang Yuru's heart, only endless pain. Wearing the wedding dress meant becoming someone else's bride. Chen Bufan, do you know how much I wished it was you? With tears in her eyes, she slowly whispered, hitting the snow-white wedding dress. I'm sorry, Chen Bufan, I can't wait for you any longer. If there is a next life, Remember to find me early. Over a thousand days and nights, it ends here. At this moment, Chen Bufan, as if sensing something, felt a sharp pain in his heart. He had arrived at the sanatorium early. Uncle, you finally came. Can I see dad today? Sisi was excited. Sisi, I am your dad. Chen Bufan said with a heavy heart. The emotions that had been suppressed for too long made him tremble all over. Dad, are you really my dad? Sisi cheered. Hugging Chen Bufan, tears in her clear eyes. Don't cry. Dad will take you to meet Ma now, okay? Okay. Prepare the car. Let's go to the Zhang family. In an instant, thousands of luxury cars, like a long dragon, headed straight for the Zhang family. The wedding car has arrived. Please the bride come out. A shout rang out, spreading inside and outside the Zhang family. The sound of gongs and drums filled the air. Firecrackers crackled. 
When the people of the Zhang family saw such a grand scene, they were shocked. Thousands of luxury cars, as far as the eye could see. How much money did this cost? They really value the Zhang family. Ha ha. Zhang Mingyu laughed arrogantly. Finally, with the help of the Han family, the Zhang family would have a place in Linyang. The car door opened, and two figures walked out shakily. It was Han Yue and his son. It's just a wedding. Why did you come in person, Mr. Han? Zhang Mingyu was surprised and quickly went to greet them, suddenly realizing something was wrong. Why were Mr. Han's hands missing? The father and son looked disheveled, with dried bloodstains on their bodies, as if they had been beaten up. Han Yue and his son both knelt down on the ground with a thud. The scene instantly exploded, with countless people in an uproar. The Han family father and son came mightily, weren't they here for the marriage proposal? Yet they actually knelt down to the Zhang family. This, this, absolutely unacceptable. Whatever it is, stand up and talk about it. Zhang Mingyu was frightened. How could he have the qualification to make the first family of Liyong kneel down? His heart was about to jump out. Han Yue and his son remained unmoved, thumping their heads. Miss Zhang Yuru, we are sorry for the harm we caused to your daughter. We poisoned her. Let's call off this marriage. Please forgive us. The scene instantly stirred up a sensation, causing countless people to gasp. You poisoned Cece? Zhang Yuru was extremely shocked. Could it be that Cece's illness came from this? Call off the marriage? Zhang Mingyu only heard this part and became anxious. Mr. Han, this, this, everything is already arranged. How can you just say it's off? My son is not worthy of Zhang Yuru. There is someone else who is qualified to marry her. Han Yue decisively said, appearing even more anxious than Zhang Mingyu. Mr. Han, what kind of joke are you making? Xiao She is a talented young man, in Liyang. Besides him, who else is qualified to marry Yuru? Zhang Mingyu flattered. Me, a furious roar tore through the sky, as if thunder had blasted through the scene. Countless people looked up and saw a dazzling white convertible racing towards them. This customized Rolls Royce convertible, like a shooting star, roared through the sky, its engine noise signaling its extraordinary status. Never did they imagine that such a priceless treasure, the only one of its kind on the market, would appear before them at this moment. The person inside the car was even more eye-catching, with his handsome and elegant appearance, like a celestial being descending to earth, making people hold their breath. Next to this young man in white, there sat a little girl in a princess dress, with big round eyes full of innocence and a lovely pink face, causing a stir and drawing countless exclamations. Even when the bodyguard opened the car door for them, everyone's gaze still followed this pair of glamorous individuals, reluctant to look away. How could there be such a stunning and exceptional person in the world, like a star from the heavens, embodying countless talents and charms in one body? Their aura was so powerful, as if it could overturn mountains and rivers, leaving people in awe. Who on earth are they? Their presence is so formidable. The guests whispered and speculated about this mysterious visitor with great curiosity. Zhang Yuru immediately recognized the little girl with excitement and called out her name, Cici. Upon hearing her mother's call, Chen Bufan suppressed his inner excitement and choked out softly, Yuru. Four years have passed, everything has changed. The once youthful beauty now looked exhausted, making his heart ache. Zhang Yuru was momentarily stunned, unable to believe that the person in front of her was the beloved she had yearned for day and night. Chen Bufan, is it really you? It's me, the one you've been waiting for, I'm back today. Chen Bufan replied firmly. Zhang Yuru could no longer contain the mix of joy and sorrow in her heart, tears streaming down her face. Over the years, she had cried countless times, but never as excited as now. Chen Bufan. Reunited after a long separation, a thousand words condensed into a whisper. All the resentment dissipated in that moment, because the one she had been waiting for had finally returned. Mom, Cece didn't lie to you. It's this uncle who saved me. He's my father. Cece rushed into her mother's arms, excitedly saying. It suddenly dawned on everyone that the man in front of them was the one who had won Zhang Yuru's heart back then. Zhang Yuru said in pain, Chen Bufan, you're too late. I'm getting married today. Only I can marry you, because the wedding dress you're wearing was bought by me. Chen Bufan's words were like thunder, shocking Zhang Yuru. Yang's family members looked at each other in disbelief. 
This priceless wedding dress was actually made by Chen Bufang? Zhang Meihan sneered disdainfully, spare me the act. This wedding dress cost 30 million. Can you afford it? 30 million is nothing but a drop in the bucket. Chen Bufan smirked disdainfully. If time allowed, I could easily customize a 3 billion wedding dress. It's no big deal. He walked up to John Yuru, saying affectionately, For the four years I wasn't by your side, I will make it up to you with everything I have in the days to come. Yuru, give me your hand. From today on, I swear to protect you and Cece with my life. I object. Zhang Mingyu angrily rebuked. So it's you, this shameless scumbag who mistreated Yuru. Otherwise she would have been forced into marriage by you, right? Zhang Yuru coldly finished his sentence. Han Yue refused to back down. Trying to coerce and tempt. Marrying into our Han family is better than being with this poor boy, isn't it? Besides, little Cici needs money for treatment. When it comes to her daughter, Zhang Yuru felt a sharp pain in her heart. Facing her daughter and her lover, she felt extremely tormented. Chen Bufan firmly said, Yuru, trust me once, I have the ability to cure Cici. Mom, Dad is telling the truth. I want you to be together, Cici pleaded. Zhang Yuru looked at Chen Bufan, torn between conflicting emotions. Could she believe him again after waiting for four years for a promise made in the past? Yuru, give me another chance, Chen Bufan said emotionally. The Zhang family mocked Chen Bufan's wishful thinking. How could Zhang Yuru possibly give up her wealthy family for this poor boy? But in the next moment, Zhang Yuru reached out her hand, saying firmly, Chen Bufan, I believe in you. Chen Bufan held her hand tightly, as if holding the whole world, and vowed, From now on, I will do everything to protect you and your daughter. Yuru, have you gone mad? How could you choose this poor guy? Zhang Mingyu said angrily, slapping her face. Zhang Yuru could not bear it anymore and said resolutely, I am the master of my own life. Now that Chen Bufan is back, I want to be with him. You impudent brat, how dare you talk back to me? I'll teach you a lesson. Zhang Mingyu roared. Chen Bufan slapped Zhang Mingyu, scolding, as long as I'm here, no one is allowed to bully Yuru. You're looking for trouble, boy. Zhang Mingyu shouted, ordering the servants to attack. But suddenly, a large group of soldiers appeared, surrounding the Zhang family. The intimidating aura made the Zhang family tremble in fear, too scared to move, afraid of provoking this fierce god. Master, should we destroy the Zhang family? Kang Long asked for instructions. Leave no one alive, Chen Bufan ordered coldly. The demon temple acted decisively, and the Zhang family cried and screamed, finally realizing why the Han family had suffered so miserably, having experienced the might of Chen Bufan. Zhang Mingyu trembled and begged for mercy on his knees. Good son-in-law, I won't stop you anymore, let's talk it out. Chen Bufan sneered. Do you even deserve to be my father-in-law? When Yuru was in labor, you turned a blind eye. When she was struggling to give birth, not a single hospital in Liyang would help her. When she raised Cici, you repaid her kindness with ingratitude, kicking her out of the house. And now you expect me to be civil? It's absurd. He spoke with a broken heart wishing to take revenge and relieve his hatred. Yuru, please ask Chen Bufan to show mercy. No matter what, we are still your parents. Yang's mother cried, kneeling and begging. Zhang Yuru looked at Chen Bufan, not sure how to speak for a moment. She tightly held Chen Bufan's hand, feeling conflicted and tangled inside. After all, he was her biological parents. No matter how many issues there were, the bond of blood connection was hard to sever. Chen Bufan sensed Zhang Yuru's struggle, took a deep breath, suppressed the killing intent in his heart, and softly comforted her, Yuru, I won't let you be in a difficult situation. Pausing for a moment, Chen Bufan coldly surveyed the surroundings and ordered in a low voice, everyone, retreat immediately. Considering Zhang Yuru's feelings, he didn't take action personally, otherwise, the Zhang family would have met the same fate as the Han family last night. Out of respect for Yuru, I'll let you off today. From now on, anyone who dares to trouble Yuru, I will not tolerate it. Chen Bufan's voice was as chilling as ice, sending shivers down the spine. Zhang Mingyu nodded repeatedly, not daring to have any resistance. Chen Bufan turned to Zhang Yuru, his tone instantly becoming gentle. Yuru, let's go. Master, what about Han's father and son? Kang Long pointed to Han Yue and his son trembling on the ground. 
Mr. Chen, please spare our lives. Give us a way out. Han Yue pleaded, fear written all over his face. Chen Bufan frowned and ordered, escort them to the hotel. Since the guests are here, we can't let them come for nothing. Thank you, Mr. Chen, for sparing our lives. Thank you, Mr. Chen. Han Yue and his son kowtowed repeatedly, expressing their gratitude. Kang Long shook his head silently. These two still didn't understand the true intention of the master. They failed to win the favor. They might end up losing their lives. Chen Bufan held Sisi with his right hand, Zhang Yuru with his left hand, and then got into the white sports car. With a command, thousands of luxury cars roared their engines and retreated like a tide. In the blink of an eye, the front of the Zhang family's house returned to its former tranquility, as if everything that just happened was just a dream. Zhang Mingyu sat collapsed on the ground, looking at the devastated mansion, feeling hopeless. He had schemed so hard to curry favor with the Han family, only to be disrupted by Chen Bufan, shattering his dreams in an instant. Chen Bufan, who do you think you are, daring to humiliate my Zhang family like this? Zhang Mingyu roared through gritted teeth. Dad, no matter who he is, we don't need to take action ourselves. Zhang Meihan said insidiously, Don't forget, we have a big backer in Yang, that's the second in command of the Han family, Han Lai. As long as second master Han makes a move, Chen Bufan is as good as dead. Right, how could I forget about that? Zhang Mingyu suddenly became spirited. Han Lai was always ruthless, this time Chen Bufan was doomed. With the thought of revenge on the horizon, Zhang Mingyu's face showed a cruel smile. Meanwhile, outside the Platinum Hotel, dozens of cars arrived in a grand manner. As soon as the car doors opened, Han Lai and his daughter Han Feiyan hurriedly got out. They rushed here overnight, immediately gathered their confidants, and headed straight here. Second Master Han, you've finally arrived. Everyone greeted him one after another. Han Lai cut to the chase and asked, Where is my elder brother? A guest replied, I heard that Mr. Han personally accompanied young Master Shuai to the Zhang family for the wedding. Han Lai's hanging heart relaxed slightly. As long as his elder brother and nephew were safe, everything else could be dealt with. At this moment, a commotion was heard. The cars were back, and it seems the groom and bride have arrived too. Everyone turned their heads in unison, only to see several black cars slowly approaching. As soon as the car doors opened, two bloody bodies rolled out causing countless noble ladies to scream in terror. My master has something to say. Today none of you have come in vain. Consider it a farewell to Mr. Han and young Master Han. Before the words had even settled, the car sped away, leaving chaos in their wake. Han Lai rushed forward, and upon closer inspection, it turned out to be the bodies of Han Yue and his son. Big brother, little handsome, Han Lai fell to his knees, crying loudly with bloodshot eyes. Who dares to go against the Han family? I will make them wish they were never born, with no place to be buried. A thunderous roar echoed through the sky above the Platinum Hotel. In just one night, the first noble family in Liang, the Han family, was destroyed, with the head of the family, Han Yue, and his son meeting a tragic end on the day of the grand wedding. Meanwhile, the highly anticipated bride, Zhang Yuru, eloped with a mysterious man. These earth-shattering news spread like wildfire through the streets of Liang, sparking discussions everywhere. At this moment, Chen Bufan was driving Zhang Yuru and her mother to a mysterious place. After about half an hour, a magnificent ancient-style building came into view, with exquisite carvings, flying eaves, and an ancient charm, resembling a royal garden. Surrounding the area were vibrant red roses, creating a fragrant flower sea, truly beautiful. Wow, it's so beautiful. Sisi exclaimed excitedly, her eyes full of joy. Even Zhang Yuru was captivated by the sight. Chen Bufan, why did you bring us to Yanyu Zhangnan, the most upscale restaurant in Liang? For our family reunion, Chen Bufan smiled meaningfully and led the mother and daughter inside. A female manager in uniform was instructing the staff, double check everything, every detail must be perfect. I heard a big shot rented the entire place for a proposal today. We must ensure nothing goes wrong. Just then, she noticed someone entering and hurried over to intercept. I'm sorry, Yan Yu Zhangnan is closed to the public today. But when she saw Zhang Yuru's face, her expression changed slightly. Yuru, is it really you? 
Zhang Yuru was also surprised. Tang Jing? The stylishly dressed woman in front of her was her high school classmate. She had hoped to catch up with her when she returned this time. But even Tang Jing didn't want to contact her after being kicked out by the Zhang family. Tang Jing looked Zhang Yuru and Chen Bufan up and down, a hint of a sneer on her lips. Yuru, I heard you didn't marry young Master Han, but ran off with a wild man instead. Looks like the rumors are true. Her words were full of disdain and contempt as she didn't see Chen Bufan as a wealthy man based on his appearance. Little did she know, with Chen Bufan's current status, he didn't need to rely on looks to show his identity. His reputation alone was enough to make countless forces tremble. Zhang Yuru was not pleased with Tang Jing's attitude. Yes, Cici is his daughter. Yuru, I have to say, you've been blinded by love. Ruining your life for an irresponsible man. Tang Jing shook her head and sighed speaking as if she were a wise elder. Zhang Yuru didn't want to argue with her, so she changed the subject and asked, Tang Jing, do you work here? Tang Jing proudly replied, I am the manager of Yanyu Zhangnan now, and I am fully in charge of the affairs here. Her face was full of superiority, as if she was showing off a life that Zhang Yuru could never reach. Yuru, you graduated from a prestigious university and are the daughter of the Zhang family. If you were to marry the son of the Han family, your future would be limitless. Yet you persist in this stubbornness. What are you thinking? My life doesn't need your meddling. Chen Bufan coldly interrupted Tang Jing's incessant chatter. If you think the Han family is so great, shall I escort you there for burial? With just one sentence, Tang Jing turned pale with fear, trembling all over. The pressure of the world's demon is not something ordinary people can withstand. I'm doing this for Yuru's own good. Tang Jing muttered with a lack of confidence. For my own good? Zhang Yuru laughed self-deprecatingly, remembering that unforgettable rainy night. She was kicked out of her home by her family, penniless, and called Tang Jing for help, only to receive cold sarcasm in return. Is this what you call looking out for me? Yuru is enough with me by her side. Chen Bufan's tone was indifferent. Since you're working here, just focus on your job. But today we have a VIP booking. No other guests will be entertained. Tang Jing was still resistant. Besides, even on regular days, the average spending here is 3,000 per person. I'm afraid you two can't afford it, right? 3,000 per person? Zhang Yuru gasped, knowing it was upscale here, but didn't expect it to be so extravagant. Chen Bufan, how about we go to a different place? She said somewhat embarrassed. No problem. Chen Bufan smiled and said to Tang Jing, Today, the one who booked Yanyu Zhangnan is me. In an instant, countless surprised gazes all turned towards Chen Bufan. Tang Jing burst into laughter. Zhang Ru, the man you found does have his strengths, boasting like a pro. Do you know how much it costs to book Yanyu Zhangnan? Easily in the millions, not to mention the grand setup, that's an astronomical figure. Can he really come up with that kind of money? Zhang Yuru blushed, holding Chen Bufan's hand, anxiously saying, Bufan, let's go quickly, let's not stoop to her level. Chen Bufan comforted her, don't worry, I'm here. But Zhang Yuru shook her head, looking at him earnestly, Bufan, as long as you come back, it doesn't matter what we eat. We don't have to stay here, we can go somewhere else. It was clear she was worried about embarrassing Chen Bufan. Chen Bufan sighed helplessly understanding Zhang Yuru's good intentions, but the matter of Yanyu Zhangnan was really, well, never mind, speaking out now might only make Yuru angrier. Chen Bufan tactfully agreed and, before leaving, he gave Tang Jing a cold glance, hope you don't come begging to me later. What a joke, the manager of Yanyu Zhangnan coming to beg from a poor boy like you. Tang Jing sneered disdainfully, Chen Bufan couldn't be bothered to argue with her. If not for the sake of his wife and daughter being present, based on that remark alone, he could have the people from the demon shrine tear her apart. Disrespecting the Lord and the laws of the demon shrine is punishable by death. Finally, Chen Bufan and his family arrived at a small restaurant on the next street. Zhang Yuru didn't mind at all, even saying that the buns here were especially delicious, and she hadn't had them in a long time. Watching the bride Zhang Yuru skillfully ordering food. The beautiful sight of the fairy descending to the mortal world made Chen Bufan feel heartache. Wanting to eat buns was obviously just a way for her to give him an out. With such a beauty, 
What more could a man ask for? The small restaurant may not be fancy, but the taste was really good. Chen Bufan tried it and it suited his taste. Actually, he didn't care what he ate, he was just worried about Zhang Yuru feeling wronged. After all, he was no longer the same as before. Yuru, Chen Bufan was about to speak, but Zhang Yuru interrupted. I know what you're going to say, but I really don't care about those material comforts. As long as our family is together, safe and sound, I'm content. Yes, dad, as long as you and mom are with me, that's enough. The little daughter obediently echoed. Chen Bufan affectionately patted his daughter's head, feeling a mix of emotions. Perhaps he was overthinking. With his current abilities, what couldn't he afford? But for Zhang Yuru and their daughter, the most precious thing was the joy of being reunited after a long separation. In the small restaurant, the family of three was harmonious and happy, creating a warm atmosphere. Meanwhile, Yan Yu Zhangnan was in chaos. The VIPs were expected, but they were nowhere to be found. Just as everyone was getting anxious, a luxury car pulled up at the door. A middle-aged man got out of the car none other than the owner of Yan Yu Zhangnan, Mr. Wang. This billionaire boss rarely visited this place. Mr. Wang, why are you here? Tang Jing hurriedly greeted him. Mr. Wang said anxiously, if I didn't come, I would have lost my life. Do you know what happened? I just came back from the Platinum Hotel, where I attended the wedding of young Master Han from the Han family. Oh, I heard about it. The bride ran off with a wild man. Just now, that couple even came here to eat. Tang Jing said with disdain. You know nothing. Mr. Wong exploded, recounting in great detail the horrifying experiences at the hotel, his tone filled with extreme fear. What? The Han father and son were killed? Miss Tang Jing was shocked. Recalling the man that John Yuru said would accompany her to the funeral, she broke out in a cold sweat, her face turning pale. Could it be that this tragic incident was his doing? Tang Jing. Let me tell you, the man by Zhang Yuru's side today, who rented our Yan Yu Zhangnan, that's the one. Mr. Wang accused. How dare you drive him away, it's simply reckless. Tang Jing's mind was in chaos. She did remember Chen Bufan saying he would rent the place, but who could have imagined he was telling the truth? She had even shown off in front of Zhang Yuru, claiming to be the manager, now she felt utterly embarrassed. Mr. Wang, who is this person exactly? Could it be a mistake? Tang Jing tried to resist. I have no right to inquire about his identity, but one thing is certain. If we don't resolve this matter, the next one to die a tragic death might be both of us. Mr. Wang's face turned pale with fear. Tang Jing felt a chill down her spine. Without much thought, she followed in her high heels. Finally finding Chen Bufan's family in the alley, Tang Jing gasped for breath and said, I'm sorry, it's all my fault. I was blind and neglected two esteemed guests. Here, I sincerely apologize to you. With that, Tang Jing bowed respectfully. Zhang Yuru stared wide-eyed, looking at Chen Bufan, then at Tang Jing, completely puzzled about the situation. No need, we had a good meal here. Chen Bufan said coldly. Tang Jing had to rely on Zhang Yuru. Yuru, for the sake of our past friendship, please forgive me this time. Otherwise, I may lose my job. Zhang Yuru was stunned. Tang Jing, you're being too serious, aren't you? I sincerely apologize. Yan Yu Zhangnan was indeed rented by my father. If you don't go back, I won't be able to keep my job. Tang Jing was on the verge of tears. What? You really rented the place? Zhang Yuru looked at Chen Bufan in surprise, realizing she might have misunderstood him and he wasn't lying to show off. Chen Bufan didn't answer, just asked, Yuru, Sisi, have you finished eating? Then he got up to pay the bill. Before leaving, he warned Tang Jing, I hope you won't disturb us again in the future. There was a hint of murderous intent in his eyes. Tang Jing was terrified, watching Chen Bufan's family leave, feeling heartbroken. Outside the restaurant, Zhang Yuru guiltily said, Actually, Tang Jing isn't a bad person. She probably reflected on her words and made up a reason for us to go back. Chen Bufan, you didn't really spend millions to rent Yan Yu Zhangnan, did you? Zhang Yuru asked seriously. Back then, he had made a name for himself in the military, promoted to general, with millions of soldiers under his command. This amount of money was nothing to him. Chen Bufan was about to explain, but Zhang Yuru interrupted. Stop making up stories, I'm not a three-year-old. 
I said, as long as you come back safely, that's all that matters, the rest is not important. Chen Bufan smiled helplessly. No wonder Zhang Yuru didn't believe it. Suddenly coming up with such a story, anyone would doubt if he was bragging. Well, he would find a chance to explain in the future. You must have spent quite a bit of money inviting so many people today, right? It's all friends helping out. This time, Chen Bufan won't dare to lie again. What about the father and son from the Han family? They probably had a change of heart. Chen Bufan casually remarked. Well, most likely. Zhang Yuru nodded in agreement. Chen Bufan smiled helplessly. This silly girl. Why is she so pure and kind? But that's also why he likes her. Having a childlike heart, that's enough in life. One afternoon, Chen Bufan spent time playing with Zhang Yuru and Sisi until the night fell, and then he brought the family back home. What caught their eyes was a shabby old house located deep in the village in the city, which had been converted into multiple single rooms for rent, costing only 300 yuan a month. Seeing this simple environment, Chen Bufan furrowed his brows. You live here? Isn't there anything better? He asked. It's cheap and affordable. We need to save every penny for Sisi's medical treatment. Zhang Yuru replied nonchalantly. Chen Bufan felt a sense of bitterness in his heart to see the daughter of the prestigious Zhang family living in such a place. Tomorrow, I will buy you a house, he said decisively. Zhang Yuru rolled her eyes helplessly. Liyang may not be a big city, but housing prices have soared in recent years. It's not as cheap as it was four years ago. Now, even a square meter costs tens of thousands, and a small apartment costs over a hundred thousand. It's not that easy to buy one. Seeing Chen Bufan's embarrassed expression, she quickly added, Bufan, I'm not belittling your abilities. I just hope that you can be practical. One day, we will be able to afford a house. Chen Bufan could only nod in agreement. The room may be small, but it was cleaned spotlessly, emitting a warm atmosphere. Chen Bufan looked around and felt a myriad of emotions. For four years, he had been fighting on the battlefield, forgetting the feeling of home. Now, reunited with his beloved wife and daughter, having a complete family again, this happiness was indescribable. What are you standing there for? Come help me tidy up. Sisi is falling asleep, Zhang Yuru called out. Coming, Chen Bufan snapped back to reality and hurried to help. If those renowned heroes of the Zhang Hu saw this scene, they would surely be astonished. Only Zhang Yuru dared to give orders to the prestigious demon temple's lord. Under the cover of night, there were hidden currents in Liyang City. The tragic death of the Han family was like a huge stone thrown into a calm lake, stirring up waves. Han Lai stood alone on the ruins of the Han family, looking at the ground littered with cigarette butts, lost in thought. At that moment, one of his men hurried over and whispered a few words in his ear. Han Lai's eyes suddenly lit up, and he gritted his teeth, saying, Fei Yun, find out clearly. The one who killed your eldest brother's family is that waste Chen Bufan. Chen Bufan? Isn't he dead? Han Fei Yun's cold and elegant face showed a hint of surprise. She was dressed in a leather miniskirt, suede boots wrapping her slender legs, complemented by a stylish trench coat, exuding a daunting aura with every move. This kid is lucky. He didn't die when he fell into the river back then. Now he's back in Liyang, wiping out our eldest brother's family. He's really a reckless fellow. He's just a lapdog. Han Fei Yun sneered. Back in our house, he didn't even have the qualification to touch me. Just a waste. Even after these past few years, he can't change his fate. Han Lai said coldly, This grudge must be avenged. Killing my eldest brother's family, even death a thousand times is not enough. Moreover, didn't someone want him dead four years ago? With that, he viciously crushed the cigarette butt under his foot making a teeth gritting squeak. Immediately gather the men. I want to personally send Chen Bufan to hell. At midnight, a convoy consisting of dozens of cars drove into a city village. According to the tip-off, Chen Bufan lives here, and his wife and children are all here, so it's a perfect opportunity to catch them all at once. Tiger, we're here, the car can't get in, said the road opener. The bald man known as Tiger nodded and said in a deep voice, get off the car, and charge in for me. Tiger is Han Lai's number one henchman, and it was him who first discovered the tragic scene of the Han family's massacre. Hundreds of burly men filed out, each with a fierce look. However, 
As soon as they got off the car, they were stunned. In the dim night, countless figures in black appeared like ghosts, exuding a chilling aura. Compared to these people, the helpers brought by Tiger seemed like kindergarten kids, completely overwhelmed in terms of momentum. Tiger, who are these people? His men asked tremblingly. Tiger swallowed hard and shouted, Who are you? The ones who sent you on your way. A cold voice rang out. It was Kanglong, who was tasked with protecting Zhang Yuru and her mother. I'm here on behalf of Master Han Er. You guys are really asking for trouble by causing a scene here, Tiger blustered. Han Er? Kanglong sneered. Then don't blame me for being impolite. Before the words had finished, numerous dark shadows shot out in the pitch black night like arrows. Splashes of blood filled the air in an instant. Han Lai's men were completely powerless and fell one after another in the pool of blood. In just a few minutes, only Tiger was left standing alone, trembling in fear, his face as white as paper. Accept your fate. Kang Long's dagger flashed with a cold light, aimed straight at Tiger's throat. Wait. In the blink of an eye, a cold voice pierced the air. A white figure descended from the sky, exuding an imposing aura. Master, Kanglong bowed respectfully. Who are you? Tiger asked tremblingly, feeling the intimidating aura emanating from the young man in front of him. Chen Bufan, Tiger smirked, thinking it shouldn't be a problem to deal with this kid. He pulled out a dagger and lunged at Chen Bufan's chest while catching him off guard. Chen Bufan snorted. A mere ant dares to attack me? He swiftly grabbed Tiger's wrist with his right hand, shattering the sharp dagger into pieces in an instant, and crushing Tiger's hand, causing blood to flow. Oh! Tiger howled in pain, like a wounded beast. With a push, Chen Bufan made Tiger kneel heavily on the ground, cracking the hard cement surface with a loud bang. Tiger gritted his teeth in hatred, remembering how Han Feiyan had described Chen Bufan as a weakling, even worse than a dog a few years ago at the Han family. But the man in front of him was clearly a formidable war god, exuding an unmatched powerful aura. I won't kill you, but listen carefully. Chen Bufan looked down at Tiger on his knees, his voice icy and bone chilling. Go back and tell Han Lai and his daughter that if they don't want me to pay them a personal visit, they must apologize to me within three days. With that, he opened his five fingers, and a sharp internal force instantly poured into Tiger's body. With the sound of bones shattering, Tiger writhed in pain on the ground. Chen Bufan released his grip, and Tiger scrambled away from this hellish battleground. Lord, why not eradicate the root of the problem? The Azure Dragon asked in confusion. Chen Bufan glanced at him, and the Azure Dragon immediately realized he had spoken out of turn, quickly apologizing, I spoke out of turn, please forgive me, my lord. Azure Dragon, you are still too young. Chen Bufan said meaningfully, you still have a long way to go in understanding human nature. He knew that when the Han family had made an attempt on his life, there must have been a hidden conspiracy behind it. Now he was laying a trap to expose the enemy's true colors. After saying these words, Chen Bufan turned and left. As soon as he returned home, he found Zhang Yuru standing at the door, tears in her eyes. Yuru, what are you doing here in the middle of the night? Chen Bufan asked, his heart aching. Zhang Yuru remained silent, tightly embracing him, her soft body pressed against his chest, making him feel a surge of warmth. I'm afraid you'll leave again, she choked out. Chen Bufan smiled helplessly and embraced his beloved wife, silly girl. I just went to the restroom, I won't go anywhere else. Come, let's go back to bed. In the early hours of the morning, in a private villa near Yangcheng, Han Lai sat restlessly staring at the clock. He was waiting, waiting for news from his men, but there was always a faint sense of unease in his heart. Dad, you can rest assured. Han Feiyan elegantly lifted her coffee cup, taking a sip, just a few people, can't handle Chen Bufan's family. By now, they're probably already reunited in the underworld. Oh, it's a pity I didn't get to see that waste die with my own eyes. Han Lai lamented. Bang! Just then, the living room door was rudely pushed open, and Hu Zhe stumbled in, covered in blood. Dad, look, I was right, right? We must have achieved a great success, Han Feiyan said triumphantly. But as she took a closer look, she saw Hu Ji's disheveled appearance. He had just staggered into the living room and collapsed on the floor. Second master, it's bad news. 
All our brothers are dead. Hu Ji's face was pale, his voice trembling. Chen Bufan said that you and the young lady have three days to make reparations, or he will come in person. Before he could finish speaking, Hu Zhe coughed up another mouthful of blood. The internal force left by Chen Bufan in his body had suddenly taken his life. Tiger Cub, Han Lai's piercing howl tore through the silent night sky, his eyes bloodshot, his face as pale as paper. More than a hundred people, and not a single one left alive. This fact was like a thunderbolt leaving Han Lai dizzy and incredulous. Even Han Feiyan was petrified, her coffee cup slipping from her hand, shattering on the floor with glass shards flying everywhere. Chen Bufan, this waste, how did he manage to do this? Han Feiyan muttered to herself, filled with horror. He wiped out Big Brother's family, and killed over a hundred of our men. He must pay for this with blood. Yes, this kid is too arrogant. Han Lai gritted his teeth, daring to make us compensate him. It's simply wishful thinking. Could there be a master assisting him? Han Feiyan asked thoughtfully. Han Lai nodded, sneering, even if there are martial artists helping, so what? I am the deputy hall master of the Qilin Hall. Just go find the hall master Xing Ao, and we will surely tear this kid to pieces. With that, he set off that very night, not daring to delay any longer. The next morning, Chen Bufan woke up at 8 in the morning. Zhang Yuru had already gotten up, preparing a sumptuous breakfast for the family. Watching his beloved wife bustling about, Chen Bufan felt a warm surge in his heart. After so many years, only at this moment did he truly feel the warmth of home. Yuru, you are truly a virtuous and kind wife. Stop flattering me. Hurry up and get ready for breakfast. Zhang Yuru scolded with a smile. I have to go to work soon. Go to work? Chen Bufan asked in surprise. Of course, how else? I have to earn money to support the family. Zhang Yuru explained as she tidied up. I work in a real estate company as a salesperson and do part-time design at a studio. Zhang Yuru had already changed into a professional outfit. A white shirt paired with a black skirt. Her long legs wrapped in nude stockings. Feet in a pair of black high heels. Her dark hair was clipped back, revealing a fair and elegant neck. This outfit accentuated her graceful figure and extraordinary temperament. Yuru, you are so beautiful. It's a waste not to be a star. Chen Bufan praised sincerely. Don't talk nonsense. Zhang Yuru glared at him. Besides, Cici is starting kindergarten this year. The expenses are not small. I need to earn more. Mentioning their daughter, Zhang Yuru suddenly remembered something and asked, By the way, do you have a way to cure Cici's illness? Don't worry. I have already removed the toxins from her body, with a little adjustment, she will recover soon, Chen Bufan said confidently. Zhang Yuru nodded, reminding, then please take good care of Cici at home, I have to go to work now. With that, she rode her bike and set off for the company. Chen Bufan watched his wife's departing figure, feeling a warmth in his heart. He had secretly arranged for the guards of the demon temple to protect Zhang Yuru's safety, even though she was unaware he would never let her come to harm. After breakfast, Chen Bufan took Cici out to play. Along the way, the little girl was constantly laughing and cheerful. It was the happiest day of her life. Amusement parks, parks, aquariums. Everywhere they went, father and daughter left behind a harmonious and joyful presence. It wasn't until dusk that Chen Bufan brought Cici to the Yunlu Real Estate Company to pick up Zhang Yuru after work. Chen Bufan's appearance immediately caused a stir among the company's employees. So, it turns out that Zhang Yuru's husband is him. He looks quite ordinary. Ordinary? I think he's quite handsome. What's the use of being handsome? You can't eat it. Everyone was discussing the sudden appearance of this male lead. Just then, a well-dressed young man walked over, threw a flirtatious glance at Zhang Yuru, and said, Yuru, let me take you home. With that, he shook the car keys in his hand and with a beep beep, the headlights of a brand new Audi outside the door lit up. The man glanced sideways at Chen Bufan with a disdainful smile. Thank you, Manager White, for your kind offer, but there's no need to trouble yourself, Zhang Yuru politely declined. However, the persistent Manager White continued to persuade, Yuru, the sales situation at Yunluo Academy hasn't been ideal recently, your performance has been lagging behind. I'd like to talk to you about it. It's off work now. How about chatting at the cafe? Manager White, this is my personal time now. 
Let's talk about work tomorrow. Zhang Yuru's refusal was already clear. But manager White wouldn't give up. I'm doing this for your own good. After all, you're a single mother with financial pressure. If you don't pass this month's assessment, I'm afraid. It was a blatant threat. And he completely ignored Chen Bufan by Zhang Yuru's side. Chen Bufan coldly spoke up. The prestigious manager of Yunluo Real Estate is openly harassing his subordinates? Manager White's face turned red, and he stammered to explain, You, you're talking nonsense. I, before he could finish, Chen Bufan had already walked up to him in large strides. A strong aura hit him, and Manager White felt a chilling coldness piercing his heart, his legs involuntarily trembling. Chen Bufan leaned in close and whispered in his ear, his voice low, If you want to see the sun tomorrow, don't ever think about my wife again. In just a few words, it felt like a death sentence from hell, leaving Manager White pale and too scared to say another word. As Chen Bufan's family of three rode past Manager White's Audi on a worn-out donkey, he couldn't help but mock, second-hand car, it's time for an upgrade. In an instant, this remark became the talk of the entire company. People couldn't believe it, saying, Manager White drives a second-hand car? Unbelievable. The high-ranking executive of Yunluo can't afford a new car? Manager White was furious, swearing silently to himself, Just wait, Zhang Yuru, I will definitely win you over. Little did he know, what loomed over him at that moment was not just the sword of Damocles, but the scythe of the Grim Reaper. On the road, Zhang Yuru couldn't help but ask, What did you say to the White supervisor to scare him like that? Chen Bufan's mouth curled up with a hint of mischief as he teased, Kiss me, and I'll tell you. Uh, in front of the child. Really no sense of propriety, Zhang Yuru blushed, pretending to be angry as she glared at him. Just then, the donkey suddenly stopped in its tracks. What's going on? Zhang Yuru asked anxiously. Chen Bufan's gaze was sharp, and he saw two middle-aged men standing side by side not far ahead, blocking the way like unsheathed swords. These two men had slightly sunken temples, clearly seasoned martial arts experts. Yuru, take Sisi home first, Chen Bufan said in a stern voice, before dismounting and heading towards them. Who are they? Zhang Yuru asked with a worried look. Don't worry, I'll be back soon. You take Sisi home first. Chen Bufan's tone brooked no argument. Though Zhang Yuru had a thousand words to say, she could only watch her husband's resolute figure and lead her daughter away. Chen Bufan made a hand signal behind him, and the undercover members of the Demon Temple followed closely, ensuring the safety of the mother and daughter. The two middle-aged men, seeing this, one of them wanted to pursue, but was stopped by his companion. Forget about them. Deal with this kid first. The two men's eyes were full of killing intent as they locked onto Chen Bufan. Chen Bufan, prepare to die. Today, we'll send you to the Western Heaven. The leader of the two men shouted sternly. Did Han Lai send you? Chen Bufan asked coldly. Just a couple of ants. Don't bother with so much talk. Come and face your death. The two men roared and pounced like hungry tigers. Bang! The lead middle-aged man thrust out his palm. A sharp palm wind rushing towards Chen Bufan, the surrounding air resonating with its terrifying power. The other man kicked up like a thunderbolt, emitting a frightening sonic boom. It had to be said that these two were indeed true martial arts experts. Even ordinary martial artists would have a hard time resisting their attacks. Faced with the fierce assault, Chen Bufan not only did not retreat, but instead met it head on, shouting, Han Lai really went all out to kill me, but unfortunately, you are still too weak. Before the words had even fallen, he had already slapped out a palm, clashing directly with the opponent's palm. In an instant, an unrivaled force swept out crazily, shattering the opponent's meridians like a blender. Crackling sounds were heard as the man's fingers all broke, blood splattering everywhere. Before he could scream in pain, Chen Bufan flipped and grabbed the other man's sweeping leg, squeezing with his fingers like a steel clamp. With a cracking sound, the hard leg bone broke, flesh and blood mingling. Chen Bufan raised his other hand like a sharp curved knife and ruthlessly chopped down at the man's thigh. With a muffled bang, the entire leg bone of the opponent shattered instantly, blood gushing out like a fountain. In the blink of an eye, the two martial arts experts were crippled, completely helpless in front of Chen Bufan, highlighting the huge gap in strength between the two sides. 
It seems that Han Lai is not yet able to control high-level experts like you. Chen Bufan sneered. I'll give you a chance to explain who you really are. What qualifications do you have to question us? The middle-aged man gritted his teeth unwillingly. Qualifications? Chen Bufan sneered, raised his hand, and struck like lightning. By the time he finished, the two middle-aged men were already lying on the ground, their necks twisted at a strange angle, clearly lifeless. You're not qualified to know who I am, Chen Bufan said expressionlessly. Kanglong, take these two bodies to Han Lai and tell him I'm giving him two days to think it over. Also, find out their identities. Yes, Lord. Kanglong's voice echoed from the shadows, then disappeared without a trace. Back home, Chen Bufan saw Zhang Yuru frantically packing her bags. Bufan, are you okay? Relieved to see him return safely. Zhang Yuru finally let go of her worry, but couldn't help but complain, if you didn't come back, I would have gone looking for you. I told you I'm fine, Chen Bufan reassured with a smile. What are you doing? What else can I do? I'm packing up to leave. Zhang Yuru explained as she continued to pack, I just found out today that the Han family was wiped out, father and son died after leaving my house yesterday. The whole city is in an uproar now. They brought it upon themselves, serves them right. Chen Bufan coldly snorted, indifferent to the fall of the Han family. Besides, what does it have to do with us? Even if it's not related, Han Lai, the second in command of the Han family, will definitely be furious and may take it out on us, Zhang Yuru sighed. Those two who blocked our way, tell me honestly, were they sent by the Han family? Chen Bufan hesitated for a moment, feeling guilty, but had to admit under his wife's probing gaze, yes, they were from the Han family, but I sent them away after they inquired about the situation. I knew it, Zhang Yuru glared at him indignantly, but helplessly added, you don't understand how dangerous Han Lai can be. He's known as the underground emperor in the martial world, with vast influence in both black and white. Our big brother was killed. He won't let it go easily, especially since we've humiliated the Han family. If he doesn't retaliate, how can we stay in Liyang in the future? You're right, Chen Bufan nodded, without a trace of worry on his face. But rest assured, with me here, no one can harm our family. I promise to protect you and our daughter no matter what happens. Trust me, okay? Zhang Yuru hesitated for a moment, then nodded, okay, I'll trust you. But promise me, think more about the family before you act, don't be impulsive, okay? Don't worry, Chen Bufan promised with a smile. Meanwhile, in a private estate outside Liyang, Han Lai was enjoying a drink with a middle-aged man with graying hair. This man, dressed in black Zhangshan suit with a scar at the corner of his eye, was none other than the renowned leader of the Qilin Hall in the martial world, Xing Ao. Even Han Lai, the underground emperor, showed great respect in front of him. Master Ao, thanks to your help this time, Han is truly grateful. Han Lai finished his drink, slammed the teacup down, and said, that guy named Chen Bufan really caused a lot of trouble for our Han family. You see, the richest man in Liyang City was actually wiped out by a greenhorn youngster. Isn't it ridiculous? Just a greenhorn, what's so special about him? Ching Ao sneered, although we are in the martial world, valuing fists and relationships, in front of the Kilin Hall, everyone can only bow down. I have 500 sharp blades under my command, each one a master in their own right. Even if this kid has three heads and six arms, he won't get any advantage from me. You're right, Han Lai nodded and flattered. Chen Bufan is nothing special, just surrounded by a few helpers. But who are they really? I can't figure it out for now. No matter who they are, they are just overestimating their abilities. Ching Ao sneered contemptuously. Just wait for the news. I have already sent two capable men from the Kilin Hall. They probably have dealt with that kid by now. Great, thank you, Lord Ao. Han Lai was overjoyed and kept bowing. Just then, a sudden urgent phone call broke the silence in the room. It must be good news. Han Lai eagerly answered the phone, but as he listened to the report on the other end, his face turned even more grim. What? The two experts from the Kilin Hall were killed, and their bodies were sent to our house? And there's a note? Read it. Yes, second young master. The voice on the phone trembled as it read. The note only says, time is running out for the Han family, only two days left. Boom. Upon hearing this news, 
Xing Yao's phone fell to the ground with a thud, and at the same time, the teacup he was tightly gripping shattered into pieces in an instant. The two top experts sent by the Kilin Hall had all perished in an unexpected accident, which was simply unbelievable. Han Lai, immediately confirmed this news for me. Ching Ao shouted sharply, his voice filled with extreme anger. Even Han Lai was startled, and he quickly contacted his subordinates, opening a video call. What came into view were two bloody corpses lying in front of the Han family gate. The renowned experts from the Kilin Hall had now become two cold bodies. A note with sharp handwriting and a chilling aura was also shown, sending shivers down Han Lai's spine, making his hands and feet ice cold. He never expected that a mere Chen Bufan would dare to act so ruthlessly against the Kilin Hall. With only two days left before the deadline, what should he do? The mighty underground emperor was now in a panic, his momentum weakened by three points. Good, very good. Ching Ao gritted his teeth, his eyes filled with a terrifying coldness. This kid dares to kill members of my Kilin Hall, it seems he doesn't regard me highly. Master Ao, there's no need for you to personally deal with such a waste like Chen Bufan. Han Feiyan suddenly spoke, with a hint of disdain in her words. Oh, Ching Ao turned his head, his gaze falling on this stunningly beautiful woman. Feiyan, do you have any clever ideas? Indeed, Feiyan, do you have any brilliant plans? Han Lai hurriedly asked as he was now in a difficult position and urgently needed a foolproof strategy. Han Feiyan smiled charmingly, her red lips parting. Since Chen Bufan cares so much about his wife and daughter, why don't we start from there? Force him to come to the Han family and kneel down to apologize, it's more interesting than just killing him directly. That's a good idea, Ching Yao nodded in approval. However, Han Lai was somewhat worried, but Chen Bufan is always with his family it might not be easy to make a move. You can rest assured, I have my ways, Han Feiyan said with a sinister smile, her eyes flashing with a chilling light. Chen Bufan, four years ago, you were as humble as a dog in front of me. Today, four years later, I still want you to crawl at my feet, better off dead than alive. The day quickly passed, and night fell. During dinner, Zhang Yuru's mood was still not very high. Chen Bufan asked with concern, Yuru, are you still worried about the company's affairs? Zhang Yuru shook her head, hesitating to speak. Chen Bufan gently comforted her. Whatever difficulties you have, just tell me, don't bear them alone. Oh, it's just some trivial work matters. Even if I tell you, you can't help. Zhang Yuru sighed, looking somewhat tired. Why not give it a try? Who knows, maybe I can be of help. Chen Bufan said with a smile. If he really wanted to help, not to mention a Yunluo company, the entire real estate industry would be a piece of cake. Zhang Yuru said helplessly, the real estate market is sluggish this year. Our company's newly launched Yunluo Academy project has been on the market for a month, but the sales volume is pitifully low. We've only sold 80 out of a thousand regular units, and the 50 high-end villas are even fewer. The problem is, I didn't close a single deal. If this continues, I won't pass the assessment at the end of the month, and I might lose my job. Thinking about this, Zhang Yuru felt overwhelmed. Nowadays, with such high expenses, even if Chen Bufan comes back, the family of three still needs to eat, right? If I really lost my job, the financial pressure at home would be significant. Seeing this, Chen Bufan quickly reassured, Don't worry even if you really lose your job, I'll support you. Just you? How will you provide for the family? Zhang Yuru chuckled, but felt a warm feeling in her heart. Okay, tomorrow I'll help you attract some clients, which will also contribute to the company. I heard that a meal and $200 in salary for one visit, what a profitable deal. Joked Chen Bufan. Hearing this, Zhang Yuru's eyes lit up, but then she thought better of it and deflated. Forget it, it's better not to go. Are you afraid that Mr. Bai will cause trouble for me? Chen Bufan hit the nail on the head. Zhang Yuru nodded quietly. With me around, he won't dare to cause trouble. It's settled then. Chen Bufan said confidently. Late at night, Zhang Yuru and Sisi fell into a deep sleep. Chen Bufan went outside alone. Under the dim streetlights, a figure quietly appeared. It was his trusted ally, Kanglong. Master, I have already identified the identities of those two individuals, he said. Speak. Chen Bufan commanded. They are from the Kilin Hall, 
a prominent force in the local area. The Kilin Hall commands an independent armed force, known as the 500 Blades. Where the blades point, they are invincible. The Hall Master, Xing Ao, is a legendary figure who fought in the underground world for over a decade before rising to his current position. And Han Lai is one of the deputy Hall Masters of the Kilin Hall, Kenglong respectfully reported. HMPH, Kilin Hall, the 500 blades, invincible? Quite boastful. Chen Bufan snorted, a cold light flashing in his eyes. Why does the Kilin Hall have warriors in charge? Do they have other backers behind them? We are still investigating this, master. Once you find out, inform me immediately. Yes, Kanglong bowed and disappeared into the night. In the last two days, I hope to lure a few big fish. Whoever dares to provoke me, Chen Bufan, will have only one way to go, death. Under the cover of night, Chen Bufan's figure was like a drawn sword, emitting a sharp edge. The next morning, just as Zhang Yuru arrived at the company, Chen Bufan appeared in the lobby of the sales department with Sisi. The notorious demon lord, pretending to be a homebuyer just to help his wife achieve her sales target. If this were to spread, who knows how many jaws would drop in astonishment. As soon as Chen Bufan entered the lobby, many people recognized him. Isn't this Zhang Yuru's husband? What is he doing here? People whispered and curiously observed the couple. Zhang Yuru had to endure the embarrassment and warmly greeted Chen Bufan showing him around the model houses and introducing various layouts. But the whispers of her colleagues made her feel like a thief with a guilty conscience. Just then, Supervisor White passed by the lobby and caught sight of Chen Bufan. He immediately perked up and shouted, Who let him in? Don't they see that we only serve clients with purchasing power here? Zhang Yuru quickly explained, Supervisor White, I'm showing this gentleman around the house, is there a problem? HMPH, him? Coming to see houses on a broken bike, he should take a good look at himself before he talks, does he even qualify? Supervisor White sneered at Chen Bufan, mocking him, can he afford a 2,000 per square foot house? The crowd burst into laughter at the scene. Who doesn't know that Chen Bufan is just a pauper, letting his wife and children live in a rundown rental house, and still daring to come here pretending to be a big shot? Zhang Yuru's face turned pale with anger. She suppressed her fury and said, Mr. Bai, we should treat all potential customers equally. You are being too biased. Potential customers? Mr. Bai sneered. Have you got it wrong? Potential customers refer to those with purchasing power. As for your husband, I think he should go to the neighboring construction site to find some work. They happen to be short of labor there. Laughter erupted around them, reaching a climax. Zhang Yuru, don't think I don't know your tricks, Mr. Bai said coldly. You failed to close a deal this month so you brought a family member to show off. This has a very negative impact on the company's reputation. I now officially announce that your performance evaluation for this month is unsatisfactory. Pack up and leave tomorrow. Being fired? The words of manager Bai hit like a bolt from the blue. Zhang Yuru was stunned on the spot, unable to believe it. Hasn't the company always encouraged employees to bring clients to view houses? Why is it suddenly not allowed for her? She suppressed her anger and gritted her teeth, saying, Why? I refuse to accept this. Refuse? Then go ahead and sue me. Manager Bai said smugly, I now officially declare that you are dismissed. Leave immediately with your precious baby. Fine, I'll leave. But you must settle my salary immediately. Zhang Yuru was determined. With a boss like this, she'd rather not work. You, dare to ask for your salary from me? Manager Bai sneered repeatedly. You have caused a negative impact on the company. You should be lucky if you don't have to compensate. Security, get them out of here. Several burly men immediately stepped forward and roughly pushed Chen Bufan's family out. Just then, Chen Bufan calmly spoke up. Wait, what's your problem? Manager Bai impatiently gave him a glare. Chen Bufan stared at Manager Bai, the killing intent in his eyes almost tangible. What, what do you want to do? Manager Bai felt a chill down his spine, trembling as he said, This is the company, if you dare to cause trouble here, I'll call the police and have you arrested. Bufan, don't act recklessly. Zhang Yuru grabbed her husband's arm, pleading with her eyes, You promised me last night, remember? Huff, Chen Bufan took a deep breath, barely suppressing the anger in his heart. If it weren't for his wife's sake, he would have slapped this ignorant aunt to death and leveled the entire sales department. 
I want to buy a house, he said coldly. What? He wants to buy a house? The people on the scene were all stunned, then burst into laughter. He must be crazy, pretending to be rich without money? Just you? Just leave quickly. Stop embarrassing yourself here. Zhang Yuru didn't know how she ended up with such a useless man, making a fool of herself. The sarcastic remarks were endless. Manager Bai laughed heartily. You want to buy a house? Come on, Boss Chen, 20,000 per square meter. Which one do you like? Let me introduce it to you. Chen Bufan glanced at the sand table and shook his head. See, can't afford it, right? Another round of laughter erupted, saying he wanted to buy a house, now shaking his head, he's just humiliating himself. I'm not interested in buying a regular high-rise, Chen Bufan said calmly, taking Zhang Yuru to the villa sand table, I want to buy a villa. Yuru, which one do you like? Bufan, stop messing around, let's go. Zhang Yuru blushed, wishing she could find a hole to hide in. I'm not kidding, just pick one. Chen Bufan said seriously, come and see, this guy wants to buy a villa, manager Bai deliberately shouted loudly, everyone crowded around, surrounding Chen Bufan, all with expressions of watching a good show. Yuru, your husband wants to buy you a villa, why don't you pick one quickly? Chen Bufan, are you not embarrassed enough? Hurry up and follow me. Zhang Yuru gritted her teeth, wishing to drag him away quickly. Yuru, just pick one at random. Let's end all this soon. Chen Bufan insisted, helpless. Zhang Yuru pointed at one casually, then this one. Villa number 7. Total price of 12 million. Manager Bai sarcastically said, pay up. I didn't expect Chen Bufan to shake his head and say, this villa is too small. How about we switch to a bigger one, like villa number 9. Oh my, villa number 9. The people present gasped in shock. That's the Tower of Yunlu Academy, symbolizing the highest status, with a total price of up to 50 million. Even in the whole Liyang, it is one of the top luxury homes. It's been on the market for a year and still might not sell. This kid has quite the eye, picking out the most expensive one. Does he even deserve it? Dreaming too big, isn't he? Zhang Yuruo was almost in tears. She would rather embarrass herself, but her daughter was watching beside her. She pleaded with Chen Bufan, Bufan, can we leave now? Leave? We haven't paid for the house yet, Chen Bufan said solemnly. Peefed, someone sprayed out their tea directly. What acting, full marks. Thicker skin than city walls. You, Zhang Yuruo was at a loss. 50 million, she couldn't even come up with 50,000, how could she afford it? By the manager smirked sinisterly, then let Mr. Chen pay, if you can't, don't blame me for reporting fraud. Chen Bufan took out a black card from his pocket and handed it to the cashier at the counter. What's the password? I forgot. Wait a moment. Chen Bufan said apologetically. He had too many bank cards on him, some of which he had never used before. How could he remember the passwords? The finance lady sneered at him, secretly thinking, he doesn't remember the password for his own card. It must be because he hasn't used it in so long. There's probably no money in it. Kanglong. Help me check the password for this card. Chen Bufan dialed a number and quickly got a reply. He entered the password on the keyboard, and the card reader immediately made a prompt sound, input successful. Following that, a stunning prompt sound rang out, transaction successful, you have spent 50 million yuan in total. How is this possible? Everyone was dumbfounded. Meanwhile, the headquarters of the World Bank exploded. A long-forgotten peak black card suddenly had a sky-high expenditure. The news spread like lightning within the bank, causing a huge stir. It's worth noting that there are only three peak black cards in the world, and all the cardholders are legendary figures. Two of them have long passed away, and one has never used the card, but today, there was sudden activity. The bank's database immediately captured this anomaly and reported it to the headquarters. Because the identities of each peak black cardholder are extremely sensitive, their every move is closely monitored by the bank to provide personalized service at any time. Soon, a call from across the ocean went directly to the Liyang branch. The branch manager personally answered the call, speaking in English with a serious expression. After hanging up, his face turned pale, and he quickly drove with several employees to Yunlu Real Estate. Apart from the Han family, the boss of Yunlu Real Estate is also taking urgent action. Seeing the company's funds tied up and the houses not selling, 
he had to run around negotiating loans with the bank. It's worth noting that real estate companies mostly rely on bank loans for funds, and only by selling houses can they recover the principal and interest. The longer the houses remain unsold, the harder it is to repay the bank's interest. Just as manager Sal was at his wit's end, his phone suddenly vibrated, and a text message popped up on the screen. Villa number 9 sold, full payment received, 50 million. Seeing this astronomical figure, manager Sal was so excited that he jumped in place, ignoring the onlookers, abandoning the negotiations, and hurried back to the company. He vowed to personally thank this benefactor, or the company might really go bankrupt. The atmosphere in Yunlu real estate was chaotic. The usually calm finance lady double-checked several times, trembling as she pointed to a receipt. Five, 50 million, it's indeed 50 million, no mistake. Upon hearing this number, Supervisor Bai's face turned pale, his legs went weak, almost collapsing. No, there must be a problem. How could that poor guy come up with 50 million? He muttered to himself, eyes full of disbelief. Just then, there was a commotion at the company's entrance. A black car roared in, and out stepped a bank president. Pushing through the crowd, he gasped for breath and found Chen Bufan, respectfully bowing, nice to meet you, nice to meet you. I've long admired your name, never expected to meet the esteemed Pinnacle Black Card customer today. On behalf of all our staff, welcome your arrival, feel free to command us for any needs in the future. Pinnacle Black Card? What's that all about? Everyone looked at each other, puzzled. Even Supervisor Bai was incredulous, more convinced that something was amiss. Here comes General Sao. Amidst the stir, Yunlu Real Estate's boss Sao Wadong strode into the lobby, followed by his secretary, the click-clack of high heels echoing. Who bought our number 9 villa? Sao Wadong cut to the chase, unable to conceal his eagerness. When everyone's gaze fell on Chen Bufan, this shrewd businessman was also taken aback. So young? He marveled silently, wondering if he was some privileged young master. Thinking so, Sao Wadong quickly shook hands with Chen Bufan, smiling, Mr. Chen, thank you so much for your trust and support in Yunlu. From now on, you are my benefactor, feel free to ask for anything. Just then, he caught sight of the bank president beside him, and couldn't help but be surprised. Oh, Mr. Lu, what are you doing here? Oh, it's like this. Mr. Chen is a VIP customer of our bank. This real estate transaction is a big deal, so I came here to provide better service. Mr. Lu explained obsequiously. Sao Wadong was shocked to hear this, given his status in the business world. He was only a diamond-level customer at the bank, far from qualifying to have the bank president personally running errands. Moreover, this bank had strong foreign backing and extremely strict customer requirements. The fact that they value him so much shows how extraordinary Mr. Chen is. Sao Wadong's attitude towards Chen Fan became much more respectful, and he secretly planned how to win over this big shot, get him to invest in Yunlu real estate, and maybe even revitalize the company. Mr. Chen, since you trust Yunlu so much, anytime you have any needs in the future, I will personally serve you to ensure your satisfaction. Well, then, I'll leave it to General Sao. Chen Fan said lightly, I do have an unpleasant request, and I'd like General Sao's help to resolve it. Please go ahead, I'm all ears. Sao Wadong nodded repeatedly. It's like this, my wife works in your company, working diligently and conscientiously but unexpectedly she has been treated unfairly by some people. Chen Fan glanced meaningfully at Supervisor Bai. Your, your wife works in our company? Sao Wadong was greatly surprised, thinking that this distinguished guest was indeed unique. Could it be that they were here to experience life? I don't know who offended your wife. I'll make sure justice is served, no compromise. Chen Fan didn't say much, just looked coldly at Supervisor Bai. The latter immediately went weak in the legs knelt down with a thud, trembling all over like a sieve, scared even his lips turned white. He recalled his actions before and realized that he was the one who had embarrassed himself the most. A supervisor, who might not even be able to earn 50 million in his lifetime, what was he worth, daring to show off in front of a distinguished person? You can ask him for the specifics, Chen Fan said to Sao Wadong. When the old fox heard this, how could he not understand? He immediately flew into a rage, pointing at Supervisor Bai and scolding, you worthless thing, you're worse than a pig or a dog. 
not only abusing your power and oppressing the employees, you almost offended a big client like Mr. Chen. Do you still have the face to stay in the company? Get out now, leave today. General Sao, have mercy. I still have a lot of debt to pay off. If I leave this job, where can I go to make money? Supervisor Bai kowtowed and begged, Mr. Chen, it's all my fault. I'm just a despicable person. Please forgive me this time, treat me like a dog, spare me this time. Chen Fan sneered, do I need to bother with someone like you? If I really wanted to deal with you, you would have been dead long ago. Chen is right, someone like you, keeping you around is just causing trouble for the company. Sao Wadong was furious, quickly packed up and told him to leave, I don't want to see you again. Thank you, thank you General Sao, Mr. Chen. Supervisor Bai, feeling like he had been granted amnesty, hurriedly fled the hall. Ha, Supervisor Bai, do you now know your own worth? Watching his embarrassed figure, the employees all sarcastically commented. Sao Wadong apologized with a smile to Chen Fan. I'm sorry for the trouble, please forgive me. Um, I don't know if Mr. Chen has time for lunch, I'd like to invite you for a meal, as a way of making amends? No need, Chen Fan waved his hand. I'm just buying a house, not worth making a fuss about. With that, he turned to John Yuru. Yuru, I'll take Cece out to play first, you take care of the rest. At this moment, John Yuru was still in shock. My husband unexpectedly splurged on the most expensive villa in Yunlu. He even kicked out the white supervisor who bullied her with a single kick. Everything happened so suddenly, it felt like a dream. Before she could even come to her senses, Sao Wadong and a group of employees surrounded her, complimenting her with smiles on their faces. It wasn't until lunch break that Chen Bufan and Zhang Yuru were able to be alone for a moment. Bufan, be honest, what's going on? Zhang Yuru asked with wide eyes, looking incredulous. Chen Bufan smiled, if I don't tell you, are you going to hit me again? That depends on how you behave, Zhang Yuru said sternly, pretending to be fierce. If I tell you, do you believe that black card and all this money are mine? I don't believe you, Zhang Yuru said confidently. Chen Bufan shook his head helplessly. If I tell the truth, you don't believe me, so why ask so many questions? I don't care, you still have to give me an explanation. Zhang Yuru persistently demanded. Chen Bufan sighed and fabricated a lie. Actually, I have a friend who wants to buy a house in Liyang, but can't show up in person, so he asked me for help. But he's not planning to come back for now, so after the house is renovated, our family can move in first. I knew it, Zhang Yuru nodded in realization, obviously very satisfied with this explanation. Chen Bufan chuckled inwardly, she didn't believe the truth, but believed in a made-up story so quickly. By the way, with that 50 million deal, I might be able to get tens of thousands in commission. Zhang Yuru said excitedly, happily calculating this unexpected windfall. Just tens of thousands? Chen Bufan furrowed his brow. That Sao boss is too stingy, isn't he? Tens of thousands is already a lot, okay? Zhang Yuru shrugged. And besides, boss Sao is actually quite nice. He even promoted me to manager. Is that so? Congratulations then. Chen Bufan sincerely replied. He knew deep down that Sao Wadong's promotion of Zhang Yuru was just to please him, a sly old fox. But for now, he couldn't bear to dampen his wife's enthusiasm, so he decided to temporarily set aside his thoughts. After dinner, Zhang Yuru hurried off to work, full of energy, brushing away the previous gloom. Chen Bufan took Cici to play in the nearby park, enjoying family time to the fullest. As the evening approached, Zhang Yuru called, Bufan, don't wait for me. The company is having a celebration dinner tonight for my promotion, I can't get out of it. All right. I understand, Chen Bufan replied, planning to take his daughter to a restaurant for a nice meal. Lacking confidence in his cooking skills, he didn't want to trouble Zhang Yuru. At 7 o'clock sharp, Chen Bufan and Cici were indulging in a meal at a restaurant in the city center. They intended to wait for Zhang Yuru to finish her dinner and then pick her up on the way home. Just then, Chen Bufan's phone rang. Upon answering, he heard the urgent voice of Kanglong, Master, after the dinner. Your wife was taken to KTV by her colleagues, and it seems like she has had quite a bit to drink. That guy surnamed Bai is also there, I'm worried something might happen. Upon hearing this, Chen Bufan's alarm bells rang loudly. 
A dinner gathering was one thing. Even going to sing karaoke after drinking was understandable. But Bai, the supervisor, was clearly waiting for Zhang Yuru with ulterior motives. Quickly tell me the address, he ordered in a serious tone. After learning the location, Chen Bufan immediately rushed to the KTV with Sisi. At that moment, in a luxurious private room at the KTV, over a dozen employees from Yunluo Company were having a great time. The table was filled with fine wine and delicacies, and there was laughter and singing all around. Yuru, congratulations on your promotion to manager. Let's toast to you. Colleagues complimented her one after another. Zhang Yuru forced a smile and declined. Everyone, I really can't drink anymore. You continue, I'll head back first. Don't leave, we finally got together. It's only 7 o'clock, let's have some more fun. The crowd urged. The stuffy room was filled with smoke, and the loud music was giving Zhang Yuru a headache. Feeling her stomach churning, she quickly stood up. Excuse me, I need to use the restroom. In the restroom, Zhang Yuru washed her face and felt a bit better. She noticed some dirt on her skirt and was about to wipe it off with tissue when she heard a man's voice behind her. Let me help you with that. Startled. Zhang Yuru turned around to see Bai, the supervisor, with a malicious smile. Bai, what? What are you trying to do? Zhang Yuru was shocked and retreated, backing up against the sink with nowhere to escape. I've been waiting for you here for hours. What do you think I'm trying to do? Bai smirked and suddenly lunged forward, grabbing Zhang Yuru and dragging her into the opposite private room, throwing her heavily onto the sofa. You're crazy. Let me go. Zhang Yuru struggled but couldn't match Bai's brute strength. Zhang Yuru, now you're a manager, but what about me? It's all because of your husband, I lost my job. I couldn't touch him, but what about you? Bai went mad and pounced on her, his eyes bloodshot. At that moment, a car screeched to a halt at the KTV entrance. Sisi, wait in the car, don't go anywhere. Chen Bufan instructed, then stormed into the KTV. A shadow followed closely behind him. Chen Bufan's trusted aide, Kenglong. Sir, you can't park here. The waiter just tried to stop him, but Chen Bufan strode forward, taking a few steps up the stairs. Crack, crack, the marble floor actually cracked under his foot, making a grating sound. The waiter turned pale with fear, and there were gasps around. No one dared to say a word, not even in the lobby, let alone at the door. Chen Bufan's face was cold as he walked swiftly heading straight to the private room. With a bang, he kicked open the door, and the dozen or so people inside looked at him in panic. When they realized who it was, they were even more shocked. Wasn't this Zhang Yuru's husband? In the past, they would have definitely scolded Chen Bufan, but since he bought a villa with a large sum of money, he was like a god in the eyes of his colleagues, and no one dared to offend him. Where is Yuru? Chen Bufan's eyes searched the room for his wife. She went to the restroom. A female colleague answered nervously. Before the words had even settled, Chen Bufan had already left. As he walked away, the terrifying atmosphere in the room gradually dissipated. Everyone breathed a sigh of relief, puzzled about what had just happened. The restroom was empty, and as Chen Bufan was about to leave, he keenly caught the sound of cries coming from the adjacent private room. Oh no! His heart skipped a beat as he rushed over like a tiger descending a mountain. He saw manager Bai pressing Zhang Yuru down, while she struggled desperately, her arm already scratched and bleeding. Get off me, you beast, let go of me. Zhang Yuru shouted hysterically. Yuru, I've liked you for a long time, just accept me. Manager Bai, his eyes red, shouted hoarsely. Bang! Just as the situation was about to escalate, the door of the private room burst open, startling manager Bai. He turned around to see a figure standing at the entrance like a fierce demon. The newcomer was shrouded in a terrifying aura, like a messenger from hell. His icy gaze pierced manager Bai's heart, making him shiver uncontrollably. Chen, Chen Bufan, manager Bai couldn't believe his eyes, his face drained of color. Bufan, Zhang Yuru screamed and took the opportunity to break free from manager Bai stumbling into her husband's arms, tears flowing. Chen Bufan gently stroked his wife's back, calming her down, but the anger in his eyes was almost suffocating manager Bai. If he had been a step later, the consequences would have been unimaginable. A chill emanated from Chen Bufan, raging in the cramped private room. 
Manager Bai felt the air around him solidify, his teeth chattering, unable to stop trembling. Having lived for over 30 years, he had never experienced such a scene. Even though Chen Bufan had yet to make a move, there was a feeling of being surrounded by a formidable force, as if a misstep would crush him to pieces. Do you remember what I said? Chen Bufan's voice was colder than an ice cellar. W what did you say? Manager Bai asked, trembling with fear. If you ever harass my wife again, you won't see the sun tomorrow. With each word Chen Bufan uttered, a murderous intent accompanied it, causing manager Bai to collapse to the ground, wetting his pants. I'm sorry, I was out of my mind, please spare me this time. You keep showing up when I want you to disappear. This time, there won't be a next time. Chen Bufan turned to Zhang Yuru and said, close your eyes, don't look. As soon as the words fell, his aura suddenly surged condensing into a sharp chi that slashed towards manager Bai's head. With a sharp sound, the sword-like chi pierced through manager Bai's skull, splattering blood and brain matter everywhere. He didn't even have time to scream before falling to the ground lifeless. Those who provoke my wife and daughter will be killed without mercy. Chen Bufan retracted his right hand and said calmly, let's go. He took John Yuru's hand and turned to leave. Outside the door. There was a gasp from the employees of Yunlu Company who had already gathered in front of the box, witnessing this horrifying scene. Their faces were pale, as if they had lost their loved ones, and no one dared to say another word. Zhang Yuru kept her eyes closed the whole time, although she didn't see it with her own eyes, she could guess what had happened. Bufan, did you hurt him badly? Don't ask, he won't bother you anymore. Hum, by the way, where is Cece? She's waiting in the car downstairs. Chen Bufan reassured her. Just then, Kanglong hurried over. Lord, are you okay? I told you to watch over Cece. Why did you come here? Chen Bufan frowned. I have already instructed my men to protect the young lady, but I was worried that something might happen to you and your wife, so I came to check. With your strength, how can these people hurt you? Chen Bufan snorted coldly. Kanglong smiled awkwardly. Indeed, with the Lord's strength, he was invincible. How could these small characters hurt him? Boom. Just then, a loud rumbling noise came from the street outside, sounding like a car speeding by. Not good. Chen Bufan felt something was wrong and quickly rushed down the stairs. When he and Zhang Yuru arrived at the street, they saw a car speeding away at an alarming speed, gradually disappearing into the night. It was Chen Bufan's car, and at that moment, Sisi was still in the car. Is this the result of your guard's watch? Chen Bufan angrily demanded, his voice filled with bone-chilling coldness. What exactly happened? Kanglong quickly asked, his brows furrowed. Reporting to King Kanglong, just now a person claiming to be Miss Yang's friend said they wanted to take a look at Cece in the car. I was negligent for a moment and didn't expect that person to take the child away as soon as they got on the car. I deeply regret it, the subordinate reported nervously, head hanging low wishing to disappear. You fools. Kanglong gnashed his teeth in anger, feeling frustrated. Master, it's all because of my incompetence. Stop the nonsense, go and chase after them immediately. Chen Bufan cut off Kanglong's words, his eyes burning with rage. Kanglong remained silent and swiftly left with his men. Bufan, do you think there's any danger? Zhang Yuru asked anxiously, her heart hanging by a thread. Chen Bufan tried to remain calm and reassured her. Don't worry, Cece will be fine. Let me take you home first. Maybe Kanglong will bring her back safely soon. However, as night fell, there was still no news from Kanglong and his men. Zhang Yuru was restless, tears welling up in her eyes. Bufan, could it be that Bai made a move against us in retaliation? It's impossible. Chen Bufan shook his head. Bai has already been dismissed, and he's just a small fry, unlikely to have the courage and ability. Judging from the preparedness of the kidnapper, their intentions are clear and not just ordinary criminals. As the night grew darker, nearing midnight, Kanglong returned dejectedly. Did you find Cece? Zhang Yuru asked eagerly. Chen Bufan also stared at Kanglong intently, his eyes dark and mysterious. Kanglong remained silent, kneeling down and sorrowfully said, Master, sister-in-law, I am incompetent. I still haven't found Miss Cece's whereabouts. Please punish me. Upon hearing this terrible news, Zhang Yuru couldn't hold back anymore, sobbing, oh heavens, 
Please keep Cece safe and sound. She's still so young. If something happens to her, I, I. The thought of her daughter's frightened and helpless look made Zhang Yuru's heart ache. Chen Bufan suppressed his anxiety and gently embraced his wife. Don't overthink. Our daughter will be fine. Trust me. At that moment, Zhang Yuru's phone suddenly vibrated. It was a video call. Could it be related to Cece? Zhang Yuru quickly answered, and a delicate and cold face appeared on the screen, exuding elegance and arrogance. I'm looking for Chen Bufan. The woman got straight to the point. Zhang Yuru glanced back at her husband. She's looking for you. Chen Bufan walked up to the camera, recognizing the person. A chill ran down his spine. Han Feiyan, didn't expect to reunite with you in this way. Chen Bufan, long time no see. Han Feiyan pretended to be surprised. Old friends reunited. Why don't you greet me first? I only have one question for you. Did you kidnap Cece? Chen Bufan's tone was icy. Han Feiyun's face changed, sharply scolding. Chen Bufan, who do you think you are? Back in my house, you were just a dog. Now you dare to speak to me in this tone? I want you to immediately apologize to me for your rudeness. Han Feiyun, I'll ask you one last time. Did you kidnap my daughter? Chen Bufan's gaze was piercing, staring straight into the other's eyes. Han Feiyun sneered disdainfully, You don't want to comply, huh? Then let me show you what will happen to your daughter. The video screen switched, revealing a cage, and inside the cage was the daughter that Chen Bufan had been longing for. Cece was curled up in a corner, looking terrified and helpless, like a lamb waiting to be slaughtered. Cece, Chen Bufan was filled with sorrow and anger wishing he could fly to his daughter and embrace her. Meanwhile, Han Feiyun looked on smugly, reaching into the cage to pat Cece's head. Little thing, your father was nothing but a dog in my house back then. It seems like you'll end up as a dog too, haha. -ha. Don't you dare speak ill of my father. My father is a great hero, Cece retorted stubbornly, tears welling up in her eyes. A great hero? Han Feiyun laughed maniacally. He was nothing more than a big bear at best. With that, she cruelly pinched Cece's cheek, leaving a red mark. Han Feiyun, if you want to torment someone, come after me. Release my daughter, Chen Bufan roared, his eyes bloodshot. Unmoved, Han Feiyun said menacingly, Chen Bufan, I'll give you a chance to make amends. By tomorrow noon, I want you to come to the Han's family, kneel in front of everyone, bark like a dog a hundred times, and recite, I was wrong, a hundred times. Otherwise, your daughter's fate, he he, I can't guarantee it. Enraged, Chen Bufan trembled with fury, saying through gritted teeth, Han Feiyun, I warn you, if a single hair on Cece's head is harmed, I swear to make you pay with blood, to bury your whole family. Let's see if you show up tomorrow. Han Feiyun smirked and hung up the video call. Han Feiyun, you wretched woman. Chen Bufan seethed with hatred itching to rush to the Han's house and tear this malicious woman to pieces. Zhang Yuru looked puzzled and asked, Bufan, who is this woman? What was your relationship with her before, and why is she treating us like this? Chen Bufan sighed, Yuru, it's a long story. I'll explain everything to you in detail after this matter is resolved. But at this point, do you still want to bear everything alone? Tears streamed down Zhang Yuru's face. I warned you long ago. The Han family won't let this go easily. And now, even our daughter has been taken by them. What should we do? That's our flesh and blood. Thinking of Cece being humiliated, Zhang Yuru's heart ached. Chen Bufan held his wife tightly, murmuring, Trust me this time, trust me once more, please. I swear I will bring Cece back safely, and I won't let her be harmed. With those words, Chen Bufan left the house without looking back, followed by the solemn Azure Dragon. I gave the Han family three days to consider, but they've chosen the path of death. Now, let them meet their doom ahead of time. Azure Dragon, mobilize the manpower immediately. Spare no effort to track down the whereabouts of that car. Yes, Lord. Additionally, gather the elite forces and prepare to storm the Han's house. Chen Bufan commanded coldly, as the members of the Demon Temple who had been lurking in the shadows once again gathered ready to sweep through Liyang like an unstoppable force on that very night. A grand siege operation quietly unfolded, targeting the Han family. They swore to uproot this demon house that has caused countless troubles, and erase the Han surname from Liyang forever. 
At the same time, the city's public security system suddenly received a mysterious order and held an emergency meeting overnight. The chiefs thought it was for solving a major case, but to their surprise, it was to locate a missing car. The origin of this order was unknown to all, so they spared no effort and dared not slack off. Several black sedans silently raced through the night and arrived outside Han Lai's villa in the blink of an eye. Thousands of members of the Demon Temple poured out in an imposing manner, covering the area in a sea of darkness, as if night had fallen. Who are you people? The Han family security guard asked loudly, his voice trembling. A cold voice answered him, we are here to deliver justice. A tall figure, exuding an extraordinary aura, stepped forward from the crowd. It was Chen Bufan, search every corner, leave no stone unturned. Under his command, thousands of people surged into the Han family estate, turning the entire mansion upside down. Disappointingly, the figures of Han Lai, Han Feiyan, and even Sisi were nowhere to be found. Master, I'm incompetent, I couldn't find the young lady, a subordinate reported. As expected, it seems they were prepared, Chen Bufan sneered. That's fine, I never intended to let them live. Just then, Kang Long's call came in timely, Master, I have made a major discovery. According to the investigation, we have determined Miss Cece's whereabouts. Very well, take me there immediately. Chen Bufan was overjoyed and led the large force to rush off like lightning. Meanwhile, the Han family estate, left behind, was reduced to ashes in a raging fire. The merciless flames devoured this symbol of evil, much like the fiery wrath burning in Chen Bufan's heart. Han Feiyan, you don't have to wait until tomorrow, I'm coming to see you now. Outside the outskirts of Liyang, an abandoned factory sat under the wild mountains, surrounded by overgrown weeds, a desolate scene. At this moment, a man in a suit and leather shoes was patrolling around the factory, on high alert. Meanwhile, deep inside the factory, Han Feiyan was so excited that she couldn't sleep. Dad, just wait and see. Tomorrow morning, Chen Bufan will come to our doorstep and kneel down to apologize. I will make the whole Liyang know that he is nothing but a lowly lackey, only fit to bow down before the Han family. After I humiliate him enough, I will kill his wife and children in front of him. Let's see what face he can still put on. Feiyan, you are truly amazing. Han Lai laughed heartily, praising his daughter's brilliant plan. Instead of wasting efforts on killing Chen Bufan, it would be more effective to target those around him and hit him where it hurts the most. I have one worry now. Han Feiyan pondered. If Chen Bufan finds this place, it will be troublesome. Feiyan, rest assured. Han Lai confidently said, this place is desolate, with only a narrow path leading out, not even a surveillance camera. Even if Chen Bufan searches for days, he won't find any trace. Besides, we have so many people guarding here, nothing can escape our eyes. In that case, we have nothing to worry about, Han Feiyan nodded contentedly. As the night fell, a mysterious aura suddenly surged through the silent wilderness. Thousands of killers from the Demon Temple, agile and swift, converged from all directions towards the abandoned factory. At the same time, a figure in white descended from the sky like a drawn sword, heading straight towards the perimeter of the factory. Who goes there? asked a vigilant guard. Chen Bufan, the newcomer said coldly. What? Chen Bufan? The guard was shocked. Before he could react, a cold light sliced through the night sky. With a bang, the guard fell to the ground, silent. Alarm. Someone has intruded into the factory. The alarm bells rang around the factory, and hundreds of black-clad figures rushed towards Chen Bufan like a tidal wave. Anxious, Chen Bufan had no time to wait for reinforcements from the Demon Temple. He wielded his sword and charged into the enemy ranks, starting a bloody massacre. Blades flashing, cries echoing, in just a moment, bodies littered the ground, blood flowing like a river. In the end, only one person stood before Chen Bufan, trembling in fear, unable to hold the knife steady. His gaze passed Chen Bufan, looking back, and he gasped in horror at the sea of people approaching, their momentum overwhelming. This armed force was unexpectedly large in number and intimidating in force. Clang! The man's legs gave out, he knelt on the ground, trembling, begging for mercy, mercy, hero. I won't dare anymore. Chen Bufan gave him a cold glance. What right do you have to kneel before me? With a swift motion of his blade, 
The man's neck was severed, blood spurting. Chen Bufan turned to face the oncoming army of the Demon Temple, and ordered loudly, Seal off the area, leave no one alive. Yes, master, thousands of voices shouted in unison, echoing through the mountains and rivers. In this situation, Chen Bufan single-handedly slays the enemy, like a god descending to earth, driving every assassin from the Demon Temple crazy. Witnessing this scene with my own eyes, I would die without regrets. Chen Bufan enters the factory alone, while deep inside the factory, Han Lai and Han Feiyun are shocked by the sound of alarms and battle cries outside. Could it be that Chen Bufan has truly come to kill them? Han Lai's face turns pale, trembling as he pulls out a handgun from the drawer, and rushes outside with his daughter and trusted men. Before they could run out the gate, a deafening roar shakes the entire factory, walls cracking, bricks and tiles flying. The heavy iron door, as if made of paper, is blasted out and shattered on the ground. Han Lai crawls behind a steel plate, looking towards the door in horror. Through the billowing dust, a figure emerges, standing proudly like a god, commanding and intimidating. Chen Bufan, Han Lai hoarsely calls out that name, feeling a chill running up his spine, piercing his heart and lungs. He can't believe Chen Bufan has found them so quickly. I wanted to give your Han family a chance to live, but you refuse to appreciate it, Chen Bufan coldly says, since you are so eager to die, I will grant your wish. His aura is overwhelming, making the air in the space seem to solidify. Is this still a human being? Han Lai is horrified. The aura of one person is comparable to a deity, a realm beyond ordinary reach. He suddenly realizes that the suspicions of Chen Bufan having a powerful ally were unfounded, as the so-called ally is none other than Chen Bufan himself. After four years, this waste of a son-in-law in his eyes has transformed beyond recognition, turning decay into wonder. Seeing Chen Bufan striding towards them, Han Lai tries to remain calm, shouting loudly, Chen Bufan, since you have come in person, it couldn't be better. Let's settle things here today. Kill him. However, there is only silence in response. Save your energy. All your lackeys have gone to meet the king of hell. Chen Bufan sneers. If you want your daughter to live a little longer, tell me where Cece is. Humph, if you want your daughter to live, you better listen to me. Han Lai blusters. Throughout Liang, besides the Qilin Hall master Xing Ao, he never considers anyone. I'll ask you one last time, where is Cece being held? Chen Bufan's tone is chilling. If you want to know your daughter's whereabouts, follow my instructions. Han Lai still refuses to lower his stance. Four years ago, Chen Bufan was nothing but a dog in his house, allowing himself to be beaten and abused. Now, daring to challenge him, truly ignorant of the heights of heaven and earth. Enough talk, if you don't speak now, go die. Chen Bufan advances with a long knife in hand. The sound of harsh friction is heard, leaving deep marks on the cement floor beneath his feet, sparks flying. Han Lai's heart skips a beat feeling the heavy intent to kill emanating from the young man. He is no longer the pushover he once was. Chen Bufan, I command you to kneel down. Take one more step forward, and I'll blow your brains out. Han Lai raises the handgun, chambering around, aiming the dark barrel at Chen Bufan's forehead. Chen Bufan ignored him and continued walking towards Han Lai without hesitation. In his eyes, the gun was like a toy, not even a threat. You're looking for trouble. Han Lai cursed through gritted teeth and pulled the trigger. At the moment the bullet was fired, Chen Bufan's figure seemed to disappear on the spot. With a crisp sound, the bullet was deflected by the long knife he raised, sparking as it flew off course. Han Lai was horrified. How could a sharp military knife block a bullet? This was no ordinary person, but a monster. Refusing to give up, Han Lai frantically pulled the trigger, bullets raining down like hail. However, the next moment, he widened his eyes in disbelief. Chen Bufan stood boldly in place, wielding the long knife as if it were alive, deflecting each bullet with a rapid metallic clash. It was not just a steel knife, but an impenetrable shield. Your mediocre skills are nothing. Chen Bufan sneered, swiftly approaching Han Lai and holding the blade against his neck. Terrified, Han Lai pleaded for mercy. Chen Bufan, remember, I am from the Qilin Hall. With our 500 elite warriors, we are invincible. If you touch me, you won't walk away in one piece. 
His voice trembled as the bullets in his gun had run out, leaving him defenseless. Laughing heartily, Chen Bufan mocked, 500 elite warriors? I can handle them easily. He turned and shouted, everyone, come in. Suddenly, a massive army in uniform stormed into the factory from all directions, overwhelming Han Lai. The sheer number and imposing presence of the army were like a force of nature. Han Lai's face turned pale as he stared at the overwhelming army surrounding them, feeling as if he were facing an unstoppable force. Oh my god, Han Lai couldn't believe his eyes, his body hair stood on end. Who are these people? They are the army of the demon temple. Chen Bufan's voice was as cold as ice, not caring about the 500 sharp blades of the Kirin Hall. The army of the demon temple? Han Lai felt like he was struck by lightning, his heart pounding in his chest. Everyone knows that the demon temple commands a million soldiers, dominating the world and making all nations tremble in fear. The Kirin Hall is nothing but an ant in front of the demon temple. It is said that when the demon army goes east, darkness is wiped out wherever they pass, and the light soars into the sky. Chen Bufan, who exactly are you? Han Lai asked tremblingly. I am the lord of the demon temple, Chen Bufan. Before the words fell, a sharp sword shot out, the cold light flashing, instantly slashing across Han Lai's throat. Splurt, blood splattered. Han Lai fell to the ground, eyes wide open, filled with unwillingness and horror. Who would have thought that the son-in-law who married into the Han family would become the terrifying demon god that everyone feared? Search every corner, Chen Bufan ordered. The elite of the demon temple flooded into the factory like a tide, turning every inch of land upside down. Chen Bufan personally joined the search, seeing that Han Lai was dead, but Han Feiyun was nowhere to be found. This ruthless woman may have already sensed something and moved with CC. She must be found as soon as possible, or her daughter's life will be in danger. Chen Bufan, covered in sweat, searched room by room, not even letting a fly escape. Some rooms were tightly locked. He raised his fist and with a bang, smashed the walls into pieces. His subordinates were stunned by his appearance as a human bulldozer. Indeed, the lord of the demon temple lived up to his reputation. Chen Bufan pushed through. The entire factory complex was intricate. He wished he could turn into an unparalleled sword immortal and chop it all to pieces. Suddenly, a sound broke through the air, heading straight for the back of his head. Chen Bufan reacted quickly, dodging the bullet just grazing his shoulder, embedding into the wall with a bang. Ambush! The attacker gasped, amazed by the man's incredible reaction, even able to dodge bullets. Before he could fire another shot, Chen Bufan had already rushed forward, throwing a punch. Bang! Several iron barrels burst instantly, the attacker's chest sinking in, blood gushing from his mouth. Where is CC? Chen Bufan asked coldly, his fist pressing hard against the man's chest. In. In the basement. The man said with difficulty, spitting out blood with each word. Boom! Chen Bufan punched him away, turning and rushing towards the basement. Several lackeys emerged from the shadows, shooting at him. Chen Bufan's agility brought him to one of them, snapping his neck with a crack. After eliminating several waves of ambushes, Chen Bufan finally reached the iron door. Behind it should be the entrance to the basement. Instead of pushing the door directly, he brandished his long sword and struck. Swoosh! The sharp blade cut through the rusty iron door. Behind the door, a dozen fierce bandits stood frozen. Thinking that Chen Bufan would charge indirectly, they were caught off guard when he slashed the door from a distance. Get lost. Chen Bufan wasted no words, his sword turning like a dragon out of water. The fierce bandits hadn't reacted yet when they felt a chill in their necks, blood spurting out, and then they fell to the ground. Chen Bufan stepped over the bodies and rushed into the basement, heading straight for the deepest part. Bang! He crashed through the second door and was greeted by a spacious hall. In the hall stood several people, all looking terrified. Han Feiyun. Chen Bufan's gaze was sharp as he stared at the young woman. Dad. A cheer came from the iron cage, and Cece was excited, tears welling up in her eyes. Darling, don't be afraid. Dad will take you home now. Chen Bufan comforted, his voice trembling. Didn't expect you to find this place so quickly. Han Feiyun sneered, a hint of panic flashing in her eyes. You think those ants can stop me? Chen Bufan snorted. They've already been sent to see the king of hell. 
Even my father, you're next. Chen Bufan drew his sword and headed straight for Han Feiyan. Dare to touch me and I'll kill this brat. Han Feiyan grinned menacingly. Boom. The sound of mechanical movement came from above, and a huge stone slowly descended, hovering over the iron cage. If it fell, the fragile cage wouldn't be able to withstand it, and Sisi inside would undoubtedly die. Stop. Chen Bufan gritted his teeth and shouted. The giant stone stopped in its tracks. What? Afraid to kill me now? Han Feiyan said smugly, arms crossed, looking proud. You shameless wretch, preying even on a child. Do you even deserve to be called human? Ha, in my eyes, it's just killing a dog. Han Feiyan laughed recklessly. Chen Bufan suppressed his anger and asked in a low voice, Four years ago, why did the Han family plot against me? Want to know the truth? Han Feiyan said teasingly, kneeling down and begging me. Do you think a despicable woman like you deserves to make me kneel? Chen Bufan said disdainfully. Han Feiyun's face changed drastically, screaming, Chen Bufan, listen to me. Get down on your knees and apologize, or I'll kill your daughter. Touch her and see what happens. Chen Bufan roared, rushing towards Han Feiyun. The control switch for the stone pillar was in Han Feiyun's hand. He had to deal with this madwoman first to ensure Sisi's safety. Stop him, Han Feiyun shouted in fear. Several henchmen immediately rushed forward, standing in front of Chen Bufan. Get lost, Chen Bufan's sword flashed. Puff, the men fell to the ground, leaving no last words. This, this can't be. Han Feiyun stared in disbelief. Was this really the same worthless man from before? How did he become so powerful? In the moment she was stunned, Chen Bufan had already reached her. Chen Bufan, even if I die, I'll make sure your daughter dies with me. Han Feiyun screamed madly, pressing the remote control. Boom, the heavy stone plummeted down, about to hit the iron cage. Damn, it's too late. Chen Bufan had to abandon Han Feiyun and rushed towards Sisi at the fastest speed. Ha ha, let both of you die together. Han Feiyun laughed hysterically, but the next moment, her smile froze. Because, the giant stone had stopped in midair. Chen Bufan braced himself against the stone pillar, his sleeves bursting in an instant, revealing his muscular arms with bulging veins exuding terrifying power. The floor beneath his feet cracked like a spider web, then exploded into pieces. Don't be afraid, with dad here, even if the sky falls, I will protect you. Chen Bufan said firmly, shattering the cage with one hand, embracing Sisi, and holding a stone pillar with the other stepping into a deep pit and walking towards Han Feiyun. Tell me, why did your family, Han Lai, four years ago, harm me like this? Chen Bufan coldly questioned. Han Feiyun stared at him in astonishment, fear evident in her expression. It's too terrifying. He's like a demon, lifting such a heavy stone pillar effortlessly. His strength is amazing. She trembled and confessed, it was the Qilin Hall. Four years ago, the Kilin Hall Master Xingyao ordered my father to kill you, so he could become the Deputy Hall Master of the Kilin Hall. I see. Chen Bufan nodded, realizing that he was unaware of the collusion between Han Lai and the Kilin Hall when he was at the Han family. Why did the Kilin Hall do this? He continued to inquire. I don't know. I only know that everything was arranged by the Kilin Hall. Please spare me. Han Feiyun pleaded. Ignorance is no excuse. Chen Bufan said coldly. Han Feiyun knelt down. Chen Bufan, I beg you to spare me, even if we were once husband and wife, please leave me a way out. I can continue to serve you, even just as a lover. Chen Bufan coldly rejected. Between us, it's only about interests, there is no marital duty at all. Your skills are far inferior to hers, you are not even worthy to be my dog. Led by Kang Long, a group of people knelt down and begged for forgiveness. It's all our fault for being careless and letting the daughter of the Lord be kidnapped. Please punish us, Lord, they felt guilty. Chen Bufan sighed, get up, I won't blame anyone. The enemy now is too cunning and vicious, resorting to such despicable means. Kang Long was moved and trembling, firmly declared willingness to accept punishment. This is not a military camp, as the Lord of the Demon God Temple. I command you all to stand up and stop hesitating. Chen Bufan said sternly, Kang Long and the others had no choice but to stand up and face Chen Bufan's command. Tonight, my brothers, you worked hard. 
Go home and rest early, as there are even stronger enemies waiting for us tomorrow. Chen Bufan said gently, and then the majority of the troops left one after another, leaving only a few people like Kang Long behind. Master, I. Kang Long hesitated to speak, but was interrupted by Chen Bufan. No need to say anything. Take me home, my wife must be worried sick. Chen Bufan's tone revealed care and responsibility. Kang Long nodded without hesitation. Feeling more determined in his heart, he decided to follow Chen Bufan for the rest of his life. When they arrived at the door, it was already four in the morning. Under the light, Zhang Yuru had been waiting anxiously at the door. Seeing the car returning, she hurried forward and asked anxiously, Bufan, what happened? Chen Bufan gestured for her to look behind him, only to see Cici peacefully lying on his shoulder. Zhang Yuru was so excited that tears welled up, Cici. Chen Bufan quickly stopped her excitement. Quiet, Cici has fallen asleep. After putting Cici on the bed, Zhang Yuru finally breathed a sigh of relief. However, she asked with worry, Bufan, how did you rescue Cici? What about the Han family? Chen Bufan comforted her softly. Everything has been taken care of. The Han family won't come to bother us again. It's late now, you should rest early too. Zhang Yuru looked at him gratefully, her eyes turning red. Thank you, Bufan. Chen Bufan hugged her and gently kissed her on the cheek. After Zhang Yuru settled down, Chen Bufan instructed Kang Long on some matters before finally calming down. The next day, several pieces of news made headlines, shocking the peaceful morning. The Han family in ruins, this headline was enough to astonish countless people. Han Lai, the underground emperor of Liang, the second in command of the Han family. With immense power, he built a commercial empire and was considered a titan of his generation. However, overnight, he met a tragic end. His whole family perished, the villa turned into ruins, and all family assets were forced to close down. It seemed as if an invisible hand had wiped out everything the Han family had in Liang. The police announced that Han Lai and his daughter were suspected of kidnapping and died in a clandestine struggle, and the case was under investigation. The news spread, once again shocking Liang. Just a few days ago, the Han family was robbed, and now the entire Han Lai family was destroyed. No matter how the police investigated, the disappearance of the Han family in Liang had become a fact. Speculations were rife. Wondering what powerful force the Han family had provoked to meet such a fate in just a few days. Han Lai, so dominant, unexpectedly could not escape from this tragic ending, making people wonder, what kind of mastermind was behind all this? The police announcement hinted at something suspicious, suggesting a deeper layer of the story. There are suspicions surrounding Chen Bufan, as ever since he appeared. The Han family has suffered a tragic fate with both father and son being killed in a hotel and then Han Lai rushed back home in a hurry. All these incidents seem inexplicably linked to Chen Bufan. However, despite the signs pointing towards him, there is still a lack of substantial evidence. Moreover, no one can believe that an ordinary Chen Bufan could possess the power to destroy the Han family in an instant. In the midst of changing circumstances, the Chen family of three has already returned to a peaceful life. After a night's rest, Cici and Yuru have regained their vitality. In the morning, Cici hugged Zhang Yuru tightly, as if afraid of being separated again. Mom, Dad is amazing, defeating so many people alone and even lifting a big stone ball with one hand. Cici exclaimed excitedly, Cici, you shouldn't tell lies, Zhang Yuru said with a serious expression. I didn't lie, I only spoke the truth, Cici replied earnestly. Chen Bufan wanted to intervene but it was already too late. Zhang Yuru turned to look at Chen Bufan, her eyes filled with doubt, wondering if her husband was really that powerful. Bufan, we need to have a serious talk, Zhang Yuru said, laying her cards on the table. Aren't you going to work? Chen Bufan asked, initially worried that Yuru didn't trust him, now concerned that she might ask further questions. I have taken a leave of absence, you don't need to worry about me. Yuru was prepared, determined to get to the bottom of things today, feeling that Chen Bufan was hiding many secrets. In the living room, they sat in their respective chairs. Tell me honestly, what's the deal between you and that woman? And how did you get injured back then? Are you sure I'll believe your explanation? Chen Bufan asked. After some consideration, Yuru nodded. All right, I'll tell you. 
Chen Bufan began by recounting his marriage to the Han family, his relationship with Han Feiyan, and the various conflicts within the Han family to Yuru. I see, Yuru suddenly realized, never expecting Chen Bufan to have experienced so much. So, is Han Feiyan your wife then? Women always focus on strange things. Chen Bufan had to explain in detail. At that time, my family had some issues and I was entrusted by Ji Yu Bo. I entered the Han family as a son-in-law to avoid risks. So Han Feiyan and I are not really husband and wife. Speaking of Ji Yu Bo, Chen Bufan sighed, wondering how the old man was doing now. Six years ago, the Chen family in Guangling was wiped out overnight, engulfed in flames, and the family met with misfortune. It was Ji Yu Bo who lent a helping hand, allowing Chen Bufan to survive. With Ji Yu Bo's help, he went to Liyang and married into the Han family, exchanging for a chance to survive. That night, the Chen family's destruction was brutal, blood flowing like a river, and corpses strewn everywhere. All relatives and friends avoided it, either turning off their phones or pretending not to know anyone. Only Ji Yu Bo risked helping. Chen Bufan pictured the old man in his mind, grateful and tearful. Four years apart, the young man you once saved has now become a local overlord. I wonder if you are safe and sound, old man? Yuru saw Chen Bufan's low spirits and asked with concern, are you okay? Chen Bufan smiled and replied, I'm fine, just thinking about some past events, emotions are hard to control. Yuru continued to inquire, is it related to your family? Can you tell me? Chen Bufan chose to remain silent, as this topic would only plunge him into deeper sadness. Let's talk about it later. Chen Bufan ultimately chose to remain silent, avoiding touching upon that painful memory again. Okay, I won't force you, Yuru said somewhat disappointedly. And then what happened? Chen Bufan repeated what he had told Yuru before. This time Yuru finally listened quietly without interrupting. Do you believe it this time? Chen Bufan asked with a smile. Zhang Yuru chuckled and replied, I believe a little bit. Even if there is just a tiny bit of trust, it is enough. Chen Bufan gently said, then described the experience of rescuing Sisi. He didn't go into detail about the bloodshed and cruelty of the Zhanghu, those dark things he could handle on his own. He spread his arms, facing the wind and rain, heart filled with sunshine, leaving a beautiful memory for his wife and daughter. He silently vowed in his heart that, no matter how much he owed in the past, he would spend his whole life making it up. Zhang Yuru firmly stated, Bufan, even though I don't know all of your past, no matter what the future holds, I will always be by your side, never leaving, never abandoning. Before she finished speaking, her warm red lips gently kissed him. For the next two days, Zhang Yuru didn't go to work, staying by Chen Bufan's side out of concern for the shadow in Sisi's heart. It was rare for the family of three to be together, enjoying the happiness of family, with no worries. Especially in terms of finances, closing a deal on a luxury mansion worth five million, earning tens of thousands in commission, plus a promotion to manager, monthly income reaching 8,000. Zhang Yuru finally breathed a sigh of relief, full of hope for the future. Despite the storm brewing outside, the news of the Han family's destruction had already reached the Qilin Hall. Qing Ao could hardly believe that the original plan had failed. The Han family completely wiped out, no survivors, from then on, there would be no more Han family in Liyang. Qing Ao was burning with anger slamming the table corner as if he wanted to crush Chen Bufan. Han Lai was the vice hall master of the Qilin Hall, framing him was equivalent to making an enemy of the Qilin Hall, not to mention that Chen Bufan had defeated two experts from the Qilin Hall, doubling the hatred. Qing Ao gritted his teeth and said, Chen Bufan, no matter who you are, no matter what you can do, in Liyang, I, Qing Ao, am the true master. If you dare to oppose me, I will make you regret stepping into this world. At the same time, Bai Ruabing instructed Uncle Wei to investigate Chen Bufan's background. Uncle Wei spent several days running around, but no matter how many resources he used, he only found out about Chen Bufan marrying into the Han family. What he experienced in those years before becoming a son-in-law of the Han family, and the four years after he disappeared from the Han family, was unknown, as if he had vanished without a trace. Even after the destruction of the Han family, there was no evidence linking Chen Bufan to the case, he seemed to be hiding countless secrets, and no one could unravel them.
When Uncle Wei reported these findings to Bai Ruabing, she fell into contemplation. Four years ago, he was just an ordinary son-in-law, but now he has become so powerful, even able to fend off Uncle Wei. It seems he has gained some kind of opportunity in these years. But one thing is certain, his background is not particularly special. Bai Ruabing's mind was filled with thoughts, then suddenly a flash of inspiration struck. She knew how to request Chen Bufan's help, and even confirm whether the Han family's downfall was related to him. A day later, Chen Bufan suddenly received a letter of inquiry from a certain police chief's office, suspecting his involvement in the Han family's destruction, requesting him to come to the Qingping Pavilion for a talk. The visit of the Demon Temple to Luoyang was grand and imposing, but under his warning, no one dared to leak the news, and the confidentiality work was done quite well. Even if some police officers unknowingly launched an investigation, it was not surprising. Kenglong said to the temple master, Should I inform them? It's just a small matter. Chen Bufan shook his head and rejected the proposal. He believed that if someone suspected him, they would have come to arrest him directly. Inviting the other party to clear wind pavilion proactively instead of going to the relevant department indicated that the situation was not serious. The other party might have other intentions. I want to see what tricks they want to play. Chen Bufan showed a confident smile. Then greeted Yu Ru and asked Kenglong to drive him to Clear Wind Pavilion. The car slowly came to a stop, and Chen Bufan raised his head, scanning the front. In front of him was a three story building surrounded by a small courtyard. Qingping Pavilion, a well known tea house in Yang, was the preferred place for many important figures to discuss major issues. A young woman suddenly walked out of the courtyard, dressed in a black uniform that was different from the usual police attire more like a special forces outfit. She tied her hair up in a high ponytail, wore combat boots, and despite her petite stature, stood tall and exuded confidence and vitality. She quickly walked up to Chen Bufan, staring at him with cold eyes, Are you Chen Bufan? Her tone was stern, showing no mercy. Chen Bufan glanced at her, did not answer, and walked straight into the courtyard. The cold and arrogant woman's eyes narrowed, burning with anger at being ignored. I'm asking you a question. Her voice became even more severe, showing no mercy. Chen Bufan's silence infuriated her. Several men in black quickly surrounded him, their military background evident from their attire and demeanor. Chen Bufan calmly stated, I'm just here to assist with the investigation, not looking for trouble. If the situation is not serious enough to require this kind of manpower, it's best to have them leave, or they will bear the consequences. The petite woman was furious. This guy is too audacious, daring to threaten her back. Involved in a death case, he is still so arrogant, it seems he needs to be taught a lesson, catch him. She ordered. A sharp glint flashed in Chen Bufan's eyes. Just then, a stern voice suddenly rang out. A man in his forties walked in through the teahouse door, exuding an air of authority. He looked at the young woman, Zhao Lei, what are you doing? Lei Tong, I asked him who he was, but he didn't answer. I suspect he may be a dangerous person, so. Li Zhaolei was interrupted before she could finish. The middle-aged man said lightly, I understand. Then he turned to Chen Bufan, his gaze carrying a hint of scrutiny. Chen Bufan. Chen Bufan coldly replied. The middle-aged man was slightly surprised. Although not a top figure, Chen Bufan exuded confidence and authority in the eyes of ordinary people, especially with a military background. His calm demeanor made people feel that he was not simple. Are you here to assist with the investigation or to be arrested? Chen Bufan asked coldly. The middle-aged man was somewhat embarrassed, but still sided with his subordinate. Zhao Lei is also cautious, please forgive her. Without apologizing, he showed support for his subordinate. Chen Bufan frowned slightly, said nothing more, and followed the middle-aged man into the tea house. The interior of the tea house was elegantly decorated with windows and doors carved with landscape patterns, and the fragrance of tea filled the air. The middle-aged man led Chen Bufan into a private room. Kenglong wanted to follow, but was stopped, one of them being the petite woman. What are you trying to do? Kenglong asked coldly, as one of the eight dragon kings of the demon temple, being stopped outside the door? Lei Tong is interrogating the suspect. Outsiders are not allowed in. Li Zhaolei explained. Chen Bufan ordered. Kenglong, wait outside. With his own strength, he was not afraid. In the room, 
there were only Chen Bufang, the middle-aged man, Li Xiaolei, and a guard left. Li Xiaolei and the guard stood behind Chen Bufang, guarding him as if he were a criminal. The middle-aged man asked directly, Chen Bufang, have you heard about the destruction of the Han family? His gaze was sharp like a wolf, staring intensely at Chen Bufang. Chen Bufang calmly nodded. The middle-aged man continued, I suspect you are involved in the destruction of the Han family. I hope you will confess. Chen Bufan calmly replied, May I ask who you are? The middle-aged man proudly introduced himself. I am Lei Tianqing, the commander of the Liyang Fire Wolf Army. Chen Bufan was not surprised by this, but still had little knowledge about the Fire Wolf Army's background. He bluntly stated, Even if you suspect me of being involved in the destruction of the Han family, it should be handled by the local police station, not by you, the commander of the Fire Wolf Army. Lei Tianqing confidently responded, The Fire Wolf Army can handle difficult situations, I need you to tell me everything. Chen Bufan straightforwardly questioned, What is your purpose in finding me? If you don't explain directly, I'm afraid I don't have time to accompany you. Lei Tianqing sternly stated, I am investigating your situation, you must explain clearly. Chen Bufan remained calm, unfazed by Lei Tianqing's imposing manner. He even hinted that there were others more suitable to listen to his confession. Lei Tianqing's eyes suddenly showed surprise, as if Chen Bufan had seen through his thoughts. He warned, if you don't explain clearly, I can arrest you. Chen Bufan resolutely replied, if you don't understand what I'm saying, then forget it. He stood up to leave, but was stopped by Li Xiaolei and the guard. Li Xiaolei threatened, if you don't explain clearly, don't think about leaving here. Chen Bufan calmly retorted, Do you think you can stop me? Even if you gather the entire Fire Wolf army, it won't help. He displayed a powerful aura, making Li Xiaolei and the guard extremely nervous. Lei Tianqing had intended to pressure Chen Bufan, but found him unshakable. The two sides were deadlocked, tension mounting. At this moment, a cold voice broke the deadlock. A tall, beautiful woman in jeans and a white French shirt appeared in the room. She was Bai Ruabing. Following behind her was Wei Shu. Chen Bufan saw Bai Ruabing, slightly surprised, recalling her visit a few days ago. Lei Tianqing, upon seeing Bai Ruabing, showed respect but also a hint of awkwardness. The original plan now seemed awkward. Bai Ruabing smiled and nodded, then turned to gaze at Chen Bufan. He calmly said, Mr. Chen, here we meet again. I am the one you have been expecting. The downfall of the Han family was accomplished by my own hands. If you wish to seek justice for the Han family, feel free to make your move. I, Bai, am willing to battle with you. Chen Bufan's words shocked everyone present. For a moment, the entire tea house fell into silence. Bai Ruabing, Lei Tianqing, and everyone present were stunned. The rumors of the destruction of the Han family were widely spread in the streets. Some began to suspect that Chen Bufan was involved. Although there was no direct evidence, no one believed it because they thought Chen Bufan didn't have that kind of ability. Bai Ruabing realized Chen Bufan's strength during their last visit, but still wasn't sure if he was the one who destroyed the Han family. Therefore, she used her connections to find the leader of the Fire Wolf Army and asked him to accompany her in a play, under the guise of investigation, to force Chen Bufan to confess everything. However, Chen Bufan cleverly saw through the mastermind behind Lei Tianqing, Bai Ruabing. Originally thinking the plan would fail, Chen Bufan surprised everyone by admitting without hesitation the destruction of the Han family. Sir, it's a misunderstanding. We didn't come to seek revenge for the Han family, but to discuss other matters. Can we sit down and talk? Bai Ruabing said politely, without the previous cold attitude. No need, just say it, Chen Bufan replied. Bai Ruabing noticed Chen Bufan's displeasure and explained, because it's a serious matter, I asked General Lei to confirm it in advance. If I have offended Mr. Chen in any way, I apologize to you. Chen Bufan didn't look at her and walked straight towards the door. No matter what happens, it should be clarified face to face, this method will only backfire. He always hated being manipulated, so he was indifferent to apologies like this. General, don't let him leave. Take one more step, Li Xiaolei shouted. However, Chen Bufan seemed not to hear, completely ignoring the warning. Chen Bufan, you admitted to destroying the Han family. 
If I investigate, you won't escape the law, Lei Tiancheng warned. I've said, if you want to attack me, come at me. Chen Mo won't fear any challenge. Chen Bufan coldly responded, making Lei Tianqing's face turn pale. As the leader of the Fire Wolf Army, his status was no less than the highest leader in Liyang, but this was the first time he encountered someone who didn't give him face. Chen Bufan, have you heard of the Kilin Hall? Bai Ruabing suddenly spoke. What's the matter? Chen Bufan stopped and turned to look at Bai Ruabing, asking. Han Lai is the vice hall master of the Kilin Hall and the Kilin Hall is one of the most powerful forces in Liyang, with 500 elites and other masters guarding it. The Hall Master, Xing Ao, is an extraordinary figure. You killed the Vice Hall Master of the Kilin Hall, and they will not let it go. Chen Bufan sneered, I already know all this. Since you already know, you should understand how dangerous your situation is. I didn't come to ask for your help for no reason. As long as you are willing to cooperate, I can try to keep the Kilin Hall from harming you, Bai Ruabing cleverly suggested. She was good at using situations to achieve her goals, but unfortunately, she met Chen Bufan, a person who was already famous and fearless. Just a Kilin Hall, it's just a hornet's nest. I will crush them one by one, Chen Bufan said indifferently. Bai Ruabing's face changed slightly. Does he really understand the Kilin Hall to speak so arrogantly? Young man, you are too arrogant. You don't understand the Kilin Hall at all. With just you alone, you can't possibly deal with the Kilin Hall. Even my Fire Wolf army can't easily handle them, Lei Tianqing said coldly. That just shows how weak the Fire Wolf army is. Chen Bufan responded coldly. This statement made Lei Tianqing and others burn with anger. The Fire Wolf army has guarded Liyang for so many years. How could they tolerate such insults? Li Zhaolei said angrily. Chen Bufan stood inside the tea house, his sharp gaze fixed on Li Zhaolei. A cold smile played on his lips as he asked, After all these years of maintenance, why do we still have the likes of the Han family and the Kilin Hall? Li Zhaolei's face turned red, unable to respond, filled with helplessness. Chen Bufan gave a faint smile and continued, Words are not enough. If you can really take down the Kilin Hall, my Fire Wolf army will follow your command and even Lei Tiancheng will come to apologize. But, you must be prepared. With that, he turned and left, leaving Li Zhaolei speechless. Kanglong looked at Lei Tiancheng with a complex expression, sighed softly, and followed Chen Bufan out. Lei Tiancheng, filled with anger, exclaimed, All this pretense, what qualifications does she have to deal with the Kilin Hall? It's a joke. Li Zhaolei, also filled with anger, said, Commander, you should let me teach him a lesson. Suddenly, a loud explosion rang out, and everyone looked in amazement at the ground, where the floor tiles suddenly exploded, leaving a trail of footprints leading outside, the same path Chen Bufan had taken. This sudden sight left everyone present dumbfounded, especially Li Zhaolei, who realized she had no ability to confront Chen Bufan. Lei Tingxing looked at Bai Ruabing in shock and couldn't help but ask, Miss Bai, who exactly is Chen Bufan? Bai Ruabing smiled bitterly and replied, After so many years in Liyang, I have no idea, let alone Chen Bufan. As they left, Chen Bufan had already driven far away. Inside the car, he asked Kanglong, How is the situation with the Fire Wolf Army? Kanglong explained, They are a local special forces team in Liyang, with about 300 members led by Lei Tingxing, responsible for maintaining overall security. Although they do not have direct authority, they are a special existence. Chen Bufan pondered for a moment and then ordered, when you have time, help me investigate Bai Ruabing's background. Kanglong asked, is the Lord planning to deal with that woman? Chen Bufan chuckled, why bother with her? Bai Ruabing has no major grudges, there is no need to take action against her. Chen Bufan had sensed her extraordinary qualities since their first meeting, especially with skilled companions by her side. He realized Bai Ruabing's background might not be simple, so he wanted to understand her situation to grasp the difficulties she faced. What about the situation with the Kilin Hall? Chen Bufan continued to inquire. Kanglong replied, It's still under investigation, we should have results soon. Chen Bufan coldly stated, Perhaps we won't wait for the results, the Kilin Hall will surely seek revenge. The last incident has made me unwilling to delay any longer. He knew some people were ruthless and would not leave any room for opportunity. 
Back at home, Zhang Yuru had prepared a meal. CC volunteered to help set the table. Chen Bufan looked at them, feeling warmth in his heart, and said to Zhang Yuru, Yuru, this place is too small. We need to move as soon as possible. Zhang Yuru nodded. Yes, there's not enough space for CC to play here. Once I get my promotion, let's rent a bigger house. They decided to embrace the challenges of their new life. Chen Bufan's eyes sparkled with excitement as he confidently said, Why rent a big house when we have a villa ready? Let's move in tomorrow. His voice exuded a sense of boldness and confidence. Zhang Yuru hesitated slightly and said, Is that really a good idea? She felt a bit uneasy in her heart, finding it hard to accept this sudden change. Chen Bufan grinned and said, What's not good about it? We're just going to live there. My friend has already arranged everything. His tone revealed his anticipation and contentment for the future life. Zhang Yuru's heart suddenly cleared up, realizing that the villa was theirs. A sense of gratitude surged within her as she nodded softly and said, All right then. In that moment, she was filled with hope and expectation for the future. The next morning, the Chen family began to pack up their belongings. Cici was thrilled to hear about the move and was overjoyed. They were busy until noon, when a car was packed with luggage and headed straight for Yunluo Academy. Yunluo Academy is located in the new district, with beautiful surroundings and picturesque scenery. The villa area, in particular, resembles a Jongin garden, with small bridges over flowing water and winding paths through secluded areas. The villas are hidden in lush greenery, offering excellent privacy. This move was different from previous ones, as it was to their own company's property, which filled Zhang Yuru with satisfaction. Suddenly, a Land Rover came speeding in the opposite direction, flashing its lights and honking. Zhang Yuru was angry, thinking, what's wrong with this driver? He's clearly the one going the wrong way, yet he wants us to reverse. She got out of the car to argue with the driver, only to see a young woman in high heels, a tight skirt, and heavy makeup stepping out of the car. Zhang Yuru, the woman greeted with a charming smile. Yin Shui. Zhang Yuru looked at the woman in surprise, realizing she was her college best friend who had drifted apart over the years. I got tired of staying in Guangling, so I decided to come back and invest in some projects. That's why I bought a house first, to plan for shuttling between two places in the future. Yin Shui explained with a smile. Zhang Yuru politely addressed her as General Yin. Even though Yin Shui was modest in her words, her face beamed with pride. I heard you're selling houses now? Yin Shui asked. Yes, Yunluo Academy is our property, Zhang Yuru replied. Too bad I found out too late, otherwise I would have bought directly from you, so you could earn some commission, Yin Shui regretfully said. Then wait until General Yin becomes rich, and come to me for the second house, Zhang Yuru humorously responded, easing the awkwardness. What are you doing now? Yin Shui asked curiously looking at the truck full of belongings. Moving, Zhang Yuru replied. Yuru, you're really something. Not only selling houses but also helping homeowners move? Yin Shui exaggerated. Zhang Yuru felt embarrassed and struggled to respond. At this moment, the Land Rover honked again. Yin Shui hurriedly got into the car to bid farewell, and the car slowly drove away. As it passed by, the bald man glanced at Zhang Yuru and Chen Bufan in the car revealing a slight smirk before leaving the scene. Who was that? Chen Bufan asked. A college classmate. We used to be close, but then drifted apart, Zhang Yuru explained. Although she is capable and plans to start a company in Liyang, buying houses, I don't like her as a person, Zhang Yuru honestly said. But I have you. Zhang Yuru smiled. The most expensive house in the entire Yunluo Academy belongs to you, Chen Bufan said nostalgically. The car soon arrived at villa number 9. Chen Bufan is the king of the building, owning a mansion worth 50 million, a three-story standalone villa with four parking spaces. The garden surrounding the villa covers an area of 500 square meters, making it a top-notch luxury home. CC was excited and eager to try. Zhang Yuru also felt happy, although this villa was not hers, living here was much more comfortable than in an ordinary house. A man approached respectfully and said, Welcome, Mr. Chen and Miss Zhang, to your new home. Who are you? Chen Bufan asked. I am your personal butler. Mr. Sao arranged for me to receive you. Feel free to ask for anything. The man introduced himself, 
Chen Bufan secretly admired. Mr. Sao is indeed a shrewd person. Please help us move some things first, Chen Bufan said. Okay. The butler agreed and immediately got busy. Chen Bufan, Zhang Yuru, and Si Si headed straight for the front door. Suddenly, Zhang Yuru stopped in her tracks, looking somewhat anxious. What's wrong? Chen Bufan asked. I completely forgot. The villa has not been decorated yet, Zhang Yuru said, looking distressed. Is that all? Chen Bufan smiled and then opened the door. In an instant, the sensor lights lit up. What they saw was an extremely luxurious living room, with high-grade gray marble flooring, furniture made of imported solid wood, and crystal chandeliers hanging. The entire interior of the villa exuded a royal atmosphere. Zhang Yuru was amazed, speechless. Satisfied? Chen Bufan asked with a smile. All the decorations were arranged by him. Of course, I am. Zhang Yuru nodded without hesitation. But, Chen Bufan, do we really have to live here? Don't we need to move back? Zhang Yuru joked. Seems a bit troublesome. Zhang Yuru giggled. Don't think too much. From now on, this is our new home. Chen Bufan said excitedly. Yeah, CC has a new home. After spending half a day organizing everything, they finally settled in. As night fell, the family of three sat around a beautiful dining table with a large cake on it, candlelight flickering, warm and beautiful. Let's make a wish to celebrate our new home, Chen Bufan suggested. CC wished for mom and dad to always be together. Chen Bufan and Zhang Yuru couldn't help but caress CC's little head. What about your wish, Bufan? Your wishes are my wishes, Chen Bufan said indulgently. Zhang Yuru was deeply moved. And you, Yuru? I won't tell you this secret, Zhang Yuru said mischievously. You little troublemaker, always teasing me. Zhang Yuru threw the cake at Chen Bufan's face, laughing uncontrollably. Late at night, after Zhang Yuru and Si Si had fallen asleep, Chen Bufan's figure appeared outside. Lord, the intelligence has been clarified. Kang Long Wei reported. How's the situation? Behind the Kirin Hall, there is a force called Jin Nan Fu known as the strongest overlord in the East Zhou, with ten main halls under its command, scattered throughout East Zhou, and the Yang Kirin Hall is just one of them. Ten main halls. Jin Nan Fu's appetite is really not small. Chen Bufan's tone was indifferent. The strongest overlord in East Zhou, with a good reputation, but unfortunately, you shouldn't have provoked me, Chen Bufan. Spread the order to wipe out the Kirin Hall. Chen Bufan ordered. The army gathered and headed straight for the Kirin Hall. After settling Zhang Yuru and Si Si, Chen Bufan decided to eliminate all forces related to the Han family. The incident of Si Si being captured made him determined. For his family, even if he had to stain his hands with blood, so be it. He vowed to make the world invincible and see who dared to touch the people around him. As night fell, one bloody operation after another began. In the dark night of marching, the air was filled with a sense of killing. At this moment, Xing Ao was full of uncertainty as he listened to the reports from his subordinates, his face showing an unpredictable expression. Meanwhile, Chen Bufan and his family had just moved into their new home, unaware of the impending disaster. Without hesitation, Xing Ao made a decision. Since the last failed plot of Han Feiyan, he had grown tired of playing with conspiracies. In his view, the strength of the Kilin Hall was already powerful enough and there was no need to resort to schemes. Chen Bufan, to celebrate your new home, I will send you a big gift, allowing your family to reunite in heaven. Qing Yao decisively gave the order, mobilizing 100 soldiers from the Qilin Legion, along with 10 top experts from the Qilin Hall, making their strength equivalent to the two previously sent individuals. This formidable lineup was enough to make Chen Bufan flee in fear, unable to escape the fate of death no matter how strong he was. Complete the mission, and the reward is 100,000. Qing Yao instructed his subordinates, demonstrating his seriousness and strict attitude towards the task. His subordinates vowed not to disappoint the hall master, their morale high. Ten top experts, 100 swordsmen, shouted in unison as they rode in over 20 cars, heading straight for the Yunluo Book Sea, ready to take action. However, just as they set off, all the vehicles suddenly came to a halt. In front of them, a car blocked the way, quietly parked in the middle of the road without any movement. The piercing sound of the horn echoed in the night sky, sending shivers down the spine. 
a swordsman got out of the car, and a burly, fierce-looking man walked up to the car, ready to reprimand the occupants. But when the car door opened, a refined, smiling young man appeared before them. Are you from the Kilin Hall? The elegant young man asked. The swordsman was puzzled, asking, how did you know we were going to kill Chen Bufan? Before he could get an answer, there was a crisp sound, and the swordsman's neck was twisted, falling to the ground lifeless. Ambush! A thunderous shout rang out, and everyone immediately went on high alert, watching the car intently. In the next moment, the refined young man stepped out of the car, who turned out to be Chen Bufan. Like a bolt of lightning cutting through the night sky, the over 100 people in the 20 plus cars were all shocked. They had intended to go and kill Chen Bufan, but unexpectedly, Chen Bufan personally came to meet them, swiftly killing a swordsman with one strike. The Kilin Hall's most powerful card, the Kilin Legion, with 500 strong warriors known as the 500 Swords, was unrivaled. However, before Chen Bufan even got out of the car, a swordsman was already killed without any resistance, a terrifying sight that left everyone horrified. Attack together, kill him. Someone shouted loudly, but at that moment, an elderly voice rang out, and an old man got out of the car, walking lightly with a piercing gaze, resembling a master of internal martial arts. Apart from the 500 swords, Mikey Lin Hall also has 12 martial artists. I've heard that you killed two of our martial artists sent before. I am very interested in witnessing your strength, the old man said. Chen is not one to bully the elderly. All of you, come at me together. Chen Bufan said calmly with his hands behind his back. The old man being bullied? Upon hearing these words, the elderly man's eyes flashed with anger. In martial arts practice, there are two ways, external and internal. External training can strengthen muscles and skin, make the chi and blood abundant, and the skin and muscles strong. Like Muay Thai fighters and boxers, they follow this path. Internal cultivation is through the combination of true chi and breathing techniques, gradually honing oneself, transforming chi into strength, becoming a master of internal strength. In other words, as one grows older, their skills will become more profound. Chen Bufan actually mocked the old man based on his age, showing ignorance towards martial arts. The old man was not provoked by his words, but instead sneered, it seems like you know nothing about martial arts. I thought you were a young and promising person, but it turns out you are just an ignorant fool. Let me teach you a lesson. With that, the old man gathered his energy and swiftly rushed to Chen Bufan, raising his palm to strike at his head. If this blow landed, Chen Bufan would have died. Despite his advanced age, the old man had cultivated to such a level. What right did he have to mock martial artists? Chen Bufan disdainfully grabbed the old man's hand, exerting a little force, immediately breaking the old man's wrist. The old man screamed in pain, immediately circulating the true chi in his body, trying to shake off Chen Bufan. However, with a gentle push, Chen Bufan's boundless momentum came crashing like a flood, directly destroying the true chi in the old man's body, causing severe internal injuries, putting his life in danger. The old man spat out blood. His body flew out like a kite with a broken string, and finally fell to the ground, dead. The so-called master of internal strength, in front of Chen Bufan, was not even a match for a single strike. The other nine experts were shocked, as the leader of the twelve martial artists, known for his internal strength, was easily defeated by Chen Bufan. This was terrifying. They launched attacks one after another, over a hundred people launching a frenzied charge towards Chen Bufan. Chen Bufan did not make a move, but signaled to the Azure Dragon beside him. The Azure Dragon handed him a cigarette. Chen Bufan lit it and exhaled a ring of smoke. Just then, countless shadows emerged from all directions, the mighty army of the Demon God's Temple. Advancing on foot, their momentum was no less than that of a chariot. These people usually hid in Liang, scattered everywhere, whether dealing with the Han family or the Kilin Hall they would gather at the target location upon receiving orders. Watching the countless army approaching, the people of the Kilin Hall were dumbfounded. In the dark night, the mountains and valleys were filled with a dark tide of troops, like an unstoppable iron tide. This was the real invincible force, where swords and blades were no match. Without Chen Bufan making a move, the demon god's army arrived, and the situation was immediately reversed. Chen Bufan dropped a line 
stop, leaving only a martial artist in his 50s still standing. He had experienced the ups and downs of half a lifetime, but at this moment, he looked pale, his liver and gallbladder trembling. Phone. Chen Bufan walked up to him and said coldly. Phone? The martial artist felt puzzled. Why would he need to snatch a phone? Without daring to ask further, he quickly handed over the phone. Make a video call to Xing Ao for me, Chen Bufan ordered. The martial artist immediately complied. Beep beep tilde the call connected. Xing Ao saw the martial artist and breathed a sigh of relief, thinking something had happened. Lao Yu, why do you look so pale? Before the martial artist could answer, the phone camera suddenly turned to the side, and Chen Bufan's face appeared on the screen. Is the Lord of Xingtang available tonight? Chen would like to pay a visit. When Xing Ao heard Chen Bufan's name, he shuddered and almost jumped out of his chair. Before he could say anything, the call was already hung up on the other end. It turns out that Lao Yu is by Chen Bufan's side. Oh no! Xing Ao immediately realized the seriousness of the problem and became excited. Hurry! Get the other members of the Qilin Legion to gather quickly. And just then, on the rural road, Chen Bufan hung up the phone and showed a smug smile to Lao Yu. Let's go, to the Qilin Hall. With a command, the troops continued on their way. The headquarters of Qilin Hall is located in a quiet corner, with spacious factories, resembling a small community. Chen Bufan arrived quickly by car, and Xing Ao was already waiting at the door. The arrival of only one car late at night caught his attention. He couldn't help but wonder, how many people could this car accommodate? How could it lead to the defeat of the ten top experts he sent out? It's simply absurd. Kang Long appeared first, politely opened the car door, and Chen Bufan walked out slowly. He was dressed in black, wearing leather shoes, exuding a unique aura. His presence seemed to dim the stars in the entire sky. This invisible power oppressed the surroundings, making Xing Ao's heart tremble. Xing Ao had been fighting in the underground world for many years, as cold and ruthless as iron, but upon seeing Chen Bufan, he felt a hint of fear. Just you two? Not challenging enough? Chen Bufan asked. Then be prepared to face death, since you're here today, don't think about escaping from here. Xing Ao said coldly. After that, Countless shadows surged out from Qilin Hall, surrounding Chen Bufan and Kanglong. You think a few hundred people can kill me? Chen Bufan's voice was cold, tinged with disdain. Shameless boasting. Qilin Hall can stand in Liyang all thanks to 500 sharp blades. Dealing with you is like a walk in the park. Xing Ao roared. Then why are there a hundred people missing? Plus the ten grand martial artists. Chen Bufan taunted. Xing Ao's eyes widened in anger. Unable to boast about the Qilin Hall members who were killed, his anger flared up, vowing to dismember Chen Bufan. Kill him. With a command, 400 sharp blades wielding short knives, madly rushed towards Chen Bufan and Kanglong. Kanglong, they think the two of us are not enough, why don't we show them our strength? Chen Bufan asked. Okay, Kanglong said excitedly, his eyes flashing with the light of battle. Fighting side by side with the Hall Master is a great honor. Let's begin, and let me see if your strength has improved. Chen Bufan said, charging into the crowd, with Kang Long following closely. You two think you can take on 400 people? Ching Ao's face suddenly changed color. Could it be? Could it be him? He quickly dispelled this thought, unable to believe it. The demon god hall master, Chen Bufan, is a legendary figure. He unified the ten countries, with a power no one dared to challenge, and then disappeared without a trace. How could he appear in this inconspicuous Liyang? Even in the vast territory of the East Continent, it's rare to see Chen Bufan's figure. It must be just a coincidence, same name only. Ching Ao kept shaking his head in denial. If he offended Chen Bufan, just the Demon God Army alone could destroy Qilin Hall. No need for the Demon God Hall Master to personally take action. Watching the 400 sharp blades besieging Chen Bufan and Kanglong, Ching Ao's eyes sparkled with excitement. Even my master, Master Wolong, may not be able to withstand it, what are you guys? However, shortly after, he was dumbfounded. Chen Bufan, besieged by 400 sharp blades, seemed to be possessed by a war god, wielding a sharp sword like flowing water, cutting off arms wherever he went. Every sharp blade fell, none escaped, all had their arms cut off, and the cries of agony filled the air. 
so powerful, Kanglong sincerely admired. In this battle, the Lord alone, like a tank, ruthlessly crushed anyone blocking the road. His strength seemed to have increased, leaving the Azure Dragon in awe. Swish, swish, swish. Chen Bufan's long sword danced in his hand like a laser cutting through space, until it reached the gate. The last enemy fell. Now, in front of the Kilin Hall gate, only Xingdao remained. Xingdao, who was just excited moments ago, now wore a look of fear on his face. After a while, he took a deep breath. What kind of being was this man? The proud legion of the Kilin Hall, the 400 Blade Edge, none of them could stand up anymore. They all lay on the ground groaning in pain, each one having lost an arm, a pain far worse than death. Just then, the army of demons arrived, their imposing presence overwhelming, a dark mass approaching. Do you want to test my sword? See how it compares to your blade edge, Chen Bufan said coldly. Xingdao shivered in fear, looking at the group of dark clothed figures, standing there like a group of grim reapers, even more ruthless than the blade edge. Go ask in hell. Chen Bufan raised his sword. Xingdao trembled, already aware of the terror of this sword. Damn it, Xingdao suddenly exclaimed, swiftly pulling out a gun and firing at Chen Bufan. Ding! Chen Bufan swung his sword, deflecting the bullet, sparks flying. Xingdao stared in disbelief. The bullet couldn't even touch him? This was beyond human. He wanted to fire another shot, but a silver light flashed past. Bang! Chen Bufan's sword destroyed the gun. Xingdao was pushed back by the powerful force, staring at Chen Bufan with a face full of fear. If you have the guts, don't use a sword, I can still kill you. Chen Bufan laughed wildly, all right, as you wish. Clang. The long sword flew out, embedding into the ground, emitting a buzzing sound. As the first power in Liang, I also want to see the strength of the Kilin Hall Master. He said, stepping forward. Boom! The ground shook, the violent momentum raging, howling winds. Impressive. Zingo's face changed drastically. He had thought Chen Bufan was strong because of the sword, but his own strength was also formidable. Let's fight. Taking the initiative, he threw a punch at Chen Bufan. The forceful punch was powerful and swift. The Arhit Fist, one of the 72 Shaolin techniques, was versatile and extremely vigorous. Your fist technique is lacking, too weak. Chen Bufan saw through the fist technique at a glance, striking back. Boom! With a loud noise, Zingo's arm broke, blood gushing out. Kilin Hall Master, not living up to the name, it's over. Chen Bufan said coldly. Chen Bufan, do you know what force is behind me? Xingdao shouted madly. Jin Nan Prefecture, and what of it? Chen Bufan replied disdainfully. You know Jin Nan Prefecture? Xingdao asked in surprise. Jin Nan Prefecture is much stronger than you think. If you dare to kill me. Before he could finish, a sword came down, severing his other arm, leaving Xingdao kneeling on the ground in agony. Tell me, why did you order Han Lai to come and kill me four years ago? Chen Bufan demanded. After the order was issued by the town of Jenin, Chen Bufan hesitated no more and struck again. With a scream, Xing Ao's leg was instantly broken. This is the final chance. Chen Bufan said coldly, his eyes shining with determination. Xing Ao was in a panic at this moment. Never did he imagine he would face such a dilemma, pleading with Chen Bufan to spare him. Xing Ao was once the absolute ruler of the underground world in Liang, rising to the position of the Lord of Kilin Hall with his prowess in battle, his pride unyielding, unmatched by anyone. However, now, for the sake of survival, he had to lower his proud head. Chen Bufan coldly responded, Since you remain indifferent, what use is there in letting you go? With that, he picked up the sword on the ground and swung it ruthlessly. With a bang, Xing Ao fell to the ground, his throat squirming, his eyes filled with fear. He finally realized that the person in front of him was the demon lord, Chen Bufan. Seeing his life in peril, Xing Ao could no longer hold on and eventually closed his eyes. Chen Bufan ordered Kang Long to thoroughly search Kilin Hall, and once confirmed, to destroy it completely. Kang Long nodded in agreement, immediately mobilizing the army of demons to conduct the search on Kilin Hall. Half an hour later, everything was successfully completed, and Kilin Hall became history, never to exist again. Chen Bufan ordered all the assets of Kilin Hall to be donated, as for the people on the ground. 
A cold smile appeared on his lips. That night, a phone call reached the hands of Lei Tiancheng, the commander of the Firewolf Army. Urgently go to the headquarters of Qilin Hall to arrest personnel. Faced with this sudden order, Lei Tianqing hesitated not, immediately leading his men to rush to the headquarters of Qilin Hall. The scene before him sent shivers down his spine. Qilin Hall had been completely destroyed, Xing Ao had fallen, and hundreds of members of the Blade Edge lay on the ground, none spared, each heavily injured, their arms severed by a single sword stroke. How powerful must this person be to easily destroy Qilin Hall and wipe out the Blade Edge? Lei Tianqing dared not imagine. Li Zhaolei asked in shock, Commander, who could have done this? Lei Tianqing took a deep breath, only one person could possibly be responsible. Li Zhaolei trembled in her heart. She also thought of the same person, Chen Bufan. Late at night, besides the sound of the wind, only the continuous sound of heartbeats could be heard. On the way home, Kang Long drove while talking to Chen Bufan. Lei Tianqing should have arrived by now. Seeing the tragic scene of Qilin Hall, what would be his reaction? Chen Bufan replied calmly, Lei Tianqing has always been concerned about resolving the situation with Qilin Hall, let him handle this mess. This incident may be his chance to shine. Kang Long noticed through the rearview mirror that Chen Bufan looked melancholic, as if he had something on his mind. Chen Bufan sighed and said, I have always been curious, who was it that wanted to get rid of me back then? Both Han Lai and Qilin Hall were acting on orders. I thought it was just a small matter that could be easily resolved, but after losing both Han family and Qilin Hall one after another, I realized things were not as simple as they seemed. The only one who could have directed Qilin Hall's actions is Jin Nan Mansion, known as the number one power in the East. I have never had any dealings with Jin Nan Mansion, not even during the Guangling period. Could this be revenge for wiping out my Chen family's seven major families? Whoever it is, I will get to the bottom of this. Chen Bufan bowed in his heart. Back at home, Yu Ru and Si Si were still asleep. Chen Bufan didn't want to disturb them, so he lay alone on the sofa. In the early morning, the news of Qilin Hall's destruction quickly spread throughout Liang. The news of the collapse of the Kirin Hall did not cause much of a stir, unlike the fall of the Han family. This is because Kirin Hall is not well known to the public. Furthermore, as the investigation is still ongoing, the authorities have not disclosed much information. Apart from a few insiders, this incident has not sparked widespread discussion. In a five-star hotel in the city, the doorbell suddenly rang. Bai Ruabing, dressed in pajamas, walked to the door and asked, Wei, is there something urgent for you to come so early? Hui's expression turned serious as he said, Miss, Kirin Hall has been destroyed. I still find it hard to believe this fact. Bai Ruabing asked in shock, Kirin Hall has been destroyed? She immediately became alert, dispelling her laziness. Yes, Lord Lei personally confirmed this news to me, replied Wei. Bai Ruabing felt a chill, shivering. Kirin Hall, as one of the ten halls under the Jin Nan Prefecture, has been operating in Liyong for many years, with 500 blade masters and some martial artists. Its power is profound. Even Lei Tiancheng is powerless. Who could destroy Kirin Hall overnight? Although the identity of the attacker has not been confirmed, there is one person most likely responsible. I believe Miss can guess. Chen Bufan? Bai Ruabing asked in surprise. Wei nodded silently. For a moment, there was silence, with only the name Chen Bufan swirling in her mind. Chen Bufan didn't know how long he had slept. When he woke up, the sun was already high in the sky. To avoid unnecessary commotion, he had been operating in the late night these days. This lifestyle indeed consumed energy. After all, he was just a titled demon god, not a true immortal. Dad, you're awake. Cece rushed out from somewhere and threw herself into Chen Bufan's arms. Where's mom? Chen Bufan asked. Mom went to work. She told me not to disturb you resting and to tell you there's food ready in the kitchen when you wake up. Cici obediently said. Cici is so good. Chen Bufan smiled. As he prepared to freshen up and eat, Cici suddenly screamed outside. Dad, there's a strange person. Chen Bufan put down his bowl and chopsticks and rushed to the door. He saw Cici pounce into his arms. Dad, there's a strange person. Chen Bufan looked up in surprise. At the front gate, there was a man half kneeling on the ground, 
shirtless, and carrying a rattan stick on his back. It was Lei Tianqing. Lei Lord, what brings you here? Chen Bufan felt puzzled. Mr. Chen, sorry to startle your daughter. I've come to apologize for the destruction of Kirin Hall, Lei Tianqing said awkwardly. If anyone saw this scene, they would surely be dumbfounded. The Fire Wolf Army's leader actually knelt at someone else's doorstep, which was simply unbelievable. Lei Tianqing, why are you here? Chen Bufan asked. I promised to do it, Mr. Chen. I naturally came to apologize for the destruction of Kirin Hall, Lei Tianqing said sincerely, with his hands clasped. I see, Chen Bufan suddenly realized. He hadn't taken this matter to heart, but Lei Tianqing's integrity and commitment impressed him. Don't worry about it, this matter is in the past, Chen Bufan said. Thank you for your generosity, Mr. Chen. Lei Tianqing expressed his gratitude and left. Come in and talk, Chen Bufan invited. Okay. Lei Tianqing nodded. Rei Tianqing hesitated as he looked at Chen Bufan, and carefully asked, Are you not planning to change your outfit? Chen Bufan smiled and replied, I don't mind, I just don't want to scare the kids. Upon hearing this, Rei Tianqing quickly said, I'll change right away. Then he loudly called out, Zhao Lei, bring me my clothes. At this moment, Chen Bufan's expression turned cold, seemingly not pleased with Zhao Lei's arrival. Soon, Li Xiaolei walked over with a piece of clothing. Today, she was not wearing a uniform but chose a sporty outfit, still with her high ponytail. However, her demeanor was not as arrogant as yesterday. Her eyes downcast, unable to meet Chen Bufan's gaze, her face full of unease. In the scene at Qingfeng Pavilion yesterday, she displayed a domineering attitude, even wanting to make a move against Chen Bufan. But the result was that only the floor he walked on was destroyed by his hidden strength, revealing his unfathomable power, making her feel insignificant. Especially after learning that Chen Bufan had already pacified the Qilin Hall, Li Xiaolei's hostility towards him completely disappeared. She realized that he was a terrifying figure she absolutely couldn't afford to offend. Walking up to Lei Tianqing, she handed him the clothes. After Lei Tianqing changed into the clothes, he began to act as a mediator. Mr. Chen, Zhao Lei is someone I personally nurtured. Despite being a girl, she is one of the most outstanding members of the Fire Wolf Army. Although her personality is a bit strong, Lei Tianqing said, trying to defend Li Zhao Lei. Mr. Chen, I was a bit impulsive yesterday, with inappropriate words and actions. I deeply apologize. Li Zhao Lei took the opportunity to apologize. I didn't mind, Chen Bufan said calmly. Let's go inside and talk. Lei Tianqing felt relieved, grateful that Chen Bufan was forgiving. Otherwise, with his strength, they would have been disciplined long ago. How did you know it was me? Chen Bufan asked. Yesterday at Qingfeng Pavilion, your every move deeply impressed me. You are the only one qualified to pacify the Qilin Hall, Lei Tianqing said with great respect. Chen Bufan smiled and remained silent. The Qilin Hall occupies Liyang and supports a tyrant like Han Lai, posing a huge threat to local security. I have always wanted to subdue the Qilin Hall but never had the opportunity. This time, I really have to thank Mr. Chen for pacifying the Qilin Hall. Lei Tianqing raised his teacup and said, a cup of tea to Mr. Chen instead of wine. After speaking, he drank it all in one go. The Qilin Hall brought this upon themselves. No need to be polite. Chen Bufan said lightly. To be honest, I have led the Fire Wolf Army for nearly 20 years and have never seen anyone as powerful as Mr. Chen. I earnestly asked Mr. Chen for guidance, Lei Tianqing said respectfully, his eyes revealing immense eagerness. Li Xiaolei also looked at Chen Bufan with admiration. Before Chen Bufan appeared, they thought they were quite strong. But after seeing Chen Bufan, they realized what a true master was. If they could receive his guidance, they would definitely benefit greatly. Since you are willing to humbly seek advice, I will give you some pointers. I hope you don't mind, Chen Bufan said calmly. How is that possible? Mr. Chen is too modest, Lei Tianqing said excitedly. Then, Chen Bufan checked Lei Tianqing's foundation. You practice martial arts similar to Xingyao's style, just slightly inferior in skill, Lei Tianqing said somewhat embarrassed. In fact, a few years ago, I had a match with Xingyao and lost. Chen Bufan simply explained, the gap between you and Xingyao lies only in skill. 
Just strengthen training in this aspect. Lei Tiancheng was grateful for Chen Bufan's advice. Chen Bufan's gaze then turned to Li Zhaolei. Li Zhaolei's heart couldn't help but tremble, unsure of what would happen next. As a woman, she is already weaker in terms of strength compared to men, so she knows she has to put in more effort to make up for the gap with men. However, this effort is actually in the wrong direction. Her meridians and bones have been injured multiple times, and if she continues to train forcefully, not only will it not improve her strength, but it may also lead to more serious injuries. This statement shook Li Zhaolei to the core. She realized that what Chen Bufan said was not false. In pursuit of better performance, she trained desperately and ended up seriously injured. Although the injuries have healed, she often feels sore all over, as if her meridians and bones are being pierced. Lei Tingxing quickly gave Li Zhaolei advice, and Li Zhaolei eagerly asked for guidance from Chen Bufan. Soaking in herbal baths every three days can alleviate some symptoms, and try to learn other techniques as well, Chen Bufan casually suggested. Thank you, Mr. Chen, Li Zhaolei said gratefully. Although she wanted to ask for more advice, she dared not speak more due to her previous offense. Chen Bufan's knowledge of traditional Chinese medicine surprised Lei Tingxing. Miss Bai must have a special background to seek your help, Lei Tingxing remarked. Chen Bufan squinted slightly. Although he had asked Kenglong to investigate Bai Ruabing's background, there had been no results so far. Perhaps asking Lei Tingxing directly would be quicker. The Bai family is a prestigious family in Qingzhou. An ancestor was once a king, and the family has a deep heritage spanning centuries, making it one of the top families in Qingzhou and even the entire northern region. Chen Bufan nodded to himself. A hundred-year-old family is much stronger than ordinary wealthy families, able to stand for centuries in the river of history without falling, far superior to local aristocratic families like the Han family. What major event has happened to the Bai family? Chen Bufan inquired. It is said that the old master of the Bai family has a rare illness, and all major hospitals are at a loss. Miss Bai came to Liyong to find a solution, Lei Tingxing explained. What kind of rare illness is it? I cannot provide any help, so I won't ask further, Lei Tingxing added. Mr. Chen, if you have any way, please help Miss Bai. Her situation is indeed urgent, Lei Tingxing said. Chen Bufan stared coldly at Lei Tingxing. Lei Tingxing's heart tightened, feeling as if he were being targeted by the god of death under Chen Bufan's gaze. I won't speak out of turn. Are you close to Miss Bai? I received favors from the Bai family when I was in Qingzhou, but after being transferred to Liyang, I lost contact. The Bai family is indeed good people. If Mr. Chen needs anything, the Bai family will definitely not treat you unfairly, Lei Tingxing spoke on behalf of Bai Ruabing. Chen Bufan didn't care about these things. As someone of his caliber, he didn't need to rely on the Bai family's favors. He didn't have any special feelings towards Bai Ruabing so helping her for no reason didn't make sense. Seeing Chen Bufan's lack of response, Lei Tingxing didn't dare to say more and bid farewell with Li Zhaolei. Suddenly, Lei Tingxing stopped in his tracks, his expression grave. Although Mr. Chen is powerful, Zhang Taishan is also not an ordinary person, so we must be careful. If you need my help, just ask. Both I, Lei Tingxing, and the Firewolf Army will obey Mr. Chen's orders. Lei Tingxing expressed sincerely, reiterating what he had said at the Qingfeng Pavilion yesterday, that not only did he need to take responsibility, but he also needed to make the Firewolf army obey Chen Bufan. Facing the formidable army of demon gods, Chen Bufan felt heavy-hearted and had no intention of paying attention to the movements of the Firewolf army. However, thanks to Xie Lishan's reminder, he noticed the name Zhang Taishan and silently stored it in his mind. This name seemed to stir up a sense of unease and curiosity within him. Ray Tian has gone out, while Li Zhaolei and Chen Bufan stayed at home to accompany Cici to play. After moving to the new house, the space at home became more spacious, enough for the children to run and play, with a huge private garden where they could even play football. In the afternoon, Zhang Yuru sent a message inviting them to join a family gathering in the evening and asked them to bring Cici along. This gathering was organized by Zhang Yuru's college classmate Yin Shui. Initially hesitant, Zhang Yuru eventually reluctantly agreed after Yin Shui's persistent insistence. Chen Bufan said, since they are old classmates, we should go. 
At 5 in the evening, Chen Bufan took Sisi and met Zhang Yuru at the entrance of Yunlu Company. Then they took a taxi to the dinner venue. Zhang Yuru told the driver, Master, please take us to Misty south of the river. Chen Bufan was surprised to hear that, Misty south of the river? Zhang Yuru smiled wryly and explained, It's the place Yin Shui chose. She said she wanted to find a high-end place. Chen Bufan joked, Looks like we're destined to have a feast at Misty south of the river tonight. Half an hour later, they arrived at Misty south of the river. Zhang Yuru exclaimed, Why is it so different today from last time, so many luxury cars? Chen Bufan explained with a smile, Of course, it's different. Last time I booked the whole place, with Yin Shui's ability, how could she not book the place this time? Today is normal business, Zhang Yuru suddenly realized, so last time it was booked by a big boss. The family of three walked into the restaurant, stepping into the lobby for the first time. Zhang Yuru was shocked by the luxurious decoration. This restaurant is truly one of the most luxurious in Liang. it's too extravagant. Chen Bufan asked, what are you looking for? Zhang Yuru said, I want to see if Tang Jing is here, otherwise it would be too awkward. Chen Bufan firmly replied, Don't worry, she's definitely not here. Zhang Yuru asked in confusion, How can you be so sure? Chen Bufan explained with a smile, Didn't she say it herself? We are not the ones who booked the place. Zhang Yuru pursed her lips, Oh, I thought Tang Jing would invite us for the sake of face. Chen Bufan shook his head and sighed. Suddenly, Yin Shui's voice rang out, You're here. She was wearing a wine red suspender dress with long hair cascading down her shoulders, captivating and alluring, drawing the attention of the men present. Yin Shui noticed the stares and her smile became even brighter, clearly enjoying the attention. Walking up to Zhang Yuru and the others, Yin Shui exuded a charming perfume scent. Chen Bufan furrowed his brow slightly, looking at Yin Shui, feeling that no matter what, she couldn't compare to Zhang Yuru, especially with that tacky worldly scent, making him feel somewhat vulgar. Enviously, Zhang Yuru said, Yin Shui, you look so beautiful today, just like a big star. Yin Shui modestly replied, Where, where, I'm an old woman, almost old. Yin Shui was not the campus bell back then, but now standing in front of Zhang Yuru, it seemed like her radiance overshadowed her. Upon arriving at the party, Yin Shui was greeted by two college classmates, marking a long-awaited reunion. They warmly exchanged greetings with one of the girls with short hair gently saying, everyone has been waiting for you for a long time, why did you arrive so late? Zhang Yuru explained, it was hard to catch a cab, so I got delayed. The girl with short hair exaggeratedly exclaimed, catch a cab? Are you kidding me? How can Miss Zhang be so low-key? Zhang Yuru's face turned slightly embarrassed, and those around could clearly feel the sarcasm in the air. The other girl with blonde hair lightly nudged the girl with short hair with her elbow and whispered, Did Zhang Yuru get kicked out of the Zhang family? Her voice was a bit loud, attracting the attention of the people nearby. Zhang Yuru awkwardly replied, That's all in the past. Yin Shui promptly intervened and led everyone into a private room. Inside, there were already three men sitting, engaging in pleasant conversation. Yin Shui introduced, This is our university's campus bell the most beautiful girl in Liang, Zhang Yuru. The men expressed their admiration, their gazes lingering on Zhang Yuru. Despite Zhang Yuru's plain attire, her pure appearance and outstanding temperament were captivating. Yin Shui continued, and this is my husband, Chen Bufan. Zhang Yuru graciously introduced him, a hint of pride evident on her face, believing that in her eyes, Chen Bufan, though not wealthy, was irreplaceable. The three men scrutinized Chen Bufan, showing a hint of disdain in their eyes due to his ordinary attire. Although they warmly greeted on the surface, their eyes were always on Zhang Yuru. Yin Shui then introduced several other family members, making the atmosphere lively. Don't just stand there, everyone please take a seat, Yin Shui invited. There were a total of four families present, with Chen Bufan's family and the girl with short hair bringing children while Yin Shui and the blonde lady came with only their husbands. Five years had passed, and this gathering was to reminisce about their university days. They raised their glasses, clinked them, and began chatting about the past and their current lives. During the party, the three families seemed intimate, 
discussing topics from car garages to national development, showcasing the elegance of successful individuals as if turning the place into a conference room. The ladies, on the other hand, talked about cosmetics and other topics. Chen Bufan sat alone, quietly enjoying his food, being ignored by everyone, as he was not interested in those discussions. He knew they were not from the same circle, and there was no need to force himself into their conversations. He was only there to accompany Zhang Yuru. Zhang Yuru also seemed uncomfortable, merely nodding along with the others' conversations. Yin Shui, you're amazing. Not only successful in your career but also married to such a capable husband, complimented the girl with short hair. Yin Shui modestly smiled and replied, Oh, stop it, it's just some small achievements. The girl with short hair continued, Yin Shui, you are too modest. I just found out that General Guo is a big shot in the building materials industry, running a large market in Liyong with a thriving business and considerable income. The husband of the short-haired woman proudly claimed that he was a man with glasses, wearing a suit, and making millions a year. The people present were all amazed and envious of him, but he immediately joked that it was just a little hard-earned money. Mr. Huang, the bank manager, who was wearing a big gold chain, waved his hand and teased the man with glasses, saying that he dealt with big business owners all the time, so as small business owners are nothing special. And Mr. Shaw, who works in a government office, is even better than me, right? They praised each other, and then the bald husband of Yin Shui suddenly turned to Chen Bufan. He sighed and said, just think about it, I'm not even as good as this young man, yet he managed to marry the most beautiful woman in Liang. I wonder what skills he used. Suddenly, all eyes were on Chen Bufan. She, Zhang Yuru was still thinking about stepping forward and finding a way out. Chen Bufan had already made his stance clear, taking care of the children at home. The atmosphere suddenly turned icy, followed by a burst of laughter. Is there anything wrong with taking care of children at home? Yuru, with your good conditions, why would you choose such a man? A short-haired woman sneered. Yuru, I also heard about your situation. I thought you would like someone very outstanding, but... A blonde woman also interjected, hesitated to speak. I like him, that's enough. Zhang Yuru mustered up the courage to say. Chen Bufan didn't care about the opinions of others. When he heard Zhang Yuru speak up for him, he felt warm inside. Liking someone is not enough to make a living. You need a reliable man, not someone who only knows how to take care of children at home. After the short-haired woman finished speaking, she turned her criticism towards Chen Bufan. You, as a man, married such a beautiful wife, why don't you hurry up and make money? How can you have the nerve to stay at home taking care of children? The bald man sneered, provoking a wave of ridicule. Zhang Yuru took a deep breath, trying to control her emotions. He is my husband, please don't speak of him like that. A man without abilities is just a waste. Yuru, you don't need to defend him, let us teach him a lesson. The short-haired woman said, By insulting my husband, you are insulting me. Please shut up. Zhang Yuru was already angry. These people were too much. She only attended the gathering for the sake of her classmates' face, yet they ignored her dignity and openly mocked Chen Bufan. How could a wife tolerate this? Seeing Zhang Yuru get angry, everyone quieted down. Yin Shui smiled and said, Yuru, actually, everyone is doing this for your own good, especially today's gathering, it's actually to give you an opportunity. What do you mean? Zhang Yuru asked, didn't I tell you to invest in Liyong yesterday? My husband intends to become a shareholder of your Yunlu group, and his company will be responsible for the building materials of Yunlu group in the future. You work at Yunlu company, so from now on, you are also considered an employee of our company. I invited you for the sake of old classmates, hoping you would perform better, but I didn't expect. I'm sorry, I don't need it. I want to work solidly and don't need to take shortcuts. Zhang Yuru straightforwardly refused. Yin Shui's face immediately turned cold. Yin Shui, you are too kind, your classmate is too ignorant. The bald man sneered coldly, then turned to Zhang Yuru, with a cunning look, since you are so capable, when I sign a contract with Yunlu company, you better find somewhere else. Yuru, don't be rude, just apologize. Yin Shui persuaded, where did I go wrong? Zhang Yuru felt absurd, I'm sorry, we have urgent matters to attend to. Bufan, let's go. Zhang Yuru stood up after speaking. CC obediently left her seat, 
and at this moment, accidentally bumped into the short-haired woman's child. Get away, you child from a poor family, you dirtied my clothes. The five or six-year-old boy pushed CC hard, almost knocking her down. CC was suddenly scared and started crying. Apologize, Chen Bufan, who had been silent all along, suddenly spoke, his tone cold. If it wasn't for Yuru not liking him to act impulsively, he would have exploded long ago. These classmates were too disrespectful to Yuru. The woman with short hair was infuriated. She stood up, raging, staring viciously at Chen Bufan, and unreasonably said, Your child bumped into my child, why should he apologize? It's already generous of me not to ask for an apology from your child. Chen Bufan's attitude was firm. I refuse to apologize, he he he. The boy made a face and provocatively said. Chen Bufan raised his palm without hesitation, slapped the boy in the face, sending him flying and falling to the ground, immediately bursting into tears. He cried, Mom, he hit me. Everyone was surprised. They didn't expect Chen Bufan to be so violent. The woman with short hair rushed forward, her eyes filled with madness, threatening, If you dare to hit my son, I will ruin your daughter. The man with glasses also angrily joined in. As a result, they were both slapped and sent flying, falling to the ground together, unable to get up for a long time. Zhang Yuru was frightened, hurriedly stepped forward to stop Chen Bufan. She warned, If it weren't for me, you would have met Yama long ago. Chen Bufan sternly said, I'm doing this for you, if your husband causes trouble again, he will bear the consequences. Yin Shui coldly said, If you hit me, just wait. Chen Bufan mercilessly slapped her in the face, sending Yin Shui flying. The bald man, burning with anger, stood up holding a bottle of wine. Chen Bufan pressed his hand on the table with a threatening posture. The plates on the table instantly shattered. Even the wine bottle was shattered, shards piercing into the bald man's hand blood streaming, screaming in pain. Another man was about to speak, but was scared back to his seat by Chen Bufan's sharp gaze, not daring to move. Chen Bufan said coldly, everyone, apologize to my wife. Yin Shui disdainfully shouted, apologize? No way, just wait. Chen Bufan sneered, if you don't apologize, then forget it, your bank manager position, official meals, all gone. With that, he picked up Sisi took Zhang Yuru, and left straight away. The private room immediately became restless. Everyone was burning with anger, swearing to bring Chen Bufan to his knees. Manager Guo was so angry that he gritted his teeth, this poor boy, I will make him pay. The woman with short hair said sharply, injuring my son, if you don't compensate with millions, don't even think about settling this matter. Yin Shui was also furious, he thinks he can easily cancel our contract? Absolutely not, Mr. Shaw angrily said. This meal was a waste, I will calculate this bill properly. In the end, everyone left one after another. When preparing to pay the bill, the owner of the restaurant, Yan Yu Zhangnan, rushed over out of breath. Upon learning that Chen Bufan had come to the restaurant again, he quickly offered to treat them, to prevent the restaurant from closing down. Yin Shui asked in surprise, no need to pay? The boss suddenly said he wanted to invite Mr. Chen to dinner, which made Yin Shui and others feel puzzled. The boss hurriedly explained, No mistake, I am treating Mr. Chen as a sign of respect. Upon hearing this, Yin Shui and the others immediately showed expressions of astonishment. Yin Shui couldn't help but ask, Boss, are you sure you're not mistaken? Are you inviting Mr. Chen out of respect? The boss smiled and said, Of course, no mistake. Isn't Mr. Chen coming? With that, the boss looked around but couldn't find Mr. Chen. Yin Shui, holding back her nervousness, asked again, Then boss, can you tell me who Chen Bufan is? The whole atmosphere seemed to freeze, and a hint of unease emerged in Yin Shui and the others' hearts. The boss was sincere and quietly relieved that he hadn't angered Mr. Chen. Upon hearing this, Yin Shui and his group looked at each other in shock, showing expressions of fear. Even the boss of smoke and rain in Jiangnan dared not offend Chen Bufan. Who exactly is Chen Bufan? Sha was angry and immediately made a phone call to investigate Chen Bufan's background. On the way back, Zhang Yuru frowned and said to Chen Bufan, You're too impulsive. Are you going to let them make fun of you and bully Sisi? Chen Bufan retorted, I've tried my best to restrain myself. 
otherwise, none of them would be able to leave the restaurant. Despite the burning anger in his heart, Zhang Yuru was speechless after hearing his words. Yin Shui and her friend's behavior was really too much, oh well. She sighed and said, Bufan, I'm sorry for embarrassing you. Darling, what are you talking about? Even if I'm embarrassed, it's my own fault, Chen Bufan comforted gently. Zhang Yuru firmly said, This is my choice, I won't blame you. Suddenly, her face darkened, but I may lose my job. If Yin Shui's husband signs with Yunlu Company, I'm sure to be fired. Just promoted to department manager, my salary increased. I was very happy, but in a few days, I will be laid off, feeling very frustrated. Don't worry, Yunlu will not cooperate with Yin Shui's husband, you won't be fired, and you may even have the opportunity for promotion and a raise, Chen Bufan said confidently. Are you kidding me? Not firing me, but promoting and raising my salary? Zhang Yuru stared at Chen Bufan as if he were a fool. Don't believe me? All right, what if I'm right? Chen Bufan asked mischievously. I'm not afraid of you, anyway, that's impossible. But if you're wrong, you'll have to listen to me in the future, Zhang Yuru said. No problem. Chen Bufan agreed readily. Mom, I'm hungry, Sisi said aggrievedly. I'm a little hungry too, Zhang Yuru said. She had hardly eaten anything at smoke and rain in Jongnan and her stomach was empty. Let's go, dad will treat us. The family of three immediately found a restaurant and enjoyed a hearty meal. Meanwhile, Chen Bufan found an opportunity to call Kenglong and instructed him to handle a small matter. Yes, I understand. Kenglong hung up the phone immediately after receiving the order. How dare they provoke the Lord? He quickly set off to handle the matter. At the headquarters of Yunlu Company, Sao Wadong was still working in his office, surrounded by smoke, with a furrowed brow. There was a pile of contracts on the desk. In order for the company to develop, they had to sell part of the shares, allowing the building materials tycoon, General Guo, to invest, essentially bringing in a new major shareholder for the company. Despite selling a villa, after using the 40 million funds to pay employee salaries and bank interest, there was very little left. Suppliers had been pressing hard these days, for the survival of the company, they had to sell off a portion of the shares. The 20 years of hard work in the business had come to this point, leaving Sao Wadong with complex emotions. If nothing unexpected happened, when the documents were ready, the contract would be signed tomorrow. Sao, someone is looking for you. Just then, the secretary came in to report. A stranger approached Sao Wadong in the middle of the night, claiming to have a solution to Yunlu Company's urgent need for funds. Upon hearing this news, Sao's eyes lit up and he eagerly invited the man in. Soon, the mysterious man appeared at the office door. Sao politely inquired about the man's identity, but was bluntly told an astonishing number, 10 billion. Sao was taken aback, finding it hard to believe such a figure. He began to question the man's motives and true intentions, wondering why someone would selflessly help a company they had never met before. The man did not answer Sao's questions only requesting a simple task to be done. Sao suspected that this task would not be easy. However, when the man handed him a card containing 10 billion in funds, Sao realized that this was all real. The man informed him that this was just the initial funding, with more to come if Sao could complete the task. Excited and grateful, Sao promised to cooperate fully. After the man left, Sao learned that the man's master was Chen Bufan, feeling both surprised and thankful. The next day, General Guo found out that Chen Bufan had no background, feeling relieved. Yin Shui suggested signing a contract first, firing Zhang Yuru, and punishing her when she begged for mercy. General Guo agreed with Yin Shui's suggestion, and they both went to Yunlu Company. Just as they were about to leave, they received a sudden phone call. Mr. Guo glanced at the incoming call displayed on his phone screen and couldn't help but let out a cold chuckle. In his mind, he thought, Kao Huadong is indeed in a tight spot, to be so urgently pushing me like this. He then slid his finger to answer the call and coldly said, Mr. Sao, I'm about to leave. Have the contract ready and wait for me. Suddenly, an anxious voice came from the other end of the phone, I'm sorry, Mr. Guo, there's no need for you to come anymore. Our previous collaboration has been cancelled. Upon hearing this news, Mr. Guo's heart sank, and his face immediately turned ashen. Sao Wadong, are you kidding me? Your Yunlu company is broke. Who else can help you besides me? 
Just as I finished speaking, my pupils suddenly contracted. 10 billion? Someone is sponsoring you with 10 billion? Are you out of your mind? Before I could finish my sentence, the other party hung up directly. Yin Shui looked at General Guo's angry look and couldn't help but feel anxious. Yunlu Company got 10 billion in funding from someone else, and they don't want to cooperate with me anymore. General Guo said angrily. Yin Shui's face turned pale. How could a perfectly good contract suddenly fall through? Could it be that Chen Bufan is behind this? That's impossible. That kid has no background at all. His own wife works at Yunlu. Where would he get 10 billion? He might not even have 10,000. Just then, Chen Bufan, with his wife CC, had just bought breakfast and returned from outside. Yin Shui looked at Chen Bufan in surprise, feeling a sense of doubt rising in her heart. Chen Bufan, what are you doing here? Yin Shui asked in amazement. Chen Bufan replied calmly, you guys can be here, why can't I? Yin Shui felt the indifference and confidence emanating from Chen Bufan. We bought a house here, we are the owners here, what right do you have to be here? Yin Shui said disdainfully, why bother talking so much nonsense with him? Security, this kid doesn't live here, kick him out. General Guo shouted loudly, sorry. He is a homeowner in this villa area and has the right to come and go, the security guard replied firmly. Homeowner? General Guo and his wife were dumbfounded. Are you kidding me? The cheapest villa here starts at 10 million. How could Chen Bufan afford it? Chen Bufan ignored the two of them and walked towards his house with CC. Absolutely impossible. General Guo secretly followed in his car. Until they finally stopped on the side of the road watching Chen Bufan walk towards villa number 9. It was the most expensive villa in Yunlu Academy, worth 40 million. Even he, General Guo, a giant in the construction industry, couldn't afford it at all. Could Chen Bufan, on his own, buy villa number 9? General Guo and his wife were dumbfounded and quickly called Mr. Shaw for help with the investigation. Instead of Mr. Shaw, someone else answered the phone and informed them of some news. Mr. Shaw is suspected of embezzlement and has been dismissed for investigation. A sense of foreboding instantly struck the two of them. They promptly contacted Manager Huang, but Manager Huang did not answer the phone. But in the next second, a car quickly arrived. A couple got out of the car with their child. It was Manager Huang and his family of three. Manager Huang, what are you doing here? Don't call me Manager Huang. I have been fired, just an ordinary person now. Yin Shui and her husband were shocked. They, along with Mr. Shaw and manager Huang, all had a stroke of bad luck after attending the family banquet yesterday. What happened exactly? Yin Shui asked. This Mr. Chen is an esteemed client of our bank on a global scale, the kind of big shot, and this villa is bought by him. Mr. Huang said in fear. His wife glared angrily at Yin Shui, blaming her for organizing the gathering causing her husband to lose his job and offend Mr. Chen. Stop talking nonsense, let's go. Mr. Huang pulled his wife and child, hurriedly running towards the villa, and knelt on the ground to beg for forgiveness. At that moment, Yin Shui and her husband felt like the world was spinning. Just proving that this villa was bought by Chen Bufan was enough to make them lose their minds. Moreover, Mr. Huang revealed that Chen Bufan is an esteemed client of his bank, on a global scale. Yin Shui was full of doubts when she saw Zhang Yuru moving by herself the day before yesterday, which made her feel unbelievable. Zhang Yuru's husband has always been a soft rice man who relies on women. Where did the money come from to buy a villa? Yin Shui refused to believe all of this. Suddenly, Mr. Guo slapped Yin Shui hard on the face. He angrily accused, you despicable guy have caused me a lot of trouble. Not only did the investment fail, but you also offended a big shot. After that, he coldly warned, if the cooperation fails, you will have nothing left. Ignoring the pain on her face, Yin Shui followed Mr. Guo to the villa. When Chen Bufan opened the door and saw everyone kneeling in front of the door begging for mercy, his eyes revealed indifference. He sneered, you were arrogant yesterday, are you scared now? Unfortunately, it's too late. Get out within three seconds, or face the consequences. Upon hearing this, everyone ran away in fear of causing bigger trouble. Meanwhile, Zhang Yuru had just arrived at the company not long before she was personally summoned by Mr. Sao. Mr. Sao greeted her with a smile and said, Yuru, is your work going smoothly? 
Zhang Yuru politely replied. Yes, Mr. Sao, good morning. Mr. Sao praised her for her dedication and announced her appointment as the general manager of the real estate department of Yunlu Company, starting from today. As for salary and benefits, the hour department will explain it to you in detail. Mr. Sao knew that Chen Bufan had helped her, which is why he valued her so much. Although he was a little wary, he decided to show goodwill. Zhang Yuru almost couldn't believe the news. From a department manager to the general manager of the real estate department, this promotion path was beyond her imagination. Zhang Yuru hesitated and asked, Mr. Sao, are you kidding me? Mr. Sao smiled and said, I said the same thing last night, but fate is so wonderful. Well, I won't disturb you at work. I hope you will continue to work hard. The company's future depends on you. After that, Mr. Sao left. Colleagues gathered around to congratulate Zhang Yuru and praised her promotion. Zhang Yuru felt a little overwhelmed. It wasn't until the HR department confirmed that she would enjoy the benefits of a general manager, with a monthly salary increased from 8,000 to 30,000, and an annual bonus, that she repeatedly confirmed and somewhat dazedly signed the documents. After leaving the HR office, she was extremely excited. She couldn't believe that she not only wasn't fired but also got a promotion and a raise. Could it be that what Chen Bufan said was all coming true? She couldn't wait to tell Chen Bufan the good news, but as soon as she returned to the sales office, she was informed that someone had come to see her. Stepping outside, Zhang Yuru saw Yin Shui and others kneeling on the ground, crying and apologizing. The woman with short hair, holding a child, humbly said, Yuru, we were wrong yesterday. Please forgive us. My husband can't afford to lose his job. Another person also apologized. If I have offended you in any way, I apologize here. Please don't hold it against us. Zhang Yuru felt a strange sense of touch in her heart. Yin Shui rushed to Zhang Yuru in a hurry, almost falling at her feet. Zhang Yuru was taken aback by the sudden situation and had to make a big effort to figure out what was going on, with a look of surprise on her face. She never expected that the three companies would encounter such misfortune overnight. Zhang Yuru tried to explain, You've misunderstood. My husband doesn't have that much power. I can choose not to dwell on the past, but I can't solve your problems for you. I hope you can figure it out on your own. With that, Zhang Yuru resolutely turned and walked into the company building. The dinner last night had completely revealed the true faces of these people to her. Outside the door, a family of three, the short-haired woman was crying uncontrollably, tears streaming down her face, expressing her helplessness. Guo, clenching his fists, furrowed his brow. The one billion funds were all mortgaged in the building materials market, borrowed with a gambling agreement, which meant that if they failed, they would have to compensate investors double the amount. This meant that even if they didn't earn a penny, they would have to pay two billion to the investors. Selling off assets would also be difficult to cover such a huge loss. Thinking of this, he was upset and couldn't help but vent his anger at Yin Shui. It was all because of this despicable woman that he got into trouble. Otherwise how could he have attracted Chen Bufan and suffered such a heavy blow to his business? For a moment, the three families were in an irreparable situation. As for Chen Bufan, teaching these three families a lesson was just a piece of cake. He had vowed that whoever dared to bully Zhang Yuru and Sisi would be mercilessly killed. Letting them off lightly was already a sign of tolerance. Before the end of the workday, Zhang Yuru hurried home at noon. As soon as she entered the house, she loudly questioned, Chen Bufan, you have to tell me honestly, did you do those things? Chen Bufan asked in confusion, what things? Zhang Yuru had to explain in detail what had happened. Chen Bufan did not expect the other party to come to Zhang Yuru and realize their fear. Well, that was good. What he couldn't apologize for yesterday, he would make up for today. After listening to Zhang Yuru's account, Chen Bufan stared at her and said solemnly, Yuru, I never meant to deceive you, I just couldn't tell you everything immediately. But please believe me, I am not a bad person, I will do my best to protect this family. Since hastily confessing everything to Zhang Yuru had led to doubts, Chen Bufan decided, after careful consideration, that he needed to wait for Zhang Yuru to be ready to accept it before confessing to her. Okay, I believe you, I won't ask any more in the future. Zhang Yuru gradually calmed down. Chen Bufan asked with concern, Have you eaten? Have something to eat before going to work? 
Speaking of work, Zhang Yuru suddenly remembered something. By the way, Bufan, I got a promotion and a raise. Mr. Sao actually made me the general manager directly. At first, it scared me. Guess how much I can make in a month now? 30,000 yuan. And there's year-end bonuses. We'll be able to buy a house soon. Zhang Yuru was overjoyed, happily sharing this good news. Chen Bufan understood and said, since we're on the topic, you have to fulfill your promise, right? What promise? Zhang Yuru asked in confusion. Chen Bufan playfully smiled, walked over to her, and pressed her against the edge of the pool. It's unlocking a new skill, remember? Zhang Yuru pushed him away with a smile. You're trying to wriggle out of it. Chen Bufan hugged Zhang Yuru and his lips met hers. Zhang Yuru's legs went weak, as if she had been struck by an electric current all over her body. Just then, Sisi suddenly burst into the kitchen. Chen Bufan quickly retreated, and Zhang Yuru hastily straightened her dress. The two looked at Sisi, feeling embarrassed. The life of Chen Bufan's family returned to peace once again. Since the downfall of Kilin Hall, there were hardly any enemies left in Liang. As for who had sent the assassin four years ago, it remained a mystery. Chen Bufan knew he wouldn't stay in Yang for too long. Once he felt pressured, he would head to Guangling. This place is filled with sadness. The eight great families of Guangling, the former dominants, ruling the economic lifeline of the entire Guangling, were like kings in the entire Dongzhou, with a widely known reputation. Overnight, the Chen family was destroyed. The raging fire that night not only burned down the entire Chen family, including 48 men, women, and children, but also turned all the wealth accumulated by the Chen family over the years into ashes. The Chen family was completely wiped out. Father, mother, little sister. Chen Bufan's heart felt like it was being cut by a knife, sitting on the balcony of the villa, letting the strong wind blow on his face. At some point, Zhang Yuru quietly walked up behind him, watching Chen Bufan's figure, a sense of inexplicable sadness welled up in her heart. He seemed to bear an indelible pain. Zhang Yuru quietly approached, not wanting to disturb Chen Bufan just gently leaning on his shoulder. Bufan, do you have something on your mind? Slightly turning his head, looking at the beauty beside him, with a look of concern in his clear eyes, Chen Bufan's lips curled into a slight smile, and the pain in his heart seemed to be gradually dissipating as if comforted. My concern is when we can hold a grand wedding and make you my lawful companion, Chen Bufan said. Smooth talker, Zhang Yuru gave him a glare. Haven't I already put on the wedding dress you picked out for me? But without a wedding banquet, others have it, and I want you to have it too. I don't care about those things, just being with you is enough for me. And what I have, others may not have, Zhang Yuru said with a smile. What? Chen Bufan looked at her, his eyes filled with tenderness, and a sweet atmosphere permeated the night air. After two calm days, someone suddenly came to visit, it was Bai Ruabing and Wei Shu. Chen Bufan opened the door to see the two, his face indifferent. Before Chen Bufan could speak, Bai Ruabing spoke first, Mr. Chen, I'm not here to disturb you this time, but I have something to tell you. Go ahead, Chen Bufan said. Bai Ruabing, without beating around the bush, stood at the door and said straightforwardly, the matter of you defeating the Kilin Hall has been known to Jen Nanfu. As far as I know, the people of Jen Nanfu are very angry and have taken action. This is my private matter and has nothing to do with you, Chen Bufan said not interested in hearing more. Bai Ruabing's face darkened. Did you hit a wall again? Dad, this lady is so beautiful. Just then, Sisi rushed out from the side, staring at Bai Ruabing anxiously. Thank you, sweetheart, you're beautiful too. Bai Ruabing was overjoyed, straightened her skirt, squatted down, shook hands with Sisi, and smiled at each other. Bai Ruabing, who outwardly appeared cold and aloof, unexpectedly had such a gentle side. Chen Bufan was quite surprised, but then looked at Sisi. This girl is so articulate, clearly the lady's person, yet calling her sister and praising her beauty, no wonder Bai Ruabing is so happy. Seeing Bai Ruabing and Sisi interact, Chen Bufan felt embarrassed to drive the guests away, so he pushed open the door and said, please come in. Thank you, Mr. Chen. Bai Ruabing smiled, feeling a sense of being cherished. She was originally the daughter of the Bai family in Qingzhou with a prominent status, always being the center of attention since childhood, and being cherished wherever she went. 
However, after meeting Chen Bufan, he was cold towards her, even demanding that she explain her purpose before being allowed in. In the end, the child was allowed into the house, which left her feeling a bit helpless but with a smile in her heart. In the living room, Bai Ruabing and Uncle Wei sat down. Chen Bufan straightforwardly brought up the matter of Jenin Mansion. Bai Ruabing nodded, determined to change Chen Bufan's impression of her in hopes that he would lend a helping hand. She heard that Jen Nan Mansion had already planned to send a powerful team to eliminate her, and this news was definitely not a trivial matter. She couldn't help but wonder, why was Jen Nan Mansion so confident and leaked the information in advance? Chen Bufan asked. Bai Ruabing shook her head, saying that Jen Nan Mansion's plan was top secret, and she only obtained the information through family connections from other channels. Chen Bufan's gaze paused on Bai Ruabing for a moment. Bai Ruabing, in order to understand Jen Nan Mansion's movements, used the power of her family. Was this a gesture of goodwill? Mr. Chen, please don't misunderstand. I don't have any other intentions. I'm just worried about your safety. Bai Ruabing hurriedly explained, afraid that Chen Bufan would misunderstand her motives. Worried about me? Chen Bufan smiled, feeling somewhat at a loss. In Dongzhou, no one had the ability to put him in danger. Are you worried that if I encounter danger, no one will help me? To be honest, even without this incident, I wouldn't want you to have an accident. Jin Nan Mansion is known as the number one power in Dongzhou. They have set up ten halls, all aiming to dominate the southern region. I don't want someone as talented as Mr. Chen to ruin his future. Bai Ruabing said seriously, looking at Chen Bufan with a gaze filled with focus and determination. Being stared at like this by a beautiful woman would make most men feel moved, but Chen Bufan remained calm. Though there is genuine goodwill in the world, Bai Ruabing clearly wasn't one of them. Thank you for the reminder, Miss Bai. If Jen Nan Mansion dares to cause trouble, I am willing to crush their tin halls and reduce Jen Nan Mansion to ashes. Chen Bufan said coldly, with a firm gaze. Wei Shu took a deep breath and couldn't help but say, Mr. Chen, I know you are very powerful, stronger than me, but Jen Nan Mansion is not easy to deal with. Bai Ruabing's face also changed slightly, startled by Chen Bufan's words. It was already amazing enough to eliminate one of Jen Nan Mansion's halls, and now Chen Bufan wanted to destroy the entire Jen Nan Mansion, which was simply shocking. Do you see me as so weak in your eyes? Chen Bufan glanced at Wei Shu. That's not what I meant. Wei Shu explained. Wei Shu. Bai Ruabing glanced at Wei Shu. I'm sorry, Mr. Chen, I misspoke. Wei Shu apologized. The Bai family is counting on Mr. Chen to lend a helping hand, so we can't offend him. From your perspective, what he said is right, there's no need to apologize to me. Chen Bufan said lightly. Anyway, I don't want Mr. Chen to have any accidents. If you need help, I am willing to represent the entire Bai family to support you wholeheartedly. Bai Ruabing said sincerely, Thank you, but it's not necessary. Chen Bufan smiled, There was no need to ask for help from others because he had enough strength. Besides, with his abilities, he didn't need external assistance at all. It's almost noon, I have to cook for Sisi, would you like to stay for lunch together, or should I show you the door now? Bai Ruabing also couldn't stay any longer. Then we won't disturb you, Mr. Chen, let's have a meal together another time. With that, she and Wei Shu left. Bai Jia, why don't you stay for a meal before leaving? Sisi walked up to Bai Ruabing and shyly said. Chen Bufan was at a loss now. Bai Ruabing smiled and hugged Sisi, thanking her, but she was afraid of causing trouble for others. Sisi, you shouldn't call her sister, you should call her aunt. Chen Bufan corrected. Why? Isn't someone who has been married called auntie? Sisi looked curious. Tilting her head to look at Bai Ruabing, Bai Jiji, have you gotten married? Bai Ruabing smiled and shook her head, explaining softly, No, maybe no one finds Jiji attractive. Sisi looked puzzled, her eyes filled with curiosity. Bai Ruabing chuckled at the teasing. Dad, Jiji isn't married, so why can't I call her Jiji? Sisi asked confusedly. Chen Bufan was speechless and could only say, It's not polite to address her that way. Bai Ruabing added with a smile, It's okay, there's nothing impolite about it, I allow you to call me that. Cici bid farewell cheerfully. Okay, GG, see you later. 
When can we see you again? GG. Cece asked eagerly, really liking this beautiful older sister. Bai Ruabing replied gently, GG will be moving tomorrow to this neighborhood, so if you're bored, you can come find me anytime. Cece cheered, great, you're moving to our neighborhood? Chen Bufan asked in surprise. Bai Ruabing smiled and said, I can't stay in a hotel forever, so I'll rent a house first. If Mr. Chen doesn't like it, I can find another place. Chen Bufan sighed inwardly, she's really sticking to me. Where you live is your choice, I have no right to interfere. Bai Ruabing smiled and waved goodbye to Cici before leaving. After Bai Ruabing and Wei Shu left, Chen Bufan tapped Cici's head, feeling amused by how she handled things. Cici nodded seriously. Is your Bai Gigi really that pretty? Chen Bufan indulgently said. Kids have very pure thoughts. They choose who to be close to based on first impressions. But no one is prettier than mom. Suddenly, Cici asked. Dad, do you like Bai Gigi? Chen Bufan was taken aback. How could he like Bai Ruabing? But then he realized that Cici's idea of liking might be different from his. Cici, regardless of whether dad likes her or not, remember, never ask such questions in front of mom next time. Chen Bufan quickly reminded her. He was worried that Yuruo might misunderstand. On the same day, Chen Bufan summoned Kanglong. Kanglong, keep an eye on Jenin Mansion's movements. If they send someone to Liyong, make sure to capture one alive for me to interrogate personally. He wasn't afraid of Jenin Mansion, but he needed to find out from their people who exactly wanted to kill him. Kanglong nodded and left. At the same time, at the headquarters of Jenin Mansion in a certain place in Dongzhou, a young man stood in the hall and volunteered. Dad, let me take some people to Liyong. The speaker was none other than the deputy master of Jenin Mansion, Morong Lei. Returning from studying abroad, he was ready to enter the core circle of Jenin Mansion and needed to make some achievements to earn the respect of some old folks. Sitting at the head of the hall was a middle-aged man in a black Zhongshan suit, with silver hair and a commanding presence. This person was the prefect of Jenin Mansion, Morong Yi a top figure in the Eastern Territory, a formidable character who could shake the entire Eastern Territory with a stomp of his foot. Morong Yi asked the elders in the hall, what do you think? If the deputy master has this intention, let him try, there's no need for the mansion master to personally take action to kill a remnant of the Chen family. Morong Yi nodded. After receiving the order, Morong Lei's expression turned serious, and he immediately agreed without hesitation. He quickly gathered his men and rushed to Liyong to carry out the mission of killing Chen Bufan. The deep-seated grief and determination in his heart made his eyes shine with a firm light. As he was about to face the enemy, he took a deep breath, turning his sorrow and anger into strength, inspiring himself to move forward bravely. Morong Lei had only one belief in his heart. He must completely eliminate anyone related to Chen Bufan, leaving no room for any future trouble, without revealing any flaws. This was a decisive battle, and victory belonged only to those who acted decisively and without hesitation. Licking his lips, Morong Lei's eyes shimmered with determination as he prepared to face the challenges ahead. The town South Prefecture urgently mobilized a thousand elite troops to head to Liyong to support Morong Lei. At the same time, the twelve shadow guards were also dispatched. They are the top assassin team of the town South Prefecture, having undergone years of secret training they are considered unstoppable blades. Their presence undoubtedly brought immense pressure to the enemy, surpassing the strength of the 500-blade front of the Kilin Hall. The actions of the 12 Shadow Guards can be described as silent and effortless, easily destroying the 500-blade front. With their strength, the town South Prefecture has intimidated the entire power range of the Eastern Continent. Anyone who dares to provoke the town South Prefecture, once the 12 Shadow Guards take action, is destined to have no burial place. Morong Lei was shocked by this move, mobilizing the shadow guards to assist him in dealing with Chen Bufan, which is undoubtedly a huge move. He confidently stated that with the support of the shadow guards, it would not be difficult to flatten the entire Liang. Challenging Chen Bufan, Morong Lei confidently declared that the Kilin Hall of the town South Prefecture would not spare his life. However, Chen Bufan was unaware that his every move had long been under the surveillance of the Demon Temple. The news was immediately conveyed to Chen Bufan, who learned that the town South Prefecture had sent Morong Lei, a young prefect who had returned from overseas, 
with the intention of enhancing his own reputation by killing Chen Bufan. Chen Bufan knew everything about Morong Lei and calmly accepted the photo passed to him by Kang Long. In the photo, Morong Lei's eyes were like a wolf, with a hint of a cold smile at the corner of his mouth, giving a chilly feeling. At the same time, members of the Celestial Temple detected that the town South Prefecture had also mobilized a thousand troops to support Morong Lei. This powerful force made Chen Bufan snort coldly, showing no fear. With a wave of his hand, the photo of Morong Lei turned into powder. Chen Bufan was as firm as a rock, vowing to make Liang the grave of all of them. The investigation into Bai Ruabing's identity also yielded results, which Chen Bufan nodded in agreement. His interest in Zhang Taishan, the number one master and swordsman of Liang, was increasing day by day, arousing his curiosity. However, what puzzled him was that Lei Xingao was Zhang Taishan's disciple, yet Zhang Taishan had not come to seek revenge, which left Chen Bufan puzzled. Wasn't Zhang Taishan at Wolong Hall? Kanglong expressed uncertainty because Zhang Taishan had been living in seclusion in the mountains and rarely appeared. Chen Bufan decided not to disturb him for the time being, as his primary task was to deal with Morong Lei, the young prefect. Shortly after, the 1,000 troops from the town South Prefecture and the 12 Shadow Guards led by Morong Lei arrived in Liyang with great momentum. Upon learning the news, Chen Bufan calmly awaited the next move. The Lord, Morong Lei has arrived in Liyang. The news came that Morong Lei successfully met with a thousand followers and is currently gathering intelligence. Reporting to the Lord, Morong Lei chose to stay at the Tianyu Resort Villa and is expected to take action tonight. When the final message reached Chen Bufan, he finally reacted. As dusk approached, a carriage slowly left the Yunlu Academy and headed towards the Tianyu Resort Villa. Night fell. In the garden of the Tianyu Resort Villa, Morong Lei had just finished his bath and walked out of the pool. A charming beauty handed him a bathrobe, which he put on and sat on a rattan chair, leisurely sipping red wine. Surrounded by many followers, twelve shadow guards were on high alert. The entire villa was surrounded, and there were people from the Jenin mansion everywhere. After tasting the wine, the beauty quickly handed him a cigar and lit it for him. Taking a puff of the cigar, Morong Lei relaxed and then ordered his men to rest for a while and prepare to capture Chen Bufan and bring him in front of him at midnight. Yes, master, also, I heard that Chen Bufan's wife is as beautiful as a flower. Do not harm her, bring her along. I want to see with my own eyes the beauty of Liang. What charm does she possess? With a sly smile on his lips, things have escalated to this point. It's simply seeking a dead end by provoking the Jenin mansion. Even if you are the king of Liang, I can still bring you down. Master, someone is forcibly entering in a carriage. Just at that moment, a loud bang, as if a tank had crashed, the gate shattered instantly, the walls collapsed, and dust filled the air. A figure stood at the entrance, tall as a mountain, commanding respect. Who are you, sacred one? Morong Lei asked in surprise. I heard someone wants to kill me? The newcomer responded indifferently. With a few muffled sounds, more than a dozen people fell to the ground, already lifeless. Seeing this, everyone present was trembling in fear. Morong Lei's heart raced, from receiving the warning to these people falling, it was only a few seconds. The people from the Jenin mansion were not ordinary, yet they had no power to fight back. Chen Bufan, you have come. Morong Lei stared at the person at the door, gritting his teeth, without needing to ask more. He already knew who the person was, but he didn't expect the other party to come so quickly. How did you find out about my whereabouts? The deputy master of the Jenin mansion asked coldly. Monitoring me? Morong Lei frowned. His arrival was extremely secretive, yet it was leaked. Well, it saves me the trouble of finding you. You killed the people from my Kirin Hall. How do you plan to settle this? Settle accounts with me? Are you qualified? Chen Bufan stood with his hands behind his back, coldly saying, like a proud immortal king, radiating brilliance. Ha ha! Morong Lei suddenly burst into laughter. Some people actually questioned the qualifications of the steward of Jenin Prefecture, which made him feel disdainful. He arrived here with a thousand followers, covering inside and outside, and the hidden enemies were also under his control. Could anyone still compete with him? What could Chen Bufan bring out to contend with him? Just then, a figure suddenly flashed and quickly appeared in front of Chen Bufan. Reporting to the Lord, 
all the enemies lurking in the dark have been eliminated. This news filled the steward with a sense of victory. Morong Lei's face changed drastically when he heard the claim that the 1,000 people sent by the Judateng had been dealt with. A surge of unimaginable anger rose in his heart. He coldly taunted, You can summon your people to try. Chen Bufan's stern voice only fueled Morong Lei's anger further. Burning with rage, he urgently ordered everyone to come out, but in the silent night, there was no response. Feeling a sense of emptiness, Morong Lei shouted again for everyone to come out, but still, no one answered. Just as he felt despair creeping in, a figure in black hurriedly approached him, informing him that everyone had been killed. Morong Lei walked out of the villa in disbelief, only to be stunned by the scene before him. A group of strangers dressed in black stood there, exuding a cold and ruthless aura as if they were beings from another world. Morong Lei realized that these people were not from Jenin Prefecture but from an unfamiliar force. He was horrified to realize that their presence meant the complete annihilation of the people sent by Judateng. Suddenly, Chen Bufan's voice came from behind, sending a chill down Morong Lei's spine as if he were in an icy cave. He realized that these people were brought by Chen Bufan, indicating that he was in grave danger. Without hesitation, Morong Lei ordered, kill them. Sensing the aura of death, the twelve shadow guards and other members immediately launched an attack on Chen Bufan. Chen Bufan coldly declared that no matter how powerful the enemy was, they would be wiped out one by one. In the fierce battle, Chen Bufan displayed unparalleled strength, swiftly sweeping away dozens of subordinates, and the twelve shadow guards could not withstand his assault. Morong Lei knew deep down that these people were doomed. Chen Bufan's figure ravaged the battlefield like a storm, unstoppable. Morong Lei realized that, powerful as the twelve shadow guards were, they were no match for Chen Bufan's dark magic. One of the guards drew his sword and struck at Chen Bufan, but Chen Bufan, unfazed, shattered the sword with a punch, leaving the wielder in disbelief. With just his bare fists, he could easily defeat a sharp sword. Such a character is truly amazing. Boom! In the next moment, Another punch suddenly struck, directly hitting the opponent's chest, sending them flying, their ribs breaking instantly. The spectators couldn't help but feel shocked and fearful, marveling at how extraordinary this person was. This top assassin who was once trained in Jinan Prefecture actually had the thought of fleeing at this moment. Immediately, some people started to act. Swish, before they could take a few steps away, fierce attacks had already caught up to them. The cold light flashed a chill at the neck, followed by a sudden burst of heat, fresh blood gushing out like a spring. Bang! One by one, the shadow guards fell to the ground. In just three minutes, all twelve shadow guards were wiped out. Kang Long could only smile bitterly. The lord was just too powerful. He couldn't compete with him in the future. After all, he easily defeated twelve opponents, not leaving a single one behind. It seemed that he was too foolish. Is there anyone else who wants to challenge me? Chen Bufan turned around, smiling at Morong Lei. This smile, like a blooming flower, appeared more terrifying than a demon in Morong Lei's eyes, causing his whole body to tremble as if he had been shocked. As the deputy master of Jinan Prefecture, Morong Lei had experienced many ups and downs, but for the first time, he was scared into such a state. He knew that Chen Bufan was eager to make a name for himself, so his father mobilized twelve shadow guards to support him and even brought a thousand people from the other nine halls. However, just as they arrived at Liyang, Chen Bufan had already killed his way to the door, and those thousand people inexplicably all died, and the twelve shadow guards died on the spot in front of him. Faced with such formidable strength, Morong Lei still vowed to kill him, which was truly ridiculous. Just then, a shadow guard who had not yet died drew a pistol and aimed at the back of Chen Bufan's head. The previous twelve shadow guards were too confident, thinking they could end Chen Bufan with just their strength, only to be instantly killed in return, and now they finally had the opportunity. HMPH, no matter how powerful you are, can you dodge bullets? In the moment the trigger was pulled, the bullet shot rapidly towards its target. However, when the bullet was just one meter away from Chen Bufan's body, it suddenly stopped in midair, directly suspended. This scene left the shadow guard dumbfounded, almost unable to believe his eyes. In that instant, Chen Bufan turned around, gazing at the suspended bullet, a satisfied smile playing on his lips. 
Yes, I can now use my inner strength to block bullets. Boom. With his whole body surging with momentum, the force of his inner strength hit, and the bullet was instantly deflected, heading straight for the shadow guard. Kang Long was also surprised, realizing that the Lord's strength had increased, but he never expected it to reach such a level, being able to block bullets with inner strength, truly astonishing. Oh no, Morong Lei escaped. Kang Long suddenly shouted. Chen Bufan immediately turned to look, only to see Morong Lei speeding towards the direction of the villa at the fastest speed. Faced with Chen Bufan, who couldn't even be harmed by bullets, this guy was simply a monster. In Morong Lei's mind, countless curses and regrets were racing past, wishing he had a few more legs. Chase after him, Chen Bufan ordered without hesitation. The enemy from four years ago must not be allowed to escape from Jinan Prefecture. Chen Bufan and Kang Long quickly arrived at the villa, when suddenly a loud rumbling sound was heard, followed by a fierce windstorm sweeping through, howling incessantly. Looking up, a helicopter swiftly soared into the sky. Morong Lei sat upright in it, feeling triumphant. Ha ha, Chen Bufan, you never expected that I would prepare a helicopter, leaving you no way out. I will remember today's grudge in my heart and settle the score in the future. With Morong Lei's arrogant laughter echoing, the helicopter had already risen to a hundred meters high and disappeared in the darkness in an instant. Damn it, there's a helicopter here. Kenglong cursed, planning to drive after it. Chen Bufan stopped Kenglong and persuaded, don't worry, you won't catch up. We should figure out a way to locate the helicopter with radar. He can't possibly fly back to Guangling in one go. Impressed by this, Kenglong thought to himself that the Lord really had thoughtful considerations. He immediately started contacting the relevant departments to track the helicopter's position using radar. The demon army also retreated immediately, whether it was to destroy the Han family, flatten the Kilin Hall, or to kill Murin Lei today. The demon army did not have a chance to be of great use. Chen Bufan's strength was enough to annihilate them alone. However, for Chen Bufan, the significance of deploying the demon army was far more than that. Just as he returned home, Kenglong called to report, Lord, we have successfully tracked the helicopter, and I am sending people to closely monitor it. Chen Bufan ordered, keep an eye on it, once they land, bring them to me immediately. Murin Lei and his men had all been dealt with, so it shouldn't be difficult for Kenglong and the others to capture him. Chen Bufan just needed to wait at home for news. Two hours later, Kenglong sent another message, the helicopter has landed at Wolong Pavilion, and I have surrounded the area with my men ready to go in and capture him at any time. Chen Bufan said in surprise, Wolong Pavilion? Why did Murin Lei go there? Does he have connections with Jenin Mansion and Zhang Taishan? He instructed Kanglong, let the brothers lurk around, surround Wolong Pavilion and do not attack. Everything waits for my orders. The next morning, on a weekend, Yuru was resting at home to take care of the children. Chen Bufan left after bidding farewell, and Zhang Yuru did not ask much. Since their last conversation, she had learned to trust him and knew that he would tell her what she needed to know. Chen Bufan got in the car and left, arriving at a beautiful valley after more than an hour. Kanglong was already waiting there, and the two continued on together. Kanglong briefly reported the situation. Last night, Murin Lei landed at Wolong Pavilion by helicopter and has not come out since. After you ordered to surround but not attack, the brothers of the Demon Temple have been lurking in the surrounding mountains keeping an eye on the movements of Wolong Pavilion. The people sent by Jenin Mansion were all killed, and it's strange that Murin Lei didn't escape directly but came to Wolong Pavilion. Kanglong was also puzzled. We'll know once we get there. Since Zhang Taishan doesn't come looking for me, I'll go find him. Chen Bufan said coldly as the vehicle quickly drove towards the depths of the valley. Meanwhile, at Yunluo Academy, shortly after Chen Bufan left, Bai Ruabing hurriedly arrived. Zhang Yuru asked in confusion, Who are you looking for? Sisi called out eagerly to Bai Ruabing. Zhang Yuru was even more puzzled, not understanding who this woman was. Bai Ruabing hastily explained, Hello, I'm Bai Ruabing. I've visited Mr. Chen a few times before. Zhang Yuru said in astonishment, Visited a few times. She had never heard Chen mention it before. Bai Ruabing quickly asked, Is Mr. Chen at home? He just left. 
Bai Ruabing's heart sank when she learned that the Jin Nan Mansion had mobilized the Twelve Shadow Guards and a large number of subordinates to deal with Chen Bufan. She immediately went to find him, only to discover that Chen Bufan had already left. Bai Ruabing was anxious. Zhang Yuru shook her head, indicating that she didn't know where he had gone. Bai Ruabing frowned and speculated that Chen Bufan might have gone directly to find the deputy master of Jin Nan Mansion. Bai Ruabing immediately asked Zhang Yuru to call Chen Bufan, only to find his phone was turned off, causing her great worry. Bai Ruabing hurriedly bid farewell, feeling uneasy. Meanwhile, Chen Bufan, unaware of the situation, arrived at his destination a few minutes later. A quaint building stood on the lawn, with the three characters, Wolongze, written on the plaque. Chen Bufan got out of the car and gazed at these three characters, his eyes cold and determined. He knew that the top expert in Linyang resided here, and today he was here to see for himself. He shouted loudly, Zhang Taishan, I'm here. His voice was like a dragon's roar, shaking the heavens and the earth. Inside Wolongze, Morong Lei was shocked to hear the voice. The events of last night had left a shadow on him, and now that Chen Bufan had found his way here, he felt fear creeping into his heart. Without hesitation, he ran towards the backyard to ask Zhang Taishan to come quickly. However, Chen Bufan found no one inside Wolongze. He approached the wooden door and gently pressed against it, instantly shattering the lock and causing the door to open on its own. He strode into Wolongze, his momentum fierce, stirring up a gust of wind. Once again, he called out for Zhang Taishan to come out and meet him. His voice was like thunder, reverberating in all directions. At that moment, a powerful momentum suddenly emanated from the backyard, suppressing the raging wind, and a figure flew towards Chen Bufan. With a smile on his face, Chen Bufan gazed firmly at the approaching figure, a 60-year-old man with silver hair, dressed in traditional Chinese attire. The old man introduced himself as Zhang Taishan and asked Chen Bufan for his purpose. Without hesitation, Chen Bufan expressed his desire to meet Mr. Wolong causing Zhang Taishan to show a cold expression. In this story, there is a closed-door disciple named Xing Ao, who is a favorite student of Lao Fu. However, a few days ago, he was unfortunately killed by none other than Chen Bufan himself. Chen Bufan stood there, his eyes filled with regret and sadness. He let out a deep sigh and bravely admitted to the crime he had committed. His heart was filled with pain and guilt, realizing that he would carry this heavy burden of guilt unable to escape from it. On this quiet night, Chen Bufan's heart was as painful as if it had been cut by a knife. He recalled the time he spent studying with Xing Ao. Those days filled with laughter and sweat seemed to be right in front of him. However, reality cruelly reminded him that everything had become the past and could never be undone. Faced with Xing Ao's departure, Chen Bufan's heart was torn apart with unbearable pain. He realized that the harm he had caused to the sect and Xing Ao's family was irreparable. He deeply regretted his foolishness and impulsiveness, but it was already too late. On this lonely night, Chen Bufan felt as if his heart was burning with pain. He knew that, not matter how much he regretted and repented, he could not change what had already happened. He would forever bear the heavy burden of this crime, a fate he could not escape from. Zhang Taishan couldn't help but feel the flames of anger rising in his heart. This arrogant young man actually killed his closed-door disciple, showed no remorse, and even flaunted his provocation in his face. His anger soared to the sky, his eyes sharp as knives, staring closely at Chen Bufan, with a hidden impulse to strike. However, he was not in a hurry to retaliate, just coldly asking, If you hand over the person I want, I can spare your life and spare this land as well. Chen Bufan remained resolute, giving Zhang Taishan some face. If not for avoiding his affiliated forces being destroyed by the demon army last night, he would have acted long ago. Spare my life? Zhang Taishan couldn't help but burst into laughter after hearing this. Interesting, truly interesting. For 30 years, I have never been threatened in Liang. Mr. Wolong in Liang is respected by all, treated with courtesy by all. Even high-ranking figures seek his advice, and he dismisses them. I don't know where this kid came from. Daring to be unruly in Wolong Pavilion. Daring to claim a threat in front of me. Truly ignorant of the heights of heaven and earth. Just hand over the person? Chen Bufan asked angrily. I don't know who you want, 
But I know you killed my disciple. Today, I want you to kneel down and apologize. Zhang Taishan was aggressive. Chen Bufan coldly responded and then waved his hand. Search this place thoroughly. As soon as he finished speaking, the demon army gathered, surrounding the entrance, sealing off any escape route. Zhang Taishan's eyes turned cold as he said, I was in seclusion for several days and didn't want to break it for you. Now you've dug your own grave, which only strengthens my resolve to eliminate you. With that, he circulated his internal energy, the veins on his neck bulging, demonstrating profound internal skills. Suddenly, he rushed forward, a palm striking towards Chen Bufan, with a fierce momentum that almost tore through the void, whistling nonstop. Do I need to step in, Lord of the Hall? Kanglong asked anxiously, as one of the eight dragon kings of the Temple of Demons, dealing with the top master of Liyong should be a piece of cake. Having performed poorly in the previous battle alongside the Hall Lord, he now eagerly anticipated the chance to showcase his skills in front of Chen Bufan. Go ahead. Chen Bufan nodded in approval. All right. Kanglong was extremely excited, punching towards Zhang Taishan's fist. Bang. A loud bang, shaking the void. Zhang Taishan kept retreating, a look of surprise in his eyes. He didn't expect Liyong to still have such a strong opponent, and couldn't help but ask, who exactly are you? Kanglong also had to step back two steps, but remained calm, showing no expression on his face. Hearing Zhang Taishan's question, a cold smile crept up the corner of his mouth, feeling pleased in his heart, thinking, is this what you call strong? It seems that the strength of this self-proclaimed top master is too shallow. The real powerhouse has yet to make a move, and Zhang Taishan may not even withstand a single blow from him. He exerted force again launching an attack on Kanglong. Both of them had unfathomable strength, their momentum fierce, every move extremely sharp, with a series of explosive sounds erupting in the void. As one of the eight dragon kings of the Temple of Demons, Kanglong had fought alongside Chen Bufan in countless battles, each move being a deadly skill tested in real combat. Although the moves seemed simple and direct, they were actually lethal killing moves, engaging in a fierce confrontation with Zhang Taishan. Bang, 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 the two exchanged blows for dozens of rounds, and Zhang Taishan gradually felt the pressure mounting. The opponent was too fierce, with rich practical experience in combat. He excelled in internal martial arts, easily parrying every move. His attacks, on the other hand, were almost unstoppable. In a swift move, Kang Long seized the opportunity, delivering a ruthless elbow strike directly to Zhang Taishan's chest, sending him flying. Zhang Taishan fell to the ground, nearly suffering severe injuries, blood gushing from his mouth. Luckily, he managed to use his inner strength to prevent his ribs from fracturing. With a smug look on his face, Kanglong sarcastically remarked, Does the master of the hall still need to intervene? However, Chen Bufan suddenly pointed out, Kanglong, your strength has regressed. You could have easily killed him directly. Hearing this, Kanglong felt regretful hoping to showcase himself but receiving such criticism instead, feeling extremely disheartened. Chen Bufan continued to provoke, I thought you were braver, yet you only found a skilled fighter to represent you, hiding in the shadows. If you have the guts, challenge me directly. Hearing these words, Kang Long's expression turned strange. Could the opponent really want to compete with the Hall Master? Are you sure about this? Chen Bufan asked, excited. Zhang Taishan declared, you killed my disciple, and I must avenge him. As a man, you should face me in battle. He couldn't wait for Chen Bufan to make a move. Fine, I will personally take the field. But I'll remind you, I will only give you one chance, Chen Bufan said indifferently. Surprised, Zhang Taishan asked, what did you say? This guy doesn't even dare to fight himself but hired a skilled fighter. Now he's saying he'll only give the opponent one chance, it's ridiculous. I heard that Mr. Wolong is proficient in feng shui and swordsmanship, hailed as the top swordsman in Liyang. I suggest you better use a sword for this battle, Chen Bufan said coldly. Enraged, Zhang Taishan laughed, you're very bold, so arrogant, demanding the opponent to use a sword, utterly overestimating yourself. I won't boast about feng shui, but in swordsmanship, except for the top swordsman in Dongzhou, Zhu Yun, no one can defeat me. Since you crave death so much, I'll grant your wish. With a grab, a long sword flew into his hand instantly. 
Wolong swordsmanship. Zhang Taishan roared, wielding the sword directly at Chen Bufan. The sword was chilling, filled with killing intent. Morong Lei observed in secret, fists clenched. Kill, kill Chen Bufan. Just as the blade was about to strike Chen Bufan's head, a cold light suddenly struck, as swift as lightning, colliding with the sharp sword. With a loud clang, Zhang Taishan's sword was instantly broken. Before he could react, the cold light was already in front of him. Instinctively, he lowered his head, blood gushing out. This is a sword, Chen Bufan suddenly remarked. Zhang Taishan gasped in shock, blood still flowing. Before he could speak, he fell to the ground, lifeless. His eyes were fixed on the sky, fear still lingering deep in his pupils. He couldn't come to terms with the fact that he was defeated in an instant, especially while using his best swordsmanship. It turned out that even the top expert in Liyong was just like this. A sense of powerlessness welled up in his heart, and he couldn't help but marvel at the mysteries of fate. Kanglong was filled with hopelessness, feeling that the issue was not that Zhang Taishan was too weak, but that the palace master was too overbearing. Suddenly, Chen Bufan's gaze shifted to the corner, where he saw a figure swiftly approaching. Without much thought, he knew who it was. This time, you can't escape. Chen Bufan immediately chased after. In the backyard of Wolong Pavilion, Morong Lei ran desperately, feeling like his heart was about to jump out of his chest. He felt fear, even more terrifying than last night. If he hadn't seen it with his own eyes, he would have found it hard to believe. Taking the initiative, he led the twelve shadow guards and thousands of followers from afar to Liyang, just to get rid of Chen Bufan, show his worth, make the people of Jenin Mansion believe in him and prepare to take over his father's position in the future. However, as soon as they arrived at their destination, Chen Bufan made his move. Except for him, everyone else was brutally killed. While the thousands of followers being eliminated could be accepted, the twelve shadow guards were like the trump card in Jenin Mansion's hands, the deterrent to the major forces in the eastern continent, yet they were all defeated one by one. If this news were to reach Jenin Mansion, he would be finished likely facing severe punishment from his father, even making Jenin Mansion a laughingstock throughout the eastern continent. Therefore, he rushed to Wolong Pavilion in a helicopter. He had investigated beforehand and knew that Zhang Taishan was Xing Ao's master. After Xing Ao was killed, Zhang Taishan would surely come to Chen Bufan for revenge. He took the opportunity to ask Zhang Taishan to take action, making it his final attempt to deal with Chen Bufan. However, the current situation only made him feel fear. He no longer cared about losing face, only wanting to return to Jenin Mansion as soon as possible, never wanting to come to Liyang again in his lifetime. Chen Bufan was like a demon that couldn't be provoked. Morong Lei ran to the helicopter at the fastest speed of his life, then hurriedly climbed into the cabin. Only when he successfully started the helicopter did he finally breathe a sigh of relief. Luckily, he was smart enough to hide and observe when Zhang Taishan appeared, giving him the chance to escape in time, otherwise, there would have been no hope. Just like last night, if it hadn't been for a shadow guard's sudden attack, he wouldn't have had a chance to escape. It was heaven's blessing, destined that I wouldn't die, Morong Lei said excitedly. Suddenly, a heavy punch shattered the helicopter's glass, and a cold face appeared in front of him in an instant. Chen Bufan, Morong Lei screamed in fear waving his hands trying to resist. Young master, you haven't even enjoyed the scenery of Liyang, why rush like this? Chen Bufan grabbed Morong Lei, tossing him to the ground like a chick. Chen Bufan, dare to touch me and see, Jenin Mansion will never let you off. Morong Lei threatened loudly. Chen Bufan showed no mercy, stepping on his chest, making a cracking sound as his ribs broke, blood flowing from his mouth. Chen, Chen Bufan, Please spare me, I'll give you anything you want. Morong Lei said with difficulty, fear in his eyes. You're so quick to cower, not even afraid of tarnishing Jenin Mansion's reputation. Chen Bufan said disdainfully, I don't need anything from you, just tell me one thing. Speak, Morong Lei seemed to see a glimmer of hope, excitement flashing in his eyes. Four years ago, why did Jenin Mansion have Kilin Hall deal with me? What was the reason behind it? Chen Bufan asked, the seven great families of Guangling spared no expense to hire the Jenin Mansion to deal with a person, who turned out to be Chen Bufan. Chen Bufan took a deep breath, 
trying to calm the anger in his heart. He had long anticipated this day would come, and now everything had been confirmed, it was indeed them. Six years ago, the eight major families of Feng, Chen, Chu, Wei, Zhang, Shen, Han, and Yang stood like eight towering mountains in the city of Guangling, highly respected and known as the eight great families of Guangling. Among these eight families, the Chen family ranked second, unique in both business and family heritage. For hundreds of years, the rich wealth and legacy left by their ancestors should have been passed down from generation to generation to continue to flourish. However, on that fateful night, the seven families made their move, slaughtering the Chen family, leaving dozens of family members dead and buried. Only Chen Bufan managed to escape, fleeing to Liyang with the help of Ji Yu Bo, seeking refuge with the Han family, living in misery and hiding. Six years passed, day by day, night by night, but that overwhelming blood feud still lingered in Chen Bufan's heart, impossible to erase. For his father who toiled for the family, his diligent and virtuous mother, and his twelve-year-old sister, the once happy family was destroyed in one night. The blood relatives could never return. The thought of all this tore at Chen Bufan's heart. The other party had already wiped out his family, yet they still wanted to spend a fortune to hire the Jenin mansion to hunt him down to death, such cruelty. Why don't the seven great families of Guangling take action themselves? Chen Bufan asked, since they knew he was hiding in Liyang. With the power of the seven families, they could easily send someone to deal with him. So why spend a fortune to hire the Jenin mansion? It was truly unnecessary. After exterminating the Chen family, the seven families seemed to have provoked a certain power, acting cautiously and carefully. Hence they entrusted the Jenin mansion to deal with him. Mu Ronglei confessed without hesitation when pressed by Chen Bufan. Chen Bufan looked at Mu Ronglei coldly and said, You shouldn't have set foot in Liyang, let alone get involved in the grudge between the seven great families and my Chen family. Mu Ronglei suddenly realized his mistake and started begging for mercy, tears streaming down his face. He only wanted to make a name for himself and had never expected to end up on a dead end path. Chen Bufan coldly instructed Kenglong to send the young master back to the Jenin mansion as a gesture of goodwill. Kenglong nodded in agreement, understanding Chen Bufan's intentions with their long-standing tacit understanding. Send me back to the Jenin mansion? Not kill me? Mu Ronglei was stunned, then overwhelmed with gratitude. After Mu Ronglei was taken away, the Wolong Pavilion returned to tranquility. Chen Bufan stood in the courtyard, not leaving immediately. With the strength of the seven great families, what force made all of them fear and hesitate? And what connection did this force have with the Chen family? Chen Bufan pondered for a long time but could not find any intersection between the Chen family and any force. Guangling, as the capital of the eastern province, and the eight great families being the pillars of Guangling and the top existence in the entire eastern province, there was no other force that could compare to them. At that time, Chen Bufan was still young and inexperienced, focusing on his studies and showing no interest in the family affairs. However, his parents suddenly hid some things from him, which made him start to doubt. Could it be that his parents had some hidden plans for him? Chen Bufan wondered to himself. Nevertheless, he decided not to dwell on it anymore. Since the opponents were the seven major families joining forces, he would settle all scores, old and new, once and for all. Determination gleamed in Chen Bufan's eyes. Originally, he was looking forward to a showdown with Zhang Taishan this morning, but the result turned out to be somewhat disappointing. As the top expert in Liyang, Zhang Taishan was nothing but a name without substance. And that legendary Zhu Yun. Chen Bufan suddenly whispered this name, casting doubt on his strength. He couldn't help but wonder, is this name really as powerful as it sounds? After the aftermath of the battle with the demon army, Chen Bufan left in a carriage. Just as he arrived at his doorstep, Zhang Yuru hurried over, carefully examining his body. She was almost about to take off his clothes to recheck for injuries when she confirmed that he was unharmed. Anxiously, she asked, Bufan, are you okay? Chen Bufan smiled and replied, of course, why wouldn't I be? Zhang Yuru breathed a sigh of relief and said, that's good. Chen Bufan then asked, why suddenly ask this? Did something happen? Did you guess something? Zhang Yuru answered, this morning, a woman named Bai came looking for you, looking anxious. Combined with your unreachable phone, I got worried. 
Chen Bufan furrowed his brows and asked, Bai Ruabing? What does she want from me again? Is she sending someone to assassinate me? Zhang Yuru nodded and confirmed, Yes, it's Bai Ruabing. Are you very familiar with her? Chen Bufan sensed a hint of jealousy in Zhang Yuru's eyes. He knew all too well that the thing he hated the most was happening again. Chen Bufan admitted, She has approached me a few times, wanting me to treat her family, but I refused. Zhang Yuru advised, It's best to explain such matters clearly. The more you hide, the more problems may arise. Chen Bufan explained, I don't want to help others for no reason, and besides, if something goes wrong, I'm afraid of being accused. Zhang Yuru was scared. She didn't want to wait for years, and if something happened, this relationship might end. Chen Bufan gently said, In my heart, you are the most beautiful, incomparable to anyone else. Although Zhang Yuru playfully hit Chen Bufan, there was a hint of a smile in her eyes. Concerned, Zhang Yuru said, Since she is looking for you, there may be something important. Shouldn't you ask her? Chen Bufan refused, No need. Bai Ruabing is cunning. Her friendliness is just to get me involved. I don't want to be too entangled. Zhang Yuru felt a bit embarrassed, realizing she had overthought. During lunch, Chen Bufan received a call from an unknown number. Anxious voice came from the other end. Mr. Chen, is that you? This is Bai Ruabing. Chen Bufan glanced at Zhang Yuru. Zhang Yuru explained, I was afraid she had urgent matters to discuss with you, so I gave her your number. Chen Bufan coldly asked, what do you want from me? Bai Ruabing urgently said, The town Nan Prefecture has sent the deputy prefect and the elite killer 12 shadow guards. They are in Liyang, and they will definitely target you today. Chen Bufan chuckled and said, Thank you for the information, but it's already too late. Bai Ruabing exclaimed in surprise, What? Chen Bufan continued, I've already taken care of it. If you have any issues in the future, come directly to me, don't bother my family. With that, he hung up the phone. Bai Ruabing stared at her phone in disbelief, completely speechless. Wei Shu asked, Miss, how did it go? Bai Ruabing suppressed his anger and said coldly, He said everything has been resolved. Resolved the people from Jin Nan Fu? This Chen Bufan is just too arrogant. Not to mention the nine halls sending people. Just a Jin Nan Fu shadow guard is enough to intimidate the East Continent. What ability does Chen Bufan have to confront them? He is simply not capable of dealing with the people from Jin Nan Fu. Bai Ruabing agreed with Wei Shu's words. Miss, you are too kind to Chen Bufan. You are so friendly to him. But Chen Bufan doesn't care at all. Just be firm with him. Wei Shu suggested. Kidnapping him to the Bai family by force? Bai Ruabing asked with a smile, then shook her head. Based on my several encounters with Chen Bufan, he won't be intimidated by this method at all. We don't have the strength for it now. Since we are asking for Chen Bufan's help, it's not appropriate to do so. Miss, we can't afford the consequences. Wei Shu said urgently. No one is more anxious than me. Grandfather is seriously ill. Bai Ruabing sighed. Now there is only one way. Wait for the people from Jin Nan Fu to find Chen Bufan. When Chen Bufan is in trouble, I will step in to protect him. Then he should be willing to help, right? Wei Shu's face changed suddenly. There is no connection between Jin Nan Fu and our Bai family. And this is the East Continent. Miss, they may not give face. It's too dangerous. This is the only way. I have made up my mind, for grandfather, for the Bai family. Bai Ruabing said firmly. Tears welled up in Wei Shu's eyes. The crisis of the Bai family is truly difficult. In the afternoon, Chen Bufan received a call from Kenglong. Master, the matter has been handled properly. I believe this great gift will surprise Jin Nan Fu. Very good, but this great gift is not enough. Chen Bufan said, What does the master plan to do? I have obtained the necessary information. Instead of waiting for Jin Nan Fu to send someone to assassinate me, it's better to take the initiative. Chen Bufan said coldly, The master is going to take action against Jin Nan Fu. Kenglong was extremely excited. Dealing with Jin Nan Fu, there is no need to make such a big fuss. Chen Bufan refused. Then, the people from Zan Ying Men should have arrived by now. Chen Bufan said lightly, Zan Ying Men? Kang Long's eyes showed surprise. In his view, Chen Bufan was the lord of the demon temple, even the master of Zan Ying Men. 
Zan Ying Men is the mysterious organization founded by Chen Bufan. If the demon temple is like a fierce blade, shaking the four directions, then Zan Ying Men is a hidden sharp sword, usually unseen, unknown, but once unsheathed, it will surely be invincible. In Kanglong's memory, Zan Ying Men has not yet been used. After the master chose to retreat, he regretfully thought that he might never see Zan Ying Men in action in his lifetime. And now, after a long period of accumulation, this mysterious organization Zan Ying Men is finally going to take action. The blood in Kanglong's body was boiling at this moment. Yunshou, one of the ten major prefectural cities in the East Continent. At this moment, in a leisure mountain villa on the outskirts of the city, several middle-aged men were gathering together to drink tea and chat, with several beautiful women massaging them on the side. The legendary Chen Bufan is truly an extraordinary figure. He dared to challenge the Kirin Hall and wipe them out completely. It is said that even the chief of the ministry personally took action, mobilizing a thousand elite warriors recruited from our Tiger Hall, with the Shadow Guards accompanying them to Liang. This turn of events is truly shocking. A core member of the Tiger Hall couldn't help but exclaim, his face filled with confusion and disbelief. Mingu Teng as an important force under Jinan Prefecture, owns Yunshou and controls the local economic lifeline. This mountain villa is one of their assets, symbolizing their strength. Mingguteng, as the most powerful local force, dominates the entire region, and no one dares to underestimate them. They are far from ordinary Zhonghu gangs and can almost be considered orthodox martial arts sects because they have master-level martial artists guarding them. The hall master is a man in his late fifties, with high temples and eyes shining brightly. As the hall master, he is also a master of martial arts, highly valued by Jinan Prefecture, and has been in Yunshou, this land of changing fortunes, for 20 years. He has seen all kinds of grand occasions, but when asked by others, he smiles coldly and without hesitation says, since I joined Jinan Prefecture, I have never seen the headquarters act so ostentatiously. Not only did they mobilize manpower here, but even the strength of a shadow guard surpasses mine. Now the whole army has been wiped out just to hunt down a young man named Chen Bufan. It's truly unbelievable. Perhaps it's just that Kilinteng is too weak, and Xingao himself is incompetent. Someone interjected. The hall master nodded slightly, showing some agreement. Every year when the headquarters holds the Ten Halls Conference, I can see Xingao, and I know him somewhat. His strength is not inferior to mine, after all, his master is Zhang Taishan, a reputable master in Liang. And anyone who can enter the top ten halls of Jinan Prefecture is not weak. The hall master pondered and said, It is said that Chen Bufan is a descendant of the Chen family, and he should not be very old. Chen family? Oh, that's why. The Chen family, once one of the eight great families of Guangling, was destroyed overnight six years ago. The hall master said coldly, Everyone was quite shocked after hearing this. But this descendant, following the young prefect to Liang, is doomed to perish as well. No one Jinan prefecture wants to deal with can escape. The hall master's tone was firm, revealing supreme dominance. Just then, a woman in red suddenly appeared outside the villa, her face covered with a veil, mysterious and unpredictable. The hall master asked, What's the matter with you looking for me? The woman replied coldly, I've come to give you your final journey. The hall master was taken aback, then burst into laughter. In Yunshou, you say such things, you, ha ha ha. Before he could finish speaking, he suddenly paused. A silver needle appeared on his neck, instantly sealing his throat, blood gushing out uncontrollably. He struggled to speak but eventually fell weakly onto the chair. Oh, the onlookers were horrified, trembling uncontrollably. The woman remained silent waved her hand, and several silver needles shot out. Chichich, several core members were hit in succession and fell to the ground. After completing the mission, the woman disappeared like a ghost, as if she had never appeared. In the following days, Mingguteng in Yunshou was attacked by mysterious figures, suffering heavy losses. Unrelated personnel panicked and fled, and Mingguteng, one of the top ten halls, came to an end in the history of Yunshou. Similar events also occurred in other cities, none were spared, all were caught off guard by the sudden appearance of mysterious figures. Within a short hour, all important figures fell victim to the poison, and the nine main halls of the nine major cities were reduced to ashes simultaneously.
This series of extermination actions happened so swiftly that the victims didn't even have time to call for help from headquarters. In the evening, a box filled with mysterious objects was delivered to Jenin Prefecture and designated for Mu Rongye to receive. When Mu Rongye opened the box, he was horrified to find the contents, his son, Zhao Lei. He immediately called for emergency assistance, but even with prompt medical attention, Mu Rongye's life could not be saved. The news spread like wildfire, causing an uproar in Jenin Prefecture. The deputy prefect led his men to Luyang on official business, but after just one night, only one body was returned. The twelve shadow guards and thousands of personnel, all disappeared without a trace, unable to be contacted, as if evaporated from the earth. Luyang area suddenly turned into an inescapable hell in their eyes, and everyone became thorough disappearances. Mu Rongye knelt before his son's body, roaring angrily at the name Chen Bufan. A member of the Chen family had caused such huge losses to Jenin Prefecture, even burying his son in it, a betrayal he could not forgive. He immediately ordered all members of the nine main halls to surround Liang, vowing to bring Chen Bufan to his demise. Mu Rongye shouted in anger, with no room for negotiation, just wanting to take Chen Bufan's head immediately. However, when his men set out after receiving orders, they returned in panic within a few minutes, pale-faced, knees weak, and kneeling directly on the ground. Trembling, they reported to the prefect that all members of the nine main halls had disappeared. This news struck like a thunderbolt. The whole hall fell into a silence filled with terrified gazes and gasps. Mu Rongye grabbed his subordinate, questioning, Mingu Hall, Qinglong Hall, Xuanwu Hall, Zhuk Hall, Pixio Hall, Fengwang Hall, Jinchong Hall, Heish Hall, Teodi Hall, the nine main halls, all wiped out, not a single one left. This news made Mu Rongye's vision black out, nearly fainting, luckily supported by attendants. The complete annihilation of the nine main halls was a severe blow to him. Coupled with the Kirin Hall, these ten main halls had long dominated the ten major cities in the eastern province, establishing a formidable empire of Jenin Prefecture. To think that they all perished overnight. Who could believe it? Who dared to believe it? Mu Rongye calmed down and ordered an immediate investigation into the nine major cities. Until the shocking conclusion was finally reached. The nine halls not only were destroyed simultaneously, but also collapsed one after another within a short half hour. When Morong Yi learned of this news, he couldn't keep calm inside and was filled with excitement. He even began to question whether he should investigate further, as the information he had received made him feel extremely agitated. These halls are like money trees nurtured by Jen Nan Prefecture, each rooted in a town, radiating to various places, and the influence of Jen Nan Prefecture spreading accordingly. And each hall's leader possesses extraordinary strength, being martial arts masters, making them unbeatable for ordinary people. However, in just half an hour, all nine halls were completely wiped out. It's simply unbelievable. Jen Nan Fu was once an unparalleled power in the East, looking down on all others. However, the sudden destruction of the Nine Halls Gate was swift and overwhelming, catching everyone off guard. The identity of the mysterious attackers could not be determined, casting an invisible terror over Jen Nan Fu and stirring panic among the people. An enemy capable of destroying the Nine Halls Gate at the same time undoubtedly had the ability to raise Jen Nan Fu to the ground at any moment. In such a dire situation, Mu Rong Yi issued strict orders for everyone to remain in confinement until the enemy's identity was uncovered. As for Chen Bi Yu Fan, although there was no evidence linking him to the attack, various signs made it impossible not to suspect him. Whether it was returning Mu Rong Lei's body or destroying the Nine Halls Gate, all of this could just be the beginning, and Jen Nan Fu's fate was hanging by a thread. At the Yunlu Academy in Liang, Chen Bi Yu Fan stood on the balcony, hands behind his back, gazing in the direction of Guangling. Kang Long stood behind him, just reporting the news, but his heart was still restless. The swift action of the Shadow Gate had turned the Nine Halls Gate into the past in just half an hour. This made Kang Long deeply appreciate the power of the Shadow Gate, a mysterious organization founded by the Palace Lord with extraordinary strength. There was no change on Chen Bi Yu Fan's face. He had long heard of the strength of the Shadow Gate and was not surprised. He knew that if even this kind of task could not be completed, the Shadow Gate would have no reason to exist. However, 
It also made him see that even though they had long been secluded in Qilong, the members of the Shadow Gate had received good training, which made him feel relieved. Although they could not compare to the Million Demon Army, the strength of each person in the Shadow Gate was unparalleled. Palace Lord, since the Shadow Gate is so powerful, why not let them directly eliminate Jin Nan Fu? Kang Long asked in confusion. Han Lai couldn't defeat the Kilin Hall. The Kilin Hall couldn't defeat Jin Nan Fu. If Jin Nan Fu can't resist, who else should we turn to? Chen Biu Fan asked with a smile. Kang Long suddenly realized. It turned out that the palace lord was forcing Jin Nan Fu to draw out a stronger opponent. As for the more powerful force behind Jin Nan Fu, Chen Biu Fan already had a clue in his mind, with the seven great families being the first on the list. After the seven great families received a warning from a mysterious force six years ago, they were unusually fearful and spared no expense to ask Jin Nan Fu for help. However, Jin Nan Fu failed to achieve its goal in incurring heavy losses would definitely discuss countermeasures with the seven great families. He was not forcing Jin Nan Fu to take action but rather pressuring the seven great families. The grudges from six years ago, he would settle them with the seven great families. Seven great families, just you wait, I will come to settle the score with you. Chen Biu Fan said coldly. Just then, his gaze suddenly fixed on a nearby villa, where he spotted two familiar figures. Are they monitoring me? Chen Biu Fan asked directly, exuding a cold aura that made Wei Shu nervous, afraid of any unforeseen circumstances. Bai Ruabing smiled and said, I remember mentioning that I rented a house next door and just moved in today. Chen Bufan looked slightly embarrassed, his momentum diminished, but his eyes remained cold. Are you moving here to monitor me? I hate being disturbed, he said. Wei Shu quickly explained, Mr. Chen, you misunderstood our miss. Knowing Jin Nan Fu might take action, Miss had to protect herself. Once they come, Miss can only take risks to stop them. After speaking, Wei Shu glared at Chen Bufan, feeling dissatisfied. Chen Bufan sighed, not wanting to cause this misunderstanding. I'm sorry, I misunderstood you, he said, understanding and showing apology. It's okay, if you want to leave, you can still do so now. I will protect your family and Jin Nan Fu will not harm them, Bai Ruabing said calmly. Miss Bai, it's already late, Kang Long said with a smile. Why is it too late? Bai Ruabing asked in confusion. The people from Jin Nan Fu won't come. You don't need to worry about me, Chen Bufan said. I have reliable information. They are nearby, why aren't they coming? Bai Ruabing asked. I'm confident, Chen Bufan said with a smile. Mr. Chen, you are too confident. We took the risk to wait with you, but you don't appreciate it, which makes me angry, Wei Shu said angrily. I don't need your help, Chen Bufan said indifferently. To him, it was just the truth. Suddenly, Bai Ruabing said, Chen Bufan, how about we make a bet? Chen Bufan asked, what kind of bet? Bai Ruabing solemnly said, if the people from Jin Nan Fu don't come, you win, and you can make me do anything. If they come, you lose, help my Bai family. Regardless of the outcome, I admire you as a person. Chen Bufan smiled and said, All right, I'll take the bet with you, but the result is still uncertain, and you might also lose. Bai Ruabing calmly replied, I trust that Chen Bufan will keep his promise. Chen Bufan shook his head and left with Kang Long. Miss, Chen Bufan will definitely keep his word, but I'm still worried, Wei Shu said. Although I can't fully understand Chen Bufan, I believe he will keep his promise, Bai Ruabing said confidently. Originally, she had planned to wait for Chen Bufan's defeat, secretly plotting to save him as Miss Bai's identity, so that he would owe her a favor. However, she knew this plan was not foolproof, so she decided to rely on the possibility of Chen Bufan losing the bet. With anticipation in her heart, she waited for the next development. Let's wait and see how this game of wits will end. Bai Ruabing waited for the entire afternoon, but there was no sign of anyone from Jinan Mansion. Despite feeling a bit uneasy, she didn't dwell on it too much. She speculated that the people from Jinan Mansion might choose to act when the night was quiet. However, as the clock struck midnight, Bai Ruabing began to feel anxious. She didn't want to see Chen Bufan come to harm, but she had made a bet with him and now it seemed she was destined to lose the chance to seek his help. When the clock finally struck midnight, 
Bai Ruabing's heart turned cold as ice. The people from Jenin Mansion did not appear, she lost. How did Chen Bufan know that the people from Jenin Mansion wouldn't show up? Bai Ruabing began to doubt the accuracy of the intelligence. Wei Shu thought all of this was too unbelievable. Could it be that there was a deviation in the intelligence? Bai Ruabing contacted the intelligence personnel of the Bai family overnight, hoping to uncover the truth. That night, the Bai family's intelligence personnel reported a large amount of information. The twelve shadow guards of Jenin Mansion were annihilated, the assembled members of the nine halls were also completely wiped out, and the body of the deputy mansion master Morong Lei was sent to Jenin Mansion. At the same time, the nine halls of Jenin Mansion were destroyed by a mysterious person at the same time, causing the entire mansion to fall into panic, implementing strict control and prohibiting anyone from going out. These pieces of information left Bai Ruabing stunned. She was immersed in endless shock, finding it hard to believe. She immediately contacted the family and received a four-word reply, undoubtedly true. Although the Bai family was located in Qingzhou, they also had a vast network in Dongzhou, and their information was absolutely reliable. The Bai family was shocked when they received this information and only replied to Bai Ruabing after repeated confirmation. The deputy mansion master was killed, the twelve shadow guards were annihilated, and the nine halls were destroyed. Who could be so ruthless? Wei Shu said in amazement, feeling a chill in his chest. Chen Bufan, Bai Ruabing suddenly said. Chen Bufan? Wei Shu couldn't believe it. All of this was too unbelievable. Jenin Mansion sent the deputy mansion master to assassinate Chen Bufan, but ended up in complete failure. The only explanation could be that Chen Bufan took action. Bai Ruabing speculated. She remembered when she reminded Chen Bufan earlier. He had already left, and later on the phone, he said it was already too late. Now it seemed that what he meant by, too late, was that he had already dealt with the people from Jenin Mansion. No wonder Chen Bufan was so convinced that the people from Jenin Mansion wouldn't come. It wasn't blind confidence but because the other party had already suffered a crushing defeat. As for the destruction of the Nine Halls, it must also be related to Chen Bufan, otherwise how could it be such a coincidence? But Chen Bufan was in Liang. What kind of power did he have to simultaneously destroy the distant nine halls? Bai Ruabing dared not think too much. Even if the Bai family joined forces, they would hardly have such ability. Could this all just be a coincidence? Someone attacked Jenin Mansion, but it allowed Chen Bufan to succeed. Wei Shu found it hard to believe. However, Bai Ruabing thought this possibility was very slim. The initial investigation clearly had a major misjudgment. Chen Bufan was no ordinary person. Wei Shu, do you remember something? Bai Ruabing suddenly remembered. When we arrived at Liyang Airport, the senior officials and crew members were all very respectful towards him. Bai Ruabing hesitated for a moment, wondering if Uncle Hui's previous enthusiasm was to welcome Chen Bufan. As this thought crossed her mind, Uncle Hui's expression immediately became strange. Welcoming Chen Bufan? Chen Bufan's identity? Chen Bufan, however, looked at Bai Ruabing indifferently, a hint of a smile hanging on his lips, unsurprised by Bai Ruabing's surrender. If she hadn't surrendered, that would have been strange. He asked, how did you rest last night? Bai Ruabing sighed bitterly after hearing this. Since receiving the message from the family, she had almost spent the whole night without sleep, not daring to disturb Chen Bufan. It was only now that she had gathered the courage to come with dark circles under her eyes. She admitted that she had underestimated Chen Bufan. Now, no matter what conditions he proposed, she would agree. Chen Bufan replied lightly, I won't help you. Don't bring this up again in the future. Bai Ruabing was stunned for a moment, a look of sadness on her face. She had tried so hard, but in the end, she had made a mess of things and ended up with nothing. She took a deep breath trying to hold back her emotions and prevent herself from breaking down. Chen Bufan was unwilling to help. No matter how she pleaded, her hope in him was completely shattered. She calmly said, All right, I won't bother Mr. Chen again in the future. After that, she left with Uncle Wei. Uncle Wei sighed deeply. In the past, he might have complained a few words, but facing Chen Bufan now, he didn't dare to say more, only silently following Bai Ruabing away. CC followed behind Bai Ruabing and shouted, Sister Tilda. Bai Ruabing smiled gently and said, Darling, 
Sister has something to do today and can't accompany you. If you need me, go to the neighbor. After Bai Ruabing and Uncle Wei left, CC turned to look at Chen Bufan and asked, Dad, can I go? Chen Bufan nodded helplessly. Okay. CC happily followed them out. With the demon's temple people secretly protecting, Bai Ruabing also dared not act rashly, unless the Bai family no longer wanted to exist. After considering, Chen Bufan decided that since he had already started to act against Jenin Mansion, the seven major families would not sit idly by. Regardless of the next moves of the seven major families, he would soon go to Guangling. With family by his side, the enmity from six years ago should also be settled. Recently, Chen Bufan planned to spend quality time with Yuru and CC. In the evening, he personally went to pick up Yuru from work, preparing to give her a surprise. When Zhang Yuru walked out of the company and saw Chen Bufan, she tried to force a smile. Bufan, you're here. Are you here to pick me up after work? Let's go out for dinner together. Chen Bufan invited. Zhang Yuru considered for a moment and said, No need, let's eat at home. I'll cook. Chen Bufan smiled and said, I'll treat you, you don't have to worry. Next time, Bufan, I don't really want to go out. Zhang Yuru insisted. In the end, they returned home, with Zhang Yuru cooking absent-mindedly, almost burning the food. Chen Bufan felt a sense of pity and quietly observed. It wasn't until the meal was over and Sisi was playing alone in the living room that Chen Bufan found Zhang Yuru. He gently asked, Xiao Yuru. Have you encountered anything unpleasant at the company? Zhang Yuru, the general manager of the company, confidently said, Who dares to bully me? Just think about it. Apart from Sao Wadong, there is no one in the company with a higher position than her. Even Sao Wadong wouldn't allow Yuru to be wronged, unless the company no longer needed her. Chen Bufan asked, What's bothering you? Tell me. Yuru explained, It's nothing, just some minor work issues. Chen Bufan was not entirely convinced, really? Yuru's eyes flickered, and she said slightly uneasily, Yes, I won't lie to you. Chen Bufan patiently advised, Yuru, I am your husband. I hope you can tell me directly if there's anything bothering you. Yuru replied with a hint of apology, Of course, I know you're my husband. Don't worry, it's really nothing. Take Cece to play, I still have some work to take care of. Chen Bufan nodded took Sisi, and left. Watching their departure, Yuru sighed, then walked into the bedroom and gently locked the door. Opening the closet, she saw a pristine white wedding dress hanging neatly in there, carefully stored in a dustproof bag, spotless. This was a gift from Chen Bufan, and she kept it very meticulously. She slowly took down the wedding dress, looked at the sparkling diamonds on it, filled with love but also a hint of reluctance. Finally, she made up her mind, took out her phone, hesitated for a while, and dialed a number she hadn't contacted for a long time. A familiar voice came from the other end, Hello, Wang Rui? Yuru, I didn't expect you to call me. Yeah, I want to see you. The next morning, Zhang Yuru carried a big bag to work. Chen Bufan asked with concern, Yuru, what are you carrying? Do you want me to drive you to the company? Yuru politely declined. Some company documents, it's fine. I'll take a taxi, you stay home and take care of Cece. She hailed a taxi. Yuru was a straightforward girl, and her inner conflicts often showed directly on her face. Chen Bufan was really worried, so he called Kang Long. Kang Long assured him. Yuru didn't encounter any trouble at the company. Then he added, Yesterday, a few people came to the company looking for my sister-in-law. I felt they looked a bit familiar. Chen Bufan frowned and asked, Familiar? Who were they? Kang Long replied, they seem to be from the Zhang family. Chen Bufan's expression turned cold. He had solemnly warned the Zhang family before, how dare they come and harass Yuru. He blamed Kang Long for not informing him at the time. Kang Long explained, I initially thought they were regular customers, only remembered today. Chen Bufan sternly ordered, protect Yuru well, inform me immediately if anything happens. Kang Long promptly agreed. Half an hour later, Kang Long suddenly sent a message. Master, sister-in-law didn't go to work at the company, but took a taxi to a restaurant. Chen Bufan furrowed his brows. Yuru actually deceived him. Didn't go to work, but went to a restaurant. Who was she meeting? Why did she hide it from him? Nervously, he instructed, keep watching her. 
Yuru looked up at the cafe in front of her. This place was considered very upscale in the city. She calmed herself down and walked in. In a corner of the restaurant, a gentleman in a suit sat there, his eyes constantly scanning around. He wore gold-rimmed glasses, his hair neatly combed, looking very elite. Suddenly, a young and beautiful lady entered the restaurant, dressed in a professional suit, showcasing a perfect figure. Her slender and graceful legs were wrapped in dark stockings, paired with silver patent leather high heels, looking very charming. Especially her fair and delicate face, radiating a pure and flawless glow. The gentleman exclaimed in surprise, his eyes shining with excitement. Hearing the shout, the lady turned and walked towards him. Wang Rui, long time no see. The lady greeted warmly. Yes, long time no see, please have a seat. Wang Rui warmly invited, his gaze seemingly attracted by the lady, unable to look away. Frankly speaking, the lady now exudes a mature charm more than a few years ago. This charm, coupled with her pure appearance, is truly captivating. You are more beautiful and charming than a few years ago. Wang Rui couldn't help but praise. Sensing the awkwardness in the other's gaze, the lady straightforwardly said, Wang, I have something to discuss with you. Don't be so polite, just say whatever it is. Wang Rui replied heartily. Without hesitation, the lady said, I know you have been in the second-hand luxury goods industry, so I want you to take a look at this thing. What thing? Wang Rui asked curiously. The lady took out a wedding dress from her bag. A wedding dress? Wang Rui was surprised, as few people asked him to appraise a wedding dress. The lady nodded a bit awkwardly. Wang Rui took just one look, and his eyes showed amazement. The material and workmanship of this wedding dress were unparalleled, handmade with no traces visible. It's hard to imagine how much effort was put into it. What's even more surprising is that the wedding dress is encrusted with countless diamonds of different sizes, sparkling. The value of these diamonds alone is immeasurable. This wedding dress was given to me by my husband, who said it's worth 30 million. I'm not sure about its authenticity, so I wanted you to have a look. The lady said somewhat embarrassed. This is worth more than 30 million. Probably can't even be bought for 50 million. Wang Rui was amazed. Despite this, he maintained a calm expression on his face, shaking his head continuously. Although the material is good, it's nowhere near worth 30 million. The lady looked disappointed after hearing this, but at the same time, she also felt relieved. Perhaps she didn't have high hopes from the beginning. Are you here to have me appraise this wedding dress? I've encountered some difficulties recently and urgently need some money, so I want to sell this wedding dress. How much do you think it's worth? I heard your husband ask you to go back, is there any problem? Wang Rui inquired, his eyes revealing intense emotions. I'm sorry, I just want to sell this wedding dress simply. The lady didn't want to talk much. Wang Rui, whom she met a few years ago through a friend's introduction, was in the luxury goods industry abroad and now started a business in Lyon. He had confessed to her before, but was clearly rejected by her, and the contact became rare afterwards. If it weren't for the urgent need for money, she wouldn't have thought of finding him. Okay, if you don't want to talk about it, that's fine. Wang Rui didn't ask further. The matter of wedding dress, no matter how much it costs, seems to lose its value after being worn once. After all, no bride wants to wear a second-hand wedding dress, whether it's being sold online or through other means, it probably can only be sold for a few thousand yuan at most. However, when Zhang Yuru approached Wang Rui, Wang Rui showed extraordinary generosity. He said, 50,000 yuan, just forget about it. This proposal made Zhang Yuru hesitate. 50,000 yuan? This is a bit too much. Although the price was not as expected, Zhang Yuru understood that it was already good to sell the second-hand wedding dress at this price. She urgently needed the funds and could only reluctantly accept. In the end, with tears in her eyes, she agreed, okay, 50,000 it is. Thank you, Wang Rui. Feeling guilty, Wang Rui said, it's okay, I may not have that much cash on hand. How about you come to the company with me later? Reluctant to get too involved, Zhang Yuru had no choice but to compromise. Wang Rui persuaded, although I don't know what difficulties you are facing, I will try to help you. Today, my company has some clients who might be interested in this wedding dress, and the price might be higher. I can introduce you to them. After some thought, 
Zhang Yuru nodded in agreement and then rode with Wang Rui to his company. The master, your sister-in-law sold the wedding dress you gave her for 50,000 and was deceived to the company. Suddenly, Kang Long called. Chen Bufan heard this. A hint of indifference flashed in his eyes, thinking that 50,000 could buy the wedding dress, which was really profiteering. That dress wasn't even worth a diamond at that price. So Zhang Yuru sold the wedding dress just for money. Is it related to the Zhang family looking for her yesterday? Chen Bufan didn't have time to think about it carefully. After entrusting Sisi to Kang Long, he immediately drove to the destination. The other party not only bought the wedding dress at a low price but also deceived Zhang Yuru to the company. It seems that their intentions are sinister. Ten minutes later, the car stopped at a luxury goods trading company, and Wang Rui took Zhang Yuru directly into the meeting room. He was courteous and claimed that his clients were all rich kids who might be interested in the wedding dress, and the price might be more than 50,000. However, as soon as Zhang Yuru entered the meeting room, Wang Rui closed the door, isolating the two of them in the room. Wang Rui, what are you doing? Weren't you going to introduce clients? Zhang Yuru immediately became alert. Wang Rui smiled and said, the clients haven't arrived yet, we can talk first. He gradually approached Zhang Yuru, who kept retreating. Don't be nervous, I won't hurt you. I know you're in trouble and need money. Actually, I've always liked you. Why not be with me? I can give you some money first. Wang Rui kept getting closer, his face eager. I'm sorry, I'm already married. Please mind your words and actions. Zhang Yuru said sternly. So what if you're married? You can be my lover, as long as you're willing. I can even support you long term, 5,000 a month. Wang Rui couldn't hide his true intentions. His eyes hotly fixed on Zhang Yuru, his lips constantly swallowing saliva. Wang Rui, I didn't expect you to be like this. Please give me back the wedding dress. I won't sell it. Zhang Yuru urgently wanted to leave. Sell it if you want. Don't sell it if you don't. Stop pretending to be innocent here. Zhang Yuru, you already have a child and I'm already generous to support you. Stop pretending to be pure. Wang Rui pounced. Before they could get close, the gate suddenly exploded with a bang, as if a tank was charging through, wood chips flying everywhere. Walls covered in cracks like spider webs. Next, a massive foot hung in the air and came down directly on Wang Rui, like a heavy hammer striking violently with endless force. Boom! Wang Rui was instantly sent flying, crashing hard onto the office desk, the wooden desk shattering into pieces, dust flying everywhere. Wang Rui twisted his body like a zombie, struggling to get up. Zhang Yuru was also startled. Before she could react, she saw a large hand attacking her waist, causing her to scream in fear. Before she could break free, she turned around and was stunned. Chen Bufan? What a silly girl. Chen Bufan couldn't help but complain. Why didn't she tell him in advance? and ended up being deceived of 50,000 yuan for the wedding dress, almost encountering a major danger. Who are you exactly? Wang Rui angrily questioned. I am her husband. Chen Bufan coldly reprimanded, then lifted his foot and ruthlessly stomped on Wang Rui's chest. With a crack, his ribs instantly broke, the pain making him scream like a pig. How dare you lay a finger on my wife? I see you are tired of living. As the voice fell, the big foot exerted force again almost completely crushing Wang Rui's chest, blood gushing out, his face filled with fear. Big brother, I was wrong, please forgive me. Tell my wife, how much is this wedding dress worth? Chen Bufan picked up the wedding dress, coldly questioning. At least 30 million, Wang Rui said with difficulty. 30 million? Zhang Yuru heard this, her eyes widened in disbelief. Are you deliberately deceiving me? Yuru, I'm sorry, it's all my greed and foolishness. Please let your husband go. Wang Rui pleaded bitterly. Is Yuru also your doing? Chen Bufan exerted force with his big foot. Crack, crack, several ribs broke again, and Wang Rui couldn't bear the pain, almost fainting. I didn't expect you to be so ruthless, I really misunderstood you. Zhang Yuru was greatly disappointed. She thought Wang Rui was reliable, otherwise she wouldn't have asked for his help. It's too late to beg for mercy now, go to hell. Chen Bufan prepared to end the other party. Please stop, Zhang Yuru said anxiously. Okay, for the sake of my wife's face, I'll spare your life for now. Chen Bufan said coldly, and his big foot suddenly stomped continuously. Bang, bang, 
Bang! Four consecutive sounds. Both arms and legs were broken. Wang Rui also completely fainted. Let's go. Chen Bufan took the wedding dress and left with Zhang Yuru. However, after they left, a mysterious figure appeared and carried Wang Rui away. Remember in your next life, never offend the women of our lord. Chen Bufan warned, bullying his wife and daughter will not be forgiven. Spare for now, but not forever. Chen Bufan didn't immediately go home. He took Zhang Yuru to the riverside park, waiting for her to calm down before returning, worried about affecting Sisi. Yuru, do you understand what almost happened? Chen Bufan was rarely angry with Zhang Yuru. This was the first time. I'm sorry, I didn't expect him to. Zhang Yuru explained, tears streaming down her face. She was just too short of money, otherwise she wouldn't have gone to Wang Rui, let alone believe the client's recommendation and go to the company. Watching Zhang Yuru cry, Chen Bufan's heart softened, and he hugged her. Zhang Yuru looked at Chen Bufan, her heart filled with guilt and anxiety. She whispered, I'm sorry, my parents found out about the company yesterday. They said I am still a member of the Zhang family and demanded a million yuan as a dowry, otherwise they will cause trouble at the company. Knowing that Chen Bufan did not have that much money, she decided to solve the problem herself. Chen Bufan frowned upon hearing this. He understood Zhang Yuru's dilemma, but still felt angry. They even sold your wedding dress? He asked. Zhang Yuru nodded, tears welling up in her eyes. She felt burdened with too much responsibility, not only facing family pressure but also worrying about Chen Bufan's situation. Her heart was in pain as if being pricked by countless needles. Chen Bufan looked at her with a heartache, gently holding her and comforting her. Don't blame yourself. Everything will be okay. We will face this difficulty together. There is no obstacle we cannot overcome. Zhang Yuru lifted her head, looking at Chen Bufan's determined eyes, feeling a warmth surging in her heart. She knew that with his support, no matter how many storms lay ahead, she would bravely face them. This steadfast love made her feel incredibly happy and reassured. After hearing Zhang Yuru's words, Chen Bufan's eyes turned extremely cold. The Zhang family actually had the nerve to come and ask for one million. If it was for marrying Yuru, no matter how much money, Chen Bufan would not hesitate to pay. But facing the Zhang family, he wouldn't soften his heart even for a penny. Over the past few years, Yuru had suffered so much in the Zhang family. Zhang Mingyu and his wife treated their daughter as a commodity, only caring about selling her at a high price, without any regard for Yuru's well-being. Last time, leaving a way out for Yuru was already being very kind to them. Now they dare to come knocking on the door, it's simply seeking death. No, I'm sorry, I can't do anything about it. The commission from selling the house last time, plus the money I had, couldn't add up to one million, so I had no choice but to sell the wedding dress. I was planning to temporarily mortgage it, and redeem it when I had the money, but it turned out like this. Zhang Yuru said with a guilty heart, tears almost welling up in her eyes. Chen Bufan sighed deeply and comforted her, don't blame yourself. From your perspective, you did nothing wrong. His eyes were filled with tenderness and understanding for Yuru. Yuru didn't want to cause trouble for him, so she chose to solve the problem alone, but it backfired. Chen Bufan decided, leave the Zhang family's matter to me, you don't need to worry anymore. Hesitatingly, Zhang Yuru called out, Bufan. Her face was full of embarrassment. Chen Bufan understood her thoughts. The people from the Zhang family were already so shameless, what was she still hesitating about? I promise you, I won't do anything inappropriate to the Zhang family. You can rest assured. Go ahead, Chen Bufan said. On the way back home, Zhang Yuru suddenly asked, Bufan, do you think I'm too weak? Chen Bufan looked at her in surprise, not expecting her to evaluate herself like that. She had stood up to the pressure of her entire family, refused to marry someone she didn't love, ignored the ridicule of others, and even been driven out of the family, yet she still firmly raised Sisi and supported a small family on her own. Chen Bufan sincerely praised, I rarely see anyone stronger than you, how could you be weak? His eyes were full of admiration and affection for Zhang Yuru. Zhang Yuru hesitated to express her doubts and troubles. Chen Bufan understood her feelings and gently reassured, don't think too much, I will handle it. Half an hour later, they arrived back home and Kanglong came with a big bag. Master, one million is ready. 
Chen Bufan took the bag and placed it in front of Zhang Yuru. What's this? Zhang Yuru asked curiously. Open it and see. Chen Bufan smiled. Zhang Yuru opened the bag, revealing a surprised expression. Where did all this money come from? She asked, puzzled. Don't ask too much. I said I will solve this matter, Chen Bufan said with a smile. Zhang Yuru looked at him, eyes filled with shock and worry. Chen Bufan felt a bit speechless from her gaze and gently tapped her head. Don't talk nonsense, or I might do something bad to you, he joked. Zhang Yuru pouted, always messing around. They had agreed before that he wouldn't do anything messy. Some things were inconvenient to tell her, she just needed to trust him. Okay, I won't ask anymore, Zhang Yuru nodded. Zhang Yuru nodded, filled with curiosity, but she chose to believe that Chen Bufan would not do anything to harm his family. One million is ready, but Chen Bufan proposed a condition. Chen Bufan said, I am willing to send the money to the Zhang family, but the condition is that you cannot go. He knew well the shamelessness of the Zhang family and was worried that Zhang Yuru would be bullied if she went. Zhang Yuru said earnestly, Promise me, don't do anything dangerous. Chen Bufan smiled bitterly and promised, Okay, everything will follow my wife's arrangements. That afternoon, Chen Bufan left home with one million in cash. When he arrived at the Zhang family's doorstep, his face already wore a cold expression. The villa that had been destroyed before was being repaired, with some workers busy at work. Chen Bufan coldly commented, Looks like they're quite wealthy, actually renovating again. He thought to himself that although the Zhang family was rich, they were cold and selfish towards Yuru. Chen Bufan fearlessly entered the Zhang family, exuding a powerful aura that made people dare not look directly at him. A new servant panicked and asked, Who are you? I am Chen Bufan, he answered coldly. The name Chen Bufan caused a stir in the Zhang family, and everyone couldn't help but tremble. They all vividly remembered Chen Bufan's intimidating presence when he crashed the wedding scene a few days ago. It must be that hateful girl Yuru who instigated this. Chen Bufan must know we would come asking for money, cursed Yang's mother. Zhang Meihan shrugged indifferently. What's there to fear? Chen Bufan got lucky. The Han family's enemies took care of him. Otherwise he would have been done for long ago. Zhang Mingyu decided to go in person. Though he spoke lightly, his heart still trembled upon seeing Chen Bufan. Chen Bufan stood at the gate like a god of death, exuding an unparalleled dominance that made Zhang Mingyu and others tremble in awe. Remembering the scene of himself kneeling before Chen Bufan begging for mercy, Zhang Mingyu's face turned pale. Trembling, he asked, Chen Bufan, what are you doing at my house? Chen Bufan just threw a bag filled with cash. This is one million. You can take this money, but remember, from now on, the Zhang family and Yuru have no connection. If anyone hurts her again, I won't be lenient. After saying this coldly, Chen Bufan turned and left. The hall fell into silence. No one dared to meet his gaze, hearts beating rapidly as if they were about to fall into hell at any moment. After Chen Bufan left, the terrifying aura shrouding the Zhang family gradually dissipated, and Zhang Mingyu and others breathed a sigh of relief, feeling like they had escaped from the gates of hell. Their eyes were fixed on the stack of money on the ground, greedy glints flashing, as if nothing else mattered anymore. Mrs. Zhang tightly held a stack of cash, counting carefully with her younger daughter, Zhang Meihan. One million, a whole million, without any mistake, each banknote was real. This meant they had struck it rich. The crowd burst into hearty laughter, their faces showing greedy expressions. The Zhang family, although not considered wealthy in Yangzhou, had assets worth millions, including a million in cash, which was quite a substantial amount. Yang's mother regretfully exclaimed, I can't believe that Chen Bufan has a million. If only we had asked for more from him earlier. Zhang Mingyu, on the other hand, discontentedly remarked, What's a million? If it weren't for this kid, Yuru wouldn't have married into the Han family. If only we could have inherited something when the Han family went bankrupt. Yang's mother then asked, But hasn't Yuru passed away as well? Zhang Meihan coldly stated, Since Yuru has passed away, the inheritance from the Han family now belongs to us, saving us a lot of trouble. Zhang Mingyu felt that all these losses should be attributed to Chen Bufan. He had thought that Yuru becoming the general manager would bring in a lot of money, but it turned out to be Chen Bufan's doing. 
Perhaps there was still a chance to extort more money. Zhang Mingyu hinted at a sinister plan, saying, I suddenly came up with a method to squeeze more out of Yuru. Zhang Meihan curiously asked, Dad, what method? Zhang Mingyu smugly said, I just received news that the old master is critically ill and all members of the Zhang family are required to pay their respects for the last time. Once the old master passes away, the assets will naturally be divided. The more people there are, the more shares there will be, starting at least from 10 million. This 1 million is nothing. Yang's mother excitedly exclaimed, we're finally going to strike it rich. The whole family was in high spirits, as if celebrating the new year. At Yunluo Academy, Chen Bufan had just returned home, and Zhang Yuru anxiously asked, Have you given them the money? Chen Bufan nodded. Zhang Yuru asked with relief, Nothing unexpected happened, right? Chen Bufan smiled and replied, Of course not. Zhang Yuru breathed a sigh of relief and then asked, Bufan, what's your bank account number? Let me transfer the money I have on me to you first, and I'll give you the rest when I have enough. Chen Bufan asked in confusion, what does that mean? Zhang Yuru felt guilty and said, It's all because of me that you spent so much money. I can't bear it. Chen Bufan gently comforted her. Silly girl, you are my wife, and it's only natural for me to spend money on you. And this one million is well worth it. Zhang Yuru's face showed a hint of disappointment after hearing this. Just as she was about to speak, Chen Bufan continued, Because in my heart, you are priceless and cannot be measured by any amount of money. Touched by Chen Bufan's deep affection, Zhang Yuru couldn't help but gently tap his chest twice. The following days passed peacefully. Kanglong reported to Chen Bufan daily on the situation. Since the nine halls were destroyed, Jenin Prefecture had been quiet, possibly out of fear, afraid that the enemy would come knocking at their door at any moment to destroy their headquarters. The seven great families also remained silent. It wasn't until the next day that Kanglong brought a piece of news. Master, the seven great families are starting to make a move. A hint of killing intent flashed in Chen Bufan's eyes as he asked, Are they planning to flatten Kuihu Square and build a seven-star hotel? The fate of the Zhang family was about to take a new turn. Emerald Lake Square, once a symbol of Chen's former glory, cost billions of investments, nurtured numerous shops, and also drove the local economy. Not only that, Emerald Lake Square also includes several mixed-use buildings, accommodating thousands of residents who live and work here leading a prosperous life. This is the first treasure that Chen established to give back to his hometown after his success, holding extraordinary significance. Chen Bufan vividly remembers that every time his father took him to Emerald Lake Square, he would always say a sentence. Son, Chen's prosperity relies on this land and the people here. We must repay our hometown with gratitude. No matter where we are, we must remember the kindness of our hometown. Time flies. Six years have passed. Chen's family has become a thing of the past, and all industries have been taken over by the seven great families. Now, unbelievably, the seven great families want to demolish Emerald Lake Square. If his father were still alive, he would never tolerate such a thing. Although Chen Bufan is not interested in business affairs, Emerald Lake Square is where his father's lifelong efforts lie, and it is also a symbol of memory for many people in the old Emerald Lake area. He cannot let this place fall into the hands of the seven great families. When are they starting the demolition? Chen Bufan asked. In ten days, Kanglong replied. Ten days later, Chen Bufan's eyes flashed with determination. They chose to start at this time. Could it be that Jen Nan Mansion has colluded with the seven great families? If they want to deal with me in this way, it is simply foolish. Chen Bufan said coldly. Kanglong, continue to monitor the situation in Guangling. Whether it is Jen Nan Mansion or the Seven Great Families, inform me immediately of any movements. Chen Bufan ordered. Understood. Kanglong nodded. In addition, let the brothers be prepared. We may soon go to Guangling to capture our prey. We must not slack off. Chen Bufan ordered again. Got it. Kanglong said excitedly. It's so boring in Liang. I really want to see those big shots in Guangling to see if they have the courage to oppose the Lord. Time passed, and three or four days went by. Then, one day, Kanglong suddenly called. Lord, something has happened. Come quickly, and sent an address. What is it that requires me to personally intervene? Chen Bufan felt puzzled. Kanglong's answer was vague. Without asking further, 
Chen Bufan immediately took a taxi to the destination. Half an hour later, he arrived at a training base. It turned out to be the headquarters of the Fire Wolf. As soon as the car stopped, Kenglong came up to greet him. What happened exactly? Chen Bufan asked. Lord, let Lei Tianqing explain to you, Kenglong said with a wry smile. Take me to him. Soon, Chen Bufan arrived at a training room inside the base. Many people had already gathered there. Lei Tianqing, Li Zhaolei, and several members of the Demon Temple were present, all with angry expressions on their faces. Seeing Chen Bufan's arrival, everyone was extremely excited and gathered around. What happened? Chen Bufan asked Lei Tianqing. Mr. Chen arrived just in time, and Lei Tianqing eagerly reported to him. My subordinates were patrolling in the vicinity of Yangjing when they encountered several unidentified individuals who claimed to be members of the Demon Temple, saying they were on a mission. I couldn't believe it, so I immediately brought them here. Upon hearing this, Mr. Chen suddenly understood the reason behind it all and couldn't help but smile. And then, he asked. I had them summon their leader, and this gentleman who called himself Kenglong promptly appeared, claiming to also be a member of the Demon Temple with the leader of the Demon Temple residing in Liyang. It's simply absurd, Lei Tianqing exclaimed angrily. The Demon Temple is such a mysterious existence. As the world's number one power, it has long dominated the nine heavens, unrivaled by anyone. The appearance of such a massive and powerful force in Liyang has surprised everyone. Moreover, the master of the Demon Temple had long retired from the world, so his sudden appearance in Liyang is truly unbelievable. Unable to resist, Lei Tianqing teased. Well, even if I told you, you wouldn't believe it. Kang Long shook his head helplessly, anxiously looking at Chen Bufan, silently praying that Chen Bufan would understand what was happening. If the master of the temple was not summoned promptly, it might lead to a conflict. Considering the temper of the master, Lei Tianqing's probing questions might not end well. With a smile, Chen Bufan asked, Mr. Chen, do you also enjoy joking? I can understand why Kang Long has been by your side, but are you really the master of the demon temple as he claims? Lei Tianqing bluntly admitted, then realizing his rudeness, quickly apologized, I'm sorry, Mr. Chen, I didn't mean any offense, just expressing my thoughts. I know you are very powerful, and I admire you a lot, but to say you are the master of the demon temple would be treating me, Lei Tianqing, as a fool. The master of the demon temple is someone I deeply respect, and your claim to be from the demon temple is unforgivable. You should all be arrested. Li Zhaolei acted swiftly, feeling that her idol was being insulted. You dare to arrest us with your abilities? How audacious. The brothers of the demon temple, upon seeing Kang Long, immediately counterattacked confidently, faking the demon army and daring to speak arrogantly, you don't know your place. The soldiers of the fire wolf army also stood their ground. The dispute seemed on the brink of erupting. Chen Bufan sternly commanded, quiet down. His voice, though not loud, carried supreme authority, causing everyone to obediently fall silent. He calmly said, this is just a minor issue, let's leave it at that. However, Lei Tianqing firmly stated, Mr. Chen, this is not a minor matter. These people impersonating the demon army is a very serious offense. Chen Bufan knew he had to explain clearly. He began, what if I told you they are indeed the demon army? Lei Tianqing was taken aback, then awkwardly smiled, Mr. Chen, you are not the master of the demon temple, how could you? Before he could finish, Chen Bufan directly shouted, Kang Long. Here, Kang Long immediately responded, standing upright. He was one of the eight dragon kings of the demon temple, causing everyone present to gasp in shock. As one of the eight dragon kings, this identity was truly terrifying. The Demon Temple possessed a million strong army, with the eight Dragon Kings ranking just below the Master. Each Dragon King held formidable power and had earned numerous military achievements on the battlefield. They were the warlords of the Demon Temple, unmatched by anyone. Who could have imagined that Kang Long, one of the eight Dragon Kings, would appear here alive and well? Impossible, Li Zhaolei suddenly exclaimed. I heard that Kang Long, one of the eight dragon kings, is six feet three inches tall with a scar on his face. You're talking nonsense. Chen Bufan couldn't help but laugh. Where did you hear that from? Kang Long, it seems your image in the people's minds isn't too good. 
Kang Long was a bit embarrassed and immediately took out a token, handing it to Lei Tiancheng, see for yourself. Lei Tiancheng took the token, saw the seal on it, and couldn't help but feel a chill in his chest, almost out of breath. The Dragon King's Decree. This mysterious token can only be possessed by the eight dragon kings of the Demon Temple. It bears a relief image that perfectly matches the appearance of the azure dragon before them. Lei Tian Sheng knew in his heart that all of this was real, because he was one of the eight dragon kings. Immediately, Lei Tian Sheng led everyone to kneel on the ground. They reverently paid their respects to the azure dragon king, who solemnly said, Why are you still kneeling before me? Isn't that a bit ignorant? All eyes turned to Chen Bi Yu Fan. As one of the eight dragon kings, the Azure Dragon King only favors special individuals. This thought quickly arose in everyone's minds, and without the need for further words, everything became clear. They all exclaimed in unison, We have seen the master of the Demon Temple. Their voices trembled, their hearts raced, finding it unbelievable that they were fortunate enough to see the master of the Demon Temple in their lifetime, as if it were an unreal dream. The Azure Dragon King comforted them, saying, Rise. Lei Tian Sheng and the others dared not disobey, and they all stood up, respectfully apologizing to Chen Bi Yu Fan. Chen Bi Yu Fan calmly expressed, You have found my subordinates, indicating that the Fire Wolf Army's quality is not bad. There is no need for apologies for any misunderstandings. Lei Tian Sheng obediently nodded, a burly man behaving like a compliant elementary school student in front of Chen Bi Yu Fan. Chen Bi Yu Fan smiled and asked, Since the matter is resolved, can we leave now? Lei Tian Sheng decisively answered, Of course. However, Li Xiao Lei suddenly exclaimed, We can't leave. She looked nervously at Chen Bi Yu Fan. Since you're here, why not stay and have a chat? Lei Tian Sheng also requested, After finally meeting the demon army, could the Azure Dragon provide some guidance to the Fire Wolf army? Unable to refuse the expectant gazes of the crowd, Chen Bi Yu Fan said, Azure Dragon, exchange some ideas with your brothers and the Fire Wolf Army. The Azure Dragon nodded in agreement. It wasn't until late at night that Chen Bi Yu Fan and the Azure Dragon bid farewell and left. They not only exchanged experiences, but also enjoyed a sumptuous dinner together. When leaving, Lei Tian Sheng did not see them off, but instead lay on the bed. Insisting on sparring a few moves with the Azure Dragon, he ended up being defeated and fleeing in embarrassment. You didn't go easy on him. Chen Bi Yu Fan reprimanded. The Azure Dragon smiled and said, This is how to motivate them to improve. Back home, Zhang Yu Ru had returned from work. She immediately told Chen Bi Yu Fan an important piece of news. Bi Yu Fan, I will be going to Guangling in a few days. Would you like to accompany me? Chen Bi Yu Fan asked in confusion, What are we going to Guangling for? Business trip? To accompany my grandpa on his final journey, Zhang Yu Ru said helplessly. Your grandpa? Chen Bi Yu Fan was puzzled. Isn't your family in Zhang family? How come in Guangling? Zhang Yu Ru sighed and slowly explained the family's ordeal, gradually making Chen Bi Yu Fan understand everything. Although the Zhang family had been operating in Guangling for many years and accumulated substantial wealth, over a decade ago, due to his father's mistake, they were forced to leave the Zhang family and never returned. Zhang Moken, the head of the Zhang family, is a gentle and kind elder, affectionately known as Grandpa Zhang Yuru. He has two sons and a daughter, each of whom has started their own families, but there is lingering resentment over the family property. Especially Zhang Mingyu, the youngest son of Zhang Moken, felt unfairly treated during the division of assets, leading to a heated argument with his grandfather. He even secretly sold off family assets for investment, only to suffer a disastrous failure. When Zhang Moken learned of this, he was furious and promptly kicked Zhang Mingyu out of the house. From then on, the Zhang family members went their separate ways, leaving Liang behind. Several decades passed, and they never looked back. Until recently, news spread that Zhang Mochun's health was deteriorating rapidly, bedridden and on the verge of passing. He longed to gather all his family together before his life ended. Upon hearing this news, Zhang Yuru was inexplicably moved and decided to go to Guangling to fulfill this final wish. After hearing the news from his parents, Chen Bufan couldn't help but feel puzzled. Zhang Yuru admitted that her parents had told her, but Chen Bufan felt that there might be ulterior motives behind this kindness. 
he couldn't help but suspect. Would Zhang Mingyu and others be so cunning and deceitful as to inform them for no reason? Despite his doubts, he decided to accompany Zhang Yuru because his grandfather had been good to him when he was young, and now that his grandfather was about to pass away, it would be a shame for his granddaughter not to bid farewell. Zhang Yuru's response dispelled Chen Bufan's hesitation. He did not reveal his inner doubts but silently agreed to the trip. Bufan, if you feel uncomfortable, I can go alone. I'll be back in a few days, Zhang Yuru said with concern. Chen Bufan shook his head and said, No need, I'll go with you. I also have something to take care of. Curiously, Zhang Yuru asked, What is it? Chen Bufan replied lightly, To meet an old friend, with a firm look in his eyes. Zhang Yuru became even more curious, You have old friends in Guangling? Chen Bufan nodded, Yes, and more than one. This time, I want to have a good chat with them. Although he harbored a murderous intent towards the seven great families, he maintained a calm exterior. Due to the urgency of the situation, Zhang Yuru contacted Cao Wadong that day to ask for time off. Cao Wadong readily agreed, reassuring her to focus on her own matters and return to work anytime. For Yunluo Company, Zhang Yuru was like a god of wealth, and no one dared to offend her. After getting time off, Zhang Yuru started to pack her things. Chen Bufan didn't need to prepare much, just taking Cici along to play. However, Cici was feeling down because Miss Bai had left. Miss Bai left. Cici looked unhappy. Chen Bufan asked, when did she leave? Cici replied, she left yesterday, saying there was an urgent matter at home and promised to come back to play with me in the future. Looking up at Chen Bufan, Cici asked, is Miss Bai's home far from here? Can I still see her? Chen Bufan comforted Cici, saying, of course you can. However, he sighed inwardly, feeling a bit lost as Miss Bai, a woman of her word, had quietly left. Why am I becoming so sentimental? Chen Bufan chuckled to himself. A plane ascended into the sky from Liyang Airport, with Bai Ruabing sitting by the window, watching the city gradually fade away, feeling low. She had originally come to seek help from Professor Lee but unexpectedly learned that Chen Bufan possessed the long-lost Ghost Valley Mystic Needle and hoped he could help the Bai family. However, now, all seemed hopeless. Miss, there is really no other way if we continue like this, Wei Shu said anxiously. Bai Ruabing decisively stated that further delay would be futile. Chen Bufan would not intervene, and they had to find another way. As the plane flew further and further away, it eventually disappeared into the blue sky and white clouds. In the quiet of the night, in the demon temple, countless troops quietly set out towards Guangling. For the demon army, marching at night was a piece of cake. At the headquarters of the Fire Wolf Army, Lei Tianqing stood on a high platform. Li Zhaolei reported, Boss, the demon army has left Liang. The army of demons marched mightily, shocking the world. Who could be so audacious to provoke Mr. Chen? As the army of demons departed, Lei Tianqing watched with a heart full of respect, feeling a myriad of emotions. He encouraged Zhao Lei, saying, We must work even harder. This is a rare opportunity. We must double our efforts to enter the demon god's temple. Zhao Lei nodded expectantly, her heart filled with a longing to enter the demon god's temple. The next morning, the Chen family left Liyong by car and headed straight to Guangling. They set off at the same time as the Zhang family each person excited as if going to pick up gold. Several hours later, they arrived in Guangling, returning after six years of absence. The bustling city was resplendent with tall buildings and bright lights. However, unlike six years ago, Guangling, once controlled by the eight major families, had now become the domain of the seven major families. Chen Fan's heart swelled with mixed emotions. I once fled Guangling in embarrassment, but now I am invincible. The seven major families, the past grudges, I will repay them doubly. Inside the car, Cici excitedly admired the tall buildings and bridges, exclaiming, Wangling is so beautiful. The educational resources here are much better than in Liyang. It would be great to settle here. Zhang Yuru sighed, let's buy a house here. Chen Fan smiled and said, Wangling is my hometown. The Chen family's former wealth has reached billions, and now as the lord of the demon god, the wealth of the seven major families combined cannot compare to mine. Buying a house is nothing. He didn't continue. After arriving in Guangling, the family rushed to the Zhang family's residence. 
Chen Fan followed Zhang Yuru because he was worried. Although the Zhang family was not in the city center, they owned a detached villa and a large courtyard worth 7 to 8 million at current market value. The Zhang family's total assets were estimated to be around 7 to 8 billion, making them a wealthy family. Even in a place like Guangling, the Zhang family was considered good, but compared to the former eight major families, the gap was still huge. Therefore, Chen Fan was not familiar with the Zhang family in Guangling. Many luxury cars were parked at the entrance of the Zhang family, indicating that the descendants of the family had already returned. Cici was told to behave herself, and she promised to do so. Zhang Yuru reminded Chen Fan to be steady and not act recklessly. Chen Fan smiled and said, I will behave, as long as no one causes trouble, I won't act recklessly. The family of three entered the mansion, where many people had already gathered, including Zhang Mingyu and the others. When Chen Bufan appeared, a hint of fear could be seen in everyone's eyes, as his presence always made people feel uneasy. Excitedly, Zhang Mu rushed forward and tightly held Zhang Yuru's hand, proudly introducing her to everyone present. This is my eldest daughter, Yuru. Zhang Yuru was a bit surprised but quickly regained her composure. Everyone expressed their astonishment, their gaze fixed on Zhang Yuru. When she left, she was still a naive young girl, but now she had grown into a graceful and beautiful young woman. Some male relatives' eyes became fiery, filled with eager anticipation towards her. Yang's mother instructed, Go call your aunt. Zhang Yuru secretly rejoiced in her heart, as she had some impression of this aunt Zhang Jing. However, Zhang Jing bluntly said, I heard you were kicked out of the house by your parents, I really can't believe it. Zhang Yuru's face turned embarrassed, quickly defending her family, saying, It's all rumors, everything at home is actually fine. But Zhang Jing mercilessly revealed, The scandal of your family has long been spread among relatives. At this moment, the 56-year-old Zhang Chao stepped in, sternly saying, Today I brought my family to visit our old father, not to argue with you. Zhang Mingyu interjected cheerfully, Second sister, what's wrong with you? Zhang Chao disdainfully looked at Chen Bufan, taunting, Just for this man, you're not even willing to step into a wealthy family? Zhang Jing then unabashedly assessed Chen Bufan, mocking, It seems there's nothing special about him. Although Zhang Mingyu was not present, he had long been aware of the family affairs and was quite displeased. Zhang Chao coldly stated, If you're not part of the Zhang family, don't meddle in these matters, wait outside. Zhang Yuru, however, refused to back down and insisted on letting Chen Bufan meet Grandpa. Eventually, Zhang Chao reluctantly agreed, but his attitude remained firm. Chen Bufan's eyes turned cold, feeling dissatisfied with Zhang Chao's attitude. In the end, Zhang Yuru's family, accompanied by some relatives, entered the inner room to visit the old man, while Chen Bufan stayed in the hall waiting. Just then, a young man walked over and called out to Chen Bufan, Is there something wrong? Chen Bufan glanced at him and saw that he was about 27 or 28, trendy in appearance, and seemed a bit frivolous. The young man introduced himself, I am Zhang Chao's son, Zhang Heng. You should address me as older brother. Chen Bufan responded indifferently, Oh. Zhang Heng, however, continued without concern, directly asking about the situation between Zhang Yuru and Chen Bufan, with a teasing and improper tone. Chen Bufan coldly replied, I'm not interested in these things. But Zhang Heng continued to gossip shamelessly, saying, I used to think Zhang Yuru was very pretty as a child, now she's even more charming, like a big star. Chen Bufan felt displeased in his heart, disgusted by the behavior of the Zhang family. Zhang Heng shamelessly continued, How is Zhang Yuru's technique? Zhang Heng was stared at by Chen Bufan, feeling a wave of fear. The smile on his face disappeared instantly. What are you doing? Chen Bufan's voice was icy and piercing. Apologize within three seconds, pretend I never heard those words. Zhang Heng felt immense pressure. Are you crazy? On Zhang family's territory, you want me to apologize? Zhang Heng's expression turned dark. Suddenly, with a crisp sound, Chen Bufan directly slapped Zhang Heng, the force causing him to fall to the ground, blood trickling from the corner of his mouth. The young people present were all stunned, unable to believe what was happening. Zhang Heng wiped the blood from his mouth, looked at Chen Bufan in disbelief, slapped and stared at him fiercely. 
How dare you hit Zhang Hain? The young people from Zhang family rushed forward. However, Chen Bufan knocked them all down one by one. In the greenhouse, as long as you can get close, even if you lose, you win. Before long, everyone was on the ground, groaning in pain. If you don't want to die, behave yourself. Chen Bufan coldly reprimanded, intimidating everyone present. He stared at Zhang Heng and walked over aggressively. You, don't come over. This is Zhang family. Zhang Heng began to feel scared, trying to threaten. Zhang family? So what? Chen Bufan sneered, lifted his foot, and stomped fiercely on Zhang Heng's chest. With a violent blow, Zhang Heng spat out blood. When the Chen family dominated Guangling back then, what was the Zhang family? Even now, with many powerful families in Guangling, Zhang family cannot dictate. Those inside heard the commotion and hurried out. Seeing the scene in front of them, they were all stunned. A group of young people lying on the ground, groaning in pain. Zhang Heng was being trampled underfoot by Chen Bufan, like a dead dog, his face covered in blood. Insane. How dare you hit someone here? Zhang Mingyu said angrily. Nonsense. Get out of here. Zhang Chao roared and rushed towards Chen Bufan. Move again and I'll disable him. Chen Bufan turned to Zhang Chao, his cold eyes making him shiver, feeling chills down his spine. Zhang Mingyu, look at your good son-in-law, stop him now. He scolded angrily, burning with rage. Zhang Mingyu swallowed hard, courageously said, Chen Bufan, this is Zhang family, please spare Zhang Heng. However, Chen Bufan looked coldly at Zhang Mingyu, making him tremble with fear and regret his decision. You are all useless, can't even control your own son-in-law. Zhang Chao was furious, then turned to Zhang Yuru. Zhang Yuru, make your husband stop, otherwise, if something happens to my son, you won't be able to afford the consequences. Zhang Yuru was also shocked. She knew Chen Bufan's temper beforehand, deliberately warned him not to cause trouble, but she didn't expect the situation to escalate so quickly, with Zhang Heng being beaten up. Chen Bufan looked at Zhang Heng with anger, a fire of fury burning in his heart. He couldn't understand why Zhang Heng would treat his sister like that. Without fear, he questioned Zhang Heng in front of everyone. Zhang Heng, what have you done? Don't you know she is my sister? His voice carried a tone of deep concern and anger, as if he was ready to seek justice for his sister. Zhang Heng roared, I didn't do anything, please let me go. Chen Bufan strode forward and delivered a forceful kick, causing a painful impact that almost destroyed Zhang Heng's internal organs. Zhang Heng screamed in pain, I'll talk, I'll talk, please stop. He then truthfully confessed everything that had happened before. The Zhang family members felt extremely embarrassed. When Zhang Yuru understood the truth, she was furious, you shameless scoundrel. Chen Bufan turned to Zhang Chao and asked, As a father, do you have an explanation for this? Zhang Chao looked ashamed and wished he could disappear. Zhang Jing disapproved. It may seem trivial to you, but it's significant to me. Chen Bufan stared at Zhang Jing and asked, How do you want to handle this? Zhang Chao, burning with anger, found it despicable how his son was treated so cruelly. Apologize, Chen Bufan said bluntly. Zhang Chao coldly responded. You've already hit him. An apology is necessary to resolve this matter. Chen Bufan firmly stated that even his wife was insulted, so just hitting without apologizing was already lenient. Zhang Chao hesitated. Zhang Heng finally apologized. I'm sorry, I was wrong. Please let me go. Zhang Chao couldn't contain his anger. This kid has no backbone. He warned, I'll spare you this time, but if this happens again, it won't be just a matter of apologizing. The Zhang family rushed to help Zhang Heng up. After breaking free, Zhang Heng urgently demanded to discipline Chen Bufan. Zhang Chao sternly reprimanded, Calm down. Our son was wrong first. Even if we want to discipline Chen Bufan, now is not the time. Continuing like this will only bring shame upon us. Zhang Heng could only glare angrily at Chen Bufan. As the storm gradually subsided, the attitude towards Chen Bufan from the others noticeably turned cold with occasional venomous glares. Zhang Chao coldly stated, The old man may not have much time left, while we are all here today, let's discuss the distribution of the inheritance. Upon hearing about the distribution of the family property, Zhang Mingyu and his wife's eyes lit up with joy. Everyone gathered in the hall, 
including Zhang Chao's family, Zhang Jing's family, Zhang Mingyu's family, and other relatives. Zhang Chao began by introducing the family assets of approximately 800 million, with the legal requirement that all family members are entitled to a share. 800 million. Upon hearing this number, Zhang Mingyu couldn't believe it. Yang's mother was also surprised, never expecting the old man to have so much wealth. Zhang Mingyu calculated in his mind that with three families totaling about 13 people, each person could expect to receive around 60 million. This number far exceeded the 1 million given by Chen Bufan. Chen Bufan suddenly realized their intentions. So that's why they were so warm towards Yuru before. It was all about the distribution of the inheritance. Having one more person meant splitting several million more. Zhang Yuru felt heavy-hearted as the true motives of her parents were finally revealed. It was all about money. In their eyes, she was just a synonym for property. As for how the 8 billion family fortune would be divided, the old master had already made a decision, and Zhang Yuru had printed out the contract in advance for them to see clearly. After Zhang Chao finished speaking, he had his men bring out stacks of contracts and distribute them to everyone present. When Zhang Mingyu and his wife saw the contract, their eyes were filled with greed, as if they had seen endless wealth. It didn't seem like a contract at all, but rather a pile of money. The more Zhang Mingyu looked at it, the more something felt off. Why does it only mention the Kuihu Square project on here, and not a specific amount? Kuihu Square project? Chen Bufan's eyes turned cold upon hearing this. Oh, let me explain. Kuihu Square was originally the property of our Guangling Chen family. Later, the family declined. It was acquired by the seven great families, and then a cooperation project was signed with our family, with us, the Zhang family, responsible for the basic reconstruction, totaling about 5 billion. But this amount has not been settled, so it's being counted towards you, Zhang Chao explained briefly. Zhang Mingyu slammed the contract on the table. Zhang Chao, you're deceiving me. Mingyu, how can you say that? 5 billion contract has been given to you. How could it be deceiving you? Based on the number of people, your family has a total of four members, each getting over 60 million, totaling over 2 billion. We gave you 5 billion, isn't that a good deal? Zhang Chao said coldly, don't think I'm a fool. Kuihu Square is about to be demolished. This cooperation is definitely going to fail. The seven great families will never pay a penny. This deal is just an empty promise, valued at 5 billion, but actually worthless. Zhang Mingyu was burning with anger. He had long investigated the family's finances, knowing that the family property distribution was about to take place. The Kuihu Square contract had been signed for three years, the Zhang family had already received payments for three years, and the project progress had repeatedly stalled. Now that the project is about to be demolished, the contract is coming to an end. The seven great families will never admit to it, not a penny will be received. Mingyu, don't act rashly. The transformation of Kuihu Square has nothing to do with us. The contract is here, as long as you have the contract, will the seven great families not pay? Zhang Chao said indifferently, will the seven great families pay? I've lived in Guangling before, the power of the seven great families is not a joke. To make them pay, it's digging your own grave. If this amount was good, you wouldn't be giving it to me. Zhang Mingyu was not a fool, he knew this was pushing him to a dead end. If the seven great families didn't pay, other project debts would be transferred to him, and then the workers, suppliers would come looking for him, this would lead to his family's ruin. Zhang Chao is too ruthless. Then I won't care. This is the old master's decision. If you're not satisfied, go talk to the old master, Zhang Chao snorted. The old master has become a vegetable, unable to open his eyes, barely holding on, how can I talk to him? You're bullying people too much. Zhang Mingyu protested loudly. Bang! Zhang Chao slammed the table. The Zhang family was driven out by their father over a decade ago, and he generously gave them a large sum of money, which should have settled the matter. Now, with their father gravely ill, they want a piece of the pie, which is truly unbearable to witness. Moreover, Zhang Mingyu's past investment mistakes have caused huge losses to the family, and now they want to claim a share of the inheritance, which is simply shameless. Zhang Mingyu and his wife were at a loss for words when faced with Zhang Chao's blunt accusations. Zhang Jing tried to defend her husband, but the 500 million debt might be an opportunity, considering it's more than what they would get from the inheritance. 
However, Zhang Mingyu vehemently refuted, accusing Zhang Yuru of causing trouble for no reason. Zhang Yuru found it absurd that her family used her to get a share of the inheritance and then blamed her for coming back empty handed. This selfish behavior is despicable. Just then, Chen Bufan suddenly spoke up, Don't be like this. After Zhang Mingyu's family left, Zhang Mingyu was still persistent in wanting to redistribute the family property. However, Zhang Chao coldly stated that it was not up to him, as Zhang Ru had already signed the documents. The family meeting ended there, and Zhang Chao heartlessly expelled Zhang Mingyu's family. At that moment, Zhang Mingyu couldn't contain his anger and harshly criticized Zhang Chao and Zhang Jing for their ruthlessness. Their hearts were as cold as stone, without a trace of warmth. Hearing that Chen Bufan's family was about to leave, Zhang Mingyu's family rushed over excitedly hoping to get a share, but ended up with nothing but resentment. Just then, they saw Chen Bufan's family leaving. Filled with indignation, Zhang Mingyu loudly cursed, Chen Bufan, just you wait. Do you know the origin of Kuihu Square? It's the legacy of the Chen family, one of the eight major families in Guangling. Six years ago, the Chen family was destroyed, with countless deaths. Now the seven major families have taken control of this territory, full of conspiracies. Do you still want to ask them for money? Be careful, your family may end up lying in the streets. Chen Bufan coldly ignored Zhang Mingyu's rant and drove away. However, Zhang Mingyu continued to shout like a mad dog, Fine, since you won't listen, then prepare for your downfall. You will never return to Liyang. In the car, Zhang Yuru felt worried upon hearing this. She suggested abandoning the contract and seeking mercy from the Zhang family. But Chen Bufan stared at her intently, firmly stating that no matter how difficult it may be, he will make the seven major families pay back everything. His words were full of confidence and determination, reassuring Zhang Yuru, who then embraced him, tears streaming down her face. She had no extravagant demands, only hoping for a happy reunion of their family of three, yet fear lingered in her heart. After the family meeting, only Zhang Chao and Zhang Jing's family remained in the Zhang family. Zhang Jing's daughter questioned Chen Bufan's ability and courage, doubting if he truly had the confidence to retrieve the funds. Zhang Chao sneered, with Chen Bufan's abilities, to retrieve this money, it may rely solely on fate. Zhang Jing and her daughter scoffed at this, believing that the seven major families would not easily let him succeed. Upon returning to the hotel, Chen Bufan immediately contacted Kenglong, inquiring about the business map of the seven major families and the whereabouts of the Chen family's assets. Kenglong promised to investigate thoroughly, mentioning that the demon army was on standby. Chen Bufan decided to wait for the right moment before taking action. In his heart, an endless determination and faith burned brightly. A pleasant voice came through the phone, lifting Chen Bufan's spirits. After hanging up, he paused for a moment then dialed another number. Just before the call went through, he suddenly realized something, a smile spreading across his face. He murmured into the phone, Darling, I'm going out for a bit. Chen Bufan felt a sense of anticipation and excitement surging within him, as if a wonderful encounter was on the horizon. Outside the hotel, on the tree-lined avenue, Chen Bufan stood with his hands behind his back, displaying extraordinary cultivation. The sect leader teased him, your progress in cultivation is impressive. I can hardly recognize you anymore. Chen Bufan smiled and replied, You are still as humorous as ever, sect leader. Suddenly, a cold voice interjected, Long time no see, you are still so indifferent. Chen Bufan chuckled and said, Yes, I have always been this way. The sect leader fell silent for a moment before saying, You did well on the last mission, but that was just child's play. The real prey is in Guangling and you should have some gains in these days. Chen Bufan nodded and said, I have already made arrangements. The sect leader asked, aren't you planning to come out and meet me? Chen Bufan awkwardly replied, I have already met you. The sect leader sighed, well, that's just your style. As Chen Bufan was about to leave, the sect leader stopped him and said, wait. When you left Qilong, you seem to have angered some people. They may take action. Chen Bufan calmly replied, I anticipated that. The sect leader continued, they might be more troublesome than the old men in the Taij pavilion. A cold light flashed in Chen Bufan's eyes as he asked, related to the land of the gods? 
The sect leader nodded. Yes, the specifics are still under investigation. I will inform you as soon as I have any updates. Chen Bufan expressed his gratitude. Thank you for your hard work. Just then, a red figure suddenly flashed by. Chen Bufan looked up and saw a fleeting glimpse of crimson, realizing that only one person dared to be so bold. Feng Wu, the leader of the Xuanying sect. Feng Wu's icy needles were unmatched, and many enemies had fallen to his hands, yet his true identity remained a mystery. Chen Bufan's ability to control such a legendary figure was truly extraordinary. Remembering something, Chen Bufan quickly contacted Kenglong, sharing all the information with him. The next morning, Kenglong brought good news. They had found the person Chen Bufan was looking for. Chen Bufan immediately set off for the destination. After an hour's drive, he arrived at a desolate courtyard surrounded by excavators and smoke. He could hardly believe his eyes. Sitting in the yard was an elderly man with white hair and wrinkled face, accompanied only by an old steward. The old man informed Chen Bufan that someone had been inquiring about the descendants of the Chen family, and they would soon have results. The old steward treated the elderly man with white hair kindly, showing his respect and care. The elderly man was moved and said with emotion, The Chen family has been loyal for generations, making significant contributions to the prosperity of Guangling. But we cannot do without descendants to inherit. However, his physical condition is worrying, unable to move easily, blind in both eyes, and constantly on guard against the coveting of the seven major families, which makes him feel anxious. Suddenly, he started coughing violently, and the old steward hurriedly handed him a tissue, only to find it stained with blood. The elderly man asked, Old Joe, am I bleeding again? The old steward's heart was twisted, unable to answer. The elderly man self-mockingly said, I've supported this old body for so many years. If it weren't for finding the lost child Xiaofan, and not wanting to let down the Chen family, maybe I would have left long ago. The old steward comforted, I know your physical condition very well, and medical conditions are good now. Let me take you to see a doctor this weekend. The elderly man resolutely declined medical treatment, understanding his own physical condition and not wanting to waste money, finally deciding to leave his inheritance to the old steward who had faithfully served him for many years. The elderly man continued to cough, his face pale, breathing becoming more difficult. The old steward held back tears, watching this former martial arts master in front of him, feeling heartbroken. The elderly man firmly said, If I leave, the remaining property and this old mansion will all be yours. Your care over the years has made me grateful. The old steward tearfully agreed. At that moment, two figures appeared in the courtyard. Chen Bufan immediately recognized the elderly man with white hair and shouted excitedly, Uncle Ji Yu. Uncle Hai heard this familiar address, his heart trembling as if struck by lightning. Chen Bufan knelt before Uncle Ji Yu, overflowing with gratitude. Uncle Hai was shocked by the identity of this young man, the sole survivor after the fall of the Chen family. Surprised, Uncle Hai asked, Xiao Fan, what are you doing here? Chen Bufan recalled being rescued by Uncle Hai from a life-threatening situation six years ago and said excitedly, Uncle, you saved me and brought me to Li Yong. Have you forgotten? Tears welled up in Uncle Hai's eyes as the person he had been concerned about for six years finally appeared before him. He reached out in excitement to stand up. Chen Bufan held Uncle Hai's arm, saying with emotion, Uncle, your eyes and legs, what happened? The mystery of Uncle Hai's background left Chen Bufan incredulous. In his heart, Uncle Ji Yu was a famous martial arts master in Guangling, old but spirited, radiant and full of vigor. After six years of separation, Gu Hai met again and found the other person extremely aged, with blindness in the eyes and disabled legs. It tore at his heart, but he chose to maintain a strong attitude, feeling comforted as long as the other party was healthy and safe. Guhai shook his head and sighed deeply. Suddenly, a loud noise came. The door was forcefully pushed open, and several young men with tattoos swaggered in. The old butler ran over in panic and told Guhai, Ji Yu Bo, it's bad, those people are here again. Who are they? Chen Bufan asked coldly. They are under Zhao Bei, who often causes trouble. The old steward replied promptly. Zhao Bei? Chen Bufan had never heard of him before. I've never heard of him. I say, Guhai, you old man haven't died yet, you're lucky enough. Several thugs walked up to him, 
carelessly saying, What are you planning to do? Gu Hai asked angrily, Even if you can't see it, Chen Bufan's eyes were cold. These people must come looking for trouble often. Just here to see if you're dead or not. Since you're still alive, it's simple, this area has already started relocating. When are you leaving? This is the house I personally purchased, my retirement place. I signed a 30 year contract back then. What you're doing is a breach of contract, it's illegal. Illegal? Several young people laughed loudly. Old man, are you confused? This piece of land has already been sold by our bay. It's now the property of the Shen family. They want to demolish it, we dare not disobey. I don't care about your activities, anyway. I won't live much longer. Can't you let me spend my last days in peace? Guhai almost pleaded. Since you're almost dead, what are you doing these days? If you don't move, we'll help you move. The old Guhai ancestor must have left behind a lot of treasures. After saying this, the group walked towards the room. Bold robbery. Get out. Get out of here. When your bae saw me back then, he had to call me Senior Gu. What are you guys? Leave here immediately. Guhai thundered. That was a long time ago, gone forever. Now you, Guhai, are blind, disabled, and on the verge of death. Why are you making a fuss? If you dare to make any more noise, I'll send you directly to meet King Yama. The leader, Wang Mao, said arrogantly. Search thoroughly. Take away any good stuff. Wait. Chen Bufan suddenly spoke up. He he, what do you want? Wang Mao glanced at Chen Bufan and said disdainfully. Kneel down and apologize to Senior Ju. Otherwise you will regret coming into this world. Chen Bufan said coldly, his eyes full of killing intent. Too much. Treating the person who saved your life like this, it's simply seeking death. Ha ha. Wang Mao immediately burst into laughter. Brothers, did you hear what this kid just said? He actually wants us to make this old man kneel down, or we'll regret coming into this world. The group of henchmen all laughed heartily, as if they were looking at an idiot. Being so arrogant in this place, not bothering to find out our identity, just based on what you said earlier, I want you to kneel down and apologize, otherwise I will make you regret it for the rest of your life. Wang Mao hadn't finished speaking when he suddenly saw Chen Bufan charging towards him like a fierce tiger. His speed was so fast that it was unbelievable. His whole body exuding a terrifying aura, making people's hearts palpitate. Wang Mao could even see with his naked eyes, the calm air surging with a powerful airflow, as if it had stirred up a huge wave, rushing towards him violently. Bang! At the next moment, a heavy punch fiercely hit him, as if he had been hit by a thousand-pound boulder. His body instantly twisted into an unbelievable angle. Crack, crack, the sound of intense cracking rang out, his entire skeletal structure breaking like dry noodles, then his whole person turned into a phantom, crashing wildly tens of feet away. A mouthful of blood sprayed out, and he died on the spot. The henchmen, seeing this, were terrified as if they had seen a monster, their scalps tingling, their pants wet, and some even wet themselves. The horrifying scene made them tremble with fear, facing an irresistible threat. With one punch, the leader was sent flying, his body contorted. Monster, run! They cried out in terror, fleeing towards the gate. Chen Bufan stepped forward, exuding boundless momentum, his big hands continuously striking out like a released tiger. Crack, crack, he disabled all their arms. Then he lifted his big foot. Bang, 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 one by one. They flew out of the courtyard, with muffled sounds coming from outside the walls. Even if they didn't die, they were crippled. Kanglong, Chen Bufan shouted, with a cold gaze and endless rage. Understood. Kanglong nodded immediately, and began to clean up the scene, restoring calmness. The courtyard instantly fell silent. The old steward stood dumbfounded, unable to recover for a long time. Xiaofan, are you okay, Xiaofan? Guhai, unable to see. Thought Chen Bufan had been injured and asked anxiously. Gu Bao, I'm fine. I've driven those people away, and they won't come back again. Chen Bufan said, showing strength and determination. It's too much. If it were me, Gu Hai sighed. Gu Bao, what happened after you saved me back then? Chen Bufan asked, showing concern and curiosity towards Gu Hai. Forget it, it's all in the past. Gu Hai didn't want to dwell on it, carrying heavy memories. If you don't tell me, I'll have to ask the seven great families. Chen Bufan said, determined to uncover the truth. No, you mustn't go to the seven great families. 
Guhai suddenly stood up, almost falling to the ground. Chen Bufan quickly supported Guhai. Xiaofan, you must not go to the seven great families. Just tell me everything, Chen Bufan said, resorting to this method to find out about Guhai's ordeal. He was desperate to know who could be so heartless as to harm Guhai in this way. All right, I'll tell you, as long as you don't go to the seven great families. Guhai compromised. After I rescued you from the Chen family and sent you to Liyang overnight, I immediately returned to Liyang to avoid being discovered by the seven great families. However, the seven great families were too cautious and suspected me. They mobilized numerous experts, captured me, and tortured me for information. I refused to speak, so in a fit of anger, they blinded me, broke my legs, and destroyed my martial arts skills. Listening to Guhai's words, Chen Bufan's eyes turned icy cold. The seven great families, these bastards, were despicable to the core, not even sparing a respected martial arts master like Guhai. Blinding his eyes, breaking his legs, destroying his martial arts skills, this was more tortuous than killing him, truly heartless. Those bastards, I must annihilate them. Chen Bufan roared in his heart, afraid of worrying Guhai if he said it out loud. Alas, living in this ghostly state, there's no meaning to my existence. I just can't let go of you. A few years ago, when I heard you went missing in Liyang, I was extremely worried. Sadly, fearing discovery by the seven great families, I didn't dare to go there, not even daring to make a phone call. These years, I've been like a caged bird in Guangling, praying for the Chen family's safety, so that you, the only bloodline, would not be in danger. Fortunately, heaven has finally opened its eyes, such fortune. Even if I die, I can finally rest in peace. Guhai was too excited, coughing violently and spitting out a lot of blood. Chen Bufan quickly checked the condition of Ji Yu Bo's body, his expression changing. Not only had Ji Yu Bo lost all his power, but his meridians had also been severely damaged, making the situation extremely critical. Ji Yu Bo, you don't need to worry too much. I will do everything I can to heal you. Ji Yu Bo shook his head, feeling helpless. I am seriously injured and my life is in danger. Everyone will die eventually. Being able to see you before my end is enough. No regrets. With great difficulty, the last word squeezed out of Ji Yu Bo's mouth, and his head gently tilted to one side. Old steward shouted loudly, Quick, help me get Ji Yu Bo into the room. Chen Bufan said decisively, immediately with the help of the old steward, lifted Ji Yu Bo onto the bed. The silver needles flew. Chen Bufan unhesitatingly used the Gigushuen needles, infused true energy into the silver needles, and easily pierced them into Ji Yu Bo's acupoints. With each needle inserted, he forcefully infused true energy into Ji Yu Bo's body, connecting all the broken meridians one by one. Despite the depletion of most of his true energy, he did not hesitate. Because without Ji Yu Bo, there would be no Chen Bufan today. Half an hour later, when Chen Bufan left the room, his steps were a bit unsteady, and his forehead was covered in cold sweat. Ji Yu Bo's injuries were too severe. Just the Gigu Shuen needles were not enough. He needed powerful true energy to heal. Fortunately, it was Chen Bufan who took action, otherwise no one could have saved Ji Yu Bo. Young Master Chen, how is old Ji Yu? The old steward asked with a worried expression. Don't worry, he's stabilized now, he should wake up soon, I'll be here waiting for him to wake up, Chen Bufan said. All right, the old steward nodded, finally letting go of his worries. Master, all issues have been resolved, and I have also found out about the identity of Lord Eight, Kang Long quickly said. Speak, Chen Bufan said. Lord Eight's a real name is Zhao Badu, a big shot in this area. He grew up in the rivers and lakes, started businesses such as Entertainment City, foot bath shops, and accumulated a large amount of wealth in the past 12 years. Later, he started investing in second-hand real estate. Almost all the properties in this area are under his control, and any second-hand property transaction has to go through him to make a profit. After that, this area was acquired by the Shin family, one of the seven major families, and Zhao Badu has since worked for the Shin family, specifically responsible for the area's reconstruction work, Kang Long explained in detail. Chen Bufan's face turned cold. He didn't expect the actions of the seven major families to be so big. Not only did they want to develop Kuihu Square, 
but even this area was controlled by the Shin family. Due to the many thorny issues involved in this work, it required the familiarity and superb skills of Zhao Badu. From the trouble caused by those hooligans, one could see a glimpse of these methods, and who knows how many people have encountered the same fate as Ji Yu Bo. While the Chen family was still in existence, the influence of the seven major families had not spread here, but after the Chen family's downfall, the seven major families probably had control over the entire Guangling, doing as they pleased. Seven major families, new and old grudges, I will settle accounts with you. Chen Bufan's eyes flashed with determination. Half an hour later, Ji Yu Bo woke up. The old steward was greatly surprised. He did not expect Chen Bufan to actually cure Ji Yu Bo. It was almost like Hua Tuo reincarnated. Just as he regained consciousness, Ji Yu Hai hurriedly called out, Xiao Fan, are you here? Ji Yu Bo, I'm here. Chen Bufan immediately answered. Xiao Fan, did you save me? Ji Yu Bo asked incredulously. Yes, but your injuries are too severe. It will take a long time to heal, and the eye injury will also need time. But please rest assured, I will completely heal you. Chen Bufan promised solemnly. Xiao Fan, I'm really grateful to you. Ji Yu Hai also felt surprised. He did not expect Chen Bufan to save him. He thought this was the end of his life. You saved my life back then, and now I'm helping you, it's really insignificant. Chen Bufan shook his head and said to Ji Yu Bo, Xiao Fan, you have made me realize the importance of breathing again. I am grateful for that, but as for my life, it is beyond saving. Ji Yu Bo shook his head, not because he didn't believe Chen Bufan, but because he knew his own condition was beyond treatment. Chen Bufan understood Ji Yu Bo's concerns, so he didn't explain further, deciding to talk about it only after fully recovering. Suddenly, Ji Yu Bo exclaimed, Oh no, I almost forgot. Chen Bufan asked in confusion, What's wrong, Ji Yu Bo? Ji Yu Bo urgently said, The seven great families have been monitoring me. If you come to find me, it will definitely attract their attention. Once they know you are a descendant of the Chen family, they will surely stop at nothing to eliminate you. Let's go, leave here quickly, the farther the safer. And do not reveal your identity, hurry. Ji Yu Bo looked anxious. Chen Bufan was deeply touched by Ji Yu Bo's concern, his eyes welling up with tears, realizing that at this moment, Ji Yu Bo cared for him more than his own family. He said in a deep voice, Ji Yu Bo, I came back to eliminate the seven great families. Ji Yu Bo's face changed, and he advised, What are you saying? Xiao Fan, eliminating the seven great families is not a child's play. Such words should not be spoken lightly. The seven great families have committed countless crimes, but your current strength is simply not enough to contend with them. They are even more powerful than six years ago. Their influence has infiltrated every corner of Guangling, like an insurmountable mountain, you cannot shake them. Ji Yu Bo urged, revenge is a dish best served cold. It's not too late to seek justice when you become stronger. Although Kenglong wanted to say that in front of Ji Yu Bo, you know that the person standing in front of you is invincible and the seven great families are not even qualified to tie his shoelaces. But under Chen Bufan's gaze, he chose to remain silent. Chen Bufan reassured, Ji Yu Bo, I will not act recklessly. To avoid worrying Ji Yu Bo, he could only say that. Ji Yu Bo asked, Xiao Fan, can I ask you for a favor? Chen Bufan asked, please, go ahead. Ji Yu Bo said with a melancholy tone, when you leave Guangling, if you have the chance, could you take care of my granddaughter Yi Yi? Chen Bufan curiously asked, Who is Yi Yi? Ji Yu Bo explained, She is called Ji Yu Yi, my only granddaughter, I am very worried about her. When Chen Bufan asked about Yi Yi's parents, Ji Yu Bo sighed, Her parents are no longer with us. Chen Bufan realized and suddenly asked, Was it the work of the seven great families? Ji Yu Bo nodded silently. Suddenly, a strong murderous intent erupted from Chen Bufan, filling the entire room. Ji Yu Bo felt the room unusually cold and asked, Lao Zhou, did you turn on the air conditioning? Why is it so cold? Lao Zhou stammered and looked at Chen Bufan in horror. The powerful aura emanating from him made him shudder, almost unable to breathe. Chen Bufan said solemnly, Ji Yu Bo, please rest assured, I will take good care of your granddaughter, and as for the crimes of the seven great families, I will settle the score with them. 
The fire of anger burned within Chen Bufan uncontrollably. He couldn't hide his inner rage. Even if Ji Yu Bo was worried, he couldn't stop. Ji Yu Bo said anxiously, Xiao Fan, you must not take risks. I have sacrificed everything for you. If anything happens to you, it's not worth it. Ji Yu Bo and Lao Zhou looked at the person in front of them in amazement. They had never seen such a commanding figure before. In a stern declaration, the fate of the seven major families seemed to have been sealed. The determination and anger in the person's voice sent a powerful message that Ji Yu Bo and Lao Zhou could not resist. They knew deep down that this person was not a weakling who would easily give up. His goals were clear and unwavering. The aura of dominance and determination he exuded was more chilling than a bolt of lightning. At that moment, both Ji Yu Bo and Lao Zhou were filled with shock and unease, because they understood that the fate of the seven major families might truly be completely altered within three days. Chen Bufan's heart was burning with anger. He felt that just dealing with the seven great families was far from enough, and this kind of petty squabble would not satisfy him at all. He needed to make them pay a greater price to calm the anger in his heart. From wiping out the Chen family to eradicating the Ji Yu family, every blood feud needed to be repaid one by one. Ji Yu Bo, I'll spare you today, but next time we meet, you will pay a more painful price. Chen Bufan took a deep breath, feeling uneasy, and bid farewell. Ji Yu Bo shouted out Xiao Fan's name loudly, expressing his urgent feelings. Ji Yu Bo, I'm sorry. I can't explain in detail, but I believe you will understand everything when we meet again. Chen Bufan said apologetically. After leaving Kanglong, Chen Bufan secretly mobilized the demon army to protect Ji Yu Bo's safety. He drove to a deserted bridge, stood on the windy river, finally calming the chaotic thoughts in his heart. However, the killing intent on him did not diminish, just hidden deep in his pupils, ready to erupt at any moment. These seven great families are truly too ruthless. There are actually such insidious and malicious people in this world. Kanglong couldn't help but curse, his face extremely cold. They caused a hundred thousand greedy wolf army soldiers to die in battle. It's simply unforgivable. Although I'm not on the battlefield, I will also fight for justice. This time, we must eradicate all seven great families. Chen Bufan said coldly, Guild Master, what's your plan? Kanglong asked eager to take action after hearing about the various crimes of the seven great families. Let me arrange it, Chen Bufan said. Understood. Kanglong nodded, following Chen Bufan's instructions to find Ji Yu Bo's granddaughter, Ji Yu Yi. Night fell, and the nightlife in Guangling became lively. The demoness bar was located near the university city, elegantly decorated and well-managed, with a great reputation. At eight o'clock, the bar was already packed with people and luxury cars parked outside. Just then, a car pulled up, and Chen Bufan and Kenglong got out of the car. Looking at the bar, Chen Bufan furrowed his brows. Ji Yu Yi is only 18 years old and just started university, how could she be here? Chen Bufan said puzzledly, Guild Master, according to my investigation, this bar belongs to Zhao Badu. Kenglong explained, what a coincidence. Chen Bufan snorted and then walked into the bar. Deafening music and colorful lights hit their faces. Chen Bufan looked around, the crowd bustling, his aura not fitting in here, but not attracting any attention either. They casually chose a seat, ordered two iced coffees. Chen Bufan's sharp gaze searched the crowd, but he could not find his target. Suddenly, the lights dimmed, and the music stopped abruptly. A young man in a suit took the stage with a microphone and the scene fell silent. Today, the bar welcomed a beautiful girl from the arts department of Guangling University, who will bring a wonderful dance performance to the audience. When they heard that she was a student from the arts department of Guangling University, the audience below became excited because they knew this beautiful girl must be accomplished in her studies to be able to perform here. Applause and cheers instantly filled the entire bar. The host loudly announced, let's give a warm welcome to Ji Yu Yi Yi. A young girl gracefully walked onto the stage, wearing a snow-white spaghetti strap dress. In the spotlight, she showcased perfect body curves and fair skin. Her delicate and pure face carried a hint of shy agility. Ji Yu Yi Yi was performing part-time here for the first time, surrounded by onlookers, feeling a bit constrained. The audience looked at her, praising non-stop, as if she were a goddess on stage. 
Enchanted men started whistling and cheering. Ji Yu Yi Yi smiled and introduced herself. Hello everyone. I'm Ji Yu Yi Yi, hoping to bring you joy. With the beautiful music playing, Ji Yu Yi Yi began to dance. Every move she made captivated the men present, leaving them utterly mesmerized. Her beauty attracted everyone, making the stage area lively, with some even taking out their phones to capture this wonderful moment. Chen Bufan watched Ji Yu Yi Yi on stage, feeling a slight worry. He understood that everyone had to earn money through their efforts, but working in a bar was not safe, especially for an 18-year-old girl, who could easily encounter danger. Seeing the audience going crazy for her, Ji Yu Yi Yi gradually let go of her worries and showed confident dance moves. Some guests started placing glasses and banknotes in front of the stage, tempting her. They smiled and said to Ji Yu Yi Yi, Beauty, as long as you drink these drinks, this money will be yours. Ji Yu Yi Yi looked at the money in front of her, desire flickering in her eyes. She squatted down, gulped down the drinks in the glasses in one go, then took the banknotes. The alcohol burned her throat and stomach, but she knew she needed this money, earned through her dancing, and didn't want to give up in vain. The audience started cheering, more, more. Ji Yu Yi Yi took a deep breath, drank all the drinks on stage in one go, feeling a bit dizzy. Just then, a man in a tiger print shirt brought over three more drinks and a stack of money. He said to Ji Yu Yi Yi, Little beauty, I like your dance. As long as you drink these three drinks, this 10,000 will be yours. 10,000. Ji Yu Yi Yi was shocked, as the money the other guests had given was only a few hundred. But this tiger brother was offering 10,000, which was truly generous. Looking at the stack of money, Ji Yu Yi Yi's heart wavered. She had earned less than this amount in a month working at the milk tea shop. This 10,000 could make up for her hard work for months. Just three more drinks. Thank you, tiger brother. Ji Yu Yi Yi sweetly smiled, bent down, and finished the drinks in one go. Tiger brother looked at the slightly open neckline of Ji Yu Yi Yi a hint of a sinister smile on his face. Ji Yu Yi Yi clenched her teeth, finished the three drinks in one go, and Tiger Brother immediately handed her the money. Just as Ji Yu Yi Yi joyfully accepted the money, Brother Hu suddenly reached out his big hand and pulled her into his arms, causing a burst of screams. Brother Hu looked imposing, drawing laughter and whistles. Ji Yu Yi Yi struggled desperately, loudly demanding to be released. However, Brother Hu grinned and said, it's fate that you fell into my arms so carelessly. He tightly embraced Ji Yu Yi Yi, starting to playfully tease her. Ji Yu Yi Yi, in panic, said, I'm just here for part-time work, please let me go. But Brother Hu mischievously replied, Do you think I spent 10,000 yuan for nothing? At least let me have some intimate contact. With that, he leaned in close to Ji Yu Yi Yi, making it impossible for her to push him away. The onlookers around were excitedly watching no one stepping forward to help. Just then, a stern shout rang out, causing the entire bar to tremble. All eyes were fixed on a particular spot, where Chen Bufan stared coldly at Tiger Brother. Tiger Brother provocatively asked, Who do you think you are? Chen Bufan fearlessly responded, Let her go. His voice was icy and disdainful, as if he couldn't be bothered to answer Tiger Brother's question. Enraged, Tiger Brother demanded, what gives you the right to order me around? Unfazed, Chen Bufan issued a final ultimatum. Three seconds, release her, or face the consequences. Intimidated by his dominance, Tiger Brother was instantly kicked and sent flying, writhing in pain. Chen Bufan coldly inquired, Do you know who I am? The entire bar was in awe, astonished by Chen Bufan's dominance. Tiger Brother's henchmen, unwilling to back down, attacked Chen Bufan with beer bottles only to be easily defeated by his powerful counterattack. Terrified, Tiger Brother looked at this unruly challenger before him, feeling a sense of fear. Chen Bufan's icy gaze locked onto Tiger Brother as he questioned, Do you still want to provoke me? Tiger Brother roared, Offend me, Tiger Brother, and you'll... Before he could finish his sentence, Chen Bufan had already acted without mercy. His foot landed, ribs cracked, blood spurted, and Tiger Brother fainted on the ground. Onlookers retreated in fear, watching as Chen Bufan walked away with Ji Yu Yi, leaving chaos in his wake. Suddenly, a middle-aged man in a suit and his entourage stepped forward, sternly questioning Chen Bufan. 
Chen Bufan calmly replied, Who do you think you are? Are you even worthy of me giving you face? Enraged, the man in the suit ordered his men to stop Chen Bufan. With a cold laugh, Chen Bufan unleashed a powerful force, causing the ground to crack open, leaving everyone stunned. As his foot touched the ground, an astonishing energy erupted, shaking the entire bar. After the deafening roar subsided, the crowd's faces turned pale, overwhelmed by Chen Bufan's formidable presence. Ten henchmen fell to the ground one by one, swaying and trembling, their eyes filled with fear as if they had seen a ghost. A young man in a suit trembled all over, his eyes fixed on the ground. Chen Bufan's feet stomped on the floor, causing the tiles to crack and the whole ground to tremble. What kind of power was this? Who else dared to block his path? Chen Bufan took a step closer. Suddenly, the young man in the suit's legs gave out, and he knelt directly on the ground. Just the unparalleled momentum alone made him pale in comparison. The succubus bar belongs to Lord 8, causing trouble here. Lord 8 will never let it go. The young man in the suit mustered up the courage to say. Are you talking about Zhao Badu? Chen Bufan asked. Yes, the man in the suit nodded, thinking Chen Bufan was feeling intimidated. However, the next moment, Chen Bufan declared, even better, Kanglong, get ready, we're going to flatten this place. With that, he stepped over the man in the suit. The middle-aged man's heart chilled, not even respecting Lord 8? And wanting to flatten this place? What was this guy boasting about? After Chen Bufan left, the man in the suit immediately got up and hurriedly called Lord 8. Lord 8, it's bad, someone is causing trouble at the succubus bar, and they say they want to destroy it, you need to bring people over quickly. The man in the suit had just finished speaking when he suddenly froze. A group of black clad figures appeared like ghosts, exuding a fierce aura. Who are you? The man in the suit stammered. In the name of our master, we will flatten this place. The black clad figures said coldly. The man in the suit took a sharp breath, his face as white as a sheet of paper. In that instant, countless black clad figures flooded into the bar bringing a dark and terrifying atmosphere. Ten minutes later, several cars swiftly arrived at the succubus bar. Zhao Badu hastily got out of the car, and the scene before him sent a chill down his spine. It's all destroyed. How could this happen? He had invested millions in the succubus bar, only to see it turned into ruins. He could hardly believe his eyes, rubbing them hard to make sure he wasn't mistaken. The succubus bar was indeed destroyed and his men were nowhere to be seen. Who could have done this? Zhao Badu was furious, his face grim. Discovering his men missing in the evening and now the bar destroyed, he was enraged. He may not be the overlord of Guangling, but in this area, he was the undisputed underground king, his name known far and wide after decades of struggle. Anyone who went against him would pay a painful price. Especially after joining forces with the Xin family, he was invincible. Now, facing two consecutive blows, it was a humiliation to him. If he couldn't find the culprit, he swore he would not rest. In the square park near the university city, Chen Bufan brought Ji Yu Yi here. Why are you working there? Chen Bufan asked. Of course, to make money, Ji Yu Yi replied confidently. Don't you know there are many bad people there? Chen Bufan's tone was stern. It's my first time going there. How would I know something would happen? Ji Yu Yi Yi retorted. Ji Yu Yi Yi's lips curled slightly with a hint of disdain in her tone, but her aura seemed somewhat low. I will never go there again, she said sullenly. Chen Bufan gently reminded her, I was just thinking about your safety, that's why I said that. Ji Yu Yi Yi immediately retorted, Whether I go or not, what does it have to do with you? Chen Bufan smiled and said seriously, Your grandfather entrusted me to take care of you. I hope I can look after you. He did not expect Ji Yu Yi Yi to be so rebellious, and couldn't help but sigh inwardly. Your grandfather? Ji Yu Yi Yi suddenly sneered, her voice tinged with mockery. Whether I live or die, what does it have to do with him? The helplessness and loneliness revealed in her words evoked a sense of pity in others. Chen Bufan frowned upon hearing the accusations from Ji Yu Yi. Her heart was filled with anger and sadness, believing that if it weren't for Chen Bufan, her parents would not have met with misfortune, and she would not have been forced to work in a bar for a living, even almost being insulted. Ji Yu Yi angrily said, 
Your parents were killed because of the seven great families. Your grandfather was also crippled by them. Why do you blame your grandfather? Chen Bufan coldly replied. How do you know all this? Who are you really? Ji Yu Yi asked cautiously. Chen Bufan nodded in acknowledgement, causing Ji Yu Yi's eyes to widen in surprise as she asked, Are you the descendant of the Chen family that my grandfather saved with his life back then? She angrily blamed Chen Bufan. It's all because of you. If it weren't for you, my parents wouldn't have suffered. Suddenly, Kang Long shouted, Do not be disrespectful to the Lord. He angrily grabbed Ji Yu Yi. But Chen Bufan immediately ordered Kang Long to release her. Ji Yu Yi struggled stubbornly, shouting angrily, Let me go. If it weren't for you, my parents wouldn't have. Chen Bufan interrupted her. I apologize for what happened to your parents and Uncle Ji Yu. As for the seven great families, I will make them pay. Ji Yu Yi sneered, Make them pay? What ability do you have to make the seven great families pay? Do you know how powerful they are? She continued to question Chen Bufan, expressing her concerns about the troubles he brought. Chen Bufan replied calmly, Don't worry, I will handle these matters. However, Ji Yu Yi warned, You are incapable of solving these problems. Zhao Bei is the behind the scenes boss of the Yao Ji Bar, a well known underground king in this area. He will never let you off. Ji Yu Yi picked up her shoulder bag resolutely and turned to leave. Kang Long couldn't help but blame her. This girl is so unreasonable. Chen Bufan, on the other hand, calmly said, having lost her parents, her actions are understandable. Just then, Ji Yu Yi suddenly turned back to warn Chen Bufan, Zhao Bei lives nearby. If you don't want trouble, leave here quickly. She left without mercy, showing her resolute character. Suddenly, a loud shout rang out, and several car lights shone on Chen Bufan and Ji Yu Yi, trapping them in the square. Ji Yu Yi shouted loudly to escape but was blocked by a dozen people. Chen Bufan, however, stood still without moving. A short and fat man walked up to Ji Yu Yi and threatened, Do you know who I am? Shaking, Ji Yu Yi replied, You are Zhao Bei. Zhao Bei menacingly warned, Dare to cause trouble on my turf? In this critical situation, Ji Yu Yi and Chen Bufan faced a severe test. How will their confrontation evolve, and where will they go from here? Ji Yu Yi Yi was frightened, her face as pale as paper. She trembled and apologized, I'm sorry, boss. The Yao Ji bar has been destroyed. Is a simple apology enough? Zhao Bei sternly questioned, destroyed? How could that be? Ji Yu Yi Yi looked puzzled, as the bar was intact when she left. Her gaze turned to Chen Bufan, remembering what he had said to the bar owner. She couldn't believe it, could it be him? Zhao Bei's cold gaze fixed on Chen Bufan, threatening, you dare destroy my bar. Are you prepared to compensate with millions or be thrown into the river to feed the fish? Chen Bufan fearlessly replied, have you forgotten your past deeds? Zhao Bei angrily said, causing trouble on my turf, either compensate or face punishment. Ji Yu Yi Yi bravely interjected. Zhao Bei, please listen to my explanation. But Zhao Bei scolded, shut up. You, an irrelevant person, stay out of this. Chen Bufan proposed another option. You can kneel down and apologize, I'll make your death quick. Enraged, Zhao Bei ordered his men to break Chen Bufan's legs. Ji Yu Yi Yi urgently shouted, Chen Bufan, apologize quickly. Zhao Bei is not someone you can provoke. Chen Bufan calmly called out, Kang Long. Kang Long rallied and fiercely fought like a ferocious tiger, easily overpowering his opponent with agonizing screams. As one of the eight dragon kings of the Demon Temple, Kang Long was powerful, just slightly inferior to Chen Bufan. Seeing his men defeated, Zhao Bei was terrified and asked, Who are you people exactly? But it was too late, as Chen Bufan commanded Kang Long to bring Zhao Bei before him. Realizing the danger, Zhao Bei drew his large cleaver, ready to fight back. Anger filled his heart as he cursed loudly. Without hesitation, he turned and swung his machete towards the azure dragon god. Suddenly, a scream rang out. Ji Yu Yi covered her mouth in shock, watching the scene before her in terror. Kang Long snorted coldly, not panicking at all. With a quick sidestep, he dodged the big knife and grabbed the opponent's arm. Crack, with a sudden twist, the bones instantly broke and the whole arm twisted like a twist, blood gushing out. With a clang, 
The big knife fell to the ground. Come with me. Kang Long pressed Zhao Badu down and strode over to Chen Bufan. Kneel down. With a kick, Zhao Badu's knees buckled, and he knelt in front of Chen Bufan. His mouth stinks. Kang Long, clean him up, Chen Bufan said. All right. Kang Long nodded and raised his hand. Smack. A slap landed. Teeth mixed with blood sprayed out. I am Zhao Badu. How dare you hit me? You're dead. Zhao Badu spat with blood. Not clean enough. Do it again. Kang Long raised his hand. Smack. Another slap landed. Knocking out more teeth and breaking his nose. Blood all over his face. Big brother. I was wrong. Please let me go. Zhao Badu finally backed down. If you didn't back down. It just means I didn't hit hard enough. Let's talk business. Chen Bufan suddenly said. You. You said. Zhao Badu nodded vigorously. You're the one who caused trouble for Gu Hai by forcing him to move, right? You mean Gu Hai? Chen Bufan nodded. Zhao Badu suddenly realized something. Could it be? If you don't cooperate honestly, this will be your fate too, Chen Bufan said coldly. Boom. Zhao Badu's heart trembled. Cold sweat pouring down. The young man in front of him suddenly seemed like a demon in his heart, terrifying to the extreme. You have to cooperate. I'll answer my first question. Zhao Badu was truly scared now, not because of the beating, but because of Chen Bufan's words. I sent someone to trouble Gu Hai because the old man wouldn't move, delaying my project. Zhao Badu confessed honestly, the project you're working on is for the Xin family? Yes, it's funded by the Xin family. I'm just helping them solve problems. Zhao Badu suddenly found an opportunity to shift the blame to the Shen family. Indeed it's the Shen family, the information is correct, Chen Bufan said. Hearing Chen Bufan's mutter, Zhao Badu thought he feared the Shen family. Since you know about the Shen family, hurry up and let me go. If I'm in danger, the Shen family will definitely come after you. They are one of the seven major families in Guangling, you can't afford to offend them. I remember you like to throw people into the river to feed the fish? Chen Bufan suddenly asked. Zhao Badu was stunned. What did he mean? Wasn't he afraid of the Xin family? Kang Long, fulfill his wish. Chen Bufan ordered. Okay. Kang Long nodded. Zhao Badu's face changed drastically. I have the Xin family backing me. You don't need to kill me for an old man and a girl, or else the Xin family will definitely kill you. I'm not killing you because of these but because the Shen family and I have deep-seated grievances. Blame yourself for choosing the wrong ally, Chen Bufan said coldly. What? Zhao Badu's pupils shrank at the revelation. This person actually had deep-seated enmity with the Shen family? Who are you really? Zhao Badu's voice echoed through the night. Unfortunately, until the last moment, Zhao Badu did not get an answer. Are you really going to kill Zhao Badu? Ji Yu Yi finally came to her senses her voice trembling. For her, it was like an inescapable nightmare. In this place, the feared Lord Eight was actually harshly reprimanded by Chen Bufan, and even, lost his life. This scene is unbelievable, Chen Bufan coldly said, this matter has nothing to do with you. It's late, you better go back soon. And, it's best to forget everything today, just pretend you never met me. Chen Bufan's tone sent chills down the spine. Chen Bufan. You can't deal with the Shen family. Leave Guangling quickly. Ji Yu Yi worriedly shouted. Chen Bufan just smiled faintly, said nothing, and left directly. He didn't need anyone's help. Ten minutes later, Kang Long came back and had already solved Zhao Badu's problem. What about Ji Yu Yi? I sent her back. Chen Bufan replied. Kang Long angrily said. Master, what are you thinking? That girl was clearly unreasonable. Although Ji Yu Bo once saved you, her parents were killed. Obviously a retaliatory action from the seven great families. How can you take the blame? Anyway, it's because of my Chen family. Ji Yu Yi is still young and it's normal for her not to understand those things. I promised Ji Yu Bo to take care of her, just ensure her safety. Chen Bufan said calmly and ordered to protect Ji Yu Yi secretly. Although Kang Long was dissatisfied, he had to obey the master's orders. At around 9 o'clock in the evening, Chen Bufan returned to the hotel and found Zhang Yuru teaching CC to read. When the mother and daughter saw him back, they greeted him with joy on their faces. Why are you back so late? I've been worried, Zhang Yuru asked anxiously. Chen Bufan smiled and said, 
I was meeting some old friends. Zhang Yuru carefully looked at him, confirmed his safety, and sighed in relief. True love lies in the details. The moment of concern made Chen Bufan feel warm. Zhang Yuru asked, Have you eaten? Not yet. Chen Bufan smiled awkwardly. I haven't eaten either. I had to wait for you to come back to eat together. Si Si said. Chen Bufan asked with concern. Why didn't you eat first? Zhang Yuru shyly said. I couldn't eat without you here. Let's go eat then. Chen Bufan exclaimed. The family had a simple dinner at the hotel's buffet, but Zhang Yuru remained melancholy. After putting Si Si to bed, she couldn't help but ask, Any progress on that contract? Not yet, Chen Bufan answered honestly. Ah Tilda. Zhang Yuru sighed disappointedly, knowing that the contract might not be fulfilled. Forget it, we don't need that contract anymore, Chen Bufan said, embracing Zhang Yuru's shoulder. I promise you, I will solve it within three days. Zhang Yuru knew this was not easy, but looking at Chen Bufan's confident expression, she chose to believe him. Late at night, at the Shen family mansion, a subordinate hurriedly entered the courtyard, and after a while, an angry roar echoed throughout the mansion. What did you say? Zhao Badu was killed by someone? In the living room, a middle-aged man asked coldly. This man is none other than the head of the Shen family, Shen Hinian. The subordinate respectfully replied, Master, indeed, Zhao Badu's body was just salvaged from the river, and he has no breath. Although Zhao Badu had a low social status, he was highly respected in his own territory due to his tough personality, which made everyone think twice before crossing him. Curiously, Shen Hinian asked, Does anyone know who did it? Currently, there are no leads pointing to the culprit, but it is said that the bar in the university town managed by Zhao Badu was involved in a tragedy. Subsequently, Zhao Badu and his men went to investigate, but unfortunately, he met his demise. Did anyone see the appearance of the killer? Why would they target Zhao Badu's bar? Shen Hinian pressed for more details. Rumor has it that the young and beautiful culprit was just having a good time at the bar when she encountered a conflict between a bar employee and a customer. Filled with righteous indignation, the young person stepped forward, stirring up the whole bar for that girl. This action made Shen Hinian uneasy. He furrowed his brow and decided to investigate the identity of that girl. His subordinates nodded at his words, and Shen Hinian coldly stated, Even if Zhao Badu is not a big shot, he is still a member of my Shen family, and we cannot just harm him at will. Soon, his subordinates swiftly brought back the investigation results. Shen Hinian learned that the girl, Ji Yu Yi, was a freshman in the art department at Guangling University and also the granddaughter of Ji Yu Hai. Ji Yu Hai's granddaughter? A hint of vigilance flashed in Shen Hinian's eyes. Six years ago, the seven major families joined forces to burn down the Chen family. The Chen family was supposed to be annihilated, but one person managed to escape, that was young master Chen Bufan. According to the investigation, Ji Yu Hai may be related to this matter, but the old man adamantly refused to admit it, even though he was disabled and blind. Now, with the old man on his last legs, a young man suddenly appeared, causing a scene in the bar for his granddaughter, knocking down Zhao Badu. Could it be related to the descendants of the Chen family? Chen Bufan? This name flashed through Shen Hinan's mind. But according to the investigation at the time, Chen Bufan married into a wealthy family in Liang. The seven major families pooled their resources to invite the Zhen Nan mansion to take action. It is speculated that he has been dead for four years. How could he possibly come back to life? Chen Hinian shook his head. The focus of the seven major families is in Guangling. They have no idea what happened in Liang. And the nine halls of Jin Nan Mansion have been eliminated. The news has long been sealed off. They are equally clueless. Search all over Guangling. We must find the culprit. Chen Hinian ordered. Tomorrow is the relocation ceremony at Kuihu Square. No accidents can be allowed. On the same night, after Zhang Yuru fell asleep, Chen Bufan came to the rooftop of the hotel. Standing on the towering 46th floor, he looked down at the night scene of Guangling. The Chen family has accumulated for hundreds of years, made significant contributions to the prosperity of the city, admired by thousands, with endless glory. However, six years later, the Chen family has disappeared without a trace in this city. Thinking of this, a hint of indifference flashed in Chen Bufan's eyes. 
The Azure Dragon appeared quietly and addressed him as the Lord of the Palace. Chen Bufan responded lightly, already knowing about the arrival of the Azure Dragon. The Azure Dragon praised, The Lord's keenness is truly impressive. The situation after the fall of the Chen family and the business map of the seven major families have all been collected. Handing over a stack of documents, Chen Bufan flipped through them page by page, feeling a growing chill. By the time he finished reading the last page, the entire rooftop was icy cold, like the dead of winter. Indeed, after the fall of the Chen family, all industries were divided among the seven major families. The wealth painstakingly accumulated by generations of ancestors had become the possessions of others. Many industries were even sold off at low prices. The wealth of the Chen family was the most cherished treasure of Chen Bufan's father, especially some livelihood projects. Despite always running at a loss, they carried extraordinary significance. The other seven major families may think that these projects are not profitable and simply sell them off. However, behind this decision lies the destruction of the decades of hard work and accumulation of Chen Bufan's father, Chen Tingshan. Kuihu Square is no exception. If it were not still making some profit, it would probably have long disappeared. However, even so, six years have passed, and now it faces the fate of being razed to the ground. Those who once helped the Chen family manage these industries either joined the seven major families as servants or met unfortunate and tragic ends. Ji Yu Yi's parents also met the same fate, even if they did not suspect Ji Yu Bo, they could not escape this misfortune. The methods of the seven major families are truly ruthless. In contrast to the decline of the Chen family, the commercial empire under the seven major families has firmly controlled the entire Guangling, with almost any profitable project having the shadow of the seven major families. Even some well-known listed companies in the local area, after peeling back a few layers, still reveal the shadow of the seven major families. They are no longer limited to ordinary business but control a large amount of capital, evolving into an absolute capital force, hidden behind the scenes easily influencing the economic direction of the entire Guangling. The capital empire built by the seven major families has permeated the entire eastern province. Chen Bufan finally understands why Ji Yu Bo is so worried, which is completely different from when he mentioned the seven major families six years ago. The seven major families today are like seven towering mountains, firmly entrenched in Guangling, unshakable by anyone. However, unfortunately for them, they are faced with Chen Bufan. Whether you are seven towering mountains or seven blue skies, I will shatter you into pieces. Chen Bufan is filled with the aura of swords and shadows, fierce and overwhelming, stirring up the heavens. Tomorrow at 10 o'clock, the seven major families will hold a press conference at Kuihu Square to announce their plan to build a hotel, said Kanglong. Perfect, I will go there tomorrow to congratulate them, Chen Bufan decided. Congratulate them? Kang Long's mouth twitched slightly. Master, you really know how to play. This so-called congratulation may be hard for the seven major families to bear. Oh, there's one more thing. Kang Long suddenly remembered. According to my investigation, after the nine halls were wiped out, Jen and Mansion completely sealed the news. Even the seven major families are unaware, and currently have no knowledge of your situation. That's great. Tomorrow I'll show up and give the seven major families a big surprise. Chen Bufan smirked devilishly. Kang Long trembled uncontrollably. The master's smile was chilling. He didn't know what fate the seven major families would face, but he could be sure that they were in for a rough time. All night, Zhao Badu's death stirred up a huge wave. The local people, besides being shocked, applauded and rejoiced. Zhao Badu was fierce and brutal, oppressing the people and committing all kinds of evil deeds. And finally someone had rid the people of this scourge, heaven had finally shown its might. However, the waves caused by Zhao Badu's death were far from being compared to another major event. Because this morning, the seven major families of Guangling will hold a press conference at Kuihu Square to announce the demolition of the square and the construction of a seven-star hotel. Just the actions of the seven major families are enough to draw everyone's attention. The Emerald Lake Square, once a place with a rich history, has attracted much attention due to a tragic incident. Six years ago, a shocking tragedy occurred here, where the entire Chen family was wiped out overnight, with no survivors. The authorities labeled the event as an accident, but it was widely known that there was a conspiracy behind the downfall of the Chen family. As one of the eight great families of Guangling, 
The Chen family was powerful, on par with the other seven great families, ranking just below them. However, a twist of fate caused them to lose everything overnight. After the tragedy, the Emerald Lake Square became the focus of public discussion, with rumors pointing to the grudges between the seven great families and the Chen family. For the past six years, the demise of the Chen family has been a popular topic of conversation, making the Emerald Lake Square mysterious and unique. However, today, six years later, the Chen family's last legacy in Guangling, the Emerald Lake Square, is also facing the fate of being demolished, causing concern and unease among many. The demolition of the Emerald Lake Square symbolizes the final disappearance of the Chen family's trace in Guangling, marking the complete vanishing of this once prosperous and prominent family. With the demolition of the square, people can't help but reflect on the unpredictability of fate and the buried past. The rise and fall of the Chen family, the changes in Guangling, will all come to a conclusion with the disappearance of the Emerald Lake Square, leaving only memories and endless speculation. The scene at the press conference was bustling with a sea of people crowding the area, journalists and media personnel swarming in, making it impossible to move. Since the fall of the Chen family, Kuihu Square had not been this lively in a long time. However, the merchants on the square couldn't find any joy. They were the first to set up shop there, struggling to make ends meet with a small store. Ever since the square was taken over by the seven major families, the management had been a mess, and the rent had been skyrocketing every year. Many merchants had long been suffering. Now, things were even worse because Kuihu Square was about to be demolished, rendering the rent they had paid useless, and the so-called compensation was negligible. Faced with this situation, the merchants had no one to turn to for help. They couldn't even see the leaders of the seven major families and were even beaten up, with their homes vandalized. Threatened, they could only remain silent. And at that moment, the entrance of the square was solemnly arranged as if hosting a grand awards ceremony. Seven middle-aged men sat behind a red cloth covered table, smiling and chatting with each other. They exuded an unparalleled sense of dignity, as if they were nobles ruling over the area. Though they smiled, their cold eyes looked down on the crowd, showing disdain for the cheering people around them. These seven men were the leaders of the seven major families. The seven great families of Wongling had long been regarded as the seven mountains in the hearts of many possessing vast wealth, controlling the lifeline of the entire Guangling, and being the seven overlords. In the entire city of Guangling, the authority of the prefect might not be convincing, but the leaders of the seven major families held great sway. The audience below showed fiery gazes, grateful for the rare opportunity to see the leaders of the seven major families. Today is truly an honor to see the leaders of the seven major families. Now, let's hear from Mr. Shen. A beautiful host announced crisply, handing the microphone to a middle-aged man, Shen Hinian, the head of the Shen family. Shen Hinian smiled and began, Hello, everyone, I am Shen Hinian. The purpose of this press conference today is to formally announce that we will demolish Kuihu Square and build a seven-star hotel, as for, the compensation issue. Just then, a loud angry shout rang out as a group of people holding banners rushed into the venue. The banners in bright red letters read, Heartless bosses, withholding rent, forcing merchants to be homeless, coming here for an explanation, only to be beaten, the poor citizens just seek justice. We've toiled our whole lives, only to be kicked out today, there must be an account. One person led the way, with the crowd behind them riled up. The shouting echoed through the entire square, these people daring to cause trouble here. A cold light flashed in the eyes of the leaders of the seven major families. Everything is done according to regulations. We haven't owed anyone a penny. Quickly get these troublemakers out of here. Chen Hinian shouted angrily, and immediately, someone stepped forward, leading the security to drive the troublemakers out. Stop talking nonsense. We have evidence. Look. The leader pulled out a stack of documents from his pocket, filled with various pieces of evidence. The security guards disregarded it snatching the documents and ruthlessly stomping on them. This is outrageous, an elderly man exclaimed indignantly. Years ago, Chen Tingshan generously donated billions to his hometown and built the Emerald Lake Plaza, providing employment opportunities for thousands of people. The protagonist's son and daughter-in-law once worked here, and the whole family made a living from this plaza. However, six years ago, after the downfall of the Chen family and the takeover by the seven great families, 
The Emerald Lake Plaza gradually declined as the seven great families continued to exploit exorbitant rents for profit. Today, the plaza is deserted, and the seven great families can no longer profit from it. They have decided to demolish the plaza, but before leaving, they want to exploit everyone for the last time. This behavior is outrageous. The old man became more and more agitated as he spoke, trembling all over. When Chen Tingshan's name was mentioned, silence fell over the crowd. Chen Tingshan was a great figure. Under his leadership the Chen family thrived for a hundred years, and he was also known for his acts of kindness, respected as a successful entrepreneur, philanthropist, and social activist. Unfortunately, six years ago, with the downfall of the Chen family, Chen Tingshan disappeared along with them. Time flies, even the Emerald Lake Plaza, built by Chen Tingshan, will become a thing of the past, leaving behind a sense of regret. Rumors have been circulating that the seven great families were the masterminds behind the destruction of the Chen family. Therefore, they wantonly destroyed the Chen family's business, and Chen Tingshan also passed away under the harm caused by the seven great families. Justice will eventually punish these shameless individuals. The old man's words darkened the faces of the seven great families. Everyone present was shocked because they knew the close connection between the Emerald Lake Plaza and the Chen family. The old man not only mentioned the Chen family publicly but also openly pointed out the rumors in the streets, accusing the seven great families of destroying the Chen family. This kind of talk was simply asking for trouble. Nonsense. Get him out of here. Chen Hinian angrily shouted. A security guard kicked towards the old man, but was knocked down by the old man, then received a beating with an electric baton. The old man groaned in pain, but he ignored everything and continued to shout loudly. The leader of the seven great families turned pale, and several security guards quickly carried the old man away, stopping anyone who tried to interfere. Chen Hinian shouted at the media reporters, No photos allowed, these are all rumors. Anyone who dares to spread them will bear the consequences. The reporters nodded in fear of disobeying. The security guards roughly threw the old man to the side of the road, almost causing serious injuries. The old man's face was covered in blood but he still held his ground, you, will face retribution. The security guard was furious and about to attack the old man. At this critical moment, a car suddenly stopped nearby, and a young man quickly got out of the car. Without hesitation, he reached out his hand and firmly grasped the fist swung by the security guard, holding it like a vice grip. Who do you think you are? Let go of me, the security guard roared. The young man remained silent applying a slight pressure with his palm, rotating it like a blender. Suddenly, a loud crack echoed, the security guard's fist twisted and deformed like a pretzel, fingers crushed, and the arm twisted and deformed. The security guard let out a piercing scream, deafening. A thunderous roar reverberated through the entire hall, causing the security guard to be sent flying like a kite with a broken string, crashing heavily to the ground with a muffled thud. At that moment, Everyone turned their gaze towards a young man in his twenties standing there. His handsome face exuded a chilling aura, and his black attire accentuated his impressive demeanor. The unparalleled charisma emanating from him seemed as if a celestial being had descended to the mortal realm. This unmatched presence instantly sent shivers down the security guard's spine, leaving him speechless with his mouth agape. The appearance of this young man froze the entire scene, as if time itself had come to a standstill. Chen Bufan saw an elderly man fall to the ground, immediately rushed forward to help him up, conveying a warm sense of strength and assisting the old man in regaining some energy. The old man gratefully said it was okay, lamenting that people these days were so unruly. Chen Bufan comforted the old man, telling him not to worry, and then confidently walked towards the press conference venue. Behind him, a burly young man also followed. The old man hurriedly asked for Chen Bufan's name, and when Chen Bufan answered, the old man seemed somewhat unfamiliar until someone mentioned Chen Tingshan's son. The old man's face suddenly changed, his heart racing. He realized the identity of the Chen family and felt surprised and excited. However, another young man reminded him not to go, as the seven great families might take action. The old man turned around to see a group of people approaching aggressively, like a powerful army, making him feel the tense atmosphere of the battlefield. These people turned out to be subordinates of the Chen family. The old man understood and quickly caught up with Chen Bufan.
Meanwhile, at the inspectorate in Guangling, an urgent order caught the attention of the senior officials. The inspector learned that a group of mysterious black-clothed individuals suddenly appeared in Guangling, all dressed uniformly with an imposing presence, which surprised him greatly. He immediately realized their identity and gathering point, and swiftly launched an investigation. At the same time, a confidential message arrived at the headquarters of the Guangling garrison, revealing that members of the Demon God Temple had appeared in Guangling, demanding full cooperation with their operations. This news caused the commander of the Guangling garrison, Shi Pafeng, to turn pale, as the reputation of the Demon God Temple was well known throughout the Divine Dragon Kingdom, and their presence indicated a major event was about to unfold. Shi Pafeng ordered all troops in Guangling to cooperate fully with the operations of the Demon God Temple, as their presence was enough to shake people's hearts, being an unstoppable force and their leader being a respected legendary figure. The commander of the Guangling garrison felt excited and shocked, as the arrival of the Demon God Temple heralded a significant event about to take place in Guangling. At the Quihu Square, Chen Bufan's arrival didn't initially attract much attention. However, when he announced his identity, the whole scene was shocked. Chen Tingsheng's son. These five words alone were enough to stir up a storm, like a deafening thunder, echoing through the entire world. The Chen family did not end with Chen Tingsheng. There were still descendants, and Chen Bufan was the only son of the family, with a prominent reputation. Swish, swish, swish. Countless pairs of eyes all swished towards Chen Bufan, discussing in whispers. The crowd spontaneously made way for him, allowing him to move freely, as if welcoming a great hero. Chen Bufan is still alive? The seven family heads were all shocked. They had learned that Chen Bufan had escaped at the time becoming the only survivor of the Chen family. However, four years ago, they had hired Jen Nanfu at a high price to completely deal with Chen Bufan. How could he still be alive? What on earth was going on? The Chen family had already perished, everyone was no longer in this world, and yet you dare to impersonate a descendant of the Chen family, seize him. Chen Henian immediately ordered, and a group of security guards immediately rushed towards Chen Bufan. Chen Bufan lifted his foot and stomped hard on the floor. Crack, crack, the floor instantly shattered. A powerful momentum swept over, and all the security guards were knocked back as if struck hard. Bang, bang, bang. In the blink of an eye, a dozen or even twenty security guards were all rolling on the ground in pain. After six years, the youth who had fled in a sorry state back then had now become an unmatched demon. Ruling over Guangling, who could stop him? Reunion with old friends, seven uncles, can't you recognize me? Chen Bufan spoke coldly, taking steps forward. Each step landing was accompanied by a thunderous sound, grand and awe-inspiring, shaking people's hearts. How could the seven family heads not recognize Chen Bufan? When the Chen family had not yet fallen, members of the eight major families often gathered for dinner together. Even though six years had passed, although Chen Bufan's temperament had changed greatly, they could still recognize that he was the young master of the Chen Ting mountain family. Due to deep-seated anxiety, they were worried that Chen Bufan would cause trouble, so they wanted to arrest him immediately. However, this kid's strength was so powerful that he immediately knocked so many security guards back. I heard that you took over Quihu Square and planned to officially announce the demolition here today to build a seven-star hotel? Chen Bufan kept moving forward. The rumbling sound continued. Retreat quickly. The people around were extremely frightened because wherever Chen Bufan passed, the floor cracked one after another, as if being run over by a tank. It's too terrifying. How could one person have such immense power? The seven family heads suddenly felt an irresistible pressure, starting to swallow saliva, feeling restless. What they were facing seemed not to be a human, but a prehistoric giant beast. A modern aircraft carrier. Who is Chen Bufan? There is no such person in the Chen family at all. Where are the on-site security personnel? Hurry up and reinforce. Grab him. A family head shouted loudly. Fear? In the minds of the seven family heads, this word simply did not exist. They stood tall in Guangling. Invincible overlords. Even the local authorities had to bow to them. Who else were they afraid of? Just with a young man. Wanting to confront the seven of them? First catch him. Then figure out how to deal with him, it's easy. Boom, boom, boom. A large number of security personnel surged in, holding shields, 
fully equipped, the entire security company's people rushed over, totaling 50 or 60 people. Quickly catch him. Take him to the patrol office. A family head shouted loudly. Dozens of security personnel carrying shields and batons, heading straight for Chen Bufan. These people want to deal with me? Chen Bufan sneered. With a fierce punch, a deafening explosion resounded, as if shattering the entire void. With a dull thud, a frontline fighter was directly hit by this punch, his chest instantly bursting, ribs breaking with a crack, and blood gushing out like a spring. Following closely, a dozen or so people were also lifted off the ground by this punch, falling heavily to the ground. The scene was like a brutal painting, with flesh and blood flying, extremely gruesome. With a punch that sounded like thunder, unstoppable force was unleashed. Security personnel quickly raised their shields, decorated with security insignias. With a loud bang, Chen Bufan's fist directly shattered the shield, sending shards flying everywhere. Then, his fist smashed into the chest of the person behind him, sending them flying onto the stage, unconscious. The heads of the families were stunned, unable to believe what they were witnessing, and stood up one by one. Chen Bufan's strength was beyond imagination. Even the shield couldn't withstand it, it was incredible. Someone shouted out a reward of 100,000, wanting to catch this troublemaker. Upon hearing the reward of 100,000, the security personnel went crazy. Their wages were not even close to that amount, rushing towards Chen Bufan as if injected with chicken blood. Chen Bufan coldly said, aiding the tyrant, ignorant of one's own mortality. The true energy in his body raged violently, making him seem like a wild beast. In just a minute, all the security personnel were lying on the ground, none of them touched by Chen Bufan. Kang Long snorted, pointing out that these guys were out of their league, even if there were hundreds of them they couldn't handle the lord of the manor. He shouted loudly, if you don't want to die, get lost. The security personnel were scared off, even if given a million, they wouldn't dare to make a move again. After dealing with everyone, Chen Bufan walked to the front of the stage, coldly surveying the seven family heads. Apart from the Chen family, the other seven major family heads were all in front of him. Chen Bufan remembered the face of each person. It was this group of smiling people who had conspired to destroy his Chen family. After six years of hardship, he now stood in front of them again, looking down on them. The seven family heads, under Chen Bufan's gaze, appeared very uneasy, even with a hint of fear. One family head hurriedly ran over and said, Ah, Chen Bufan, I didn't expect you to still be alive, it's truly a miracle. Chen Bufan sneered, seeing through his hypocrisy. Another family head also chimed in, Bufan, do you recognize me? I even held you when you were a child. Chen Bufan was not polite at all, directly slapping the other person's face, sending them flying with blood streaming. The family head angrily asked, Chen Bufan, what do you mean by this? Chen Bufan replied coldly, I'm just here to give you all a surprise, to let you know that I'm still alive. Another family head said, being alive is a good thing. Now your Chen family has descendants. Chen Bufan said coldly, In that case, why don't we all go to hell together to accompany my Chen family? The seven family heads all had their faces change color at the same time, unable to contain their anger. Chen Bufan, you are deliberately provoking us. Even though we are friends of your father, we cannot tolerate your antics. Leave this place immediately, the head of the Feng family shouted sternly. Once among the eight great families, the Feng family was the most powerful, but now, Chen Bufan ignored their existence. Kang Long, he called out coldly. Here, Kang Long responded, swiftly stepping onto the stage and walking straight to the head of the Feng family. Slap, a fierce slap landed on his face, splattering blood everywhere. Do you still want me to leave? Chen Bufan asked coldly. You rascal, you are too arrogant. Quickly gather your men and take him down. The head of the Feng family roared in anger. Boom! Just then, a series of explosions rang out. Everyone looked up and saw a group of black-clothed people approaching from all directions, surrounding them completely. The strong sense of killing intent rose into the air, causing everyone's faces to change in shock. This is, the seven family heads were shocked. All the black-clothed people were brought here by Chen Bufan. It's terrifying. They felt the icy aura emanating from those people their hands must be stained with blood. Chen Bufan, who exactly are you? 
The head of the seven families was extremely curious. Just four years ago, he was just a son-in-law of the Han family. Now, not only was he powerful, but he could also control so many subordinates, which was chilling. For you all, just remember one thing. I am the son of Chen Tingshan, the only survivor of the Chen family. He said firmly, shaking the entire venue, causing the seven family heads to tremble. They, who didn't even deserve to know Chen Bufan's identity, with a hundred thousand troops gathered, the anger that had risen in the seven family heads was extinguished. Anyway, Bufan, your father and we were old friends. You shouldn't be so reckless. Old friends? Chen Bufan sneered after hearing that. Six years ago, your seven families joined forces to destroy my Chen family. The centuries-old mansion turned to ashes overnight. Only I managed to escape in a sorry state. To track down my whereabouts, you caught Ji Yu Bo, crippled his legs, gouged out his eyes, and killed his daughter-in-law. In these six years, the number of people framed by you is countless. No one related to my Chen family has been spared. Now, you still have the nerve to talk about the past with my father here? Chen Bufan's words shocked everyone present. What was just a rumor before has now been confirmed. It's unimaginable that the Chen family was actually destroyed by the seven great families, causing so many innocent people to suffer. It's too cruel. The scene was in an uproar, with anger and agitation. The seven family heads' faces were constantly changing. Chen Bufan, you're talking nonsense without evidence. Don't spout nonsense, or you will pay the price. I'm here today not for evidence but to inform you all that the blood debts you have accumulated over these six years, now that I, Chen Bufan, have returned, I will settle them one by one. As for today, I will not harm you, just a reminder, Kuihu Square is a masterpiece of my father's hard work, and no one can violate it. Chen Bufan said coldly, the seven major families faced a warning, which seemed a bit crazy to many. But in the hearts of the seven major family heads, there was a hidden anger. They felt, when was it the turn of a young man to punish them? Chen Bufan felt calm, since the other party was ruthless, then they didn't need to be polite either. What qualifications did they have to make them submit? Was it relying on the mysterious black-robed people around him? Chen Bufan calmly replied, Wangling is the territory of our seven major families. What right do you have to make a move against me? If you dare to call the patrol office, I'd like to see how capable they are. Chen Hinian threatened. Chen Bufan suddenly smiled. Arrest me? You can try. Arrogant and conceited. Chen Hinian didn't hesitate to pick up the phone. Kong Zunzi, this is Chen Hinian. There's a riot at Kuihu Square. Hurry and bring your men over. Make sure to bring more people. Chen Hinian reminded urgently, then hung up the phone. HMPH, Chen Bufan, the patrol office team is on the way. You just wait and see baselessly accusing our seven major families and openly provoking and fighting here. These charges are enough to ruin you financially. You despicable brat, how dare you slap me? Get down and apologize now. The head of the Yang family gritted his teeth, with traces of blood at the corner of his mouth. As one of the leaders of the seven major families in Guangling, he enjoyed supreme power and prestige. It was unbearable to be openly slapped today, making it hard to swallow the humiliation. Smack, as soon as the head of the Yang family finished speaking, Kang Long slapped him hard, sending him flying. You're lucky you didn't have to kneel. Don't you dare be arrogant here. Stay put, don't leave. You will regret it when the patrol office team arrives. The head of the Yang family roared. The other family heads had cold faces. Chen Bufan's arrogance would surely come at a cost. The scene was shocked. The seven major family heads were forced to seek help from the patrol office, which was a rare sight. Young Master Chen, you'd better leave. Someone kindly reminded. When the patrol office team arrived, Chen Bufan would surely suffer a severe setback. Even with his many followers, he had no chance against the authorities. Rest assured, I'm here today not only to settle accounts with the seven major families but also to seek justice for you all. Chen Bufan declared solemnly. Thunderous applause erupted immediately, showing admiration from everyone. The seven major family heads were livid, wishing to get rid of Chen Bufan immediately. Ten minutes later, several cars with flashing headlights rushed to the scene. Kong Zunzi was also stunned to see a crowd of black-clothed people. He sent people to investigate but found nothing. These people seemed to have appeared out of thin air, 
with no information about their identities. No matter who they are, this is within the territory of Guangling. Kong Zunzi took a deep breath and led his team forward. Make way, the patrol office has arrived. The seven major family heads were extremely excited. Elders, what happened? Kong Zunzi asked. As you know, today we, the seven major families, were holding a press conference here when this person caused trouble, injuring many people. He's a dangerous criminal who brought a large number of people to intimidate us. Arrest him and take him in for questioning. The family heads accused. Chen Bufan looked at them as if they were clowns. Unbelievable. Causing chaos here. Cuff him and take him to the office for interrogation. Kong Zunzi ordered decisively, and a group of patrol officers moved towards Chen Bufan. Stop all of you, Kang Long shouted sternly. Don't you know who he is? How dare you arbitrarily arrest him? No matter who he is, as long as he causes trouble here, he will come with me to the patrol office immediately. Kong Zunzi said coldly, You're overestimating yourselves. Kang Long sneered. Just as he was about to reveal his identity, several trucks arrived, filled with people inside. Kong Zunzi looked at the crowd in the uniform of the Guangling army, his heart trembling. The Guangling army has also arrived. What are they planning to do? The seven major families were also surprised, but then they were full of gratitude. Kong Zunzi, thank you so much for notifying the military. Kong Zunzi felt a bit embarrassed, as he actually didn't notify them. Did the events here attract attention from above? Thinking about this, he couldn't help but tremble in his heart. The energy of the seven major families is indeed extraordinary. Suddenly, the car door slammed open, and a burly figure with epaulettes stepped out. It was General Stone Peak of the Guangling Army. He saw the dense and cold crowd, and a hint of fiery light flashed in his eyes. This is the legendary Demon Army, truly extraordinary. Without a word, he immediately led his troops towards the press conference venue, with an anxious look on his face. If something happens to the demon lord here, his life would be over. General Stone, why are you here too? This little matter can be handled by our patrol office. Kong Zunzi said politely, but Stone Peak erupted in anger, shouting, handle it, get out of the way. Kong Zunzi was a bit stunned, what was going on? The people present were also surprised. Didn't General Stone come with his people for the seven major families? Why suddenly be furious with Kong Zunzi? Who is the Lord? Stone Peak asked cautiously. The Azure Dragon snorted and then looked at Chen Bufan, saying, This is him. So young? Stone Peak couldn't help but gasp. The rumors about the Demon Lord outside are countless. He originally thought that the Demon Lord, who could lead a million troops and sweep the world, would be a middle aged person but he didn't expect it to be a handsome young man. This shows that the identity of the demon lord is even more extraordinary. So, without hesitation, he knelt on one knee. General Stone Peak of the Guangling army pays respects to the lord. The people brought by Stone Peak also stood up and shouted, their voices shaking the sky. Everyone's faces were filled with respect for the lord. Whether in status or reputation, the demon lord is a mythical existence. The audience was stunned. The patrol office came to arrest Chen Bufan, and then the Guangling army followed, bringing a group of subordinates to see Chen Bufan. What on earth is going on? The patrol office and the seven major families were equally puzzled. Kong Zunzi asked tremblingly, General Stone, did you make a mistake? Shut up, do you know who he is? Stone Peak said angrily, showing great disrespect to the demon lord, it's simply insane. Who is he? Kong Zunzi's voice trembled, afraid of offending some big shot. He is. Stone Peak was about to speak, but was interrupted by Chen Bufan. I'm here for some private matters, it has nothing to do with you all. After Chen Bufan finished speaking, Stone Peak immediately nodded. Apparently the other party didn't want to reveal his identity, so he stood silently on the side. Chen Bufan then turned to the seven major families, is there anything else to do? At this moment, the seven major families looked pale. Even the governor personally came to pay respect to Chen Bufan. The people of the patrol office didn't dare to make a move, let alone them. If there's nothing else, I'll just say it straight. Chen Bufan gestured. Then, the Azure Dragon handed over a contract. With the cooperation of the seven major families and the Yi family, Chen Bufan suddenly made an unexpected request regarding the Kuihu Square project. He demanded that a payment of 5 billion be settled within two days, along with an additional 10 times in interest, 
totaling 55 billion. The heads of the seven families were stunned upon hearing this. Not only did they have to repay such a large amount, but they also had to pay a hefty interest. It was like a lion opening its mouth to devour a person. What made it even more difficult for them to accept was that Chen Bufan then requested the construction of a tomb for the deceased of the Chen family in a short period of time and invited all media reporters to come and kneel in front of the grave to repent for their mistakes. As soon as these words were spoken, the heads of the seven families turned pale, shocked beyond belief. Chen Bufan personally led his clansmen to build a tomb for the deceased of the Chen family, and invited all reporters and media to attend. They knelt in front of the grave, deeply repenting, and live-streamed all the crimes they had committed in the past. This move will completely shake the foundation of the seven major families. After Chen Bufan finished speaking, he resolutely left, disregarding the seven major families, the inspectorate, and the Guangling army as if he was indifferent to everything. The heads of the seven major families looked at each other, sweating profusely, as if they felt immense pressure. Shi Pafeng quickly stopped Chen Bufan, wanting to say something but hesitating, but Kang Long stopped him and whispered a few words in his ear. The affairs of the demon temple should not be disturbed, otherwise. Kang Long lightly threatened. Shi Pafeng widened his eyes, his lips moved as if saying, dead. Instantly, a chill filled the air. After Chen Bufan left, the orderly withdrawal of the 100,000 demon army impressed Shi Pafeng's followers greatly. The momentum of this demon army was indeed unparalleled. Kong, the inspector, curiously asked Shi Pafeng, who exactly is he? Shi Pafeng replied indifferently, his identity is top secret and not to be easily inquired about. You better not get involved in the affairs of the seven major families, otherwise, before Shi Pafeng finished speaking, he left with his men. Kong shook his head and sighed, you're on your own. The heads of the seven major families felt resentful but helpless. Kong warned, the identity of that young man is definitely extraordinary. Even Governor Shi came to pay respects. If you get involved in shady business, don't come looking for me in the future. With that, Kong hurriedly left, afraid of being implicated. The heads of the seven major families were embarrassed and puzzled, wondering, just how high is that person's status? Chen Bufan, a disgrace of the Chen family, is unexpectedly so powerful, causing the seven major families to lose face which is unforgivable. One of the family heads was furious. He ordered the continued demolition of the Quihu Square to avoid becoming a laughingstock. However, just as the seven major families were preparing to take action, the Quihu Square project was halted by higher authorities, making them realize that Chen Bufan's identity might be beyond imagination. After the failure of the press conference, the seven major families ordered a ban on media coverage to maintain their reputation. However, the news still spread. There is still one survivor from the Chen family, a descendant of Chen Tingshan. He appeared at the press conference, openly accusing the heads of the seven major families, exposing their crimes, and even attracting the attention of the inspectorate and the military. Upon hearing this news, everyone was shocked. The mystery of the Chen family's downfall six years ago finally surfaced. Various past events were dredged up again, sparking strong public reactions. Back at the hotel, Chen Bufan saw Zhang Yuru focused on her phone and asked her what she was looking at. Zhang Yuru told him that a major event had occurred in Guangling, and Chen Bufan knew exactly what she meant. During its heyday, Guangling was thriving with eight major families, but six years ago, the Chen family was wiped out, leaving only seven major families. The Kuihu Square, once the mansion of the Chen family, has now become the gathering place for the seven major families. Today, the seven major families are holding a press conference there, but unexpectedly, the sole descendant of the Chen family appeared. He publicly exposed how the Chen family was destroyed by the seven major families and revealed their crimes, shocking everyone present, even the judicial office and the military were shaken by it. Zhang Yuru said excitedly, Ah, the fate of the Chen family is truly heartbreaking, and the atrocities of the seven major families are unbelievable. Fortunately, there are still descendants of the Chen family surviving, which can be considered a kind of destiny's favor. Zhang Yuru sighed with emotion. Suddenly her gaze fell on Chen Bufan. Chen Bufan felt a slight unease in his heart. Are you the descendant of the Chen family? Zhang Yuru asked in shock. Chen Bufan looked a little puzzled. What do you think? It's impossible. 
Otherwise how could my husband be the heir of the Chen family? I would be too lucky. Zhang Yuru burst into laughter. Hearing Zhang Yuru's words, Chen Bufan smiled slightly, silently sighing about this silly girl. However, Bufan, could the descendant of the Chen family be in danger? After all, Guangling is now controlled by the seven major families, and their power is very strong. Not at all, Chen Bufan replied firmly. How can you be so sure? Zhang Yuru asked. The judicial office and the military have intervened. They will not sit idly by, right? Chen Bufan asked back. Well, that makes sense. Zhang Yuru nodded silently. It is said that the military officials treat the descendants of the Chen family with great respect, even warned the seven major families, hoping that the evildoers will eventually be punished. At this point, Zhang Yuru suddenly became excited, startling Chen Bufan. Bufan, if the seven major families are really punished, can't we get back the 500 million payment? We should be able to. Chen Bufan breathed a sigh of relief, thinking that Zhang Yuru had discovered something suspicious again. Great, Bufan, you are really my lucky star. Zhang Yuru hugged Chen Bufan happily, excitedly. When we get that money back, we can settle down in Guangling, and Sisi can go to school here. Zhang Yuru began to imagine the future. Watching Zhang Yuru's innocent smile, Chen Bufan also smiled. At this time, in the Feng family mansion, the heads of the seven major families gathered together, urgently holding a secret meeting. I have exhausted all my efforts to investigate, but four years ago, Chen Bufan suddenly disappeared without a trace, as if vanished into thin air. Chen Hinian said in a deep voice, I have also inquired with high-level officials from various parties. Either they are unaware or remain silent, even suggesting that we find Chen Bufan to admit his mistake as soon as possible. Yang, the head of the Yang family, continued. What a ridiculous suggestion. Finding Chen Bufan to admit his mistake is simply a humiliation. The heads of the families said angrily. I sent someone to Liyang and gathered some information. Zhang, the head of the Zhang family, said. What information? Everyone looked at him. About ten days ago, the son of the Han family married the daughter of the Zhang family, and Chen Bufan suddenly appeared. Zhang recounted the situation he had learned in detail. The Han family has also been destroyed? Everyone showed surprise after hearing this. Although the Han family is not on the same level as the seven major families, it is also one of the top families in Liyang with strong power. Even the Qilin Hall suffered a disaster. This is one of the nine halls under the jurisdiction of Jinan Prefecture. Chen Bufan actually has such amazing abilities? What? Upon hearing this news, everyone present was shocked. Zhang Taishan is a prominent figure, whose reputation not only echoes within Liyang City but also resonates throughout the entire eastern province. With his exceptional martial arts skills, he holds the eighth position on the eastern province martial arts ranking, making him the center of attention for many. This ranking not only represents his strength but also serves as a testament to his hard work and relentless efforts. In the vast lands of the eastern province, his name shines like a brilliant star, radiating a dazzling light that captivates the gaze of countless individuals. This list specifically includes the top experts in the entire eastern region, and those who can make it to the top 10 are true martial arts masters. For example, Guhai has a great reputation in Guangling but he is only ranked around 30 on the Eastern Martial Arts list, not even making it to the top 20. Those who can enter the top 10 are all extraordinary individuals. The destruction of the Qilin Hall and the killing of Zhang Taishan. How are these two incidents related to our investigation of Chen Bufan? Chen Hinian asked, The second head of the Han family is the deputy hall master of the Qilin Hall, and the hall master of the Qilin Hall, Xing Ao, is also a closed-door disciple of Zhang Taishan. Do you understand the implications? said Master Zhang with a solemn tone. Upon hearing this information, everyone present couldn't help but gasp. If the Han family is related to Chen Bufan, then the incidents of the Qilin Hall and Zhang Taishan are very likely the work of Chen Bufan. Feng Jinxiao, the head of the Feng family, said, As the head of the seven major families, the Feng family is the strongest, and Feng Jinxiao has been dominating the Zhonghu for 60 years and is the most respected among all the family heads. In any case, Chen Bufan is not dead, which means there has been a lapse in the work of the Jin Nan Prefecture. Has Jin Nan Prefecture Lord Morong Yi been notified to come? Feng Jinxiao asked. Just notified, 
But Morong Yi said it was inconvenient to come. Chen Hinian said, Inconvenient? This is ridiculous. All responsibility should be attributed to Jin Nan Prefecture. Let me make a call. Feng Jinxiao said coldly, immediately picking up his phone to dial. The call was quickly connected. Morong Yi, what do you mean by this? We raised 5 million to ask your Jin Nan Prefecture to take action to deal with Chen Bufan back then, but that guy didn't die at all. Now when we ask you to come, you say it's inconvenient. Explain yourself quickly, the head of the Feng family said angrily. Feng Jinxiao, that's the fact. The compensation is nothing at all. I dare not come because all nine branches under my Jin Nan prefecture have been destroyed, and even my son Zhao Lei has been killed. Morong Yi roared on the phone. The nine branches were destroyed. Sun was killed. This news was simply unbelievable to the seven family heads present. Morong Yi, are you kidding me? Feng Jinxiao completely disbelieved it. I don't have time to joke. My son was indeed killed by Chen Bufan. Including all twelve shadow guards of my Jin Nan prefecture were annihilated, and the nine branches were also destroyed. I suspect it was also the work of Chen Bufan, just lacking evidence. It's all because of you. If you hadn't come to me in the first place, none of these things would have happened. I didn't plan to come to you, but you came to me on your own initiative. I heard that Chen Bufan has already arrived in Guangling. Be careful yourselves. I want to stay alive and not be implicated. Morong Yi roared on the phone and hung up directly. The Feng family's living room fell into silence, and everyone was stunned, with a chill running down their spines. The angry voice of Morong Yi still echoes in everyone's ears, making everyone's hearts race. The nine halls, the twelve shadow guards, even his own son was killed. Morong Yi was so scared that he didn't dare to go out easily. Every incident is filled with thrilling legendary colors. And all of this seems to be related to Chen Bufan, which is shocking to everyone. After a while, everyone took a deep breath, feeling their throats dry, hastily picking up their water cups and drinking wildly, barely suppressing their fear. Feng Lao, what should we do next? There was a hint of fear in everyone's tone, and Morong Yi's performance didn't seem like a lie. Although it couldn't be completely certain that Chen Bufan was behind this, this young man was obviously not simple. Now that he has wiped out the Chen family, there is no turning back, only by getting rid of Chen Bufan. Feng Jinxiao took a puff of his cigar and said in a deep voice. Some suggested sending someone to take care of Chen Bufan directly. Feng Jinxiao denied. You all saw it. Chen Bufan's strength is exceptionally strong, difficult for ordinary people to handle, and it might backfire. I have a plan. Suddenly, Shen Hinian spoke up. I have a man under me named Zhao Badu who is likely harmed by Chen Bufan simply because he offended the granddaughter of Ji Yu Hai. Since Chen Bufan cares so much about the Ji Yu Hai family, why not? After hearing the plan, Feng Jinxiao immediately made a decision. Then let's act quickly. Let that kid reunite with his Chen family in hell as soon as possible. After returning from the press conference, Chen Bufan has been accompanying Yu Ru and Si Si in the hotel. Until 8 o'clock in the evening, Kang Long suddenly brought a piece of news. Master, the Shen family has started to act. They have taken Ji Yu Yi. Chen Bufan's expression turned cold. Didn't I ask you to keep an eye on her? Master, calm down. I did send someone to watch over her. The Shen family's every move is under control. Ji Yu Yi will be fine. Just give the order, and the brothers can rescue her. Kang Long explained in a hurry. Chen Bufan suddenly understood everything. Are you all doing this on purpose? This girl, Ji Yu Yi, disrespected me without reason. Let her see the darkness of the seven great families, so she can be awakened, and stop complaining about me when we help her directly. You, Chen Bufan didn't know whether to call Kang Long naive or foolish. Master, I assure you that Ji Yu Yi will be fine. The brothers of the demon god temple are watching closely in the dark, ready to act at any time. Kang Long quickly knelt down to apologize. It's not just a matter of danger. Ji Yu Bo once saved my life. His son and daughter-in-law died at the hands of the seven great families. Now only his granddaughter, Ji Yu Yi, is left. Since entrusted to me to take care of, I must treat her like a sister. If Ji Yu Bo finds out about what you did, how can I face him? Chen Bufan said coldly. It's my oversight. I was confused for a moment. 
Kang Long said ashamed. Where is she? I will go personally. Chen Bufan said without hesitation. It's not that he doubts the strength of the brothers of the demon god temple. But if Ji Yu Yi is caught, how can Ji Yu Bo trust me, Chen Bufan, in the future? At this moment, in a basement of the Shen family villa, Ji Yu Yi was tied to a chair, unable to move. Just then, Shen Hinian walked in and pulled down the hood on Ji Yu Yi's face. Oh, I didn't expect Ji Yu Hai's granddaughter to be so beautiful. Shen Hinan's eyes gleamed. Ji Yu Yi Yi felt a wave of fear in her heart and shouted in panic, Who are you? Why are you arresting me? Shen Hinian replied calmly, I am the head of the Shen family, Shen Hinian. When Ji Yu Yi Yi heard the name Shen family, she couldn't help but tremble, instantly realizing the identity of the person in front of her. The seven great families, Ji Yu Yi Yi's voice trembled, unable to conceal her shock. Shen Hinian looked at her indifferently and said, you may not know me, but you should know one thing. Nervously, Ji Yu Yi Yi asked, What is it? Is it about my parents' death? Shen Hinan's face showed a hint of a cold smile as he slowly said, Yes, I personally sent away your parents. Hearing this, Ji Yu Yi Yi was shaken, looking at the seemingly calm but secretly cruel man in disbelief. Shen Hinan continued, The power of the seven great families is unmatched, and your parents had intricate connections with us. His voice revealed a hint of indifference and cruelty, feeling the indescribable pressure emanating from Shen Hinian. Ji Yu Yi Yi couldn't help but feel fear, but at the same time, a flame of resistance ignited within her. Shen Hinian's eyes were as sharp as a blade, as if trying to completely dissect Ji Yu Yi Yi's innermost thoughts. Faced with Shen Hinian's cold smile, Ji Yu Yi Yi was filled with endless anger and sorrow. She deeply understood that the conspiracy of the seven great families had long entangled her life, and Shen Hinian was the mastermind behind it all. Ancient Yi's emotions changed instantly on her face, staring at Shen Hinian with anger, flames of fury flickering in her eyes. She angrily questioned Shen Hinian, You heartless beast! Our family was looking for Chen Bufan. Why did you cruelly take away my parents' lives? Shen Hinian sneered and replied, Naive little girl! Even if it wasn't your grandfather helping Chen Bufan, your parents were destined to meet this fate because they had dealings with the Chen family. Ancient Yi retorted angrily, My parents ran a small company with no deep ties to the Chen family. Why are you all so ruthless? Chen Hinian coldly explained, Most of that small company's orders came from the Chen family. After the Chen family's downfall, anyone involved with them is doomed, no one to blame but themselves. Ancient Yi suddenly realized, I see. She cursed angrily, You villains, I will never let you get away with this. Chen Hinian suddenly lifted Ancient Yi's chin, sneering, You look good, consider being my lover? Ancient Yi spat in disdain, firmly rejecting, Shameless scum, even if I die, I won't let you succeed. Chen Hinian unceremoniously slapped Ancient Yi, causing a sharp sound. Ancient Yi gritted her teeth and roared, You dare to kill me. Chen Hinian coldly explained, I captured you to lure out Chen Bufan. If I killed you, wouldn't that be a dead end? Ancient Yi asked in shock, You captured me to lure out Chen Bufan? Feeling disgusted by Chen Hinian's despicable nature, Chen Hinian snorted, So what if it's despicable? To become a hero for the ages, what means can't be used? As long as Chen Bufan is eliminated, the future of Guangling will belong to the seven major families, haha. <laughs> He laughed wildly, as if he could already see the victory in the future. Ancient Yi couldn't help but think of Chen Bufan's heroic figure in the bar, knowing his strength. She understood that although Shen Hinian could easily defeat Chen Bufan, she didn't want to take the risk. Chen Hinian confidently said, No matter how powerful Chen Bufan is, he can't stop my plan. I have set up a trap. Once he shows up, he will be in danger. Ancient Yi's face showed a hint of worry realizing the immense power of the Shen family as one of the seven major families. How could Chen Bufan resist alone? Moreover, Shen Hinian had already set traps. Once Chen Bufan fell into it, he would be in a dilemma. She shook her head desperately, swearing, Chen Bufan will never come. She knew there was no deep bond between her and Chen Bufan, believing he wouldn't take the risk. Chen Hinian suddenly mentioned a name, Zhao Badu, killed by Chen Bufan, right? Ancient Yi's face changed, firmly denying, I don't know. 
Chen Hinian coldly smirked. As an old fox, he could easily see through ancient Yi's lies. He taunted, don't think I know nothing. Chen Bufan, for you, decisively crushed the bar and sent Zhao Badu to meet the king of hell. It is evident that Chen Hinian values Ji Yu Yi so much because of the debt of gratitude he owes to her grandfather for saving his life, his eyes revealing a deep affection for her. Ji Yu Yi, feeling conflicted internally, understood that it was futile to lie even if she wanted to, especially in the face of Shen Hinan's serious tone. She silently prayed, hoping that Chen Bufan would not come to rescue her, as she could not bear the thought of putting him in danger because of her. She was not being unreasonable but rather unable to let go of the guilt and placing all the blame on Chen Bufan. Now understanding Shen Hinan's true intentions, she felt overwhelmingly guilty, only wishing for Chen Bufan to stay away. Even if she had to sacrifice herself here, she would not want to involve him. Chen Hinan wickedly smiled. Once Chen Bufan arrives, I will take care of him, then celebrate with this girl. The subordinates of the clan echoed in agreement. Ji Yu Yi felt panic rising and began to curse frantically. Chen Hinian just smirked, ignoring her outburst, ready to leave. However, at that moment, a loud bang was heard, the iron gate bursting open instantly, shards flying everywhere. The impact sent Chen Hinian flying, crashing to the ground. This sudden turn of events left everyone present in shock, including Ji Yu Yi, who widened her eyes in surprise, thinking to herself, Chen Bufan is here. Master, something's not right, Chen Bufan is here. A deafening shout echoed in the secret room, as shocking as thunder. Ji Yu Yi's heart raced, Chen Bufan? Upon hearing this name, Shen Hinan's face turned pale. Just then, a figure appeared at the entrance of the secret room, exuding a fierce aura that intimidated everyone. As Shen Hinan recognized the face of the person, his heart skipped a beat, Chen Bufan. He showed a crazed expression. Boy, You've come just in time. I was worried you wouldn't show up. Shen Hinian exclaimed. Everyone, attack him. Suddenly, a member of the Shen family's men was kicked in front of Shen Hinian, with Kanglong appearing beside Chen Bufan. No need to call for help. I've already taken care of your ambush. Chen Bufan said coldly. Shen Hinian's face changed drastically. What did you say? Unaware of the situation, after Chen Bufan's arrival, he immediately had the demon army attack eliminating all the ambushes. One of his men, bloodied and pale, said, Master, the people we arranged were all eliminated by a group of black-clothed individuals. This news shattered the last line of defense for Shen Hinian, his trap completely dismantled. Without even a warning in advance, Chen Bufan had already arrived at his doorstep. Chen Hinian quickly rushed towards Ji Yu Yi. Dare you touch the people I protect? Chen Bufan stood up, wielding a piece of iron. The hidden weapon shot out like a bolt of lightning, accurately hitting Shen Hinan's back, piercing his flesh and causing him to instantly feel intense pain. Shen Hinan couldn't help but let out a sharp groan, then fell heavily to the ground, the pain almost unbearable for him. Next, a huge foot directly stepped on his chest, making a crisp sound. Oh, the iron piece in his back was squeezed, deeply piercing through the flesh from the chest, and blood gushed out instantly. Chen Hinan's face turned as white as paper, cold sweat streaming down, almost fainting. Young Master Chen, please, spare me. He trembled and pleaded. Chen Bufan coldly uttered these words, his eyes gleaming with icy sharpness. During the press conference, he didn't immediately kill the leaders of the seven great families, but instead chose to let them rectify their mistakes on their own. Only by following through completely could there be a glimmer of hope. However, the other party showed no sign of introspection. Instead, they dared to take the initiative to attack, practically seeking their own demise. Give me a chance, and I will settle the debt immediately. Even if my Shin family loses 5.5 billion, so be it. In addition, I will immediately order the construction of a mausoleum for the deceased of your Chen family, only asking for Chen Xiao to spare my life. Chen Hinan's face was full of fear, begging for mercy incessantly. But it was already too late. As Chen Bufan's words fell, he suddenly exerted force, and his true energy surged. With a loud bang, Chen Hinian fell in a pool of blood. Ji Yu Yi's heart trembled suddenly, and involuntarily closed her eyes. When she opened them again, Chen Hinian lay coldly on the ground, 
forever departing from this world. As one of the leaders of the seven great families, the renowned master of Guangling, was easily dealt with by Chen Bufan. She was stunned, taking a while to regain her composure. Kang Long, Chen Bufan called out. Kang Long immediately understood and hurried to help Ji Yu Yi untie the ropes. It's my carelessness that startled you, Kang Long said with some embarrassment. Ji Yu Yi was puzzled. It's Shen Hinan's despicableness, what does it have to do with you? Kang Long quickly asked, am I forgiven now? Since it has nothing to do with you, of course, I forgive you, Ji Yu Yi said, somewhat puzzled. Kang Long turned to Chen Bufan with a grin. Lord, Miss Yi Yi has forgiven me, can you let me go this time? Go back and write a self-criticism, Chen Bufan said solemnly. All right, Kang Long immediately agreed, looking eager to please. Just then, Chen Bufan suddenly discovered something, bending down to retrieve a small object from Shen Hinan's body. A remote communicator. Could Shen Hinian still have a trick up his sleeve? At the same time, Kang Long received a message from his subordinate. Lord, the Yang family is also making a move, planning to deal with Ji Yu Bo. I have already instructed our brothers to act, it should be no problem. Chen Bufan's face turned cold. The seven great families are indeed cunning and ruthless. On the one hand, they had the Shen family capture Ji Yu Yi to lure me out, and on the other hand, the Yang family sent people to capture Ji Yu Bo, making a double preparation. Unfortunately, their schemes are useless. Even if he doesn't personally take action, with the demon god army present, Shen Hinian cannot succeed, and Ji Yu Yi will not be harmed. I only acted because I couldn't bear to stand by. The same goes for Ji Yu Bo, with the demon god army secretly guarding him. A few more families wouldn't be able to harm him. This is Chen Bufan's confidence in the demon god temple. Will my grandfather be okay? Ji Yu Yi asked with concern. Don't worry, I have arranged for people to protect him, Chen Bufan said in a deep voice, while also giving Ji Yu Yi a strange look. This girl is starting to worry about Ji Yu Bo now? I want to go back immediately, Ji Yu Yi said. Come with me then, Chen Bufan said. And so, the group left the Shen family. After they left, the Shen family was raised to the ground, becoming a part of history in Guangling. At this moment, in the dilapidated courtyard outside the city, Ji Yu Bo was still unable to sleep. Ever since Chen Bufan came to visit, he had been restless for the past few days, with many old memories resurfacing in his mind. Worry and anxiety intertwined in Gu Hai's heart, making him uneasy. Chen Bufan's situation filled him with constant concern. He feared that Chen Bufan would take risks and seek revenge on the seven major families, but he knew very well that Chen Bufan's strength alone was far from enough to match them. Lao Zhou looked quietly at Gu Hai and softly inquired, Have you been doing okay these days? After a moment of hesitation, Lao Zhou finally said, Everything is calm as usual. He did not mention Chen Bufan's impulsive actions, afraid of causing more worry to Gu Hai. Sighing in his heart, he made a silent resolution hoping that Chen Bufan could restrain his anger, so as not to disappoint his parents' expectations and the kindness of the entire Chen family. Looking back, if it weren't for the help of the Chen family back then, he would have been long gone. Gu Hai began to recount the past events, reminiscing about that unforgettable past, feeling deeply moved. Gu Hai, I always feel that young Master Chen's current strength is extraordinary, exceptionally powerful, Lao Zhou pondered and said. Curiously, Gu Hai asked, why do you say so? Lao Zhou pointed out, last time, that group of troublemakers were all defeated by young Master Chen, showing his remarkable strength. Besides, he once treated you, with significant results, he might even be a master healer. Although I didn't see how he helped you firsthand, my physical condition has greatly improved since young Master Chen applied his medical skills. Gu Hai was astonished to hear this. Lao Zhou continued, Moreover, I sense a special aura from young Master Chen. What kind of aura? Gu Hai asked. Lao Zhou earnestly said. An aura of looking down on all others, invincible, as if he could easily destroy the seven major families with a wave of his hand. Gu Hai recalled the awe-inspiring momentum that Chen Bufan exuded at that time, still shuddering to this day. He exclaimed, looking down on all others. Invincible. The usually honest and amiable Lao Zhou actually used such words to describe Chen Bufan. Helplessly shaking his head, 
he made up his mind to see Chen Bufan's true self. He firmly believed that young Master Chen could heal Gu Hai's illness. As the two were talking, several cars slowly approached the pitch black gate. These were the people sent by the Yang family, acting immediately upon receiving orders. However, just as they were about to enter the courtyard, suddenly, countless dark shadows quietly appeared, shuttling among the crowd like ghosts. Followed by muffled sounds, puffs. Instantly, the Yang family's men fell to the ground one after another each with a bloodstain on their necks. One hit, one kill. The screams were cut off before they could even be uttered. Moments later, the scene showed no trace, as if nothing had ever happened. Shortly after, a car stopped in front of the gate, and Chen Bufan and others got off. A person dressed in black quickly appeared, kneeling down on one knee, solemnly saying, Greetings, Lord, greetings, Kanglong King. Those people have been taken care of, and Guhai is safe. Good, you may withdraw and continue to guard. Chen Bufan nodded in response. The person in black disappeared instantly into thin air. Gu Hai was dumbfounded, secretly sighing. Who are these people after all? They are too powerful. Chen Bufan looked at the time. It was not yet evening, and decided to visit Gu Hai. Ji Yu Yi Yi entered the courtyard first. Gu Hai asked, Is there a visitor? Yi Yi has returned. Lao Zhou answered. Excitedly, Gu Hai asked, Yi Yi is back? I haven't seen her in a while. Grandpa, are you okay? Ji Yu Yi Yi asked anxiously. Gu Hai smiled and reassured, I'm fine, everything is fine. Ji Yu Yi Yi hugged Gu Hai's arm, feeling guilty, it's all my fault, for not coming back to see you often. Upon hearing Ji Yu Yi Yi's words, Ji Yu Hai felt a wave of warmth in his heart. He knew his actions had once made his granddaughter angry. But Ji Yu Yi Yi showed tolerance and understanding. Ji Yu Hai looked deeply at Ji Yu Yi Yi and sighed, Yi, you're truly a sensible child. Grandpa is very relieved. Ji Yu Yi Yi gently explained, Grandpa, it was my ignorance and misunderstanding before. Now I understand everything. Ji Yu Hai was somewhat surprised to hear this. He had not expected Ji Yu Yi Yi to be so mature. Ji Yu Yi Yi continued. I have to thank Chen Bu Fan brother for helping me see the truth. A hint of shyness appeared on her face, and she couldn't help but change the way she addressed her grandpa. In this moment, Ji Yu Hai felt the growth and understanding of his granddaughter, and his heart was filled with emotion. Ji Yu Hai curiously asked, Xiao Fan? He's here too? Chen Bu Fan smiled and replied, Ji Yu Bo, I'm right here. Ji Yu Hai complained, You came without even notifying me. Chen Bufan explained with a smile, I didn't want to disturb your chat with Yi Yi. Ji Yu Hai jokingly scolded him and then asked, When did you start looking for Yi Yi? I had no idea. Chen Bufan casually recounted the process of looking for Yi Yi. Yi Yi felt uneasy, afraid that Chen Bufan would mention her work at the bar. Luckily, Chen Bufan didn't bring it up. Yi Yi breathed a sigh of relief and looked at Chen Bufan gratefully. Grandpa, you don't know. Bufan is amazing. He. He told Yi Yi about the wrongdoings of the seven great families. Chen Bufan interrupted, signaling Yi Yi not to mention the Shen family's affairs. Yi Yi angrily said, After hearing Bufan's story, I understood everything. The seven great families not only wiped out the Chen family but also sought revenge on many people associated with the Chen family, including my parents. They have done too many bad things and will surely face retribution. Yi Yi's tone was firm and filled with anger. Yi Yi, I'm glad you understand all this. But please, don't act rashly. The power of the seven great families is strong, and no one can easily deal with them, Chen Bufan advised. Yi Yi almost called Chen Bufan, brother, but quickly changed her words. There will be someone who can eradicate the wrongdoings of the seven great families. It will happen. She spoke firmly, and Xiao Fan, I'm most worried about you. Please be careful, I'm afraid they'll find you in Guangling, Ji Yu Hai said with concern. Chen Bufan reassured him, Ji Yu Bo, don't worry, I'll be careful. They sat together and chatted a lot, like a warm family. Before leaving, Chen Bufan checked Ji Yu Hai's condition again. After using the Gigu Zan needle for treatment last time, the situation had improved a lot. Once he resolved the issue with the seven great families, he could work on helping Ji Yu Hai cure his eyes and then use traditional Chinese medicine to regulate his body.
hoping that Ji Yu Hai would gradually recover to his peak state. Hearing this plan, Ji Yu Hai was shocked. Recover to his peak state? Was that really possible? Anticipation began to well up in his heart. Once I recover, I will definitely have a decisive battle with the seven great families. Ji Yu Hai said angrily. Chen Bufan smiled. I'm afraid you won't live to see that day. Ji Yu Hai was taken aback, then sighed deeply. Perhaps you're right. I may not live to see that day. After bidding farewell to Ji Yu Hai, it was already late. Chen Bufan decided to first send Yi Yi back to the campus and then return to the hotel. With few vehicles on the road, they arrived at the entrance of Guangling University in less than half an hour. Yi Yi nervously said, Bufan, I'm sorry for my behavior before, and thank you for your help these days. Chen Bufan secretly chuckled. It seems that the Kenglong line still has some effect. He vaguely replied, You'd better call me Chen Bufan. Bufan brother sounds a bit strange. Yi Yi tentatively asked, Can I call you, young master Chen? Chen Bufan helplessly said, Forget it, just call me Bufan brother. Yi Yi playfully smiled, Bufan brother, why didn't you let me tell grandpa about tonight's events? Are you really planning to eliminate the seven great families? Yi Yi was still shocked. Chen Bufan came to Guangling with a firm and clear purpose. He was full of confidence in Ji Yu Yi, who showed a serious attitude. Before entering the gate, Ji Yu Yi waved goodbye to Chen Bufan, sweetly smiled, called him Brother Bufan, and then obediently nodded to indicate she was leaving. Chen Bufan watched Ji Yu Yi leave, finally feeling relieved. Kanglong watched Ji Yu Yi's departing figure and said with a smile, This girl is quite quick witted and also very beautiful. He winked playfully, trying to cheer up Chen Bufan. Chen Bufan teased, Oh, is your sister in law beautiful? Kanglong blushed awkwardly, No, I was just joking. Chen Bufan jokingly continued to ask, Are you, the lord of the palace, also starting to be interested in women? Kanglong could only smile helplessly, indicating that he was just kidding. Chen Bufan joked, Palace master, what's wrong with you? Do you want me to analyze it for you? Kanglong could only smile bitterly, saying that he was really just joking. Finally, Chen Bufan jokingly kicked Kanglong's butt, telling him to hurry back and write a self-criticism. Ji Yu Yi was indeed very beautiful, slim, with delicate features and fair skin. As an art student, she exuded a warm and dynamic temperament. Although she was only 18 years old, she had already shown mature charm, and every move was full of allure. However, Chen Bufan always treated her as a younger sister, as his heart only belonged to Zhang Yuru. No matter how beautiful and charming Ji Yu Yi was, she could not shake Chen Bufan's deep affection for Zhang Yuru. When Chen Bufan returned to the hotel, the head of the Yang family was anxiously waiting for news from his subordinates. After learning that the Shen family's plan had failed, he immediately ordered the capture of Ji Yu Hai, as decided at a secret meeting earlier. They had thought that as long as Shen Hinian caught Ji Yu Yi and waited for Chen Bufan to show up, they could easily deal with him. However, as time passed by without any news or contact, the head of the Yang family suddenly had a foreboding feeling. Had the second plan also failed? Just as he was feeling uneasy, there was a loud bang, and the gate of the Yang family was blasted open. A group of black-clad people stood at the door like gods, coldly declaring their intention to crush the Yang family. The head of the Yang family desperately gathered his family members to stop them, but they could not resist the enemy's onslaught. Within a few minutes, the entire Yang family had become eerily silent, with only the smell of blood lingering in the air, witnessing this terrible massacre. The head of the Yang family knelt on the ground, watching the downfall of his family, filled with despair. He begged the other party to spare him, promising any conditions, but they coldly stated that because he did not agree to Chen Bufan's demands, he was doomed to a dead end. Master Yang looked at the figure in front of him with horror feeling a strong sense of fear welling up in his heart. The figure was none other than the renowned leader of the martial world, Chen Bufan, a ruthless and decisive individual. Suddenly, a sharp blade flashed like lightning, and Master Yang fell to the ground instantly, blood gushing out like a spring. Subsequently, the entire Yang family manor plunged into chaos, with cries and shouts echoing incessantly. Under the leadership of the leader, the buildings, family members, and servants of the Yang family manor were all destroyed, 
as if a disaster had struck, turning the once prosperous estate into ruins, devoid of its former glory. The whole process felt like a harrowing nightmare, almost unbelievable. Another family's downfall. In just one night, two families were wiped out one after another, which was undoubtedly a terrifying event. Fortunately, it happened in the dead of night when the city was quiet, otherwise the entire city would have been alarmed. The heads of the five major families had already gone to bed early, which was a double precaution enough to deal with Chen Bufan. If they hadn't been so cautious, the Shen family's abduction of Ji Yu Yi would have been enough to make Chen Bufan surrender. Even in the event of an accident, the actions of the Yang family on the ancient seaside would also be successful. It can be said that Chen Bufan is destined to fail, so the heads of the five major families can rest assured. Until early the next morning, the five major families simultaneously received a mysterious package. When they opened the package and saw what was inside, everyone present was shocked and speechless, and couldn't help but sit down on the ground. Inside the package was actually a corpse. The heads of the families were instantly stunned. Someone actually sent them a corpse. Such screams echoed in all the major families at the same time, awakening the heads of the five major families. After seeing these bodies, their eyes became cold. The heads of the Shin family and the Yang family were actually dismembered. A strong chill swept over instantly, making people shudder. What happened? Why did the heads of the Shin family and the Yang family encounter such misfortune? Could this be the work of Chen Bufan? This thought made the remaining heads of the five major families tremble uncontrollably. They quickly rushed to the Shin family and the Yang family to see what had happened. The heads of the five major families ordered in unison, unable to believe that the Shin family and the Yang family had been destroyed by Chen Bufan. Half an hour later, when the people of the five major families arrived at the door of the Shin family and the Yang family, they were simply stunned by the scene before them. A ruin. The two major families completely disappeared, not a single person left alive. They stood still for a few minutes, then quickly picked up the phone to report to the family. The heads of the families, the Shen family and the Yang family have been destroyed, not a single person left alive, even the mansions have been leveled to the ground. When the heads of the five major families learned of this news, they were all stunned. A cold wind swept over, making them feel bone-chilling cold. The Shen family and the Yang family were destroyed overnight, not a single person left alive. What kind of horrifying event is this? The heads of the families were filled with horror. At this moment, the subordinates who were handling the bodies of the heads of the Shen family and the Yang family found a note in the package. It only had four words written on it, one day left. Seeing these four words, the hearts of the heads of the five major families couldn't help but tighten. Chen Bufan the culprit who destroyed the two major families must be Chen Bufan. At the previous press conference, he gave the seven major families two days to meet his two demands. One was about the funds regarding Kuihu Square, totaling 55 billion. The other demand was that all members of the seven major families must personally build a cemetery to bury the deceased of the Chen family. One day has passed, only the last day is left, if they cannot complete it. The heads of the five major families thought of the fate of the Shin family and the Yang family, panic filled their hearts. There was no time to delay. Otherwise, the five major families would face destruction. So the heads of the five major families quickly held a meeting to discuss countermeasures. Overnight, the Shin family and the Yang family were successively destroyed, and when this news spread, the entire Guangling was shocked. Countless people were dumbfounded. The seven major families, the supreme overlords, with immense wealth and powerful influence, stood like seven insurmountable mountains in Guangling. In the entire eastern province, one person's influence can reach unparalleled levels. But now, someone actually dares to provoke the seven major families, and has even managed to wipe out two in a row, which is truly shocking. People are speculating, who exactly is behind this? Could it be Chen Bufan? Some suddenly guess, just a few days ago, the last descendant of the Chen family appeared at the Kuihu Square to hold a press conference, openly confronting the seven major families, causing a huge stir. Not long after, the Shen family and the Yang family were successively destroyed, with Chen Bufan being the most likely culprit. He may have started seeking revenge. Some are beginning to mention that at the press conference, when Chen Bufan intimidated the seven major families, even the patrol office and the military department were mobilized, 
But in the end, Chen Bufan emerged unscathed. There are even rumors that when the military department personnel arrived, they publicly saluted Chen Bufan, showing great respect towards him. After these rumors spread, everyone felt that Chen Bufan seemed to have been prepared long ago, and the seven major families may not be able to escape calamity. Bufan, have you seen the news? Zhang Yuru exclaimed excitedly early in the morning, holding her phone, her face full of astonishment. Awakened by the news, Chen Bufan was still somewhat immersed in his dreams. What's happened? He asked groggily. Last night, the Shen family and the Yang family of the seven major families were completely defeated, and it's rumored that it was the young master of the Chen family who took action. The internet is buzzing, my friends and classmates are all discussing this matter. Zhang Yuru said in amazement. Giants like the seven major families can actually have a day of being destroyed, it's truly unbelievable. This young master of the Chen family is too amazing. His entire family was wiped out by the seven major families years ago, leaving only him as the sole survivor. Six years later, he returned to Guangling alone and began a crazy revenge against the seven major families, truly legendary. Zhang Yuru said with emotion, Seeing how admiring you are, do you want me to introduce you to him? Chen Bufan said with a smile, You're just bragging. The young master of the Chen family wouldn't even know you. Zhang Yuru rolled her eyes at him. We have a good relationship, as long as I ask, having a meal with him won't be a problem. Chen Bufan said, Chen Bufan, Zhang Yuru's tone became more serious. Okay, I admit I was bragging, just forget I said anything. Chen Bufan shrugged. Zhang Yuru had originally planned to visit the old man and then go back to work. But Chen Bufan's actions against the seven major families gave her a glimmer of hope. In order to seek justice, she took a few more days off. Cao Wadong was very considerate, directly telling Zhang Yuru that she could take as many days off as she wanted, without having to report to him. This moved Zhang Yuru deeply. She praised Mr. Cao as a great boss. Chen Bufan chuckled to himself, otherwise, if he directly invested a billion, had Cao Wadong called Zhang Yuru, Mom, he would probably gladly accept it. At this moment, a secret meeting was taking place in the Feng family villa. Unlike the last time, this time the meeting was missing two people, and the faces of the five family heads were very solemn. Snap, the head of the Zhang family slammed the table. This kid Chen Bufan is too arrogant. His family was wiped out by us six years ago, leaving only this poor guy to escape. And now, six years later, he dares to come to us seeking revenge, it's truly despicable. Our seven major families have long been firmly in control of the entire Guangling. No one in the entire eastern province dares to be our enemy. Where does Chen Bufan get the courage from? The head of the Wei family also said coldly. Currently, the entire Guangling city is abuzz with rumors, all pointing towards the downfall of our seven major families. This adversity is suffocating like never before, and if it weren't for upholding our reputation, we would have wiped out that boy without a trace long ago. The head of the Chu family is full of anger, unable to quell the raging fire within. However, Feng Jinxiao remains calm and suggests that we calm down first, brainstorm ideas, and discuss strategies to deal with the situation. The four family heads all look towards Feng Jinxiao, as if waiting for his guidance. Feng Jinxiao speaks in a deep voice, let's calm down. Although the situation is dire, we cannot be trapped in anger and despair. We must analyze calmly and find a way out. His words are filled with determination and wisdom, bringing a glimmer of hope to the struggling families. Feng Jinxiao snorted coldly, his expression serious. The military department's special treatment of Chen Bufan was a clear indication of his extraordinary status. The fact that he could wipe out the Shen and Yang families overnight, without a trace, demonstrates that his strength far exceeds our imagination. To deal with him, we must come up with unconventional methods. The heads of the four major families eagerly asked, Are you planning to seek out the strong in Dongzhou? Feng Jinxiao answered without hesitation, Bring out the number one expert in Dongzhou. The heads of the four major families were shocked, drawing in a cold breath. The number one expert in Dongzhou, Zhu Yun, ranked first on the martial arts list, his position has been unshakable for 20 years. Zhu Yun's swordsmanship is unparalleled, known as the number one sword in Dongzhou. In the martial arts world, he is a legendary figure. 
The heads of the four major families expressed doubts. We don't know Zhu Yun, and such a master shouldn't lack money. Will he be willing to help? Feng Zhenxiao clenched his fists, his voice becoming stern. Although we don't know him, Jenin Prefecture does. He may not lack money, but that doesn't mean he's not interested in it. When they heard this, their eyes changed slightly. Indeed, as the number one power in Dongzhou, how could Jenin Prefecture not know the number one expert in Dongzhou, Zhu Yun? As long as this clue is mentioned, Zhu Yun may not be interested in one billion. But what about 100 billion? Or one trillion? He will definitely be tempted. Feng Jinxiao suddenly said, What if we tell him that there is something on Chen Bufan that we didn't get from the Chen family? Would Zhu Yun be interested? The heads of the four major families looked surprised. If this news reached Zhu Yun's ears, even if he was abroad, he would rush back immediately. After all, who can resist such temptation? If it weren't for that thing, the seven major families wouldn't have taken such ruthless action against the Chen family. Decided, I will go to Jenin Prefecture, Feng Jinxiao said decisively. At this time, Jenin Prefecture was still shrouded in fear. No one dared to go out, and the night was filled with tension. Especially after learning that the Shen and Yang families were wiped out overnight. Morong Yi was even more frightened. He almost believed that the massacre of the nine major halls was definitely done by Chen Bufan. Everyone was forbidden to go out, and precautions were taken everywhere. Morong Yi ordered. Just then, a subordinate hurried over, trembling, Master, someone has arrived. Morong Yi's face turned pale, his whole body tense, and asked, Is Chen Bufan here? The subordinate replied, panting, No, it's Feng. Feng Jinxiao who has come. Morong Yi breathed a sigh of relief. Shortly after, Morong Yi received Feng Jinxiao in the tea pavilion. I know why you're here. I'm already aware of Chen Bufan's changes. I can't even protect myself now. No matter how much money you give me, I can't deal with him. Morong Yi bluntly expressed his dilemma. Feng Jinxiao explained, I'm not asking you to take action, but I hope you can do me a favor. Surprised to hear the proposal to seek Zhu Yun to deal with Chen Bufan, Morong Yi was incredulous. Feng Jinxiao nodded firmly. Regardless of whether Zhu Yun is willing to help or not, I don't want to get involved in this danger. He decisively refused. Feng Jinxiao straightforwardly reminded Morong Yi that when he accepted payment to assassinate Chen Bufan in the past, it led to the destruction of all ten subhalls under his command. Chen Bufan would definitely not spare the Morong Mansion. Now that Chen Bufan's focus has shifted to Guangling, after dealing with the seven great families, the next target will undoubtedly be the Morong Mansion. If the Morong Mansion Lord simply waits passively for Chen Bufan's attack, it will be seeking destruction. Feng Jinxiao stared at Morong Yi intently, his expression serious. Morong Yi fell into silence. He understood that he couldn't risk gambling on whether Chen Bufan would take action because failure would mean the destruction of the entire Morong mansion. Instead of passively receiving blows, it is better to take the initiative and only by eliminating Chen Bufan can the current crisis be resolved. Feng Jinxiao continued. All right, I will contact Zhu Yun, but I want to make it clear in advance that I am only acting as a mediator, and the specifics of the cooperation are not my concern. Morong Yi remained cautious. Okay. Feng Jinxiao nodded. As long as Zhu Yun lends a hand, Chen Bufan is destined to meet his end, and Morong Yi's caution will be meaningless. Can the top expert of the Eastern Zhou dynasty not suppress Chen Bufan? That's impossible. As long as Zhu Yun is willing to help, there will be no unexpected occurrences, and Chen Bufan will eventually be destroyed. Feng Jinxiao left to wait for news. During the day, Chen Bufan took Yuru and Sisi to various places in Guangling to play but he felt very bored staying in the hotel every day. However, behind the scenes, Chen Bufan instructed Kenglong to closely monitor the movements of the five great families, including their meetings, as well as Feng Jinxiao's whereabouts heading to Jenin Mansion, all under his control. In the afternoon, a phone call reached Feng Jinxiao. It's done. Zhu Yun has boarded a special plane and is expected to arrive in Guangling before 5 o'clock. The call ended and Feng Jinxiao pressed his phone excitedly, his eyes shining with excitement. Chen Bufan, you are doomed to die. Bring me the invitation. At this moment, Chen Bufan was playing at the amusement park with Yuru and Sisi. 
Just then, Kanglong brought a red invitation. Yuru, I'll go to the restroom for a moment. Chen Bufan made an excuse to leave and went outside the amusement park with Kanglong. Who sent the invitation? It was sent jointly by the five great families. Kanglong answered, The five great families? Chen Bufan's eyes narrowed slightly, then he opened the invitation. The five great families expressed their apologies in the letter, hoping that young Master Chen would attend the banquet at Luyu Pavilion to show their sincerity. The invitation was personally signed by the heads of the five great families. After finishing reading, Kanglong explained, Last night, the Shen and Yang families were successively destroyed, and the remaining five great families must be feeling fearful, so they invited you. Are they really afraid? Chen Bufan asked. Isn't it so? Kanglong suddenly hesitated. Who else dares to challenge the Lord? Only those who have experienced it firsthand know. Chen Bufan did not say much. If the five great families truly wanted to apologize, they would have come to apologize long ago. Why hold another grand banquet and go to Jenin Mansion again? This banquet is definitely unusual. If the five great families dare to play tricks, they are seeking their own demise. Kanglong said angrily, whether it's a press conference or the destruction of the Shen and Yong families, it's a clear warning. If they can't see the situation clearly and dare to confront the Lord, they are simply seeking destruction. The banquet is scheduled to be held at 6 o'clock. The streets were brightly lit at night, and Chen Bufan played with Hanyu Ruo and Sisi until 5 in the morning. After finding a small restaurant nearby for dinner, Chen Bufan made up an excuse and politely took his leave. He got into the car driven by Kanglong and headed straight to Lu Yuzan. On the way, Chen Bufan's mood was somewhat complicated. He looked at the passing scenery outside the window, feeling a surge of emotions in his heart. Lost in thoughts, he recalled the time spent with Hanyu Ruo and Sisi, feeling a hint of sadness and nostalgia. However, he knew that the time had come for him to make a choice between them. The lights of Lu Yuzan were dazzling, emitting a warm glow. After getting off the car, Chen Bufan briskly walked into this upscale club. Here, he would face an important decision, a turning point in his destiny. Just half an hour before Chen Bufan set off, a helicopter flew over the sky of Guangling and directly arrived at Lu Yuishuen. The five major family heads all looked up at the sky, trying hard to keep their eyes open against the strong wind stirred up by the helicopter. Suddenly, the cabin door opened, and a figure plummeted from tens of meters high in the air. Is he crazy? The five family heads were shocked and quickly dodged away. In an instant, with a loud bang, the figure landed in the elegant courtyard of Lu Yuishuen. The entire stone floor trembled at that moment, as if a small earthquake had occurred. Everyone present was stunned, landing from tens of meters high. The person stood steadily without any harm. With hands behind his back, he appeared calm and composed, like a transcendent figure. Impressive. The five family heads were greatly surprised as they carefully examined the newcomer. Around 60 years old, with silver hair and a slender figure, dressed in a gray robe and black old cloth shoes, with a goatee, resembling a Taoist priest. The silver-haired old man looked around, his gaze sharp as a sword. Where are the five family heads? Here, Feng Jinshao quickly led the way to greet him. I am Feng Jinshao. I am Chu Feng. The five family heads introduced themselves one after another. May I ask your name? Feng Jinshao cautiously inquired after the introductions. Zhu Yun. The silver-haired old man replied coldly. The four family heads gasped in shock and quickly paid their respects, their faces filled with excitement. Finally, they had managed to invite Zhu Yun. His feat of jumping directly from tens of meters high in the sky without any harm was enough to prove his formidable strength. Definitely superior to Chen Bufan. No need for flattery, I do business for money. We agreed on 50 billion, not a penny less, Zhu Yun said coldly. Rest assured, not a penny less, Feng Jinshao assured him. If you choose to submit, just the funds involved in the Kuihu Square matter would cost Chen Bufan 55 billion. Better to use it to invite Zhu Yun, saving 5 billion. Besides, the assets of the five major families, if protected, are not just tens of billions, but hundreds of billions. Spending a mere 50 billion to deal with Chen Bufan is simply too cost effective. The seven major families are considered overlords in Guangling, even in the entire East Continent, they have a certain reputation. On their own turf, they can't even handle a kid? 
Zub Yun's tone carried a hint of disdain. Master Zub, you don't know Chen Bufan. This kid has flattened the ten main halls under Jinan Prefecture, scaring everyone in Jinan Prefecture to stay indoors. Even the military personnel in Guangling show great respect to him. It's said that his identity is extraordinary, difficult to deal with, otherwise, we wouldn't have invited you, Master, Feng Jinxiao explained. There is only one person in the East Continent who can have an extraordinary identity, and that is me, Zhu Yun. In front of me, that brat is nothing, Zhu Yun said arrogantly. Yes, Master Zhu is right. We have seen your strength and are confident that you can crush Chen Bufan. Feng Jinxiao flattered. Why not just go find him directly? What's the point of having a banquet here? Zhu Yun asked coldly. Mainly because we're afraid Chen Bufan will run away, Feng Jinxiao explained. It's unnecessary. Once I decide to deal with someone, they can't escape the East Continent. Zhu Yun was very confident. It's not appropriate for Master Zhu to go find him personally. He should come on his own. Feng Jinxiao suggested warmly. Zhu Yun silently praised the idea after hearing it, feeling that it was a good suggestion. Suddenly, a carriage slowly stopped in front of Lu Yuishuan. Kang Long got off the carriage, and Chen Bufan walked out from the car. His appearance was like the rising sun, attracting the attention of passers-by. Countless girls looked at him with envy. Chen Bufan's tall figure and charming charm were enough to make many women fall for him. Even the usually fashionable and proud urban white-collar workers put down their airs and approached Chen Bufan. A white-collar lady pretended to twist her ankle in high heels and limp to Chen Bufan. Ah, oh, it hurts, she complained weakly, her short skirt outlining her slender thighs, showing the charming side of a woman. Any man would feel pity when seeing her. Shouldn't Chen Bufan go help her? But he walked straight past her. The white-collar beauty was a bit surprised. Hey, you are too indifferent. I have an urgent matter. Chen Bufan replied coldly. Is there anything more important than caring for a girl? Murder. What? The white-collar beauty widened her eyes. By this time, Chen Bufan had arrived at the entrance of Lu Yuishuan, exuding a domineering aura, pushing the door open directly. He stood at the entrance like a god, his gaze sweeping across the entire courtyard, a terrifying aura enveloping the whole place. Chen Bufan is here for the banquet. Everyone in the courtyard felt the immense pressure he brought, looking up at him, their eyes fixed on Chen Bufan. The expressions of the five family heads changed, excited yet slightly nervous. Feng Jinxiao quickly shouted, Young Master Chen, please come in. A waiter prepared to guide him. No need, Chen Bufan said, walking towards them with steady steps, exuding endless momentum, as if overwhelming everyone present like a force of nature. He's too powerful, making it hard to breathe. Someone couldn't help but say, their face pale. Everyone watched Chen Bufan intently, especially the five family heads, feeling fearful. This time, Chen Bufan seemed more determined and resolute than he was at the press conference, as if he was a messenger from hell, coming only to take lives. Finally, when Chen Bufan walked up to the five family heads, his aura had reached its peak, causing the five family heads to sweat profusely, their hands trembling. Young Master Chen, thank you for gracing the banquet. I, Feng Jinxiao, will toast to you first, as a form of apology. Feng Jinxiao picked up the wine glass with trembling hands, the wine rippling inside. Chen Bufan stared at Feng Jinxiao, his eyes revealing a beast-like ferocity, putting immense psychological pressure on Feng Jinxiao. He had never encountered such a terrifying gaze in his life, as if it wanted to devour him. It's too scary. I, Feng Jinxiao, toast to young Master Chen. Feng Jinxiao tried to control his emotions and shouted. Suddenly, the aura erupting from Chen Bufan shattered the wine glass in Feng Jinxiao's hand like an invisible hand. Glass shattered instantly, and the wine splashed everywhere. The other family heads also stood up. Members of the five major families suddenly stood up in unison, and the atmosphere instantly became tense. Feng Jinxiao angrily questioned Chen Bufan. Chen Bufan, what are you up to? His face was burning with anger. Chen Bufan calmly replied, there's nothing special, just wanted to personally see you all off today. Although Chen Bufan's tone was gentle, his words hit like thunder, striking the entire room. Sending everyone on their way? Feng Jinxiao sneered. You sure have a big mouth. 
Chen Bufan was invited to a banquet, but was angrily rebuked by the head of the Zhang family for not knowing his place. Six years ago, the Chen family was destroyed, their century-old legacy seized by the Zhang family, and the family suffered heavy losses, making it difficult to forget the deep enmity. The head of the Zhang family thought that a simple apology could settle everything, but Chen Bufan coldly responded, unwilling to forgive easily. Feng Jinxiao boldly questioned Chen Bufan's intentions, showing great confidence. Chen Bufan then coldly retorted, revealing the hidden personnel around and ordering them to show themselves. Surprised, Feng Jinxiao realized that Chen Bufan had already seen through the ambush. The people all showed up, armed and surrounding Chen Bufan, the situation becoming dangerous. A cold light flashed in the eyes of Kanglong, reprimanding the conspirators in front of him and challenging Chen Bufan's bottom line. The five family heads did not hide their hostility, preparing to launch a deadly attack against Chen Bufan. Chen Bufan scorned their actions, mocking their weakness. The family heads threatened one after another, seeming to have pushed Chen Bufan to a dead end. Feng Jinxiao ordered Chen Bufan to kneel and apologize, only to be strongly countered by Kanglong. Enraged, Feng Jinxiao attempted to shoot, but was intimidated by the indifferent attitude of Chen Bufan and Kanglong. At this critical moment, a silver-haired old man stepped forward, emitting a soul-shaking aura. Chen Bufan was already aware and cautious of this old man, but had not taken him seriously. Seeing this, Feng Jinxiao immediately stopped his men and respectfully inquired about the old man's intentions. The old man's voice was cold as he questioned Chen Bufan about the destruction of the ten major halls in Jin Nanfu, to which Chen Bufan calmly responded, displaying remarkable composure. The flames of anger burned in Feng Jinxiao's heart as he loudly reprimanded his opponent in front of him. Do you know who you are messing with? This is the legendary figure of Dongzhou, Master Zhu Yun. He specifically came here today to deal with you. The name Zhu Yun rang a bell for Chen Bufan. When he killed Zhang Taishan, the latter boasted that in the whole Dongzhou, only Zhu Yun could match him. Although some praised him as the number one swordsman in Dongzhou, for Chen Bufan, these praises were just fleeting. Zhu Yun arrogantly declared, Chen Bufan, don't you know the reputation of Master Zhu? Kneel down and swear allegiance. Zhang, the head of the Zhang family, shouted loudly. Chen Bufan swiftly moved and appeared in front of Zhang. In the terrified eyes of Zhang, he quickly reached out his hand, tightly grabbing Yang's neck. With a crisp sound, Yang's neck was brutally twisted, and his body instantly fell to the ground. Chen Bufan calmly said, Too much talk, time to go. Everyone present felt their scalps tingle and their hearts beat rapidly. Seeing Chen Bufan easily deal with Zhang, the other four family heads dared not speak, backing away, almost stumbling. They all cried out for Master Zhu to take action and kill this guy. With a stomp, Zhu Yun sent a chair flying towards Chen Bufan. However, the chair suddenly shattered a meter away from him, splintering, not even touching his body. Zhu Yun was a bit surprised and said, Quite skilled, no wonder Zhang Taishan wasn't your match. Kang Long volunteered to take action. But Chen Bufan refused, saying, no need, it's not worth the time. Zhu Yun couldn't believe it. The other party said it wasn't worth the time, which made him very angry. Zhu Yun angrily shouted, go to hell. He charged like a tornado, flipping over all the tables around, creating a terrifying scene. Chen Bufan coldly remarked, just a peak innate martial artist, not yet reaching the king's realm. I thought you would be more formidable. These words flashed a hint of anger in Zhu Yun's eyes. He explained, the ninth stage of martial arts is a postnatal expert, stages four to six are innate experts, and only the seventh stage is considered a king realm expert. Reaching the realm of an innate expert is already remarkable. Zhu Yun angrily retorted, you incompetent cultivator, after the peak innate stage is the king's realm. What qualifications do you have to look down on me? Chen Bufan sneered, what does the king's realm matter? You are not even at the peak innate stage, let alone the king's realm. Suddenly, a loud bang rang out, followed by the sound of bones breaking. Zhu Yun screamed in pain, retreating seven to eight meters before barely stopping, unable to lift his palm, blood flowing incessantly. Being beaten to this state with just one punch was truly shocking. You're a master of the king's realm? He exclaimed in astonishment. 
What? A master of the king's realm? The faces of the remaining four family heads instantly turned pale. It was rumored that at the ninth level of martial arts, one could dominate a city, but a master of the king's realm was a legendary existence that inspired all. Chen Bufan is actually this powerful? Their hearts were filled with shock and disbelief. Looks like I underestimated you, Zhu Yun said coldly, no longer looking down on Chen Bufan. The residents of Jinan City were terrified and dared not venture outside, as Chen Bufan's formidable strength was truly terrifying. With a swift motion, Zhu Yun drew his sword from the table, the blade shimmering. Although I may not match you in strength, in swordsmanship, I am not only the best in the East, but also rarely find a match in the entire Shin Dragon Kingdom. Coincidentally, I also have a sword as my companion. Chen Bufan said coldly, shouting loudly, Kanglong. A man in a dragon robe stepped forward, holding a long sword. Chen Bufan activated his true energy, and the long sword immediately trembled as if alive, swiftly falling into Chen Bufan's hands. The blade was exceptionally sharp, with two words engraved on it. Greedy Wolf. This was to commemorate the former Greedy Wolf army. With the Greedy Wolf sword in hand, Chen Bufan fought in all directions, avenging tens of thousands of brothers. As the greedy wolf sword appeared, a strong scent of blood and endless killing intent filled the air, sweeping across the scene. Zhu Yun's heart couldn't help but tremble, feeling a sense of death. This is sword intent. This is the realm he had always dreamed of. How could young Chen Bufan possibly reach such a level? No, it's impossible. I am the number one expert in the East, and I will defeat all my opponents. Flowing cloud sword technique. Zhu Yun roared, wielding his sword fiercely charging madly towards Chen Bufan. Greedy Wolf, Chen Bufan shouted, uttering only that word. In the name of Greedy Wolf, slay all enemies under the heavens. Swish, a sword slashed through the air, and in that instant, the two swords clashed. The four patriarchs' eyes were fixed on them, hoping to see Zhu Yun defeat Chen Bufan with his swordsmanship. However, the expected clash did not occur. A muffled sound came and everyone's gaze focused on Zhu Yun. At that moment, Zhu Yun stood still, his eyes filled with fear. The opponent's sword did not collide with his, but with lightning speed, it struck towards his neck. Divine Realm, Zhu Yun's throat moved slightly, a look of astonishment on his face. He collapsed instantly, eyes wide with disbelief. Even in the face of death, he couldn't understand how there could be such a young master in the Divine Realm. With a clatter, Zhu Yun lost control, and his sword fell to the ground. Chen Bufan sheathed his sword, his expression indifferent. After Zhu Yun had displayed his strength, he had already lost. The four patriarchs were all shocked. Zhu Yun was defeated and killed, falling to the swordsmanship he excelled in. This was too terrifying. What kind of realm is this divine realm that Zhu Yun spoke of? Stronger than the king's realm? Why had they never heard of it before? The only one not surprised was Kanglong. Once a peak powerhouse, he now bowed before the Lord, and a top expert in the East was indeed nothing special. Perhaps he still had the strength to rank among the top in the entire empire. What other cards do you have? Chen Bufan's gaze shifted to the four patriarchs. The four patriarchs felt a chill, as if they were being targeted by a venomous snake. Quickly, open fire, shoot him down. Feng Jinxiao ordered decisively. His stunned men quickly reacted and pulled the trigger. Swish, bullets cut through the air, fiercely aiming at Chen Bufan. I don't believe you can withstand bullets, Feng Jinxiao said viciously. In the next moment, he was dumbfounded. All the bullets suddenly stopped in front of Chen Bufan. The space around him seemed to distort, and the bullets were suspended in midair. It was visible to the naked eye that the air had condensed into a thin film due to rapid friction. Those bullets were completely helpless. If Zhu Yun were still alive, he would definitely be shocked to see this scene. This was the external release of true energy. Chen Bufan relied on his powerful true energy to resist the bullet's attack. How? Can someone tell me what's going on here? The four family heads were about to go crazy. The bullets couldn't harm Chen Bufan at all. What's the point of fighting anymore? If they had known how powerful Chen Bufan was, they wouldn't have needed to look for Zhu Yun. They could have just surrendered directly. Chen Bufan waved his long sword. Bang! All the bullets rebounded. Puff! 
In the blink of an eye, the shooters were hit and immediately fell to the ground. The others were scared out of their wits, and some even lost control of their bladder. Attack! Quick! Attack! The four family heads shouted loudly. However, no one dared to move. Even shooting couldn't harm Chen Bufan. Their weapons were just like decorations. Who can take him down will be rewarded with one billion. Feng Jinxiao encouraged. Clang! Clang! Everyone threw away their weapons and scattered to flee. Even a hundred billion wouldn't be enough, not to mention ten billion. At this moment, they just wanted to save their lives. A group of cowards. Chen Bufan didn't order Kang Long to chase after them but turned to stare at the four family heads. Hiss. The four family heads were immediately scared out of their wits. Feng Jinxiao's legs went weak, and he knelt down with a thud. Young Master Chen, I was wrong, please spare me. The remaining three family heads cursed inwardly. As the leader of the seven major families, Feng Jinxiao was a highly respected figure. Everyone called him Big Brother Feng with respect, but he was the first to surrender. Thud, thud, thud. The other three family heads also hurriedly knelt down. Young Master Chen, we were all wrong. Please give us another chance. As long as you spare us, all our assets will be yours. They all knelt down, begging for mercy incessantly. The sound of their heads knocking on the ground was endless. Who could have imagined that the former giants who once dominated Guangling would now kneel before Chen Bufan, begging for mercy? It's too late for regrets now. I've said before that today I'll send you on your way. Chen Bufan's tone was indifferent, unwavering. When they exterminated the Chen family back then, they were extremely cruel, never showing an ounce of mercy. Upon hearing this, the four family heads turned pale, their foreheads were already bruised, they just wanted to survive. Chen Bufan looked down at his watch. It was now half past six in the evening, five and a half hours away from midnight. Let's see how they perform in these five and a half hours. The four family heads showed joy on their faces. Young Master Chen, thank you very much. We will do our best to fulfill your requirements in these five and a half hours. Chen Bufan ignored them and left the place. Hurry, the other family heads dared not be negligent at all. After getting up, they immediately contacted all the members of their respective families. Everyone quickly picked up their tools and headed to the construction site of the mausoleum. In addition, an urgent call was made to the media reporters. No time was to be wasted. Members of the four major families were all shocked. Could it be that their family heads had surrendered? Without much time to think, upon receiving the notice, even the young masters and misses of the families, who were usually pampered, set aside their luxurious lives and rushed to the construction site of the mausoleum. With a total of hundreds of people from the four major families, they solemnly proceeded to the best feng shui site in Guangling tirelessly engaging in the construction work day and night. The family heads of the four major families never imagined that their painstakingly built family empires, holding supreme power, would be at a loss when dealing with Chen Bufan, instead pouring all their energy into building the mausoleum. While the members of the four major families were frantically working on the construction, another group of people swiftly drove towards the Zhang family. At the Zhang family mansion, Zhang Chao and Zhang Jing's family were gathered together to discuss property issues. Zhang Jing, munching on melon seeds, teased, Brother, why hasn't the old man kicked the bucket yet? Dragging it out like this, Zhang Chao replied coldly, It could happen anytime, but the properties have already been divided, no need to worry too much. The Zhang Mingyu family is so naive, they don't even know that the old man left behind a fortune of over 10 billion, which is now split between our two families. Zhang Jing exclaimed excitedly, if they knew, they would definitely be spitting blood. Zhang Chao added slyly, but I gave Zhang Mingyu a contract worth 5 billion as a kind of compensation. Zhang Jing couldn't help but burst into laughter, a 5 billion contract? That's a joke. Suddenly, the housekeeper interrupted their conversation. Mr. Zhang, there's someone outside looking for you. Zhang Chao and Zhang Jing exchanged a glance, feeling secretly pleased. Perhaps the Zhang Yuru family was seeking their help. However, they were shocked when they saw the guests. The visitors turned out to be sent by the four great families, respectfully handing over a bank card. This is the payment for the Emerald Lake Square project. Zhang Chao and Zhang Jing took the bank card in shock, feeling extremely excited. Zhang Jing asked in amazement, 5 billion? The other party shook their head, 
No, it's 55 billion, principal plus interest. Zhang Jing exclaimed, 55 billion? Zhang Chao was also dumbfounded. There's 55 billion in this card? The other party nodded solemnly. Indeed. Zhang Jing swallowed hard in excitement. 55 billion. More than the wealth accumulated by the Zhang family for generations, and it's in cash. Zhang Chao exclaimed with excitement, we're rich. Zhang Jing hesitated. Could it be Zhang Yuru's husband who's returned? Zhang Chao said coldly, who cares, the money is delivered to our house, what does it have to do with him? Zhang Jing firmly stated, yes, this money is for us, he won't get a penny. Zhang Chao speculated, could it be that the Zhang family has also been wiped out? Zhang Jing also marveled. The Chen family's power is this strong. Just then, the TV in the living room suddenly broadcasted a breaking news report. In a certain place in Guangling, the four major families of Feng, Chu, Wei, and Han are leading their clansmen to work overnight to build a tomb. The camera pans over a group of people working hard, with high enthusiasm, and excavators are constantly busy. Zhang Chao and Zhang Jing are stunned to watch. This scene is not only broadcast on TV, but also circulated on the internet. Journalists from major media outlets in Guangling rush to broadcast live, and all the people in the city are shocked to see it. The members of the four major families actually went to the construction site to work in the middle of the night, isn't this crazy? In the hotel, Zhang Yuru, like everyone else, is paying attention to all of this. However, she did not notice that in a corner of the construction site, there was a person standing silently, coldly watching. This person is her husband, Chen Bufan. In the shadows behind Chen Bufan, Kanglong also stands there, silently guarding him, watching the members of the four major families wholeheartedly build a tomb for the Chen family. After more than five hours of hard work, the construction site is finally completed. At this moment, everyone realizes that the members of the four major families are building a cemetery for the 48 victims of the Chen family. After all the tombstones are built, the members of the four major families kneel in front of the tombs, deeply repentant. Countless cameras are filming, and onlookers are also recording. Six years ago, the seven major families took action to wipe out the Chen family, killing 48 people, an unforgivable act. Today, the representatives of the remaining four major families apologize to the victims of the Chen family and ask for their forgiveness in heaven. The four family heads not only exposed the atrocities of the extermination of the family but also confessed to all the evil deeds they had done over the past six years, including imprisoning Ji Yu Hai, eliminating Chen family relatives, and hiring assassins to kill Chen Bufan. This series of evil deeds, revealed by the four family heads in front of the public, shook Guangling, and even the entire Eastern Zhou, like thunder, shocking countless viewers who angrily condemned them in front of the TV. Everyone continued to kneel until midnight. Just as the completed Chen family tomb suddenly showed a group of mysterious figures clearing the scene, the live broadcast ended. No one knew what exactly happened inside the Chen family tomb. After everyone left, a figure in black slowly appeared in the night, it was Chen Bufan. Young Master Chen, we have completed it as per your request, are you satisfied? Chen Bufan remained silent, bowing solemnly in front of his parents' tomb. The heads of the four major families watched anxiously, not daring to say more, afraid of angering Chen Bufan. After bowing to his parents, Chen Bufan then came to a nearby grave. The tombstone bore a name, Chen Xiaoyu. Seeing this name, Chen Bufan's mind conjured up an image of a lively and lovely little girl, causing his heart to ache. Little sister, I'm sorry, brother was powerless to protect you at that time. With that, Chen Bufan closed his eyes, consumed by sadness. A wave of anger burned in Chen Bufan's heart, fierce and intense like flames. He glared at his father, mother, sister, and all those related to the Chen family, his eyes filled with determination and resentment. Feng Jinxiao couldn't help but break the silence and asked, Mr. Chen, can we leave now? No, you cannot leave. I want you to accompany the Chen family to their graves. Chen Bufan coldly replied. Feng Jinxiao and the others' faces turned pale, fear spreading across their faces. I only give you the last five and a half hours to complete everything, not to let you leave freely. Chen Bufan said firmly. Feng Jinxiao and the others were filled with panic. Chen Bufan, you are untrustworthy. The members of the four major families began to clamor, 
and the atmosphere became extremely tense. Chen Bufan indifferently ordered, Kenglong, send them on their way. In an instant, a group of black-clothed individuals surged into the cemetery. Moments later, everyone fell to the ground, silent and motionless. Just as Feng Jinxiao felt despair creeping in, a blade fell on his neck, and he screamed in despair, please, don't kill me. The seven major families were just following orders, forced into this. Wait, Chen Bufan stopped Kenglong's actions and stared at Feng Jinxiao. You said the seven major families were following orders? Whose orders? A terrifying foreign lady claimed to be from the land of gods. Feng Jinxiao explained nervously. The land of gods? Chen Bufan's expression changed slightly. He was not unfamiliar with this place. It is one of the three major forbidden areas in the world, and also a mysterious and powerful force. While on missions, he had some contact with the land of gods several times, but never had a direct conflict. In a sense, the three major forbidden areas do not belong to secular powers. If the whole world is compared to a mirror, they're like living in the dark side, with their own rules and ways of doing things. Therefore, although the demon temple sits firmly as the world's number one power, there is no conflict with the three major forbidden areas. However, Chen Bufan had to admit that the demon temple and the three major forbidden areas had never directly confronted each other, so it was uncertain whether their overall strength surpassed the three major forbidden areas. Previously, Feng Wu had reported to him that the Land of Gods had started to act after knowing he had left Qilong. At that time, Chen Bufan did not fully understand, thinking that his actions had caused some forces to be uneasy. But now, hearing Feng Zhenxiao's description, he realized that things might be more complicated than he had imagined. Why does the Land of Gods want to wipe out the Chen family? Chen Bufan asked. They said the Chen family has a jade pendant related to a top secret plan. Feng Jinxiao explained. A jade pendant? Chen Bufan's face changed, suddenly recalling something. When he was a child, he had once seen his father open a password box. The box was very old, even cracked on the surface, but tightly locked by a complex password lock. The surface of the box was also carved with exquisite patterns, as beautiful as a piece of art. He had asked curiously. His father opened the box, took out a jade pendant, and told him it was left by his grandfather. At that time, Chen Bufan was completely focused on the jade pendant, completely ignoring the sadness on his father's face. The jade pendant was different from the common ones, resembling a certain animal, all dark green, shining brightly in the room, exuding a mysterious aura. Unfortunately, young Chen Bufan was not interested in the things in the box at that time. Now all he could remember was the mysterious aura of the jade pendant and the beautiful patterns on the box, which made a lasting impression on him, otherwise he would have forgotten long ago. Looking back now, his grandfather had passed away long ago, and he was not sure if it was related to the jade pendant. But that was not his current concern. He immediately asked Feng Zhenxiao about the characteristics of the jade pendant. To be honest, I'm not sure what the lady wants the jade pendant to look like. She just told us that after completing the mission, Wangling will belong to us. If we don't obey her orders, she will bring misfortune to all seven families, so we have no choice but to act. However, after wiping out the Chen family, we did not find any jade pendant, and we are not sure if the lady has obtained it. Feng Jinxiao honestly explained, such a powerful lady, yet she didn't act personally, but instead let the seven families do it. Chen Bufan's gaze sharpened. Feng Jinxiao was frightened and quickly said, Young Master Chen, what I said is true, not a word of it is false. Perhaps the lady is timid, that's why she didn't dare to act personally. Chen Bufan frowned, surprised at how timid the visitors from the land of the gods were. Ever since the Chen family was completely wiped out, a group of mysterious figures had suddenly appeared in Guangling, looking very intimidating. Even the seven clan leaders felt the breath of death in their presence especially when the foreign woman came forward and had a private conversation with them. Although it was unclear what they discussed, they did not take any action against us afterwards, just gave a simple warning. Could it be because they knew of my existence, so they dared not act rashly and search for Jin Nan Mansion? Yes, Feng Jinxiao nodded. Those people are really terrifying. Their background must be extraordinary. Although the seven clan leaders are not the strongest, they are the local overlords, yet they were scared like this. 
Who are those people and why are they supporting the Chen family? Chen Bufan pondered, puzzled. According to Feng Zhenxiao, those people dare to negotiate with the people of the land of the gods, at least they are at the same level of existence. Globally, there are not many people with such power and strength. Chen Bufan hoped to gather more intelligence, but unfortunately Feng Zhenxiao's knowledge was limited. Young Master Chen, I have told you all the information. Even the foreign woman threatened me not to disclose it to others. Please spare me. Feng Jinxiao pleaded, What I said should be enough for you, right? As Chen Bufan's voice fell, with a twist of his hand, Feng Jinxiao's neck made a cracking sound, and he closed his eyes forever, falling to the ground. With this, the people of the last four major families were all wiped out, and the seven families of Guangling drew a final mark in the long river of history. Lord, the people of the land of the gods have always been reluctant to get involved in external affairs. Even when the Ten Kingdoms alliance fell, they did not show up. Now they dare to reach out to Guangling. It is really audacious. Kanglong said angrily, Don't forget, six years ago there was no temple of the demon god. They did not show up when the Ten Kingdoms alliance fell. Not necessarily because they feared our temple of the demon god, but maybe because the benefits were not big enough. Chen Bufan pointed out calmly, Kanglong suddenly realized, so you mean, six years ago they reached out to Guangling because that jade pendant involved huge benefits? Chen Bufan nodded, that jade pendant even you, Lord, don't know about, could it be that the people of the land of the gods went to great lengths for it? Is Feng Zhenxiao lying? Kanglong found it hard to believe, he dare not lie. Chen Bufan shook his head, what I am more curious about now is, for that jade pendant, which may be the one in my memory. What secret plan is involved? Have they already succeeded? Dot six years have passed. If they have obtained the jade pendant, they must have already implemented it. Kenglong said, not necessarily. According to the information provided by the Shadow Gate, the people of the Land of the Gods started to take action after I left Chilean. Maybe they are already on their way to Guangling. Chen Bufan analyzed. HMPH, in front of our Temple of the Demon God, the people of the Land of the Gods are just a joke. Actually ordering the seven clans to destroy your family, it is intolerable. If they step into the Divine Dragon Empire, they will definitely regret it. Kanglong said sternly, since the people of the Land of the Gods are involved, they must pay the price. Chen Bufan's gaze was cold. I will now take people to eliminate the people of the Land of the Gods. Kanglong said angrily, this matter can wait, as there is no urgency. Perhaps it's better to wait for the arrival of the people from the land of gods before making any plans. Now, he is very curious about the true identity of those who stood up for the Chen family and warned the seven clans back then. Regardless of their identity, since they are friends of the Chen family, there shouldn't be too much of a problem, right? Kanglong expressed his doubts. However, Chen Fan suddenly shook his head, indicating his different opinion. The Azure Dragon's understanding of people is too naive. How could he not know if these people are friends of the Chen family? Furthermore, after the fall of the Chen family, they appeared one after another, not all of them were eliminated. They may have colluded with the mysterious foreign tribes from the land of the gods, perhaps for some personal gain, like that mysterious jade pendant. The Azure Dragon's expression darkened. He had not anticipated such a possibility. Could it be the extraordinary strategy of the palace lord? Azure Dragon don't worry about the affairs of the land of the gods for now. I have sent people from the Shadow Gate to keep a close eye on them. You go investigate the backgrounds of those people. In addition, the influence of the seven major families is deeply rooted. If we want to eradicate them, we must do it thoroughly, firmly control the industries under their control to prevent any disruptions. Chen Bufan ordered. Yes, the Azure Dragon nodded and immediately left. Destroying the seven major families was not difficult for Chen Bufan he did not pay much attention to it. On the contrary, he was more concerned about how to handle the vast industries under the seven major families, if mishandled, it would lead to serious economic problems. Let Yuru manage it? Chen Bufan came up with a plan. If Yuru were to take over billions of dollars worth of assets, I wonder how she would react, she might just send me straight to the psychiatric hospital. Chen Bufan suddenly burst out laughing. On this night, a large-scale cleansing operation was rapidly unfolding in Guangling. The influence left by the seven major families was completely eradicated. Until the next morning, when the sunlight spilled over the land of Guangling, 
A piece of news shocked the entire city. The four major families who built the mausoleum were completely wiped out last night. From then on, the seven major families in Guangling became history. There was no need to say more, everyone knew who was behind it. The descendants of the Chen family, Chen Bufan. Since appearing at the press conference of the seven major families two days ago, everyone had been closely watching his every move. Many people even worried about Chen Bufan. After all, the Chen family had been destroyed, and he came back alone. The seven major families would never let it go. However, just two days later, the seven major families no longer existed. This must be Chen Bufan's masterpiece, truly terrifying. Those were seven towering mountains. The fall of one would be enough to alarm the entire city. However, in just two days, seven great mountains collapsed one after another, truly shocking. Unlike six years ago when the Chen family was destroyed, countless people were grieving, and the citizens went to the site of the Chen family to offer flowers and candles. Even though the Chen family no longer existed, their reputation remained fresh. And now, with the destruction of the seven major families, countless people were jubilant. Some even set off firecrackers to celebrate, even at the risk of being fined. The seven major families had done too many bad things. Previously, the outside world only speculated that it was the work of the Chen family, but at the press conference, Chen Bufan personally exposed their crimes. Yesterday at the mausoleum, in front of many media reporters, the heads of the four major families admitted everything with their own mouths. Not only did they destroy the Chen family, but they also wiped out all those related to the Chen family. One bloody case after another, it's appalling. Therefore, the destruction of the seven major families can be said to have removed the scourge for the entire Guangling. In the early morning, Chen Bufan was still sleeping, but Zhang Yuru unceremoniously woke him up. Bufan, the seven major families have been wiped out, the young master of the Chen family is really amazing. You can be excited, but why are you pulling me? Chen Bufan said helplessly, let's go to the Chen family mausoleum to pay our respects. Zhang Yuru suggested. Chen Bufan had no words to refuse, and could not refuse. The family dressed up and headed to the Chen family mausoleum. Upon arrival, they were stunned by what they saw. The newly completed mausoleum was already crowded with people, with vehicles lined up for miles. The patrol office had deployed dozens of staff to maintain order at the entrance of the mausoleum. In addition, the Department of Transportation had sent out a large number of personnel to manage traffic on the streets. Chen Fan looked at the scene in shock, then trembled all over. Parents, younger sister, and Chen family members, can you see this? So many people have come to pay their respects, recognizing the contributions the Chen family has made to the city. The reputation of the Chen family lives up to their ancestors, deserving of their efforts. It was only 7 o'clock, and the crowd had already surged in. Zhang Yuru couldn't help but exclaim in amazement, thinking she had arrived early, only to find many others had the same idea. With such a huge crowd, maybe they should come back another day. Chen Fan suggested leaving with Zhang Yuru, but she insisted on paying her respects today. Chen Fan had no choice but to agree, accompanying her by her side. Suddenly, a familiar voice sounded, Young Master Chen, you're here. Chen Fan looked in the direction of the voice, realizing it was too late to avoid it and pretended not to know, asking, Who are you? The person smiled and said, Young Master Chen, I'm Kong Jumping, the chief of the patrol office. We met somewhere before, perhaps you forgot. Chief Kong smiled, trying to be very friendly. He almost regretted not apologizing publicly. Last time at the press conference, he almost arrested Chen Fan because of the seven great families, but Governor Stone Rush arrived in time. However, a few days later, all seven great families were wiped out, and the mastermind turned out to be Chen Fan. How unbelievable is all this? Chen Fan not only had a prominent status but also had a shocking strength. Faced with this big shot, even the chief of the patrol office had to be careful. Zhang Yuru looked at Chief Kong in shock, realizing that the chief of the patrol office knew her husband. Chief Kong, are you mistaken? Zhang Yuru asked suspiciously. No, last time when the seven great families held a press conference at Kuihu Square. I met young Master Chen, Kong Jumping replied confidently. Chen Fan smiled helplessly, thinking how clever this girl was, sometimes her intelligence was simply baffling. Seeing that Chief Kong was about to explain, 
Chen Fan signaled to him with his eyes. Chief Kong, my wife said you got it wrong, Chen Fan said. As the chief of the patrol office, how could Kong Jumping not understand this signal? He awkwardly changed his words. Perhaps I made a mistake, I'm truly sorry, and then left. Honey, not only do you share the same name as that young master from the Chen family, but you probably look alike too. Even the people from the patrol office mistook you, Zhang Yuru teased. Chen Fan shook his head helplessly. Sometimes this girl was very clever, other times she was just amusing. Maybe she hoped Cece would be more like him in the future. If there's a chance, I also want to see what the young master from the Chen family looks like, but surprisingly, I can't find a single photo online. Zhang Yuru sighed. The young master from the Chen family is right here by your side, why be curious? Chen Fan thought wryly, but said, I've mentioned that I'm very familiar with him, so if you want to meet him, you can anytime. Zhang Yuru pouted mischievously and said, Chen Bufan, do you think I'm bragging and feeling uncomfortable? With that, she reached out and pinched Chen Bufan's arm. Chen Bufan smiled and replied, Yuru, how about I treat you to some meat buns? Zhang Yuru asked in confusion, didn't we just have breakfast? Chen Bufan chuckled and said, but why don't I feel any pain? Zhang Yuru suddenly realized and coquettishly scolded, you, stinky Chen Bufan. I can't bear to really hurt you, and you still think I'm pinching lightly. Watch me not beat you. After half an hour of waiting, we finally entered the cemetery. The scene was different from last night as local officials were busy working to fix the incomplete facilities hastily built the night before. The seven major families wiped out the Chen family six years ago, causing a lot of trouble, but now it's finally resolved, leaving the local authorities embarrassed and rushing to make amends. Chen Bufan felt melancholic, trying hard to hold back his tears. Standing there, he addressed the tombstone of the Chen family, Mom, Dad, can you see this? This is your daughter-in-law, Zhang Yuru, a gentle and kind girl. It was her who saved my life back then, otherwise your son would have been long gone. And this little one, her name is Cici, our child. Yes, you have become grandparents. Chen Bufan's voice gradually lowered, trying to control his tears. Xiao Yu silently followed behind him, sticking to him every day, which made Chen Bufan feel a pang of sorrow. Eventually, he couldn't hold back, and tears moistened his eyes. Cece hugged Chen Bufan's thigh and asked, Daddy, why are you crying? She raised her little head, her big eyes filled with concern. It's okay. Daddy just feels that the Chen family has been through a lot. Chen Bufan smiled and comforted her. Zhang Yuru walked over, linking arms with Chen Bufan, and said, Although the Chen family has suffered a misfortune, there are still descendants alive. I believe that in the near future, the Chen family will rise again. Chen Bufan nodded, his eyes shining with determination. After leaving the cemetery, Zhang Yuru murmured to herself, the seven major families have been wiped out, but we have not yet received the outstanding construction payment. I wonder if the person in charge of their company will fulfill the promise. Upon hearing this, Chen Bufan immediately stared at Zhang Yuru and asked, you didn't receive the money last night? What money? Zhang Yuru asked in confusion. Chen Bufan immediately contacted Kanglong and learned the truth of the matter. He couldn't help but complain, what a bunch of idiots. It's not all their fault. They probably just wanted to send the money quickly to secure their survival chances, not knowing the contract was in your hands. Zhang Yuru understood and said, Yuru, we need to go to the Zhang family. Chen Bufan explained in a hurry. Zhang Yuru exclaimed in shock, they gave the 5 billion payment? Not 5 billion. Chen Bufan shook his head. Still, it's good news, at least there's hope, Zhang Yuru said without losing heart. It's 5 billion in principle, plus 10 times the interest, totaling 55 billion. Chen Bufan affirmed. What? Zhang Yuru exclaimed in astonishment. 55 billion? Zhang Yuru doubted if she had misheard. Yes, 5 billion principle, plus 10 times the interest, totaling 55 billion. Chen Bufan confirmed. Zhang Yuru was stunned, finding the number 55 billion astronomical. Before she could react, Chen Bufan had already pulled her and headed straight to the Zhang family. At this moment, the Zhang family, Zhang Chao and Zhang Jing, were immersed in immense joy. Even though the entire city was buzzing about the downfall of the seven major families, 
their attention was solely focused on this payment. 55 billion. It's truly a huge surprise, leaving the Zhang family in disbelief. In the past, the Zhang family, relying on the hard work of Zhang Muchun's generation, had only accumulated a few billion in wealth, barely considered wealthy in Guangling. However, the sudden appearance of 55 billion in cash is enough to catapult the Zhang family into the upper class, making them wealthy enough to rival nations in the entire eastern province. The seven major families really have had a stroke of bad luck, if it weren't for their downfall, the Zhang family wouldn't have unexpectedly received this huge sum of money. Zhang Chao sighed with emotion. We must thank young Master Chen from the Chen family. Without him, it would have been difficult to retrieve this money. Zhang Jing said with gratitude. It's very likely that the seven major families, in order to save their lives, decided to make amends for their past mistakes, which gave us the opportunity to receive this money, otherwise, they wouldn't have been so generous. If we have the chance, we must pay a visit to this young Master Chen. Zhang Chao analyzed. Absolutely, not only do we need to visit young Master Chen, but we also need to flatter him. After the downfall of the seven major families, leaving behind property worth billions, it's very likely that it will all fall into the hands of young Master Chen. If we can make friends with this influential figure, then we will benefit greatly. Greed shown in Zhang Jing's eyes, just like Zhang Chao. They both could see that in the absence of the seven major families in Guangling, the Zhang family will rise to prominence. Zhang Zong, Miss Zhang Yuru's family has arrived. A servant hurriedly came in to report. Zhang Yuru's family? Zhang Chao frowned. They must be here for money. Zhang Jing said disdainfully. Don't prepare to give them a single penny. Just say we're not at home and ask them to leave. Zhang Chao waved his hand to order. All right, the servant left to carry out the command. However, in the next moment, there was a sudden scream from outside. The servant who had just gone out crashed through the gate, falling to the ground, writhing in pain. Everyone from the Zhang family, come out. An angry roar suddenly echoed, shaking the entire Zhang family mansion. He dares to barge in like this, this guy is too arrogant. Zhang Chao's eyes flashed with a hint of killing intent as he quickly summoned his men to go out. In the Zhang family courtyard, Zhang Yuru looked anxious. Fan, since they're not here, let's come back another day. Swish, swish, swish. Just then, dozens of people rushed out from the Zhang family, surrounding their family. Zhang Yuru tightly held onto Sisi, looking nervous. Zhang Chao and Zhang Jing strode over, looking fierce. See, they were not out, they were just playing us. Chen Bufan said coldly. Zhang Yuru also expressed her anger. They lied that they were not home when they clearly were, and only came out to see us when things escalated to this point. Are you tired of living? Coming to cause trouble early in the morning? Zhang Chao said angrily. Yuru, don't blame auntie for not speaking up for you. You have to control your man. Zhang Jing said sharply, with a sarcastic smile on his face. Bufan was a bit impulsive, but it's because your people were too overboard, not only lying that we weren't home but also pushing us. Zhang Yuru argued angrily, stop the nonsense, the family assets have been distributed, why are you here causing trouble? Zhang Chao said impatiently, if you don't want to continue with the nonsense, then quickly return the money to Yuru. Chen Bufan said coldly, return the money? What money? Zhang Chao arrogantly retorted, don't admit it, last night, the four major families sent 55 billion in cash from Kuihu Square to the Zhang family a total of 55 billion with interest, hurry up and hand it over. Chen Bufan said bluntly, Zhang Chao was accused of demanding a payment of 55 billion, but he firmly denied it. Faced with the accusation, Zhang Chao appeared calm and unconcerned, dismissing the 55 billion as pure nonsense. He said, our family has never been involved in charity. Besides, you already have the contract, so why bother us? Whether you want the money or not, it's none of my business. Stop bothering me. Zhang Chao's attitude was resolute and fearless. Zhang Jing, on the other hand, sarcastically remarked, demanding 55 billion? That's insane. It's nothing but extortion. Get out of here. Her words revealed her disdain and anger towards the extortionists, showing no mercy. Hearing Zhang Chao and Zhang Jing's tough stance, Zhang Yuru began to hesitate. She understood that asking for the principal back was already generous but demanding 10 times the interest, 
the figure of 55 billion was indeed staggering. She whispered, are you sure there's no mistake? Zhang Yuru's mood became uneasy, starting to doubt her own position. Faced with Zhang Yuru's hesitation, Chen Bufan did not immediately respond. He kept his gaze fixed on Zhang Chao and Zhang Jing, showing no emotion. Zhang Yuru felt even more confused and anxious with Chen Bufan's silence. In this tense atmosphere, she began to doubt her judgment and position. I have nothing to lose, Zhang Chao said coldly. Suddenly, Chen Bufan erupted with an unparalleled momentum, directly overwhelming the entire Zhang family's atmosphere. Everyone present was shocked and terrified. Facing Chen Bufan was like facing a demon, feeling the shadow of death. Zhang Chao, dare to challenge me. Zhang Chao threatened. Chen Bufan ignored him, appearing in front of Zhang Chao like a raging dragon. Smack, he raised his palm and slapped Zhang Chao, sending him flying and making his face swell like a pig's head. Zhang Jing screamed in shock. Smack, Chen Bufan, without hesitation, slapped Zhang Jing's face again causing her to bleed from her mouth and nose. Bastard, attack him, take him down. Zhang Chao angrily shouted. Dozens of henchmen picked up objects and hurled them at Chen Bufan. CC angrily shouted, You bad people, don't hurt my daddy. Zhang Yuru looked on anxiously, not expecting the situation to escalate like this. Don't worry, your daddy is a hero, Chen Bufan said gently to CC. He suddenly swung his palm catching a stick thrown by one of the men, then channeling his inner strength, veins bulging. A powerful force was released instantly. The stick shattered into pieces with a bang. Chen Bufan's palm struck down, causing the man to tremble and fly backward, crashing to the ground with a thud. If Chen Bufan hadn't held back and felt it unnecessary to use all his strength, the man would have met Yama long ago. Anyone dares to make a move, bear the consequences. Chen Bufan said decisively. The remaining people didn't wait for his order. They had already rushed to Chen Bufan but abruptly stopped, then quickly retreated, keeping a distance of several meters from Chen Bufan, all staring at him with fearful eyes. Zhang Chao and Zhang Jing were both swallowing nervously, not expecting Chen Bufan to be so powerful. Seeing Chen Bufan approaching, Zhang Chao and Zhang Jing were filled with fear. Zhang Yuru anxiously said, Stop your man now, or I'll call the police. What you've done, even prison is too good for you. Zhang Yuru panicked at the mention of calling the police. Don't be impulsive. Maybe they haven't actually received the money yet, she said to Chen Bufan. Chen Bufan remained unmoved, his icy gaze fixed on Zhang Chao and Zhang Jing. I came here for the money, I'm not afraid of the consequences. If you don't cooperate honestly, be prepared to face hell. Chen Bufan was about to make a move. Zhang Jing, as a woman, was completely terrified and quickly begged, please don't act rashly. I'll tell you the truth, the four major families delivered five and a half billion last night. This revelation made Zhang Yuru's face turn pale. Chen Bufan turned to Zhang Chao and asked, what about you? Zhang Chao couldn't help but feel fear. Chen Bufan's momentum was too strong. He was like a god of death. He dared not deny, only nodded firmly. Chen Bufan turned back to Zhang Yuru and said, See, how could you do this? Zhang Yuru shook her head in disappointment. Playing tricks on the distribution of family property can be understood, but taking what rightfully belongs to the other party is clearly an attempt to monopolize. If they weren't standing there looking like they were deliberately provoking, it would be too cruel. Although they returned the money, it wasn't willingly but because of the luck of the Chen family young master. The four major families tried to make amends for their mistake and ultimately proactively sent it to our Zhang family, so this sum of money should rightfully belong to us and have nothing to do with you. Zhang Chao stated confidently, nothing to do with us? Chen Bufan felt it was absurd. Did Zhang Chao realize that the Chen family young master he mentioned was himself? But the contract clearly states that if the other party does not return the money, we will bear the debt risk. Since the other party has returned it, for whatever reason, this sum of money should belong to us. What you are doing is unethical. Zhang Yuru accused. Oh, now you're accusing us of being unethical. When your grandfather was ill, I didn't see you coming to visit earlier. You only rushed over to fight for the family property when he was about to pass away. Zhang Jing sneered. Grandpa was sick, I had no idea, and I was constantly obstructed by you from coming to Guangling. 
If my parents hadn't informed me in time, I would have known nothing. Besides, I came to visit grandpa not to fight for the family property, but because you were the first to put pressure on my family, and in the end, the contract was something my parents didn't want to sign but was forced on me by my husband. How can you say that? Zhang Yuru said angrily, her chest heaving. Anyway, this is what we see. As for the 55 billion, it can't all belong to you. If you insist, we can only give you a few million. Zhang Jing rolled her eyes. A few million? Zhang Yuru was completely speechless. What, you still think it's too little? Enough for your whole family to buy properties and vehicles. Zhang Jing shouted sharply. The issue is not about the amount of money but about your bullying behavior. Zhang Yuru said angrily. Even 5,000 yuan is not a small amount to her, and a few million is already a huge sum. However, the root of the problem is that the 55 billion originally belonged to them but was usurped by the other party, who spent a part of it recklessly to deal with them, which is simply outrageous. Yuru, stop wasting your breath on them. Chen Bufan couldn't stand it anymore and confronted Zhang Jing and Zhang Chao directly. 55 billion, not a penny less, otherwise, I will stop at nothing. Zhang Chao and Zhang Jing immediately turned pale, feeling extremely fearful facing Chen Bufan. Just then, a servant hurried over in a panic. Mr. Zhang, come quickly, the old master has woken up. What? Zhang Chao and Zhang Jing, upon hearing this, showed shock and even a bit of panic. Chen Bufan keenly sensed something was amiss. Zhang Chao, Zhang Jing, and the Zhang family all rushed towards the room. Yuru, let's go in too. Zhang Yuru said, Okay. Chen Bufan nodded, and the whole family followed suit. Just as they reached the bedroom door, they were stopped by Zhang Chao, who refused to let them in. The old master has woken up, but you won't let us in. Chen Bufan remembered the mysterious expression on Zhang Chao and Zhang Jing's faces when they heard the news and felt that something was fishy. Don't even think about going in. With a cold reprimand, the few guards were so scared they shuddered. Having been startled just now, they didn't dare to block the way and immediately stepped aside. Chen Bufan and his family entered the bedroom, only to see Zhang Chao squatting by the bedside, doing something, while the old man emitted painful groans. What are you doing? Zhang Yuru hurried over. Zhang Jing quickly stepped forward to stop her, looking nervous as she said, Your grandfather's condition is very unstable, you. But halfway through, she suddenly noticed Chen Bufan's cold gaze fixed on her. Her heart tightened as if frozen by the icy stare. Zhang Jing dared not say more and obediently took a step back. Meanwhile, Zhang Yuru rushed to the bedside, anxiously calling out, Grandpa. But no matter how she called, Zhang Muchen showed no response. Chen Bufan glanced over and saw Zhang Muchen once again slipping into unconsciousness, filling the room with a tense and heavy atmosphere. Watching Zhang Mu Chun's illness worsen in the spring dusk, Zhang Chao was anxious and distressed. Just as he woke up, still holding on to a glimmer of hope, he decisively picked up his phone to call an ambulance. However, Zhang Chao abruptly stopped Zhang Yu Ru in a harsh and impatient tone. Chen Bi Yu Fan remained silent, and took the opportunity when no one was paying attention to check Zhang Yu Chun's pulse, his brows slightly furrowed. Zhang Chao questioned loudly, What are you doing? Zhang Yu Ru, puzzled, asked, Why not call an ambulance? Suddenly, Chen Bi Yu Fan announced, I have a way to cure your grandfather. Zhang Yu Ru was incredulous and speechless, That's impossible. Zhang Chao bluntly questioned. Even the top doctors in Dongzhou are helpless. What makes you think you can do it? Chen Bi Yu Fan responded indifferently. Don't worry, just go out for a while. Zhang Yu Ru, unwilling, asked persistently, Are you serious? Chen Bi Yu Fan firmly replied, Of course. Zhang Chao distrusted completely. Why should we believe you? Chen Bi Yu Fan calmly suggested. If I can't cure him, then the five billion will be yours. Zhang Yu Ru hesitated, the risk is too great. In the end, she chose to believe, okay, I trust you. Zhang Chao impatiently warned, you better not go back on your word. With Chen Bi Yu Fan willingly taking on the risk, the once tricky situation became mysterious and uncertain. Zhang Yu Ru placed all her hopes on Chen Bi Yu Fan. After Zhang Chao and the others left, only Chen Bi Yu Fan's family remained in the room. Despite not having silver needles, 
Chen Biyu Fan had his own unique method for Zhang Yu Chun's condition. He tightly held Zhang Yu Chun's hand, circulated his internal energy, gently pressed on acupuncture points, guiding the energy into his body and swiftly along the meridians. Zhang Yuru widened her eyes, filled with a glimmer of hope, as Chen Bufan's movements were as swift as lightning. In an instant, he activated the true qi channels in Zhang Muchun's body, and a powerful force surged through him like a dragon, healing his grandfather's illness. Suddenly, Zhang Muchun coughed up a black clot of blood, causing Zhang Yuru to panic and quickly wipe it away. Zhang Muchun slowly opened his eyes, gazing at the scene before him with gratitude and inexplicable joy. Overwhelmed with excitement, Zhang Yuru couldn't hold back her tears, unable to believe that her grandfather had truly recovered. Zhang Muchen furrowed his brow slightly, curiously inquiring about his surroundings. Zhang Yuru softly called out, Grandpa, it's me, Yuru. Do you remember me? After a moment of contemplation, Zhang Muchen's eyes lit up with relief. Yuru, my dear granddaughter, how could I forget you? Time flies by so quickly. Heartbroken, Zhang Yuru whispered, Grandpa, I have been unfilial. I haven't visited you often these years, so you don't know how I look now. Zhang Muchen sighed, Alas, I should blame myself for driving your father out of the house back then. Otherwise, your parents never called me, and I was once angry, but I always cared for you. I asked your uncle to send them money, though meager, I have always deeply loved you, my granddaughter. Hearing this, Zhang Yuru felt a pang of guilt, as Zhang Chao's hurtful words from years ago still haunted her. Zhang Muchen continued to recount past events, leaving Zhang Yuru stunned and uncontrollably enraged. Zhang Chao's despicable actions were appalling, not only deceiving his elderly father but also almost putting her in grave danger. Fuming with anger, Zhang Muchen exposed Zhang Chao's vile deeds, his fury barely contained. Chen Bufan truthfully pointed out, Zhang Chao's behavior before was indeed suspicious, as if he didn't want you to recover. Enraged, Zhang Muchen started coughing violently, showing signs of danger in his breath. Chen Bufan quickly checked his pulse, channeling true qi into his body. Zhang Muchen finally calmed down, realizing that his body had not fully recovered yet, and he had to carefully maintain emotional stability. Zhang Yuru brought Chen Bufan to her grandfather Zhang Muchen and excitedly introduced, Grandpa, this is my husband, Chen Bufan, who saved you. Zhang Muchen thanked him repeatedly, feeling extremely touched. To think he is my grandson-in-law, thank you so much. Chen Bufan humbly replied, it's the least I could do. Originally, Chen Bufan had no favorable impression of the entire Zhang family, and saving Zhang Muchen was not out of fondness, but out of not wanting to see Zhang Yuru sad. At the same time, he also wanted to understand the truth of Zhang Muchen's situation. However, upon hearing that Zhang Muchen had done many good deeds for their family, and even supported Zhang Yuru in the past, Chen Bufan's impression of Zhang Muchen changed slightly. Zhang Muchen sat on the chair, his eyes unfocused, filled with worries and anger towards his family. This was his granddaughter Sisi, a sensible and lovely girl. Zhang Yuru guided Sisi to call him, Grandpa, a term that brought a warm feeling to Zhang Muchun's heart. Sisi obediently called him so, causing a long-lost smile to appear on Zhang Muchun's face, and the anger in his heart gradually subsided. So adorable, so sensible, Zhang Muchun's eyes were full of tenderness, as if he saw the hope and future of the family. He sighed, my son-in-law is extraordinary, and Sisi is so lovely. The family is harmonious, making me feel content at the end of my life. Zhang Yuru smiled and comforted, Grandpa, since Xiaofan can heal you, you will surely live a long life. Zhang Muchen shook his head, feeling a surge of emotions. He inquired about Zhang Yuru's parents and learned of their betrayals and crimes, which fueled his anger. Zhang Mingyu's couple were simply profligate. Zhang Muchen was furious. They deceived and harmed him for their own gain. Zhang Yuru told Zhang Muchen about the return of the 5.5 billion funds in detail, shocking him. The seven major families were exterminated, and the 5.5 billion funds were returned, which should have belonged to him. Zhang Muchen became determined to uphold justice for himself and restore the dignity of the family. In the Zhang family hall, Zhang Chao and Zhang Jing paced back and forth, filled with worries and unease about Chen Bufan. 
Zhang Chao asked anxiously. Can Chen Bufan really cure Grandpa? Zhang Jing disdainfully replied. What abilities does that kid have? Grandpa's life is at its end. How can he change fate? But I always feel he's a bit strange. Zhang Chao was full of doubts. Zhang Jing sinisterly smiled. What's there to worry about? Once he fails, the 5.5 billion will be ours. They chose to give up themselves. Just as Zhang Chao and Zhang Jing were discussing the 5.5 billion, an angry voice suddenly rang out, shaking the entire hall. Zhang Chao and Zhang Jing turned to see Zhang Yuru supporting an old man walking slowly, with Chen Bufan and Sisi following closely behind. Dad? Zhang Chao and Zhang Jing's voices trembled, their faces pale as paper, as if they had seen a ghost. Zhang Muchen angrily rebuked, Shut up, you are not worthy to call me dad. Zhang Chao cautiously approached, trying to touch Zhang Muchun's arm, only to receive a harsh slap. Zhang Muchen scolded, You unfilial child, do you still doubt the success of your treacherous plan? Zhang Chao was shaken to the core as Zhang Muchen exposed their crimes, leaving him feeling utterly ashamed. Zhang Chao and Zhang Jing, at this moment pale as a sheet, knelt down on the ground. Zhang Chao trembled as he spoke, Father, we did make a mistake but it was truly unintentional. Please don't be deceived by Zhang Yuru and the others. If it wasn't for Yuru exposing your conspiracies, I wouldn't have known about the wrongdoings you've been involved in. Without Bofan's help, I wouldn't have been able to get out of this predicament. Your schemes have succeeded, and yet, there's still no remorse. I am deeply disappointed in you. From now on, I have decided to strip you of all your assets and officially expel you from the Zhang family. Upon hearing that they were being expelled from the Zhang family and all their assets would be confiscated, Zhang Chao and Zhang Jing were struck as if by lightning. They quickly knelt and kowtowed, showing extreme fear. Zhang Muchen firmly stated, We have made our decision, so pack your things and leave now. Zhang Muchun's attitude was resolute, showing no mercy. Zhang Yuru watched her father and sister being driven out of the house, feeling immense pain in her heart. She knew they had made mistakes but she couldn't bear to see them end up like this. Zhang Chao and Zhang Jing pleaded with Zhang Yuru, hoping she could intercede for them. However, Zhang Yuru coldly shook her head. Though kind-hearted, she knew they had crossed a line with their actions. She decided to let Yuru take over the family affairs, while Zhang Chao and Zhang Jing were forced to leave the Zhang family. Hearing that they were about to be expelled from the family, Zhang Chao and Zhang Jing couldn't help but feel despair and helplessness. They begged desperately, but Zhang Muchen had made up his mind. At the moment of being driven out, Chen Bofan suddenly asked them to leave behind their money. Zhang Chao and Zhang Jing could only reluctantly hand over their bank cards, their hearts aching. They knew the situation was beyond salvage and could only leave in resignation. Zhang Chao left with a harsh vow, declaring that this matter was far from over. Zhang Muchen faced them coldly stating that they should thank Chen Bofan for intervening, as they wouldn't have been able to leave otherwise. Zhang Yuru was shocked to hear that her grandfather wanted to hand over the family affairs to her. She hesitated, feeling the responsibility was too heavy. However, Zhang Muchen firmly believed in her abilities and hoped she would take over the management of the family. In the end, Zhang Yuru decided to take some time to consider and promised to do her best not to disappoint her grandfather's expectations. Throughout the morning's farewells and conversations, Chen Bofan and Zhang Yuru accompanied Zhang Muchen. At noon, they had lunch together at home, where Zhang Muchen expressed his apologies to Zhang Yuru. He knew that only by entrusting the family to Zhang Yuru could the future of the family be secured. Despite many misunderstandings, Zhang Yuru did not blame Zhang Muchen. On the contrary, she felt sorry for the hardships he had endured throughout his life almost losing it at the hands of their own son, which was truly regrettable. Fortunately, now all the issues have been resolved satisfactorily, and the Zhang family has finally regained peace. Zhang Muchun's health is also gradually recovering, which is the only consolation. In the afternoon, Zhang Yu Chun accompanied Zhang Yu Ru all the way to the gate, generously giving her a red envelope. He gently said, Sisi, from now on, this is also your home. Feel free to come back anytime you have the chance. Zhang Yu Ru felt Zhang Yu Chun's kindness and extraordinary nature, deeply moved. She replied, Grandpa, please take care of yourself too. Chen Bi Yu Fan then reminded, 
old man, Zhang Chao and Zhang Jing may come back to cause trouble for you. Be careful and contact us if you have any problems. Zhang Yu Chun, upon hearing the mention of these two individuals, became furious. As they got into the taxi, Zhang Yu Ru looked through the rearview mirror and saw Zhang Yu Chun standing by the roadside, watching them leave. She felt the lonely figure of her grandpa and couldn't help but feel sorry for him. She sighed and said to Chen Bi Yu Fan, Grandpa must be feeling really lonely. Chen Bi Yu Fan gently comforted, Life is full of ups and downs, he should have long learned to let go, no need to worry too much. Zhang Yu Ru nodded and leaned on Chen Bi Yu Fan's shoulder. This experience had given her a deeper understanding of life. Suddenly, she took out a card and handed it to Chen Bi Yu Fan. This money was obtained with your help, please take it. Chen Bi Yu Fan calmly said, You are a member of the Zhang family. This is family property, you keep it. There will be more wealth in the future that will need your management. Zhang Yu Ru was almost choked by his words. She widened her eyes and looked at Chen Bi Yu Fan. Isn't 55 billion a lot? Chen Bi Yu Fan nodded. In my eyes, it's not much. Zhang Yu Ru couldn't help but question, Don't you think this is too extravagant? 55 billion is enough for several lifetimes. Chen Bi Yu Fan smiled without commenting. His wealth was not just 55 billion, but also the industries left by the seven major families, totaling in the hundreds of billions. To him, 55 billion was indeed insignificant. Back at the hotel, Chen Bi Yu Fan received a call from Kang Long, inviting him to meet the Lord of Jen Nan Mansion. Chen Bi Yu Fan thought coldly, He hasn't seen me for so long. Now that the seven major families are destroyed, he wants to see me. After bidding farewell to Zhang Yu Ru, he left the hotel directly, Kang Long was already waiting downstairs. Kang Long asked, Lord, are you really going to see him? Chen Bi Yu Fan calmly said, The other party's intentions are obvious, it must be to seek forgiveness. Let's see what benefits Muren Yi will offer to save his life. Kang Long nodded and drove Chen Bi Yu Fan straight to the destination. Half an hour later, the car stopped in front of a secluded tea house that had clearly been reserved. As soon as Chen Bi Yu Fan got out of the car, Muren Yi hurried out, respectfully bowing to him. I am Muren Yi. Nice to meet you, Mr. Chen. Muren Yi showed immense respect towards Chen Bi Yu Fan, not daring to show any arrogance. It was the first time Chen Bi Yu Fan had met Muren Yi, and he silently evaluated that this 50 year old lord of Jen Nan Mansion exuded a deep aura, more mature than the heads of the seven major families. Muren Yi bowed feeling uneasy, afraid of angering Chen Bi Yu Fan. Chen Bi Yu Fan calmly said, just say what you need to say. They then entered the tea house, with Kang Long vigilantly observing from the side, and Muren Yi not daring to make any sudden movements. After all, he knew that if he angered Chen Bi Yu Fan, the consequences would be unimaginable. In the elegant room, Muren Yi personally poured tea for Chen Bi Yu Fan, showing great hospitality. Mr. Chen picked up the teacup in his hand, savoring the authentic Tiguanyan tea before him with his eyes closed slightly. His voice remained cold and indifferent, as if icy, just say what you have to say. Morong Yi took a deep breath, mustering up the courage to speak, Mr. Chen, it was my greed that blinded me. I accepted bribes from the seven great families back then, agreeing to arrange for my men to deal with you. And, Zhu Yun, he was also your arrangement, right? Chen Fan's gaze was sharp as a sword, staring at Morong Yi intently. Morong Yi's heart skipped a beat. How could the other party know so clearly? He explained tremblingly. It was Feng Jinshao who pressured me. He insisted that I help find Zhu Yun. I was just a middleman and did not directly participate in the transactions. Please forgive me, Mr. Chen. As he spoke, Morong Yi's heart was in turmoil. He still couldn't believe that Chen Fan had defeated Zhu Yun the top martial artist on the Eastern Martial Arts list. With his ten major halls wiped out, he began to suspect that it was Chen Fan's doing. Realizing the opponent's strength was extraordinary, he left a hand when Feng Jinshao introduced Zhu Yun, just in case. However, when Chen Fan really defeated Zhu Yun, Morong Yi was still shocked. At just over 20 years old, easily defeating the top martial artist in the East, Chen Fan's strength had surpassed his imagination, it was unbelievable. Knowing that after the seven great families were annihilated, it would be his turn next, 
he took the initiative to come and ask for Chen Fan's forgiveness. Although he had thought of running away, Morong Yi knew deep down that facing a strong opponent like Chen Fan, he had nowhere to escape. Chen Fan stared coldly at Morong Yi. Although you didn't directly participate, you were involved. You only come to me now because you feel you can't deal with me, right? Morong Yi knew in his heart that the other party understood everything. As the lord of the demon god temple, how could he not see through all of this? He quickly stated, as long as you spare me, I am willing to leave the Jenin prefecture to join you and obey you in the future. Chen Fan said coldly, those who are against me will have no way out. When I took on the task of the seven great families, the fate of the Jenin prefecture was already sealed. Morong Yi's heart sank, immediately kneeling on the ground, his face as pale as paper. He begged, Mr. Chen, please spare me and give me a chance to redeem myself. I am willing to do anything to atone for my sins. Chen Fan firmly said, some mistakes cannot be undone. Will you take matters into your own hands, or shall I intervene? Morong Yi trembled in his heart, finally pleading, as long as you agree, I can tell you a secret. A secret? Chen Fan's expression was indifferent, giving no response to Morong Yi. Morong Yi knew that he had no bargaining power left and could only speak frankly, tomorrow, in the Qingchuan town within the Guangling region, there will be a confidential auction. Rare herbs will be auctioned off, and I have learned that you hold gratitude towards Ji Yu Hai. If you can obtain these herbs and find a renowned doctor, perhaps you can cure Ji Yu Hai's illness. Chen Bufan's sharp eyes burned with intensity. He felt pity for the disabled legs of Ji Yu Bo. Knowing the magical healing power of the Gigu Zan needle and believing it could give Ji Yu Bo a new lease on life. As for his blinded eyes, Chen Bufan was confident that with precious herbs, restoration was not out of reach. With a kind heart, he eagerly hoped to bring faster recovery to Ji Yu Bo with his medical skills and herbal remedies. At this highly secretive auction, there were not only herbs but also precious antiques and treasures, all of which were unknown to the public. Therefore, the auction was extremely mysterious, even the seven major families were completely unaware. After listening, Morong Yi fell into contemplation. Anxiously, Morong Yi waited as if awaiting the judgment of fate. These pieces of information were not important to him. Chen Bufan finally spoke. These words left Morong Yi pale faced. However, unrelated individuals may survive, but all those involved cannot escape the judgment of fate, Chen Bufan added. Morong Yi quickly thanked Mr. Chen, although in this way, at least there were survivors in Jenin Mansion. After a moment, Chen Bufan and Kang Long left the tea house, while Morong Yi chose to handle things on his own and never appeared again. On the side of Jenin Mansion, Kang Long had already arranged manpower. With one command, the number one force in Dongzhou collapsed. After the fall of the seven major families, Jenin Mansion also headed towards destruction. The Ten Halls controlled the entire Jiangnan region. The coveted power turned into nothingness after encountering Chen Bufan. From then on, there was no dominant force in Dongzhou, only justice. After the destruction of Jenin Mansion, Chen Bufan had Kang Long investigate the background of that auction. This auction held in Guangling. Even the seven major families were unaware. The mastermind behind it seemed to be no ordinary person. If there were really precious herbs there, he was willing to explore it. While Kang Long went to investigate the auction, Chen Bufan returned to the hotel alone. Before he even entered the door, he seemed to sense something, hesitating for a moment. Suddenly, a voice came. The people from the land of the gods had entered Dongzhou and were expected to arrive in Guangling today. Should they be intercepted? It was a woman's voice, cold and indifferent, as if drifting between the snowy mountains, carrying an otherworldly chill. Who exactly were they? Two men, over 30 years old, with robust figures exuding a dangerous aura. There was also a blonde woman, around the age of 30, her strength unknown. Was it what the foreign woman Feng Jinxiao said? A sharp light flashed in Chen Bufan's eyes. No need to intercept, track them secretly after they arrive in Guangling. Chen Bufan said calmly, as soon as he finished speaking, a blood-red figure flashed by and disappeared without a trace. This guy didn't even give a notice? Chen Bufan couldn't help but smile bitterly. However, he was already accustomed to Feng Zhou's personality. Only if she changed would he feel strange. The land of the gods. 
The God Dragon Empire was not easy to deal with. If you plan to play tricks, you better prepare your coffin early. Chen Bufan said coldly and walked straight into the hotel. On the same day, outside the Chen family cemetery in Guangling, a carriage arrived. The door opened, and a slender figure walked out, wearing black high heels paired with a brown skirt. Although her face was not seen, her legs had already attracted everyone's attention. The aura of a person needs no words to showcase, it must be a peerless beauty. The next moment, she appeared completely in front of everyone, shining brightly like the evening glow, attracting more attention, causing everyone to marvel. What a beautiful woman, like a star, dazzling and captivating. Even in a low-key outfit, she couldn't hide her charm. After the woman got off the car, an old man followed her with great respect. Miss, please follow me, he said. Leading her into the crowded cemetery, the woman was a bit surprised. Clearly the Chen family was well known in the area. As they approached the tomb of the Chen Ting Sheng couple, they solemnly paid their respects. Uncle Wei, do you think the young master of the Chen family we met in Liyang is the Chen Bufan? The woman, named Bai Ruabing, asked curiously. Originally planning to return to Qingzhou, she suddenly received a family notification to immediately go to Guangling. Just after getting off the plane, news came of the annihilation of the seven great families. Even more shocking, the top expert in Dongzhou, Zhu Yun, also died in the battle at Guangling. The situation was unbelievably tragic. Although somewhat unbelievable, but Chen Bufan appeared right after she left Liyang. Was he the one who wiped out the seven great families? Uncle Wei found it hard to believe, but also dared not to rashly deny it. Liang had already been embarrassed by Chen Bufan several times. If the young master of the Chen family is indeed Chen Bufan, it would be awkward. This news is indeed unbelievable. He not only wiped out the seven great families, even experts like Zhu Yun were no match for him. It's truly astonishing. Bai Ruabing's tone was solemn. Just then, she received a terrifying message that Jenin Prefecture had also been destroyed. Oh, Uncle Wei couldn't help but gasp in shock, his eyes wide open. The seven great families, Zhu Yun, Jenin Prefecture, these were all powerful existences, and to be completely wiped out, it was truly terrifying. Miss, I'm starting to suspect that those two Chen Bufans might be the same person, because Kilin Hall was destroyed by Chen Bufan, and he had a grudge with Jenin Prefecture. Do you still have Chen Bufan's contact information? Why not call and clarify? Uncle Wei suggested. After a moment of consideration, Bai Ruabing shook her head. I promised in Liang not to disturb him anymore. If he is not the young master of the Chen family, I would break my promise and lose respect. Then, what should we do next? Bai Ruabing decided to continue observing for two more days, waiting for the chance to confirm Chen Bufan's identity. In addition, the family provided information that there would be an auction in Qingchuan town, Guangling tomorrow, where rare herbs and items might be auctioned. This might be her last chance to save her grandfather. She must go and find out. Chen Bufan spent the whole day with Yuru and Sisi, resolving past grievances, finally letting go of a big stone in his heart, feeling much relieved. As for the industries left by the seven great families, he already had a plan. However, Zhang Yuru seemed less calm. Suddenly receiving five and a half billion, busy planning how to spend it, buying houses, cars, and so on, even making arrangements for Cece's future education. Watching Yuru busy and happy, Chen Bufan's sense of guilt eased slightly, he deeply knew he owed her too much. It wasn't until after dinner that Chen Bufan received a message from Fingwu. People from the Land of Gods had arrived in Guangling and were heading towards the hotel where he stayed. To assassinate me? Chen Bufan's eyes were cold, finally giving the order to act. Suddenly, a sharp brake sound pierced the air, and a black sedan pulled over to the side of the road. The door swung open, and a tall man stepped out of the car, dressed in a black suit. His cold, cunning face revealed a subtle hint of deceit. This man, a figure of great power, had eyes that sparkled with a fearless sharpness. Enveloped in the darkness of the night, he seemed like a leopard lurking in the shadows waiting for the right moment. He knew his target had noticed his presence, but he didn't care, as he possessed absolute confidence and ruthless strength. With determined steps, he advanced, filled with curiosity for the unknown and a thirst for challenges. In this silent night, 
a blazing fire of desire for victory burned in his heart. No matter what difficulties and obstacles lay ahead, he would unhesitatingly face the challenge. In his world, victory was never a coincidence, but something achieved through his unparalleled intelligence and ruthless methods. Everything before him was just a convergence of time and space, and he would forever be the fearless predator in the dark, locking his target in his sights, waiting for the final triumph. Suddenly, two sharp cold needles sliced through the night sky, accurately hitting the tires of the sedan with a dull thud. The silver needles, with powerful force, penetrated the rubber directly, causing the vehicle to lose control. Following that, two more piercing sounds could be heard as the tires on the other side were hit as well, completely depriving the sedan of its ability to drive smoothly. Eventually, the vehicle violently crashed into a large tree on the side of the road, the windows shattered by the tremendous force, and a tall and sturdy figure leapt out. This person was fast and agile, far from ordinary. Just as he jumped out of the car, a red figure swooped in, a cold hand instantly gripping his neck. The speed of this red figure was even faster, rendering him powerless. The man caught showed a look of shock, not expecting to be subdued by a woman, whose strength was chilling. Who are you? The man asked in broken language. No time for chit-chat, just stay put. The woman coldly warned. The man agreed, but in the next second, he viciously kicked backwards and swung his arm towards the woman. His attack was fierce and brutal, showcasing his rich combat experience. The consequences would be dire if he landed a hit. The woman reacted swiftly, skillfully evading his assault. Then, she pulled him and threw him several meters away, quickly approaching the sedan. She forcefully slammed his elbow against the car door, the impact producing a loud crash, blood flowing from the man's arm. Subsequently, she subdued him on the roof of the car, rendering him immobile. The man begged in pain, facing the woman's strength, he had no way to fight back, unable even to see her face clearly. Just then, a car pulled up nearby, the door opened, and Chen Bufan stepped out. Witnessing the scene before him, Chen Bufan was shocked. Feng Wu was indeed formidable, effortlessly subduing this burly man, leaving him powerless. Well done. Chen Bufan walked towards them, smiling. If you had arrived any later, I might have let him meet the king of hell, Feng Wu said coldly. Who are you people? The burly man asked angrily. Take him away, Chen Bufan ordered. Feng Wu immediately brought the burly man in front of Chen Bufan, forcefully kneeling down and tightly gripping his neck. With a cold look, Chen Bufan raised his head and looked down at the man in front of him, saying coldly, take a good look at who I am. The burly man struggled to raise his head and exclaimed in shock when he saw Chen Bufan's face, so it's Chen Bufan. Now that you know who I am, be honest and tell me, what are the people from the land of the gods in Guangling up to? Chen Bufan straightforwardly asked. The burly man was shocked and asked, how do you know our identity? Chen Bufan sneered, do I appear so unbearable in the eyes of the gods in your land? Since you know I come from the land of the gods, release me now or you will face a very painful end. The man threatened. Feng Wu acted without hesitation, instantly breaking the man's shoulder bone, causing him to scream in pain. Feng Wu warned, you have no right to threaten our leader. The man suddenly realized, are you from the Xuanian Gate? It is rumored that the Xuanian Gate is the most mysterious force under Chen Bufan, and since its establishment, no one has seen their true faces. Even in the land of the gods, only the existence of this force is known but no more information about it. Don't ask what you shouldn't ask, answer my question first, Chen Bufan reminded. The man sternly said, it was the representative of the Divine Dragon Empire who reached an agreement with this back then, asking you to stay hidden in Qilong and not to show up again. You are now breaking your promise, Chen Bufan proudly replied, that was what the representative of the Divine Dragon Empire said, not me personally. I have my own principles in doing things and do not need others to interfere. By acting like this, you will disrupt the existing balance, trigger new conflicts, and everyone will be involved. Even your divine dragon empire will not escape misfortune. The man threatened. Chen Bufan disdainfully said, Conflicts? Do you people from the land of the gods have such ability? When I destroyed the Ten Kingdoms Alliance, I was fearless, let alone you people from the land of the gods. This is the territory of the Divine Dragon Empire, not a place for you to do as you please. 
Anyone who dares to covet this land will have to step over my dead body first. The situation is no longer comparable to the past. Your temple of demons is no longer invincible. If you underestimate the land of the gods, you will pay a heavy price. The man threatened. Feng Wu once again acted decisively, breaking the man's other shoulder bone, causing him intense pain. I don't have time to waste with you. I'll ask one last time. What is your purpose in coming to Guangling? Chen Bufan said coldly. The man finally became afraid and tremblingly said, If you want to kill me, just do it. If I don't speak, you will break all my bones and then send me to the land of the gods for everyone to see. Chen Bufan threatened, You will bear the consequences if you don't speak. The man hastily said, We came to find a jade pendant. Fearfully, the man said, If this is true, not only he will die, but the face of the land of the gods will also be lost. What jade pendant? Chen Bufan's eyes narrowed, quickly asking. There is a jade pendant in the Chen family, containing a top secret plan. Our purpose in this trip is to find this jade pendant. The man said. Chen Bufan ordered. The detailed information is in the car. Go get it yourself. Feng Wu grabbed the man and headed straight to the car. Stop. Feng Wu. Chen Bufan suddenly sensed something was wrong and didn't hesitate to roar angrily, his body quickly moving in an instant. Die, all of you. The man suddenly roared. Relying on his strong willpower, he pressed the button in his pocket with his damaged fingers. Boom! In that moment, the vehicle suddenly exploded, flames bursting out instantly, engulfing everything around. Feng Wu? Chen Bufan activated his internal energy, resisting the shockwave, shouting loudly. Just then, the voice of Feng Wu sounded, and Chen Bufan scanned around, only to see Feng Wu standing upright on the street lamp, like a righteous figure, looking heroic in the glow. Seeing Feng Wu safe and sound, Chen Bufan breathed a sigh of relief and felt a hint of comfort. Feng Wu coldly stared at the burning scene. The burly man had long turned into ashes. Faced with the threat of the realm of the gods, Chen Bufan's tone became stern, feeling a sense of vigilance. Feng Wu pointed out coldly that they had crossed the line, and Chen Bufan decided to go and negotiate with the remaining two. He knew the origin of the realm of the gods and could not ignore their provocation. Feng Wu promised to deal with the remaining enemies immediately. Chen Bufan smiled slightly and asked why not just leave directly. Feng Wu firmly stated that as a member of the Shadow Gate, protecting the Gate Master was a top priority and could not be ignored. Chen Bufan teased whether she was worried about his safety, and Feng Wu fell silent. The original intention of establishing the Shadow Gate was not for self-preservation, but to hope that the members would be as sharp as a blade, able to step forward in critical moments, dispel the darkness, and let the light shine. As one of the four heads of the Shadow Gate, Chen Bufan had higher expectations for them. Feng Wu may have sensed the meaning behind it, and immediately agreed with a fleeting nod. Chen Bufan sighed and smiled bitterly at Feng Wu's speed, he was the only one who could control her. After hanging up the phone, Chen Bufan decided to leave the scene. The realm of the gods only sent three people, but their strength should not be underestimated, one of them was even on par with a strong innate realm expert. The addition of two new opponents indicated that the realm of the gods attached great importance to this operation. As for the golden-haired, blue-eyed woman mentioned by Feng Wu, she was likely someone who had interactions with Feng Zhenxiao back then. Whether a warrior or not, she possessed extraordinary abilities. Chen Bufan realized the strength of the opponents and decided to meet that mysterious woman to ease his mind. He instructed the members of the Demon Shrine to protect Gubo and Yuru, emphasizing the need to stay vigilant and not to let their guard down. This opponent was different from the past, it was the realm of the gods, ruthless in their methods. While waiting at the bubble tea shop, Chen Bufan saw that the shop was gradually filled with girls, from young students to mature women, silently sighing in his heart. Although not sure if it was because of himself that attracted so many people, he still attracted wave after wave of approaches. All the clues were nowhere to be found, leaving Chen Bufan feeling exceptionally frustrated. Suddenly, his phone vibrated, and Feng Wu's call came through. However, the two individuals had mysteriously disappeared. Chen Bufan ordered the members of the Shadow Gate to search with all their might, but the search yielded no results, as if they had vanished into thin air. Feng Wu's tone was indifferent as she stated that they had disappeared. Furrowing his brow, 
Chen Bufan realized that the tracking ability of the Shadow Gate far surpassed that of the Temple of Demons, leading them to lose their target unexpectedly. Feng Wu used the term, evaporated into thin air, to describe the situation, suggesting that the individuals had not just failed but truly vanished. Individuals in the realm of the gods should be aware that they are being tracked and would immediately go into hiding after a failure. Chen Bufan was curious about the methods they used to evade the surveillance of the Shadow Gate. I am certain they are still in Guangling, I will find them. Feng Wu stated firmly. Chen Bufan did not doubt Feng Wu's abilities, but the search would take time, time they might not have because he could not be sure if the other party had other means at their disposal. Just then, another call came in. Feng Wu, Kang Long has something urgent for me. I will get back to you later, Chen Bufan answered Kang Long's call. Kang Long reported, I have already investigated the mastermind behind this auction. The organizer is a man named Huang Wantong, in his 50s, from Haizhou, known as Old Ghost, some even call him Mr. Know-it-all. At the same time, Kang Long sent a photo to Chen Bufan, who opened it to see an introduction to Huang Wantong, which seemed quite ordinary. From the information available, Huang Wantong was just an ordinary businessman in the antique calligraphy and painting industry, occasionally engaging in charity activities, with little other information. However, to organize such a top-secret auction with rare items, Huang Wantong was definitely not simple, and the information he provided was likely only what he wanted people to know. Especially considering that the items at this auction were mainly antique collectibles in a gray area, Huang Wantong's approach was surely more cautious. Chen Bufan fell into contemplation. If what the burly man said was true, and they were here for the Chen family's jade pendant, then when the seven major families were annihilated all those years ago, they did not find what they were looking for. Sending people to find him might not be to kill him, but to force him to reveal the whereabouts of the jade pendant. This also meant that, in the eyes of the realm of the gods, the Chen family's jade pendant might be on him. With this realization, a sharp glint flashed in Chen Bufan's eyes. He told Kang Long, make the arrangements, I want to meet Huang Wantong. When, tonight, Kang Long agreed decisively, although he was curious about the sudden request from the Lord. After everything was arranged, Chen Bufan contacted Feng Wu, instructing her to halt her actions and not to go looking for them for the time being. Meanwhile, as Kang Long directed his subordinates to find Huang Wantong, he drove to a milk tea shop. After answering Chen Bufan's call, he headed straight for Qingchuan town. En route, Chen Bufan sent a message to Yu Ru, informing her that he would be back later and asking her to let Si Si rest first. An hour later, Chen Bufan arrived in Qingchuan town. Although Qingchuan town is under the jurisdiction of Guangling, it is far from the urban area, requiring a journey through rolling hills. At night, with few vehicles passing by, it takes a long hour to reach the city. Nestled by mountains and water, Qingchuan is surrounded by nature, with the only national highway quietly running through the entire town, making it particularly tranquil. Most young people choose to leave here and head to Guangling in search of broader development opportunities, so now it's around 8 o'clock in the evening and the streets are deserted. After a few minutes, Kanglong parked the car in front of a private mansion. The mansion appeared exceptionally quiet, as if the whole world was asleep in silence. After a car stopped, a few young men suddenly emerged from the darkness, looking wary as they inquired, Who are you looking for? We're looking for Huang Wantong, replied Kang Long calmly. The leader with tattoos stared with eyes wide open, aggressively questioning, Who are you people? Don't worry about our identity, just open the door, lazily responded Kang Long. The tattooed youth exploded, saying, Regardless of who you are, get out of here. Kang Long warned, it's best not to cause trouble for yourselves, just open the door. After the tattooed youth charged towards Kang Long, he coldly remarked, it seems you don't know any better. He grabbed the youth's arm, twisted it forcefully, causing the youth to scream in agony. With a swift motion, Kang Long sent him flying. If not for holding back, the youth's arm would have likely been broken. Get the others, the tattooed youth roared, and his henchmen immediately moved in. However, in the blink of an eye, a group of black-clad figures emerged in the night, exuding a chilling aura. The henchmen were pale and frozen in fear. The previously reprimanded youth stood motionless, as the black-clad figures emanated a terrifying sense of death. 
Kang Long sternly ordered, Behave yourselves. He pushed open the gate, signaling for Chen Bufan to enter. As the group quickly ascended to the second floor of the courtyard, all the obstructing individuals were subdued by the demonic army. The hall on the second floor was luxuriously decorated, with a middle-aged man leisurely enjoying a massage from two beautiful women on a leather sofa. Suddenly, the door was forcefully pushed open, causing the middle-aged man to jump up in fear, his gaze urgently fixed on the doorway where a group of people stood. Who are you? He asked, reaching for a gun on the table. Kang Long acted swiftly, snatching a dagger from one of his men and swiftly throwing it at the man. The sharp blade cut through the gun's barrel, standing upright on the table. The sudden force caused the table to crack, leaving the man trembling in fear. The two masseuses screamed in terror. Are you Huang Wantong? Kang Long inquired as the man trembled in fear. Introducing himself, Kang Long said, This is my boss. He wants to talk to you about something. Sorry for the sudden visit. Chen Bufan politely added. Huang Wantong cautiously ordered his men to leave. Kang Long coldly replied, There's no need to call them. If your men were still of any use, we wouldn't have made it this far. Huang Wantong's face changed, and he hurried to the window, only to see black-clad figures surrounding the courtyard, his men under control. Seeing this, he took a deep breath, staring in shock at Chen Bufan and his group. Chen Bufan smiled and asked, Can we sit down and talk now? He then walked over to the sofa and sat down. Kang Long gestured for the masseuses to leave, and Huang Wantong slowly returned to his seat, asking solemnly, What do you want to discuss? Are you interested in attending the auction in Qingchuan town tomorrow? Chen Bufan inquired. Huang Wantong's expression changed slightly, seeming to understand the intentions of the other party. The auction tomorrow is about to begin and Chen Bufan is wondering what treasures will appear. He has no intention of using any unethical means, but plans to participate in the bidding according to the rules. When Huang Wantong suddenly visited, Chen Bufan just smiled lightly. Huang Wantong, however, felt a bit puzzled, thinking that there must be a reason for the other party to chat with him. Is there anything I can help with? Huang Wantong asked in confusion. Chen Bufan mysteriously revealed. It's quite simple. I want you to help me spread false information, to publicize an item that doesn't actually exist. After hearing this, Huang Wantong's expression was one of surprise. Are you asking me to be untrustworthy? I value my reputation for hosting auctions. This won't benefit me in any way. Chen Bufan firmly stated, Don't worry, there aren't many people interested in this information. It won't affect your auction. And I will compensate you enough to make it worth your while. Huang Wantong resolutely refused Chen Bufan's request. Chen Bufan calmly responded, I know your auction mainly focuses on antiques, I was just making a suggestion. Suddenly feeling nervous, Huang Wantong realized that the situation might be more complicated than he had imagined. If you want to smoothly host the auction, or want to get through tomorrow safely, there is only one way to go, cooperate with me, Chen Bufan said firmly. Huang Wantong's face darkened realizing that this might be a threat. Doing this will only bring trouble to you. Huang Wantong tried to warn. Chen Bufan responded sharply, regardless of the forces behind you, now there is only one choice, to help or not to help. Faced with Chen Bufan's tough attitude, Huang Wantong could only reluctantly agree. In this dark world, Huang Wantong deeply understood what kind of person would do what kind of things, and he had to comply with Chen Bufan's request. Thank you for your cooperation, Mr. Huang. Chen Bufan stood up, shook hands with Huang Wantong, and bid farewell. May I ask your name? Huang Wantong asked curiously. I am Chen Bufan. Chen Bufan replied confidently. Huang Wantong's face instantly turned pale. He had heard of Chen Bufan's legendary deeds, and now he had to cooperate with him. Fear surged in his heart. I hope you are a man of your word, Chen Bufan smiled and said then turned and left. Huang Wantong was filled with fear, realizing that the consequences would be unimaginable if he did not honestly cooperate. Taking a deep breath, Huang Wantong tried to calm himself down. After leaving the mansion, Chen Bufan instructed his men to closely monitor Huang Wantong's every move. Although he believed Huang Wantong wouldn't dare to act recklessly, he needed to remain vigilant against such a cunning strategist. The success or failure of this cooperation would determine whether he could catch the person from the land of the gods. On the way back, 
Kang Long couldn't help but ask, Master, how did you know that Huang Wutong has someone behind him? Chen Bufan just casually replied, I guess. The Azure Dragon looked surprised, as he had expected a different answer. As a scholar from Haizhou, he traveled to Dongzhou to attend an auction, knowing that without the support of some influential figures, he could easily attract unwanted attention. Chen Bufan's eyes gleamed with a sharp light, as if he had sensed something. It seems reasonable. The Azure Dragon nodded in approval. Based on the information you found, Huang Wantong is likely a prominent figure or a behind-the-scenes player of a major power. Chen Bufan analyzed thoughtfully. So, the idea of the palace lord is that those big shots can't come out in person, so they found a proxy to complete the task for them? The Azure Dragon asked in surprise. Exactly. Chen Bufan nodded. Then, who is the supporter behind Huang Wantong? You don't need to worry too much about the power behind him. As long as they don't bother us, I'm just asking Huang Wantong for a favor. Chen Bufan said calmly, Palace Lord, if Huang Wantong is a proxy, then the identity of his supporter must be significant. Is it just for making money at the auction? Haven't you heard what Morong Yi mentioned? This is a top secret auction, dealing with precious items. Just the handling fees alone could earn billions. And it's not just about money. Chen Bufan said mysteriously, Then what is it for? The Azure Dragon asked curiously, These matters are not our concern. Focus on driving, there are many things to deal with tomorrow. After saying that, Chen Bufan closed his eyes. Not just for money, are there other purposes for holding the auction? The Azure Dragon murmured to himself, full of doubt. Just as Chen Bufan returned to the hotel, a piece of news began to spread secretly. It was said that tomorrow, at the auction in Qingchuan town, an artifact related to the Chen family in Guangling would be exhibited. The news immediately caught the attention of many people, especially Bai Ruabing, who, upon hearing the news, immediately sent someone to investigate and obtain more precise information. The artifact is a jade pendant. It turned out to be the Chen family's jade pendant, which no one had obtained in years. Bai Ruabing was extremely excited and immediately informed the family. The family simply said, regardless, the Chen family's jade pendant must be retrieved, it's of great importance. At the same time, in a desolate place in Guangling, a fair-haired, blue-eyed woman was also paying attention to this news. She immediately sent someone to investigate and got a more definite answer. The artifact related to the Chen family that would be auctioned tomorrow is indeed a jade pendant. This jade pendant is not in Chen Bufan's hands, but someone else has brought it to the auction. No wonder Chen Bufan has been silent about the jade pendant, as he may not even know about it, let alone the secrets it holds. This time, we must not fail again, we must retrieve the jade pendant tomorrow. The fair-haired, blue-eyed woman said firmly. Early the next morning, people from various parties set off from Guangling to Qingchuan town, with Chen Bufan among them. He did not bring Yuruo and Sisi with him, as this trip was not for leisure. In Qingchuan town, Many who had learned about the auction in advance had been waiting for a long time. An hour later, Chen Bufan arrived at the destination. The auction was not held in a hotel or another venue but in a mansion. The mansion was located on a hillside, very secluded, with only one road leading to it, passing through a vast desolate area. It seems Huang Wantong is indeed very cautious. There were guards on the road to the mansion, checking suspicious individuals. Upon reaching the mansion, one could see dozens of cars parked in the parking lot, and even seven or eight helicopters on the lawn, obviously brought in from out of town to avoid exposure. The auction is held here, and not all guests are from the East Continent, they come from all over the country and even the world. Only those familiar with this circle can learn about this grand event through specific channels. In other words, besides the powerful individuals, many are longtime customers of Huang Wantong. Master, look, Kang Long whispered, pointing to the side. Chen Bufan followed Kang Long's gaze and saw behind the manor. There was a private lake, with many yachts and cruisers moored on the shore. Looking further, the lake connected to a river, and at this moment, some people were riding these cruise ships to the manor. It's not simple, Chen Bufan muttered softly to himself. Not only did some people come by helicopter, but some also chose cruise ships. This method may not be as fast as a helicopter or driving, but in case of danger, they could choose the waterway. This ultra-secret auction is indeed well prepared, 
and today will be an exciting day. Chen Bufan said lightly, then entered the manor with Kenglong. There was a second security check here, where security personnel checked everyone for dangerous weapons. Kenglong sneered at this, real masters don't need swords, let alone firearms. Strong individuals like the master can be lethal with just a leaf. After the inspection, Chen Bufan and Kenglong finally entered the manor. The auction was held in the second floor hall, with only one or two hundred seats, not many guests, about two-thirds of the seats were already taken. Many people wore sunglasses and hats, deliberately concealing their faces, afraid of being recognized, appearing low-key and mysterious. Chen Bufan and Kenglong were no exception, they were also wearing sunglasses. Just as they sat down, a woman in a court-style long dress sat next to Chen Bufan, revealing her white legs. Chen Bufan glanced at her out of the corner of his eye, feeling that the woman's temperament was somewhat familiar, so he turned his head to take a closer look. Coincidentally, the other party was also looking at him. They locked eyes, both feeling slightly surprised. Mr. Chen, it's you, Chen Bufan exclaimed in surprise. The person sitting next to him was Bai Ruabing. No wonder she looked somewhat familiar. Wei Shu and Kenglong also showed expressions of surprise. Bai Ruabing took off her sunglasses and carefully confirmed, indeed it was Chen Bufan. What a coincidence to meet you here. Her voice was excited, and she appeared thrilled. It's really a coincidence, Chen Bufan sighed. I thought we wouldn't meet again, but unexpectedly, we meet in Guangling. Um, Bai Ruabing suddenly felt awkward. I didn't mean to disturb you, just happened to meet here, hope it doesn't make you uncomfortable? Chen Bufan smiled and replied. As long as you don't interfere with my actions, it's not considered a disturbance at all. That's good, Bai Ruabing politely smiled, calming down from her excitement. Are you also here for something specific? Chen Bufan asked. Yes, I heard that some precious herbs will be auctioned today, so I came here to try my luck, Bai Ruabing answered. What a coincidence, I'm also here for the herbs, Chen Bufan said helplessly. Bai Ruabing was surprised. You're not bidding for herbs too, Mr. Chen. I have an elder who has an eye disease, and if we can obtain high-quality herbs, it might accelerate the recovery. Chen Bufan said calmly, I see. I know, Chen Bufan replied with a smile, his eyes revealing a hint of determination and confidence. Bai Ruabing secretly praised Chen Bufan's calmness and decisiveness, impressed by his attitude. She continued to inquire, what is your opinion on this matter? After a moment of contemplation, Chen Bufan spoke slowly, I believe that, no matter what happens, the key lies in how we respond and resolve it. The upheaval in Guangling may be a test, but also an opportunity. As descendants of the Chen family, we should bravely face it, strive to overcome difficulties, and demonstrate the dignity of our family. After hearing Chen Bufan's words, Bai Ruabing was even more certain of his magnanimity and courage. She felt the confidence and determination radiating from Chen Bufan, as if she saw a true heir of the family. This self-assurance and courage filled her with confidence and anticipation for the future. Chen Bufan nodded lightly, expressionless. Bai Ruabing couldn't see any emotional fluctuations in him and continued to ask tentatively, Do you know if there is a treasure from the Chen family at the auction today? Chen Bufan shook his head, and a sudden glance made Bai Ruabing nervous. Bai Ruabing quickly explained, I was just asking casually, if I have offended Mr. Chen, please forgive me. Chen Bufan averted his gaze, remaining silent. Bai Ruabing looked at his stern face and dared not ask further, only able to wait for the moment to auction the jade pendant. If Chen Bufan doesn't care about it, it means he is not the young master of the Chen family. The auction officially began, with Huang Wadong appearing, low-key and mysterious looking like an ordinary old man but exuding an undeniable presence. Some old regular customers at the scene, as well as those who had dealt with Huang Wantong, could feel his extraordinary nature, otherwise they wouldn't call him the old ghost or the all-knowing one. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for attending this auction. Among the audience, there are many old friends and some new ones. I am Huang Wantong, the person in charge of this auction. Welcome again. After Huang Wantong finished speaking, he respectfully bowed, and applause erupted from the audience. Well, since we are old friends, I won't say much. Let's go straight to the auction section. Good luck to everyone. 
Huang Wantong's voice had just fallen when he left the stage. Then an auctioneer took the stage, briefly introducing the process, and the auction officially began. The first item up for auction was a blue and white porcelain plate, with clear patterns and well preserved, starting at 8 million. This appearance immediately attracted the attention of many guests, and intense bidding began. After several rounds of fierce competition, it was finally sold for a price of 20 million. Following that, some antiques and contemporary works of famous artists entered the bidding, and the scene was exceptionally lively. Half an hour passed, and the auction was already halfway through. Almost all items had bidders, including a calligraphy and painting by a master from hundreds of years ago, which sold for a staggering 280 million, leaving people stunned. Chen Bufan remained calm, as he was not here for these items. The gaze of the Azure Dragon kept scanning around. Chen Bufan told himself that there was no need to look anymore. Even the people from the Land of the Gods who came for the Jade Pendant would not appear directly here. Next up for auction was a pill, said to be personally refined by the medicine king Zhang Daochen, capable of enhancing one's vitality and blood, greatly assisting martial artists. After the auctioneer's introduction, many people showed excited expressions. Zhang Daochen was rumored to be a descendant of the divine doctor Zhang Zhangjing, inheriting his ancestors' medical skills and becoming the successor of the divine physician. Upon hearing the name Zhang Daochen, Chen Bufan was slightly taken aback. Looking through the screen at the pill in the box, he couldn't help but show a faint smirk. Just from the size of the pill, it was clear that it was definitely not Zhang Daochen's work, as he had met Zhang Daochen before and even discussed medical skills together. Zhang Daochen once clearly stated that he would control the size ratio extremely accurately when refining elixirs, because it directly relates to the amount of materials input. Only elixirs made within a specific numerical range are of the highest quality. However, the size of the elixir on the stage was obviously not evenly proportioned. This made Chen Bufan begin to suspect whether the items at today's auction were all genuine, or if they were mixed with fates. Chen Bufan's expectations for the so-called herbs were somewhat shattered. Huang Wantong, this merchant, was ultimately very cunning. If he weren't unscrupulous, he wouldn't be called, old ghost. However, even so, this elixir was unlikely to be purely fake. At most, its effects in medical skills were just average compared to the elixirs refined by Zhang Daochen, the divine physician. Even the bidders themselves couldn't distinguish between real and fake, because Zhang Daochen had long secluded himself in the deep mountains and old forests for decades, making it impossible for ordinary people to verify. This elixir refined by Zhang Daochen has a starting price of 5 million. The auctioneer shouted loudly, 5 million. Chen Bufan's gaze suddenly froze. Although compared to antiques or works of masters, this price is not considered high, considering that Zhang Daochen is a modern figure, and the demand for this elixir is very limited. Only a small part of people truly need it, such as warriors, or the nobles who want to regulate their bodies. Judging from the reactions of the people present, most of them belong to the former. That is to say, Many martial arts experts are among the people attending the auction today. Chen Bufan had already noticed this, but didn't pay too much attention to it. Just a blue dragon alone would be enough to sweep everything, not to mention his own strength. Six million, seven million. After several rounds of bidding, this elixir was sold for 30 million to an old man in Tang suit. Obviously, this old man was an expert and had a complicated background. However, Chen Bufan was not interested in this, just somewhat surprised by the 30 million price. Even though this was an elixir refined by Zhang Daochen, it was indeed surprising that it could be sold at this price. If it weren't because he didn't lack money, perhaps he could casually refine some elixirs to sell. Maybe his alchemy skills were not inferior to the predecessor Zhang Daochen? Chen Bufan sighed inwardly. Originally, Bai Ruabing was also somewhat tempted but as soon as he heard that it was an elixir to enhance qi and blood, he gave up. This elixir was of no help in treating his grandfather. Just then, the auctioneer announced another item up for auction. The next item to be auctioned is a thousand-year-old dragon ginseng. Chen Bufan's eyes instantly lit up. This was likely what he had been looking forward to today. And Bai Ruabing also immediately became spirited, staring intently at the scene on the stage. A lady in ceremonial dress walked up, Gently opened the yellow silk, 
revealing the dragon ginseng inside. The so-called dragon ginseng refers to ginseng that grows into the shape of a dragon after reaching a very ancient age, without exception, as if following some kind of rule. Therefore, there is a saying that when ginseng reaches such a high age, it will absorb the essence of all things in the deep mountains and old forests, gradually developing spirituality. In many places of the dragon empire, whether in ancient times or modern times, there are claims of witnessing such occurrences. Some people accidentally discover a large ginseng, but when they turn back, they can never find it again. This is the so-called dragon ginseng. As for whether it is truly as magical as the legends say, although Chen Bufan has not seen it with his own eyes, he dare not assert. However, when Chen Bufan looked at the dragon ginseng on the stage, his brows slightly furrowed. Genuine ancient dragon ginseng should have a faint red color throughout, as if filled with blood. He had the privilege of receiving a bit of dragon ginseng from an important guest, and after boiling it into a soup and drinking it, the effects were remarkable. Although this dragon ginseng may not be top grade, it is sufficient to treat the ancient uncle's eyes and even help him recover faster. However, the faint blue color of the dissolved substance indicates that it has not reached its full potential yet, and the contained essence is only at an average level, so the effect of treating the ancient uncle may be mediocre. Bai Ruabing's eyes sparkled with firm passion. Although she has limited knowledge of dragon ginseng, her heart is full of hope. This dragon ginseng represents her last hope to save her grandfather and also her last chance in Dongzhou. This dragon ginseng has been growing for 1500 years, a rare treasure with a starting price as high as 10 million. As soon as the auctioneer's voice fell, the bidding began. Numerous bidders started to make offers, making the scene intense. Chen Bufan remained calm, but he sneakily glanced at Bai Ruabing out of the corner of his eye. Bai Ruabing remained calm, her eyes fixed on the dragon ginseng, ready to strike when the time was right. As the bidding progressed, the price climbed steadily to over 20 million, with few bidders left. Just then, Bai Ruabing finally raised her paddle and shouted a price of 30 million. She had been waiting, bidding only after most people had dropped out, aiming to top it all off. However, the 30 million price still made the remaining few shake their heads and give up. Just when everyone thought it was almost over, a cold voice suddenly rang out, 50 million. All eyes turned to the bidder, filled with surprise and confusion. Was this person crazy? For everyone present, 50 million was not a big deal, and the reason the last few people gave up was that this dragon ginseng was not worth such a high price, whether for personal use or resale. 30 million was already astounding, and now another 50 million was truly shocking. Bai Ruabing glanced to her side and found that the bidder was unexpectedly Chen Bufan. He had indeed joined the competition for the dragon ginseng. Bai Ruabing took a deep breath, trying to stay composed. Since Chen Bufan said it would be a fair competition, she was all in. 55 million, 80 million, Chen Bufan did not hesitate. Bai Ruabing glared at Chen Bufan wondering if he was going to raise another 2 million? 100 million. Bai Ruabing adjusted her state and continued to shout. For her grandfather, for the family, and for the last chance of this trip to the eastern province, she would not give up easily. Chen Bufan thought to himself, that's about it, and then he stopped raising the price. 100 million for the first time. 100 million for the second time. Bai Ruabing looked at Chen Bufan in surprise. What was this guy up to? He had been raising the price so fiercely before, why suddenly stop? 100 million for the third time, sold. Congratulations to the lady. The auctioneer finally concluded the auction with the dragon ginseng sold for 100 million, bringing the entire process to a successful close. Bai Ruabing still looked at Chen Bufan with some confusion, puzzled. Chen Bufan smiled and said, You need this dragon ginseng to save someone. Judging by how urgent you looked, I'll give it to you. Bai Ruabing wanted to complain in her heart. Why keep raising the price, making her spend tens of millions more? Although the Bai family was a top family in Qingzhou, money was still hard earned. She could only force a smile and say, thank you. Despite some dissatisfaction in her heart, she had to thank Chen Bufan, or else she wouldn't be able to get this dragon ginseng. Chen Bufan responded lightly, you're welcome. Onlookers were puzzled. The Lord clearly wanted this precious herb to save someone. Why did he give up after raising the price several times? According to the Lord's character, 
They weren't even considered friends, so suddenly giving this gesture seemed illogical. Although they were curious, with Bai Rua being present, they didn't dare to ask Chen Bufan. On the side of the stage, Huang Watong was initially puzzled too, but thinking of Chen Bufan's words from last night, he suddenly realized. It turned out that Chen Bufan had intentionally let others empty their wallets, spending a hundred million to acquire this dragon ginseng, which was actually worth only two to three million. The unexpected delight of the present seven to eight million has filled Chen Bufan with gratitude, a hint of admiration flickering in his eyes. The young Chen Bufan has shown a level of maturity beyond his years, skillfully utilizing the power of others, truly impressing those around him. As the auction is about to come to an end, the highlight is a jade pendant that has everyone eagerly anticipating. Excitement gleams in Chen Bufan's eyes, revealing his curiosity and thirst for challenges in the face of the unknown. Suddenly, a flash of lightning and thunder in the hall unsettles everyone. The etiquette lady slowly walks onto the stage, holding a wooden box, capturing everyone's attention. This jade pendant is the treasured heirloom of the Chen family in Guangling, with a long and rare history. The auctioneer's introduction instantly heightens the atmosphere. Bai Ruabing's heart surges, stealing glances at Chen Bufan, only to find him calm, indicating he may not be a descendant of the Chen family. While the auctioneer speaks confidently, Huang Watong is puzzled, wondering about Chen Bufan's true intentions. Just then, the lights flicker, the chandelier shatters, sparks flying, throwing the whole scene into chaos. They have arrived, Kanglong warns vigilantly his nerves tense in the face of formidable enemies in the realm of the gods. Chen Bufan remains composed, exuding confidence and calmness. Suddenly, a figure like lightning breaks through the glass, swiftly rushing onto the stage. Before the etiquette lady could react, the intruder snatches the wooden box, causing her to scream in shock. Bai Ruabing angrily shouts, don't think about taking away the Chen family jade pendant. Kanglong decisively intervenes but Chen Bufan holds him back, signaling not to rush. The speed of the intruder astonishes everyone, swiftly taking the box and leaving the auction scene. Huang Wantong is shocked beyond belief. Could this be Chen Bufan's plan? The opponent's strength is so formidable, it's unbelievable that they could easily bypass the tight security system. After the intruder leaves, Chen Bufan finally speaks, let's go. With a flick of his sleeve, he takes flight towards the target. Kanglong eagerly follows, anticipating the challenges ahead. Finally encountering someone from the land of the gods, Bai Ruabing felt a surge of challenging excitement in her heart. She decided to learn a lesson or two. Wei Shu immediately took the order to pursue. Without hesitation, he ordered that the jade pendant of the Chen family must not fall into the hands of others. Chen Bufan fell to the ground, narrowly avoiding the attack of the Azure Dragon, his eyes sharp as they stared at Bai Ruabing revealing a strong sense of danger. Could it be that Bai Ruabing also covets the jade pendant of the Chen family? She couldn't help but shudder. Never before had she seen Chen Bufan look at her with such cold eyes, as if he wanted to devour her alive. Bai Ruabing hesitated to speak, wanting to inquire, but saw that Chen Bufan had already averted his gaze, swiftly leading the azure dragon away. As for the people from the land of the gods, he had long had a well-thought-out plan. This encounter was just one piece of the puzzle he had been waiting for. As for Bai Ruabing, he would cross swords with her again at the right time. 